When you pick up your taco, don't put it back down, just eat it and come back and just dip it in that sauce. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make red Mexican street corn and by the end of this video, you're gonna know how to balance your spice levels, make your red sauce and plate it three different ways. Make sure to stick around to the end so I can show you how to make the crispiest chips. And boom, done. In today's recipe, I'm gonna show you how to make a DIY taco meat sauce recipe that is divine. It's perfect for your tacos, your burritos, your Mexican discontinued pizzas. Hello and welcome, it's your Tia Cloud. And you know, when summer comes around, besides wearing our swimsuits and playing out in the water, it's time to meal prep because we wanna have a lot of fun in the sun. Don't skip ahead because my sister's gonna show you some amazing tips to keep this meal well organized and ready to fry when you're ready to fry. Now let's get ready to fry these delicious shredded beef and potato taquitos. Say ah. Okay, I've had this before, so the first bite is yours, okay? Open up real, real big. Hello and welcome. Amigos, today I'm gonna to be making a recipe that I was making on our YouTube story time. If you don't know how to get to the YouTube story time, you click my picture right below and it's gonna take you straight there. If it's blinking, it means that I've already posted something. So this recipe is coming from something I showed you guys on there. And what is that recipe? It is a deconstructed albondiga style fried rice. So if you're interested in making this particular recipe, come join me. Set your pan on a medium heat and add about one tablespoon of oil. Next, we're gonna go ahead and saute our onions and our garlic for about a minute and a half too. Ooh, the instant aroma when you add garlic and onions. Ooh, it smells like Thanksgiving, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can I can start to feel that. Yeah. You guys excited? Maybe it's just us two are. <laughs> I know, I think it's no. Everybody here is a foodie. Us two Maria and me and my and the other Maria are probably the only ones that are like, oh cool. <laughs> yeah. We have a we have a few other ladies too. Guys, she's forgetting about you. You guys better call her out. <laughs> really? No, so I take it. I take it back, friends. Do I not. I love him so much. <laughs> How dare you? After about two minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add our ground beef, and then we're gonna add our seasoning. Okay. Our seasoning contains cumin, chicken bouillon, and oregano. Mexican oregano. It's Mexican oregano. We're gonna mix all these ingredients and let them cook for about two minutes before we add our next ingredient. Next, we're gonna add our chopped potatoes. They're gonna cook quickly because they're chopped nice and small. So I'm gonna add it with, along with our cup of water, okay? Okay, once you've mixed all your ingredients, you're gonna go ahead and add your tomatoes, okay? You can add them right now, or you can add them when you were sauteing your uh, onions and garlic. It's gonna be up to you, it still works the same. You just wanna incorporate that nice, delicious, sweet flavor, that sweet tartness it gives while we're cooking our potatoes. Okay, friends, it's been about eight minutes, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add our veggies. We're gonna add our Anaheim pepper, our carrots, and our zucchini. Beautiful. It does. It's gonna taste beautiful too. Yeah, it's so so good. It smells delicious. It's colorful. Yay! I'm gonna continue to cook this for about three minutes just until our zucchinis are a little bit softer because those cook quickly even after we turn this off. They continue to cook. So we're just gonna wait three minutes and then we're gonna add our final touches. We are ready to finalize this dish. Who's ready? I'm ready. All right. I just had a taste, it was amazing. Just like that. <laughs> she did. This, this right here on its own is delicious if you're interested. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my pre-cooked rice, okay? Mm. 
You really have mastered the art of making rice. Thank you. I can make short grain, long grain. I can make any kind of rice. Mm -hmm. Pretty much got it. Nice and fluffy. Well, except for sticky rice. <laughs> well, it's I meant can, to I, be sticky. Hey, I had to learn my way with that rice, mm -hmm. but I think it's okay. And the wonderful part of this dish is that you can add about as much rice as you want. I think I have like uh, two, two and a half cups cooked. Okay, once you mix your rice, you're gonna go ahead and add your onions and your cilantro. Set your pan on a low heat, because everything's already cooked. We just gotta warm that rice up with the um, mixture that we have going on. And if you guys wanna know how to make this even better, add a little bit of the Views chili oil. And the birria chili oil on this is to die for. But no tanto, but you know what I mean. All right, friends, everything in here is cooked. As soon as your rice is warmed up with everything, you are set. We're gonna serve this and we're gonna get a tasting. You ready for tasting? I'm ready. Yay! As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. And on that one, make sure you're looking at the story time so that I can show you guys what I cook on my day to day, aside from the recipes here. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Okay, I've had this before, so the first bite is yours, okay? Open up real, real big. I know you guys like it that I treat you like adults. There is no airplane. Unless you want it, make sure to let me know in the comments. I will zoom my way to it. <laughs> You'll zoom your way into their mouth? Yeah. And their heart? And, and your heart, of course. I hope you guys aren't blowing on anybody else's food. Not right now. <laughs> Guys, we're still self-quarantined together. Not one fight between us sisters. We're, we're having good. a great time. <laughs> if anything, Cloud is keeping me sane. My baby's not being able out to go out is a lot to handle, but I'm keeping him busy with that cosmic yoga. <laughs> we're having so much fun. Hope you guys are too. I'm excited to see how many of you come back and let me know that this is gonna be a go-to dish because Sometimes we just don't have time to be making the bolitas for the albondigas. It tastes just like albondigas, but without the broth. Yeah, it's delicious. I hope you guys are excited about it. And I have a lot of dishes that I make like this, but I don't know, you guys haven't been asking me for much lately. You think you're being understanding, you're so sweet. Mm -hmm, you guys are, but ask away. <laughs> I'll bring it. Mm, I have something to say. What? What I wanted to say is, what do you guys want to see for our 400k celebration? Would you like a Q&A? We can do a few questions, maybe do a cook with me, um, or do you guys want one of my secret recipes? And I have an oil ready for you guys. It's not spicy. <laughs> so let me know in the comments. Yeah. This rice is so fluffy, it's just falling everywhere. Mm. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to make not ceviche shrimp. And what do I mean by not ceviche? It means that we're not gonna cook it in citrus juice, which a lot of you can't handle, but you wanna partake in eating seafood. And this is a perfect recipe for even people that don't like seafood. If you wanna get started on enjoying it, this recipe is absolutely amazing. And it's so savory, it's so delicious, and it's gonna inspire you because it's not only for tacos and tostadas you can put it in your burrito you can put it over rice or you can make little salad boats and it's going to be just perfect for you and your family for this recipe you're going to need a pound of shrimp this recipe works for about a pound and a half to two i'm using shell on shrimp but you can use any type of shrimp that you have access to i know that a lot of you like to use the pre-cooked shrimp that'll work for this recipe just when it's time to cook your shrimp it's going to be less of a cooking time for you because you don't want them to be all nice and rubbery the way that I like them. We want them to be that soft, gentle texture that burst in your mouth the way the one that um, Cloud likes. <laughs> and she's over here just looking at me, wondering if I'm gonna mess up her shrimp today. And I'm telling you right now, I am not. I trust you now. I trust you. <laughs> Make sure that you're cleaning your shrimp thoroughly and you're de-veining it. 
I noticed that the shrimp that I purchased always has a vein on the inside. You wanna make sure to remove that. And boom, done. That's how we clean our shrimp. Once you've cleaned your shrimp, I'm gonna chop half of our shrimp into two pieces, and then the other half, I'm just gonna keep as a whole shrimp. That allows for different textures to come through, and it has a great bite while you're also looking at a full shrimp. You know how when you're having your shrimp cocktail, you have little bits, but you wanna see the whole shrimp? Yeah. Well, it fools you. You can add three whole pieces or two of the shrimp and a few of the specks in it, and it goes a long way. Because you know when you cook shrimp, you think you have one pound, it's gonna make a lot, and then you cook it, and you're like, where did all my shrimp go? You'll also need some chopped tomato, chopped onion, tomato sauce, tomato chicken bouillon, your choice of jalapeno or a serrano pepper if you like the spice. If you don't like it, you can omit. Mexican oregano, finely chopped garlic, and some black pepper. I isolated our lovely cilantro because this is only for those of you that love cilantro now. My haters, which I adore you, look away right now, okay? You're also gonna need a little bit of oil. Now let's head on over to the stovetop so we can get started on our shrimp. To your medium hot pan, add a little bit of oil. About one tablespoon should do the work. To your pan, you wanna add your tomatoes, onion, garlic, and your choice of your green pepper. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook for about three to four minutes. We're looking for soft tomatoes and translucent onions. And after four minutes, you see that you have some nice soft tomatoes, your onions are nice and translucent, and best of all, your home at this point smells so good. So what you wanna do next, especially if you have a pan that tends to stick everything to it, it's not a non-stick, but it's your favorite pan, you wanna add a little bit of water. And that's for those of you that developed a little bit of a crust from the sweetness of the tomatoes. It's gonna help loosen all those flavors, and that way you don't get rid of them, but it's incorporated into your shrimp dish. Add your tomato sauce, your tomato chicken bouillon, black pepper, and your Mexican oregano. Make sure to crumble your Mexican oregano nice and fine, just like the Views Club with the tips of your fingers, amigos. Combine all those ingredients. And once you've combined all your ingredients, you wanna add your shrimp. Give that a good mix and make sure that your shrimp get nice and coated with this nice sauce that we have going on. Ooh, 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 it smells so amazing in here. <laughs> Cloud, we don't hear anything from you. What's going on, honey? I'm mesmerized, but I'm keeping an eye on the cook time for these shrimp. Since Cloud's gonna be keeping an eye on the cook time for the shrimp, I'm gonna tell you we're gonna be here about three to four minutes. Come in here and stir periodically. <laughs> and after three minutes, our shrimp are ready. Go ahead and add your cilantro. Give it a quick stir. And we are ready to serve. And today, I'm gonna enjoy these shrimp the way that I love to enjoy them, which is on a tostada. Add your corn tortilla to your oil, and you wanna continue to fry about 30 seconds on each side until it's nice and golden. Like those guys back there. Just like those guys back there. And the only reason I just flipped it is because that bubble got too big for me. I didn't want that bubble to take over the whole tostada. I hear you. I didn't want to crumble, I want a tostada. That's a good tip. I'm just pressing it down. Friends, if you need a recipe for perfect tostadas every single time, I'll go ahead and link that down below. I know that sounds like a little bit extra, but some of us do need the help. You know, we need the little starter and that's okay. You gave good tips on that video also to keep that crispiness of the tostada. Yeah, and if you're interested, I also showed you how to make a lobster tostada. Yummy. But why do your tostadas look like they're at the Bad Bunny concert? Because they're bad tostadas. <laughs> <laughs> to your tostada, you want to add your desired amount of shrimp. Ooh, it smells like our mom has been in the kitchen all day. Oh, okay, I like this. I love it. Sprinkle some purple onion, some cotija, some avocado, and just a little bit of cream, Mexican crema, yummy. What I like to do to my tostadas is I like to add some of this Lala 
Mexican sour cream. It's just amazing. And I, I like a lot of it. I can't resist when I hear the word Lala. As always, views Club and Bell Notification Squad. Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we want to invite you to join us on all of our social media. You can make sure to join us for special sneak peek things on our personal Instagram. Cloud, what's yours? Soy Cloud Views. And mine is Soy Steph Views. So make sure you follow us on Instagram if you guys want sneak peeks to some really personal stuff and also the behind the scenes of views on the road. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Amigos, we invited Cloud for a taste test. She uh, is highly missed by all of us. And I don't know how I ended up with the, the oh, super fill. Yeah, you wanted your super fill. I so did. That's what happened. So, all right, amigos. Let's give this a go. Cheers. Salud. Ooh, you did a fine job with these shrimp. They're juicy. Mm -hmm. Did you see that I didn't, didn't overcook them? Ooh, that's excellent. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna show you how to make red Mexican street corn and by the end of this video, you're gonna know how to balance your spice levels, make your red sauce and plate it three different ways. Now let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need 12 to 16 ears of corn, two and a half pounds of beef bone, seven guajillo chiles, one tablespoon of salt, four tablespoons of butter, one bay leaf, seven cups of water, and for your toppings you'll need mayonnaise, chamoy, valentina hot sauce, tajin, cotija cheese, limes, and a little butter. Remove the stems and the seeds from your chilies and place them into a bowl of hot water and you're going to allow them to set for about 8 to 10 minutes until they're nice and soft. And while our chiles are getting nice and soft for us, we're going to start with our corn. Now that we have our desired amount of corn kernels, I would love to go over the different types of chilies that you can use to balance your spice level for this recipe. Let's start off with our chile chiltepin. And chiltepines are from Sonora area, and you can distinguish them because they're round and they had a little bit of a rattle to them. Next, you have your chiles de árbol, which are very, very long and thin. And don't get confused with it. It's not as spicy as your chiltepin, but it definitely adds a real big kick. Here we have chiles pequín. And you're gonna recognize these because they have a more oval shape and they're less spicier than the other chiles that we have here. You might be asking yourself, okay, Steph, which one am I gonna choose? For us, we like a little bit of a smoky flavor, so we're gonna use a few of our chiltepines and combine it with one chile de árbol because the spice with these blended together works really well for our family. But for those of you that don't wanna mess with any of these chiles, you can use your chipotle chili pod, a jalapeño, or a serrano. It's gonna really be up to you to make it comfortable for your home. Oh, what song is that? That's 90s. Oh, no, no, R &B. no, finally it has happened to me. Let us in the comments. <laughs> That's how I feel about this corn. It's finally. gonna be so delicious. I'm so excited. Okay, friends, to your blender, you wanna add a big spoon of your corn. Add your chiles. Add about four cups of water. Your choice of spice level. Bay leaf. Salt. And next, you're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Add your blended chilies to your Instant Pot. Add your corn. Dile que no, que no se espere. <laughs> your beef bone, butter, and you wanna make sure that you're covering all of your ingredients with your amount of water. The total amount of water that I'm using for a large Instant Pot is seven cups of water. Give that a good mix. But the corn is delicious. Fresh. Yeah, fresh corn, it just smells so good. Once you combine your ingredients, you're gonna add your epazote. And if you don't have epazote, that's okay, it's still gonna be really delicious. 
And for those of you that don't want corn in a cup, you're gonna place your corn right on in. Since I'm using small beef bones, I'm gonna pressure cook for 35 minutes on high, but if you have larger uh, beef bones, you wanna go with 45 minutes and a slow pressure release. For your chili sauce, you're gonna use equal amounts of chamoy and Valentina hot sauce. Now, if you wanna change it up with a different hot sauce, you can. And you wanna squeeze the juice of one to two key limes and adjust the tartness to taste. You can also add a little bit of tajin. And if you don't wanna do all that, you can just buy this sauce right here and save yourself some time. And if you like a little sweetness in your sauce, you can use some Miguelito or some Forritos Chilito. And boom, done. We're ready to enjoy our delicious corn. If you have a person that loves tendon, you're gonna wanna pour it right on in, okay? For example, Cloud, she likes it. So we're gonna bring it in, because then later she can eat the tendon. Yummy. You excited? With the corn tortilla. Your eyes are glowing. <laughs> And boom, done. Who's ready for a taste? And if you want to take some over to your family all ready and to snack, you guys can just wrap it up. And I use these ice cream containers and they help me a lot with meal prep with my boys, whether it be a scrambled egg breakfast and it's easy to microwave, or we can just place some of our corn cocktail right on in. And then you just freeze it like that in the cup? Wait till it cools completely and then you just freeze it. Oh, okay, got it. Take it out, microwave it a good two to three minutes and then they can put all their favorite toppings. And my kids are gonna chew on that epazote, so you wanna take that out. Put a lid on it, and boom, done. And for those of you that have gamers at home, sports fan, this way of presenting it to your family, they're gonna love you even more than they already do. How do I know? Because my son loves soccer, and when I make anything on this little skillet, he looks at me with those hungry eyes, but they love me eyes, you know? Aww. Once you've warmed up your skillet, you're gonna add your cheese. Today I'm using asadero, and I'm adding the cheese to the bottom because we like that crispiness, you know? Just an extra touch. You can use tocito salsa verde or your regular corn chips for this recipe. Add some delicious nacho cheese. your corn some more asadero cheese cotija the chili sauce tajin and some lime and you're ready to serve your gamer. And there's nothing more to say other than have a lot of fun when you're making this because Mexican street corn is the absolute best. Buen provechito. Mm. I'm a little scared to bite into this chino. Don't do it. I was coughing up a storm earlier, but for you guys I am. Mm. And you stuffed that one with cheese? Mm-hmm. Ooh, delicious. Mmm. Oh wow. It's time for you guys to look away because I love corn, and it's gonna get dangerous. Like, really dangerous. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We wanna thank all the Views Club Junior. We hope you're enjoying your summer, and on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios!
Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a refreshing cucumber salsa. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you how to transform the salsa for your tacos. You'll need three cucumbers, one purple onion, four tomatillos, the juice of three key limes, one serrano, five chiltepines, or you can use three chiles de arbol, one fourth cup of water, half a bunch of cilantro, half a tablespoon of salt, and I highly recommend you have this salsa with your Doritos. Let's start by peeling our cucumber and chopping them into smaller pieces. And you wanna make sure that you're chopping your cucumbers into small little bits. You don't want a chunky cucumber, okay? It's not that kind of salsa today. You wanna make sure you're slicing your onion very thin and you're gonna chop it into small, tiny little bits. You're gonna take two of your tomatillos and you're gonna slice them into smaller little bits. The other two will be going into the blender and I'll show you what to do in just a moment. And for those of you that don't have access to tomatillo at the moment, you can use tomatoes. But when you get a chance to get tomatillos, go ahead and use that. You can even use the ones in a can. Perfect for this recipe. Go ahead and place all those ingredients. So what we have in the bowl, we have our cucumbers, two tomatillos, and one medium onion uh, chopped really fine, just like you've used club, and just place it in here. If you don't have purple onion, that's okay. You can use whatever onion you have on hand, but I definitely suggest the purple one because it really enhances the flavor of this recipe. Take your tomatillos and add them to the blender. Your serrano, if you don't want to handle the spice of the serrano, which this one, based on the curve, is pretty much gonna come for you, uh, you can use your jalapeno. Add your water. You can use your desired amount of chiltepines or chiles de arbol. Your cilantro. And I'm using a lot because I think it just tastes great with this recipe. It's really gonna be up to you. I'm using the juice of three key limes, so if you're using the big uh, limes, you can use one or two. And for your lemon, just use one. Your salt. And make sure to be very careful with the way that you're using your salt. You might wanna add uh, one full teaspoon and then taste it and adjust because sometimes if you go really heavy with your salt, uh, it's gonna get way too salty, but especially with this recipe. And as far as the pepper goes, it does enhance the spice and the flavor. So if you don't like spice, do not use pepper in this particular recipe. And now you wanna blend until smooth. That'll be about 30 to 40 seconds. And boom, done. And pour your blended ingredients right on in. Just make sure you combine your ingredients well. This also tastes best fresh or the next day. Hey, I'm not playing. It even tastes good the third day. <laughs> it's so good. It's so refreshing. And now it's time for a taste. And the beautiful thing about this salsa is that you can have as much as you want. Super light, super refreshing. And I do recommend that you have this salsa with Doritos. You can have it with any kind of chips, yes, but when you have it with Doritos, you're gonna know what I'm talking about and please come back and let me know what you think. I doubted you for a second until I had it with Doritos. Well, Cloud, if there's something about snacking, it's your sister's gonna figure it out, okay? <laughs> I, I get my wolfing hour where I have to munch and this is pretty light for me. And I love cucumbers. This is a win. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. Now, for those of you that would like to transform this salsa for your tacos, you're gonna need some corn. You can roast your corn, you can use frozen corn, canned corn, it doesn't matter. Just get a hold of some corn. And then you just wanna add your corn into your salsa. Give that a good mix, and I'm gonna show you how to assemble a delicious taco. There's something about a natural green that just makes you feel so healthy when you're eating it, right? At least for me, that's the way that's I feel. That's my favorite color, so I like to see it on my plate. Really? I've grown very fond of green here in Colorado, and I, I love it. I don't know, I might be joining you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful for a potluck, for your fiestas, for your church potluck competitions. Ooh, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> you guys have been winning, yeah. I'm so proud of you. Let me know how far you got in your contest. You can take a corn or a flour tortilla and you're gonna place your carne asada right on top of there, okay? 
Which yeah. carne asada recipe is this one? This is a carne asada marinade that I meal prepped for us. Ooh. Going this from this weekend? Yeah. Came out so this juicy. is all the rave, this carne asada this weekend. It, it rained, so it took me a few days to get to it. I know I left you hanging the last night. It's okay. It's okay. I, I got it done. Next, you're going to place your salsa. Sprinkle some cotija cheese. And boom, done. This taco right here is absolutely delicious and I hope you guys try it and that you love it. Please come back and let us know. I'm so excited for this recipe. And I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, ah. Uh... Really, you wanna say hi to our friends? Hello. He's usually saying hi on Instagram, making tortillas with mom, but. He does. You like that? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I love this one. Here so you go. Please. <laughs> Do you like it best in the tacos or with chips? With the tacos? Mm -hmm. Well, I get my munching hour in. I like it. I like it with the chips and the tacos. I can't pick. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're both great. You can use them for your tostadas. You can even eat this uh, with a little bit of white rice. It's perfect on everything. That's right. It's so mm. good. Mm. Looks so amazing. You having a good summer, baby? Mm-hmm. Thank you. So far, so good. What about you, Mom? Mm-hmm. So I've been cooking a lot. <laughs> you have. Every time I call, I'm cooking, I'm cooking, I'm meal prepping, I'm cooking. I remember those days. What are fun. Make, what did we make this weekend, baby? Mm -hmm. A lot of things. <laughs> no, we didn't stop. <laughs> and he loves being in the kitchen, too. That's so adorable. Uh, both of the boys love to cook, so it's yeah. awesome. But uh, for those of you that don't like tomatillo, um, go ahead and blend it all and place it in here, but it gives it an extra little bite. Mm. Do you like tomatillo, sweetie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> looks like Are I you caught allergic? you guys. Sorry. Mm -hmm. looks, looks, it looks like I caught you guys during your snacking hour. <laughs> this whole bowl will be gone, and I might fill up another one. So if you have the kids that are hungry, that are wanting to munch, this is a perfect recipe for that. Cucumbers are really good for your skin and for your digestion. Mm. My goodness, God child, I didn't say buen provecho. Hope you enjoy your food. Thank you. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. We'll see you guys tomorrow for another refreshing one. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Make sure you stay cool and hydrated this summer. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome amigos. Today I'm going to be making a rotisserie chicken taco casserole. But before we get started, I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing, liking, leaving all the beautiful comments and getting us to our 900,000 subscribers. We're super excited to keep cooking, but first we have to go over the ingredients. For this recipe, you're going to need one pre-shredded chicken. If you don't have pre-shredded chicken, you can use two chicken breasts and you're going to add three tablespoons of tomato sauce. Well, I mean, I can't be in everyone's home to pre-shred their chicken. <laughs> so if you need pre-shredded chicken, Costco sells um, a couple packs, right? Yeah, they sell a big pack, which probably has like, I don't know, maybe about seven chicken breasts in there. That's huge. It feels like it's multiple packs, but yeah, it's one. <laughs> yeah, definitely try it. I'm going to be using uh, the Kinder's taco seasoning, but you can use whatever taco seasoning you have at home. And I also have a recipe for you, and I'll link that in the description area. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of taco seasoning thank you kinders my mexican friends saw me right now they'd be proud okay because i'm cutting a corner here <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and mix all your ingredients someone got a new car today i did get a new car today look at we this love that bowl <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna, joking she's joking it's the bowl you guys you're gonna be cutting the grass in a lamborghini now ooh, ooh. do you guys like this bowl i'll link it in the description area <laughs> Okay, and once you combine all your ingredients, go ahead and set your bowl to the side. 12 corn tortillas, two to three cups of your veggie Mexican rice, and I'll link the recipe in the description area for you. Some pico de gallo, two cups of pinto beans, Mexican sour cream or your choice of sour cream. And for your toppings, you're gonna need Mexican cheese blend, shredded lettuce, and your choice of hot sauce. To your hot oil, you wanna add your corn tortilla, 
And you want to fry on each side for about 10 seconds or so. And a lot of you ask me, do I have to fry it? No, you don't have to. It's going to be up to you, but it definitely enhances the flavor and it avoids your tortilla completely falling apart. It also depends on the brand that you're using. And lately, it's been hit or miss for us. We are finding better quality at our Mexican market. Yeah, our Mexican markets do have better quality tortillas. All right, and boom, done. Place your tortillas at the bottom of your baking dish. Next, add your rice. Add your chicken. Add your beans. And remember, if you don't have pinto beans, you can use black beans, you can use Peruvian beans. <laughs> Whatever you have, make it comfortable for your home. This part's optional, but I like to add another layer of cheese. Add another layer of your tortillas. And remember, if I don't say it like that, tortillas, it's not gonna taste the same, I promise you. <laughs> and you might get in trouble with tortillas. You just might. Oh, I have two extra. I'm just gonna place them over the top. The more, the merrier. And now you wanna bake this in a preheated oven at 380 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. You can place a parchment paper or a foil over your dish to avoid the burning of your tortillas, and that's gonna be up to you. Casserole mom, shut. <laughs> Do you hear that deliciousness? Oh, so good. So what I did with our casserole, like the last five minutes, I just removed the foil so I can get a crispy tortilla on the top. It gives us a good taco crunch. Then you're gonna add your sour cream. Add your finely chopped lettuce, cheese, your pico de gallo, and your favorite hot sauce. We like this one because it's sweet, it has a spice, but not too spicy, just very mild. And boom, done. Who's ready for a bite? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and we wanna thank all of our new subscribers and the OGs. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Hello, and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to make an end of the month meal. What does that mean? That means that this recipe is budget friendly. Now let's go over the ingredients. I really love this recipe because you can get it done in less than 25 minutes, even with meal prep time. For this delicious recipe, you'll need two tomatoes, one poblano pepper, half of an onion, one large garlic clove, a small bunch of cilantro, half a cup of warm water, half a tablespoon of chicken bouillon, one teaspoon of black pepper, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, a pack of hot dogs, and for your hot dogs, you want to slice them up how your family likes them. Some of you like them round, but you know what? I'm making this a little fancy today, so I'm going to cube them up just like this. If you don't have weenies, you can use Spam, you can use Tofu, or you can skip it. This is an end of the month meal, and if you need to use more potatoes, go ahead and use more potatoes. And two potatoes. I currently have my burner on a medium heat and I brought my pot of water to a boil. I'm gonna add our cubed potatoes. And the reason I like to use this step here is because it's gonna keep our potatoes nice and cubed. They don't mash up when you're using them for your isal. So go ahead and continue to boil for another 10 to 12 minutes. Set your burner on a medium high heat and allow your pan to warm up for about 30 to 45 seconds. Next, you're gonna drizzle a little bit of oil and I'm using olive oil today because I want more of that nutty, delicious flavor that your olive oil gives. Add your garlic and your onions, your tomatoes. Give that a loving mix and continue to cook for another three to four minutes. Okay, it's been about four minutes and I still have it on a medium high heat. Next, it's time to add our protein. Let me know what you're gonna be using for this recipe or if you're gonna double up on potatoes. Give that a loving mix and cook for another two minutes on a medium high heat. We want our hot dogs to come up to temperature with all the ingredients that we just cooked. Give or take two or three minutes, you're gonna add your poblanos. If you don't have poblanos, you can use Anaheim or you can use canned chili. Mm, so good. 
Oh, you got here already. I have I have somebody waiting to eat, you guys. You wanna say hi to everybody, sweetie? Hey guys. <laughs> Add your pre-cooked potatoes. Place your burner on a medium heat. I'm gonna go with about a five. Add your spice and bouillon mixture. You're gonna place the lid over your pan and you're gonna to continue to cook for another eight to 10 minutes. And I wanna share an affordable tip with you. Instead of using the two tomatoes that sometimes it can be affordable or you don't have them in your refrigerator, you can use an eight ounce can of tomato sauce and you can start by adding four ounces, which is half of your tomato sauce can and then add more once you cook it. And if you feel like you need more, go ahead and add the rest. But usually it takes about four ounces of the tomato sauce uh, to cook it and have that flavor pull through for a more stewy flavor. Once you get the flavor exactly how you like it, you're gonna sprinkle your cilantro. And if you don't like cilantro, that's okay, you can skip it. You can probably chop a few green onions, sprinkle it over the top so it looks beautiful just like you. And now we're ready to serve. I really love this recipe because you can get it done in less than 25 minutes even with meal prep time. I love to serve this recipe with some rice. That's how my kids enjoy it. Make a little well in the middle. And boom, done. Your fancy dinner is served. I'm gonna need somebody very special that subscribed to Views on the Road to say ah. Uh... Mmm. It's so comforting and absolutely delicious. I like making this isado because once it cools, I can put it in the snack size Ziploc bags, put it in my freezer, and whenever my kids want to microwave a quick snack, it's really easy to heat this right on up. Especially for those of you that work all day and the kids stay at home, this is a good recipe for you. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And I want to thank each and every one of you that was here last week. You made my heart beat. You made me feel so warm and it's about to snow tomorrow. So go ahead and share some more love in the comments. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm going to show you how to make a gallon size salsa for your family gatherings. We have the tia and tios that take the tres leches cake. We have the tias and tios that take the tamales. I want to know who's going to be taking the salsa to their family gathering. Make sure to stick around to the end so I can show you how to make the crispiest chips. For this delicious salsa recipe, you'll need 15 tomatoes, 20 tomatillos, 9 Anaheim peppers, 8 serrano peppers, eight jalapeno peppers, two large onions, one large purple onion, one garlic bulb, four limes, two bunches of cilantro, 10 dried pasilla chiles, four tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of Mexican oregano, one tablespoon of cumin, and if you love spice, use 15 chiles de arbol. I've removed all the stems from all of our chili peppers, I've sliced our onions and peeled our garlic. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a little bit of oil over all our ingredients so that we can get a beautiful roast in our oven. And for those of you that don't have a working oven at the moment, not to worry, uh, you can do this on your stovetop. And while you're coating your ingredients with some oil, you wanna make sure to have your oven on a high broil. Move your oven rack close to the broiler, okay? I ended up using three baking sheets for this process. So, you know, if you have to, you only have one baking sheet, not to worry, just take your time. You can still make a delicious salsa. And you're gonna continue on a high broil until everything is nice and roasted. Make sure to come and check every 15 minutes and I'll see you when it's all done. For your dried pasilla chiles, you want to toast them a little bit until they puff up. Once they puff up, you want to remove the stems and the seeds from them. If you don't have access to pasilla chiles, you can use ancho chiles, but definitely it's going to change the flavor. Once you remove the stems and the seeds in a bowl, you're going to add your hot water and you're going to allow your chiles to soak and get nice and soft. The Anaheim peppers are roasted enough to where you can see the skin detaching from them. And since the skins tend to be a little bit thicker, I'm going to be removing our Anaheim peppers and I'm going to continue to roast until everything's nice and toasty. Cloud helped me remove the stem and the seeds from our Anaheim peppers. And you're going to add your jalapenos and your serranos as they are with the skin on. Let it happen. There's going to be a lot of love in this blender. And we are going to be blending in batches. I'm gonna add our roasted tomatillos along with the delicious juice at the bottom. Ooh, it smells so good in this kitchen. You guys know how I am, I wanna add more, but I can't, so take it easy. <laughs> 
And boom, we're not done yet. We got a few more batches to blend. Once you blend your tomatoes and you're almost done, that's when you're gonna blend your seasoning. So go ahead and add your ground cumin, your Mexican oregano, your salt, and now you're gonna blend till smooth. And boom, done. And now you wanna squeeze the juice of your limes. I'm gonna use a total of four. But if you're gonna need this for to last you about a week or two, you're gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar along with your lemon juice. And now you're gonna give that a loving mix until everything is well combined. You know what I wanna to sing to the salsa? Mm. Beautiful, I just want you to know. You're my favorite salsa. You'll have to adjust your salt to taste, but I gave you a really good starting point. And once your salsa is ready, allow it to cool before you refrigerate it. Or you can take it straight to your party like this. And you do not want to add your cilantro and your chopped onions up until you're ready to serve your salsa. Because if you add this into your salsa right now and you say you need it longer than seven days, it's going to end up spoiling. So you don't want to do that. So that it's easier for me and for you, I'm gonna pour most of this back into the blender so that I can show you the container I'm gonna be placing my salsa in before I go to my celebrations. Cloud will link this big gallon jar for you guys in the description area. Also, if you don't have access to these jars, not to worry, just save your gallons of water. You know how we do it. In order to have the crispiest corn chips, you're gonna have to dry them out a little bit. What I like to do, I like to cook them for a minute or so and remove all the excess moisture. With an uncoated wooden spoon, wooden chopstick, or, or toothpicks, you're gonna check how hot your oil is. And when you see it bubbling, that means that you're ready to fry. I needed something big, so I am going to be frying in my roasting pan. You want to have enough room for your corn chips to be able to move around, so don't overcrowd your pot, or in my case, the roasting pan. And when your corn chips look nice and toasty, that means that they're ready to come out. And by toasty, they look like a nice golden color. And as soon as they come out, you wanna salt them so that that way your salt can stick to your corn chips and it just tastes a lot better. Give that a little shake. And I'm gonna continue with the remaining corn chips. When you're serving your big portion of salsa, you're gonna take your cilantro and your onions, you're gonna add that into your salsa. You're gonna mix it around just like this. And boom, done. We have ship fest in our family every year and I'm so happy you get to join us today. I'm gonna need somebody very special that likes spicy salsa to say ah. Uh, I know some of you cannot handle so much heat, so I'm gonna leave a lot of suggestions for you in the description area. And now I'm gonna dig in. Mmm. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. And I do have a quick tip for you guys. If you don't wanna to toast your tortillas, I understand you can leave them out over your counter or in an appropriate place to let them dry out, but depending on your climate, they might end up absorbing more moisture, so I think it's safe for you to toast them and then cut them up and fry them. 
My right is here. I gotta go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you enjoyed making salsa with us today. And if you did, make sure to tag us on your social media. Leave us a comment. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph. And today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make some street food tacos right in your oven. I have a rack of beef back ribs, but you can use short ribs or even if you have your pork ribs, go ahead and use them as well. You wanna dry your ribs really good with a paper towel. That way our seasoning can adhere to it and just stick to produce a delicious flavor. Using my paper towel so my fingers aren't so slippery, I'm gonna remove the membrane from the back of the rib. Add one tablespoon of chili powder, onion powder, black pepper, and salt. Combine your seasonings in a bowl and you're gonna rub it all over your rack of ribs. And to make sure that every single rib has an evenly coated flavor, we're gonna slice our ribs individually. And you wanna make sure to fully coat all of the sides of your ribs. Once you coat all your ribs, you're gonna align them in your baking sheet. Bake at 400 degrees for one hour. For the delicious salsa negra, you're gonna need six tomatillos, four tomatoes, four garlics, two, you can use jalapeno or serrano peppers. It's gonna be up to you and the spice level that you like. One small purple onion, one medium onion, two Anaheim peppers, and four pasilla chiles. Before we start roasting our salsa, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of oil over the top of all our ingredients. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and take the stems off of our chili peppers. And now you're gonna place all your salsa ingredients in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes, and we're still at 400 degrees. And now we're gonna toast our pasilla chilies right on the stove top. Once your chiles puff up, you're gonna set them to the side right next to your pan in a plate. You're gonna remove the stem and the seeds from your chiles. Next, you're gonna add some warm water to your bowl and you're gonna soak the chiles until they're nice and soft. Our salsa ingredients have been in the oven for 30 minutes and now it's a perfect time for us to switch our temperature to 280 degrees. We're going to continue to cook our ribs for another three hours while we blend our salsa. Start placing all your salsa ingredients in your blender. Along with the pasilla chiles that we soaked in hot water. Add one tablespoon of salt, and now you want to blend until smooth. Oh yeah! <laughs> and boom, done. We have salsa for days, everybody! Add the juice of one big lime, chopped cilantro and onions. Give that a loving mix and try not to eat this, you know, while you're waiting for your ribs to be cooked because it's that good and you're gonna need some for your tacos. When you have one hour left of your baking time, you wanna remove the foil to develop a delicious crust on your beef ribs. And boom, done. Our ribs are ready. They're pretty much fall off the bone. Look at that. Just tear it off. Careful because they're hot. Nice, juicy, and tender, yummy. And I really love how juicy beef ribs are. Look at that. Tender, juicy pieces of beef and absolutely delicious. I'm so excited for you to try these tacos because they're super easy to make and full of flavor. You can serve your beef rib tacos as they are like this, or you can start chopping them up into smaller pieces. And when you're working with ribs, you better off just chopping them up so that you have enough for your whole family. I'm so excited for you to try these delicious tacos. With just a few ingredients, you make some amazing Mexican street style tacos right in your oven. Squeeze a little lime juice. 
I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh... Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. -mm. When you have a soft tortilla and your beef is juicy and tender, you know you're in the danger zone with some delicious street tacos. One of the things I am gonna say to you, if you want a super spicy salsa, go ahead and look in the description area because I'm gonna tell you what chiles to add to your salsa to get you sniffling and wanting more. Mm. Absolutely delicious. If you have a large family, use two racks of ribs and then come back and let me know what everybody said. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you enjoyed our tacos today. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. You keep Make shading this. me in this video. I we swear want. I'm <laughs> Hello and welcome to my kitchen, amigos. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make bistec and cebollado. You know, we all need that good recipe of steak and onions, and to make this recipe even better, I'm gonna show you my tip on how to make this beef super tender, fall apart, but have that lovely flavor that we all enjoy from bistec and cebollado. Today, I'm using chuck blade steak. A lot of you have no idea what those sliced uh, breakfast steaks or those thick steaks that are sold at your grocery stores. It's usually chuck but today I'm using chuck blade steak. If you guys need to ask your butcher for it, that's what you're gonna ask for. And your tip, yeah, we're starting early with our tip. You're gonna add some water, baking soda, dissolve that, and we are gonna soak our steak for about 15 minutes in that water. We like a tenderoni steak. We're gonna be using Onion, and you can use yellow or white onion. I like to add that extra flavor by adding green onion, avocado, lime, garlic, your choice of serrano or jalapeños, a nopal, and some queso fresco. And yes, amigos, I do purchase queso fresco at the store, and I just show you how to make it. It's really up to you to make it comfortable for your home. And you guys requested I have a drink with you so early. Oh my goodness. All the tips and everything's coming now. Let's get a drink, Cloud. But you didn't say make it comfortable for your home. I did say make it comfortable for your home. Oh, okay. All right, Borracha. Get a drink. Okay. Friends, Youth Club Junior, if you see this, this is not for you to drink. This is some sake. I'm really into sake. It doesn't give you a headache, friends. Or at least it's made out of rice. It's very nice to me. Shake it. I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> Oh, you didn't want to say pop it this time? Pop it. <laughs> you say it like the uh, Karate Kid mom. That's pop it. it. I know, I do. I really like these because you could, you know, close it up again. Can you show us the container again, what the name of it is? You turn around. Turn around, Bushido. I'm sure I'm butchering that to our Japanese friends. Let us know how to pronounce that. Thank you. I know this is where you guys can find me at the grocery store or by the refrigerator usually in the kitchen and a shout out to all the new friends that I've been meeting when I go to the grocery store or mostly Costco, the Mexican market. Saludos a todos. Don't be shy. I know it's COVID. You can just wave at me. We've been getting a lot of, you look so familiar. <laughs> And if you guys don't tell me you know me from views on the road, then I won't say anything. But I will. I'll just, I'll just keep my shy looking face and go like that or just won't say anything. <laughs> I do it just to embarrass you. I love it. I do. I, <laughs> you guys know I'm an introvert. I do get shy, but I love uh, meeting you guys. So, salud. That's good. For our seasoning, we're going to be using black pepper, salt, and Mexican oregano. And for our oil today, we're going to be using some olive oil. I've been really into it. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. We like to pair this dish with some corn tortillas. Not just any tortilla. These are stone ground tortillas. Sí, están más gruesas. Mm -hmm. Igual que su uña. <laughs> and after 15 minutes, you are going to rinse your meat. Rinse it with some cold water. Don't put the hot water. Some of you act brave that you're going to pre-cook it before it even gets to the pan. Get those from gray. Yes. Make sure that you have your uh, kitchen uh, rag. Um, your towel. Your kitchen towel. Hey, can I say rag? It's because my mom says trapo, and that translates to a uh, hangju, a uh, rag, you know? Un trapeshon. Un trapeshon. <laughs> so just rinse your, your beef well, and you want to make sure either you have a paper towel or your, your kitchen towel. Um, as Cloud says, so that we can dry it up and season it properly. And boom done, amigos! Boom done! You 
Yeah, these Mexican dishes dance the zapateado girl. I don't know, we have some wolves. Their mouth is watering. If your mouth is watering already, let me know in the comments, amigos. Oh! There's a she wolf in this closet. You know, I love to know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Wow. Oh my howling. Mm -hmm. Men. Oh my gosh. Are you going to tell them about that gentleman that howled at you? Excuse me. I howled too. Girl, that was. That, you, you. Oh my. I'm not even going to say anything. That's for another The occasion. kids are watching. Children don't listen. Your Tia Cloud has a lot of friends. <laughs> no, I don't She's know a why. very friendly lady. She's yeah. very social and yeah. can sometimes get confused when people are social. <laughs> That's why my mom never let you do anything when we were little. Because you were super social. Yeah. And you really just did want to go and hang out. <laughs> Season it with salt and pepper. Take it for a spin. And I'm using the salt and pepper first because if we add the oil, then everything's just gonna slide right off. <laughs> Take your Mexican oregano and crumble it in your hands and sprinkle it on that delicious steak. Woo! Siga la fiesta. Drizzle your olive oil. Poquito porque está sagrado. And then just give it a good little massage. Gentle massage, okay? No deep tissue here. We want to make this. You keep shaking this, me in this video. I we want. Swear I'm out. <laughs> we want it nice. I like nice. to give massages. Don't I mean? Doesn't I do everyone? Too. Yes, I do too. <laughs> I love to give massages, but this one has to be really gentle. You don't want to make um, your beef too tough. We already tenderize it, and it's still very, very soft and smooth. Oh, okay. And now I'm too shy to say things because of you, Scope Junior is here. Follow us on Las Doñas. That's our sister channel. Ahí, se, right. ahí nos portamos mal. We get adulting there. Okay, we're ready to start cooking. Take your pan and place it on a medium heat. You're gonna add some oil, and I'm using some more olive oil. And you're gonna let your pan heat up for about 45 seconds to a minute. If you're using a cast iron, it might take a little bit longer, but adjust to your pan, friends. Once you get your pan to a nice hot temperature, you're gonna add your steak. You can lay it with your hands if you feel comfortable and you have the experience, or you can use your tongs. I just feel that with my hands, I do a way, way better job. A way, way better. Now to this side, I'm gonna sprinkle some garlic. I'm gonna add my chile. And get started on the onion. Let those babies sweat. This steak should take about four minutes total to cook. And I hope you guys enjoy this process. After two, two and a half minutes, you're going to flip it. I add the green onions once I flip it because I don't want them to overcook. I personally like a little lime for the onions. Remember to always make it comfortable for your home. And boom, done, amigos. About four, four to five minutes later, we have a beautiful, delicious steak. This doesn't take more than like about a minute or two for me, so that'll be done quick. Before I eat all that queso fresco, I put some on my. I'm just gonna tear at the beef so that you know how tender it is. Super gentle, nice and soft. Mm mm mm. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Claudia and I absolutely adore you. We're always wishing you the best. And you know, it's not that difficult to make a bombist, as a Views Club Junior says, recipe. 
I see you guys making these recipes. Thank you guys so much for tagging us our Instagram, uh, our social media. Um, it's linked in the description down below. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Just so I'm not being a nasty girl with just my hands, you know? I do. I don't want to scrape any, but like scrape here and hurt anybody's ears. You're so thoughtful. Say ah. Oh, fire. A little bit of rice. How'd you make that rice? Birria chili oil rice. Yeah. When you're using the chili oils to make your rice, make sure to add half a tablespoon of your favorite bouillon and it just enhances the flavor to perfection. You don't have to do much. And wow, this is just amazing. A little bit of beans. Since mm -hmm. she's not saying what she's eating, I'm letting you guys know. Mm -hmm. Next is queso fresco. And it's just a dance. It is a dance. When you take a bite out of that serrano, when you get your beef and your onions, you're going to say it's too spicy, but friends, my mom used to say that it helps with anxiety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to be like, mom, I have anxiety. And she'd be like, "Guess anxiety, you know? Muerde and she's like, un chile. muerde un chile. <laughs> so that's what the chile comes through for. Mm. So good. <laughs> oh, I got the sniffling. That's a spicy serrano. Punky, say excuse me, son. Boys, I have boys friends, you guys already know. Well, little girls do that too. <laughs> Just remember to say excuse me, okay? <laughs> you guys know Mexican moms, we get embarrassed easily. <laughs> we like to pair this with cloud silhouette. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> You're selling Mr. Boombastic. <laughs> you didn't want the extras. Hey, 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 are tacos considered extras? That's, that's that. considered a bonus, girl. That's sealing the deal I right there. I can be geared in with tacos. You know what I was thinking? Our mom never warned you about don't take candy, don't take food from strangers. For me, every single day I left the house was like, don't take any candy. <laughs> don't take any food from strangers. Don't talk to people you don't know. This day and age is don't take tacos from strangers. Eh? But that's a difficult <laughs> one. That you guys are on your own with that. <laughs> Thank you, me. to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'm going to be showing you how to make traditional Mexican enchiladas. And to make some delicious enchiladas, you'll need Wajillo chili. And what you want to do with this chili, make sure that you clean your chili. You take the stem off. You can use scissors to cut through. And you want to make sure to remove all those seeds. You'll need some onion, garlic, salt or chicken bouillon, and Mexican oregano. Friends, make sure to look in the description area. That's where you can find the exact measurements for each ingredient. Fresh chicken broth and some lard. Pork fat, we have oil, you can roll with that. And you can have enchiladas without some corn tortillas. You wanna call them enchiladas, it has to be corn. Queso fresco, finely chopped onion, some freshly shredded chicken. Friends, I made this chicken in the Instant Pot. I'll make sure to share those details in the description area. Our Water is about to boil. You want to add your chiles. Make sure your pan's on about a medium heat. We're going to boil the chiles until they're nice and soft. That usually takes about 8 to 10 minutes. Hang tight, amigos. And after 8 to 10 minutes, you're going to notice that your chiles are nice and soft. Sometimes you can even boil them for about 15 minutes. It's all going to depend on how much time you have. Okay? And since a lot of you mentioned that you're busy, you can get away with doing it between 
uh, eight to 10 minutes, especially if you have a Vitamix. The Vitamix will blend this smooth to where you don't have to strain anything. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have a high powered blender, then definitely boil it 15 to 20 minutes. Add your chicken broth to your blender and all that extra deliciousness from your chicken. Don't be scared of it. Garlic, onion. I'm gonna start slow with the blender at about a one, slowly go to a three, five, and then I'm gonna max it to nine, 10, and I'm gonna stay blending for about a minute, a minute, 10 seconds. And boom, done, amigos. Lo tienes que colar? You can sift this. There's only a few specks of your chile. It really depends on the brand that you're using, how old your chile is. All those things vary when you're making it, but honestly, this blender does a really good job. I'm not gonna strain. That's the part that I hated the most when making enchiladas is to have to strain your chile, so I, I love blending. <laughs> the high power blender? <laughs> yes, I love it. All right. To your pan, you wanna add your lard. If you're not going to be using lard, you can use a little bit of shortening, uh, vegetable oil, whatever you feel comfortable with. Once your lard melts or you've heated your oil enough, about 30 seconds on a medium heat, you want to add your chili sauce, your enchilada sauce. You want to start stirring it around. <laughs> Don't lie, you were trying to get romantic. <laughs> I was getting romantic, but you know Cloud, she wants you to have the best and she wanted you to see the true color of the chile. Mm. And all the lights are way too bright for you guys. So, I mean, if you love enchiladas as much as I do, you need to see, you need to see how beautiful the sauce is. It is one of your obsessions, the chilies. This is the part where you want to season your chili sauce. I'm going to add my salt. I'll leave the recommendations in the description area and I guess I'm too excited with my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> your Mexican oregano. Please don't tell your mom where you're getting your recipes from. We have some moms that have been angry recently coming to us. Um, tell your mother she makes the best food. <laughs> but Let also her give know. her a break. Give her a break, but you tell her that she makes the best food. She did what she could, uh, what she had on hand. Yep. She did her best. Friends, for those of you that are using a little bit more chicken bouillon, that's when, when I added the salt, that's when you want to add your chicken bouillon. You guys know my Mexican card has been questioned, so I had to give you guys the real deal. <laughs> the gatekeepers are everywhere yep i'm going to continue to cook our sauce for about 10 to 15 minutes on a medium low heat if you see that it's boiling too much come in here and stir it often and you can put uh, a lid but if you put a lid on it you can crack it just a bit just like that you can turn your chile sauce off and the more you cook it, the thicker it gets. Now our fresh garlic, our fresh onion was cooked in here. Friends, if you're gonna ask me for a recommendation, my recommendation and tip to you is that if you have chicken bouillon, use that instead of salt. Set your pan on a medium heat and add some oil. We have to fry this tortilla, especially these uh, flimsy ones that you guys find. You this, these are stone ground. What are you talking about? I'm saying because you know those Guerrero white ones that I used last time? They all fell apart, but they were good for me, guys. That's right. And in a pinch, make it comfortable for your You're home. home. I need to the drink. <laughs> That's why it's it. <laughs> I'm the bad kid in the back, just hanging out, drinking their alcohol. Put the, put the foot on the cabinet, though. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not that bad, huh? No, I'm not that bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to clean. Remember I told you guys I don't want to be cleaning. <laughs> you're, bad, you're bad, but you're not brave. Okay, I see you. <laughs> I am very brave. Don't play. Then put your okay, amigos. No, I'm not. I don't want to clean that. It's gross. <laughs> Get it. Uh. <laughs> I'm drinking some water with a little uh, Jamaica flour, hibiscus flour, and some raspberries. Salud. I'm doing the, the 90s frame right now thank you <laughs> once your oil gets nice and hot go ahead and add your tortilla we are gonna fry this tortilla up okay if you have flimsy fall apart tortillas you want to fry them a little bit longer on each side okay okay i'm following you a flimsy tortilla you want to fry dip and roll okay and you want to serve these right away. That's your method. That's right my method. This is not like, oh, we're all going to eat at the same time. You are going to eat when this comes out. You have them line up? Yep. 
line it up like if it's tacos remember how i showed you guys the tacos how i do it okay drip 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 that oil don't fry it like a tostada I'm not doing that you want to add your queso fresco to the center no friends, the traditional ones do not have mozzarella, cheddar, pepper jack, asadero. No, they do not. You can add onions or you can omit them. And now you give it a nice little roll. And boom, done. I'm going to continue with the rest of our enchiladas. Hang tight. Take your tortilla, dip it, and dip it good. And this one I'm going to make with queso fresco and some chicken. Our hearty eaters love it. I'm the crybaby. I need extra protein. There you go. When you use the chicken or even with the cheese, you can add a little bit of extra sauce in the middle for the filling. You just know how I like my food. Thank you so much. There you go. Appreciate it. And you can just roll it like this. So you can have it either flip this way which is a lot easier when you just have the queso fresco, but if you have the chicken, it makes it easier to just roll it on its belly. I like it on its belly, just like me. And if you guys love this sauce as much as I do, ya saben. Nice. Just a little extra. Okay. Que rico. You want to top it with some more queso fresco on the top? Just sprinkle it. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to take the time to thank each and every one of you that has subscribed to our channel, clicked that bell for notifications, and shared us with your whole family and your friends. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Amigos, you can also add some Mexican crema Ooh, to your pretty. enchiladas. And boom, done. Listo. Who's ready for a taste? I think the views club should get a taste. They are gonna get a taste. Say ah! Amigos, before I take this big bite, I want to thank you guys so much for getting the views club to 700,000 subscribers. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Uh, I do get shy, but I wanted to celebrate by eating enchiladas. We love y'all very much. And why aren't you here to help clean? Youth Club, where are you? <laughs> Girl, how many how many enchiladas did you eat? Because your tripas are going wild. Get rid of Winston. Don't put I'm me saying, on Ooh! blast right now. And you know, the Youth Clubs are so sweet. They don't think that I eat during filming. But maybe we should do a, what, what Cloud eats in a day. They would be shocked. They would be. They would be really, terrified. Yeah, you would. I just, um, I need to eat. Mmm. Squirt a little lime. Make a little love. Get down tonight. Eat your veggies, amigos. Everything is just so perfect. Mm-mm-mm. Thank you for my food, sister. I'm gonna help you clean today, okay? Well... It doesn't take me that long to clean anymore. I'm really happy. If you guys notice, somebody said that I look tired. I'm human. Of course I'm tired, but I work until I'm exhausted or else I get bored. <laughs> and it it's okay to be tired. I'm human. I'm getting older. So if I have dark circles, I mean, I have children I tend to, and I also stay up uh, doing things because I am not a good sleeper. <laughs> Those kids are busy. <laughs> They're so busy. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you have a good recipe coming tomorrow. I'm hyped up for that one. Yes, a lot of you were asking me to make it. And you want me to cut the time, not the flavor, and I got you. So good. Which I'm gonna need some. Mm-hmm. Because I've been celebrating. We have been. Make sure you're following us on Instagram and all of our other social media, but we're more active on Instagram. Mm hmm. We haven't been that active, but we will be. I know I'm trying to 
Unpack and organize, girl. I know. Our main reason for being active on Instagram is to repost your recipes. We love to see you cook and feed your families. I do. I love family time. It's my favorite thing. And, you know, I was really impressed by everybody because I think for a long time, family time has been a burden. I have to do this. I have to do that. And for me, that's been like my favorite time. Like nobody can get me away from my family. I love being with my family. So I'm very blessed to have my boys, my sister, my godchildren, and we love all, of, all of my family members with me. And friends, I am going to share something with you guys on tomorrow's video. So make sure you guys bring some tissue because we're going to need... Um, that recipe and some tissue <laughs> and oh. don't forget some bolillos <laughs> sounds good bye we love you to your pan <clears throat> Peter Pan syndrome <laughs> no 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 there's no Wendy's here <laughs> there is no Wendy's here friends <laughs> no 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 you got Peter Pan syndrome you gotta fly you guys else. gotta go bro you, you ready to dance <laughs> I got Get scared no, no, <laughs> there's no oil in here well it's not gonna pop on you it wasn't that, it was... <laughs> Let's just keep going. ¿Qué te está pasando? ¿Estás enamorada? You're in love? With myself. Uh-huh, girl. I have a crush or two, but I'm mostly in love with myself. I had a huge crush and I don't have one. Yeah, Wendy, put the lid on it. Stop, Cloud. You're gonna embarrass me in front of our friends. El lugar del viejo del sombrero es el viejo del bigotón y los lentes. Viene preparado para comer. <laughs> I just caught it, I just caught it, because you're always uh, with that song. Yeah, it's for my tía. Viejo el sombrero siempre la anda buscando. You know what I was look uh, when I was using the queso fresco, I was like, if your tía, I was thinking like, if your tía likes that yellow no, looking juice cállate. in your queso fresco. <laughs> you remember what she did? She was so gross. I know, I love her, pero casquerosa, mi tía. Y no les voy a dar, y no les voy a dar. Y no lo refrigeró, yo no quiero no, mija, Y luego dice, y no les voy a dar, no, porque se enojó porque, porque le dimos carrilla con el novio. A su edad, mm -hmm. mija. Anda, ay no, es un, de, de, no. I don't even want to get into it. No, mija, déjalo. Fui y me dejó ahí como burro sin mecate después de la fiesta. Y tú nomás querías ir a comer al after party. No yo quería ir a comer tacos y, what is it with people messing with my tacos? I'm sorry, I know, I, I won't mess with your tacos anymore. <laughs> Sister, if you're editing this, don't edit this out. The Views Club wants to see your spice cabinet. I know you're not done stacking them up, but here's a sneak peek. Ay, ay, ay. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to make a creamy macaroni and cheese using poblano peppers. Now, let's get started on the roasting process. Set your burner on a medium heat, and I'm using a roasting rack. You guys are interested in these? Cloud links it in the description area on our Amazon storefront. And we are just gonna to continue to roast these peppers until they're nice and charred and that should take anywhere from six to eight minutes. While our peppers are roasting, we are gonna get started on softening up our onions because this mac and cheese with the onions that are nice and soft gives it that sweet, perfect balance that we all love in a macaroni and cheese. Add a little bit of olive oil and add your finely chopped white onions. If you don't have white onions, you can use yellow onions, and if you do not have onions at home, then you can use about one tablespoon of onion powder. I'm gonna continue sauteing our onions about three to four minutes. You do not wanna burn them, okay? And once they start charring, just flip it. Enjoy the music in your home right now. You know this macaroni is gonna be delicious because I've been listening to some banda, okay? Ooh, what kind? Are you gonna tell us? Uh, yes, uh, la banda del recodo, el yaki, anything that, that's really loud. <laughs> While our onions and our poblano peppers are roasting, we're going to boil our pasta. Our poblanos are nice and charred. What we're gonna do now is gonna remove them from our burner. And I've been using this pie plate that's been working for my steaming. And I'll show you what I do. Just place them in here. I place the lid over it and I just let them sweat and I'm using less plastic again. All and right. boom, almost done. <laughs> You'll also need one tablespoon of all purpose flour, 
one tablespoon of butter, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, one fourth teaspoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of minced garlic, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, one cup of half and half, one cup of sour cream, and today I'm using the Lala Mexican sour cream that I highly recommend, cotija Mexican cheese, panko crumbs, take your cotija, place it in your panko crumbs, to your panko cotija cheese blend, you're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna prevent the burning. We don't want it to burn, we want it to be nice and golden. And once you see that the panko crumbs have absorbed the oil, go ahead and set this to the side. Warm water. Friends, this is optional. If you love queso fresco, make sure to get half of a 10 ounce pack of your queso fresco. And of course, some freshly shredded mozzarella cheese. And after a few minutes, you're gonna notice that your chiles are nice and sweaty. You'll see that after about eight to 10 minutes, all that skin is nice and steamy in here. It'll just come right off, okay? So Cloud's gonna put the camera down and she's gonna help me with the rest of them to clean them up. That's right. <laughs> see you soon. We are gonna get started on blending our sauce. Go ahead and add your roasted poblanos and make sure that you remove the seeds, okay? For those of you that aren't too sure if your poblano is gonna to be too spicy, if you see any of these orangey, red, yellow tones, it's gonna to be a spicy one. But not to worry, this cream is gonna make this so delectable that you won't even mind a little bit of spice. But you can cut those pieces out too. Right? Or you can cut the pieces out. But okay. this is how you're gonna tell if your poblano is spicy or not. Hervé's from Sonora. <laughs> Add your half a cup of warm water, half and half, and your Mexican sour cream. And now we're just gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done, amigos. Try to get this sauce as smooth as you can. Depending on your blender, that's the consistency you're gonna achieve, but we want a nice, thin, runny, smooth consistency. I only had to blend about 45 seconds here, but make it comfortable for your home. Set your pan on a medium heat and add your butter. Make sure that you do not run off or do anything else while you're melting your butter because you do not wanna burn your butter. Go ahead and add your all-purpose flour and incorporate that into the butter. I feel like that was a warning for me. I always do that, do the butter and run off, get distracted. I get distracted often, that's the only reason I say that. You wanna allow your flour to cook in the butter for about 20 seconds. You don't wanna overdo it, you don't wanna burn it, but you definitely don't want that raw flour taste. So that's why I'm just here going back and forth, I'm just back and forth. After about 20 seconds, we are gonna add our delicious poblano creamy sauce, yummy. Oh, that smells amazing. And we wanna move quickly here, okay? Just whisk, 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 and incorporate that roux. Once it's nice and dissolved, we're gonna start adding our seasoning. Go ahead and add your chicken bouillon, your black pepper, Mexican oregano. Give that a nice, nice, nice crumble in your hands, okay? Because we have some oregano haters. I didn't know if you were aware of this. You gotta hide it in there. Make sure you break it really, really well. Incorporate all those delicious seasonings. Do you smell that? Mm -hmm. Ooh, amazing, amigos. The uh, Mexican oregano took it to the top. Add our onions and our garlic. Once you've incorporated all your seasoning and your delicious ingredients, we're gonna start adding our cheese. Make sure that you're using freshly grated cheese. If you're using the one that's pre-shredded, it might not Blend so smoothly in here, but it'll still work and you might end up with a little bit of clumping. And that's okay. It happens. At this moment, you wanna set your burner on a low temperature. 
You can also use this sauce right here as your dip with chips. You can use it to make enchiladas. You can use it to make just about everything that requires a little bit of green sauce, amigos. Nachos. Nachos, yummy. Once you see that you've melted your cheese smoothly into your sauce, it's time to add our macaroni. And absolutely. Brought although, to you by Cloud and Kitchen Accidents. Although Cloud wants to be splashed with it. I do. Leave it to me to use a very, very small pot, but that's okay. Oh, I'm so happy you called yourself out and I didn't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh my goodness. You got this, honey. You got this. Moment of silence, everyone. You put your hand up on your hip and then you mix, you mix, you mix. Finish it in the comments, amigos. Take your macaroni and place it into your baking dish. Go ahead and start adding your queso fresco. If you don't have queso fresco on hand, you can use a little bit more mozzarella and it's gonna give you more of a, a cheese pool. We have a lot of queso fresco lovers and they're gonna say, ooh, you should have put a little bit more when you get into that bite. But I'm gonna tell you, keep them wanting more. Don't put any more, just put the suggested amount and whoever gets those bits on how you crumble it with your lovely hands, well, they're gonna ask you for more and they're gonna come again to your house. And they're gonna wash your dishes. Oh, you're so kind. And sweep your floors. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Once you mix your queso fresco, go ahead and smooth it out because we are gonna be adding a layer of panko. My family loves panko crumbs on top of their mac and cheese and most of our bakes. And just sprinkle over the top. Hey, no wonder our food always tastes good. Because I make it with love? You're, yeah, you're in a good mood, you're... You're bumping over here. I don't know what's going on, but thank you. You know what? It is true. Slowly when you're in love or you fall back into love, whatever it might be, uh, your food just tastes amazing. And I think I just, I got a little bit of that mojo back right now. <laughs> We're loving and it. The whole family's loving it. I'm making up a lot of dishes behind the scenes and I'm excited to present some of them to you guys, just depending on how you react to certain recipes that I show you, that makes me comfortable to share um, a lot more that I've been working on, <laughs> which is just a big foodie. I just put things together and it just tastes amazing. We've been snacking and eating. Snacking and eating. Uh, friends, make sure to set your oven at 380 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and place this in the oven for about 20 to 22 minutes. For those of you that like to uh, meal prep and freeze, these type of dishes, make sure that you thaw it out completely. You place a foil over the top, poke a few holes, and then place it into your oven at 380 degrees. And you're gonna you're gonna cook it for about 35 to 40 minutes, okay? So keep an eye on that. The last 10 to 15 minutes of your bake time, make sure to remove that foil so that you can get the crispiness on the top, okay? Sounds that good. was a lot of information, but you guys, I'm trying to prep you for your guys' weekend so you guys can relax a little bit because you. you guys know I wanna relax. you know what I have to do make sure to remove all your dishes from your oven amigos and we hear that Mexicans are not the only people that use their oven as storage space yeah our Irish friends I love how creamy and juicy everything stays. Who's ready for a taste? Me with some hot sauce. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, mis amores. Say ah. Oh, you want it with some crispy panko on the top? Let me get you a good bite. Wait, wait, blow on it. Blow on it. Oh, 
as always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Claude and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope that you're enjoying our simple yet satisfying dishes that we're really now for you. Uh, I want you guys to spend more time with your families and not get stressed out over cooking. And guess what? I want to do the same thing. I love my family. I love you guys. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. We're using the Mexico Lindo Salsa Chiltepin. We mentioned it before, Cloud and I absolutely love this. Just a few drops here and there. Comfort food. That's why I can say comfort food. It's creamy and flavorful. That's what I like about it. Mm-hmm. There is nothing bland. The noodles are nice and soft. You can taste the poblano, but it's not like obscene. Yeah, it's gentle. Mm -hmm. It's not too spicy, even with that spicy poblano that we used. It's smooth. It's almost like a tickle of pepper on your tongue. That's how smooth the poblano tastes in here. It's very, very mild. Or what I consider mild. You guys let me know in the comments. <laughs> And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Uh, click the bell for notifications. We love reading your comments. And I don't know, we're, we're growing the channel and we're here, amigos, thanks to you guys. So Claude and I wouldn't be here without you guys. No. I'd be eating in my kitchen by myself, so it's always good to have your company. Well, we'd be here. We just wouldn't be having as much fun as we do with the Views Club. We love you guys. And Claude and I go on IG together at night. And we talk about you guys. And, and we get excited for your Aww. family. Like, oh Aww. my goodness. I'm like, oh, that looks so good. So sometimes when Cloud's harding your stuff, it's both of us doing it. That's right. And Cloud does have her own Instagram account. Make sure to look in the description area. And you can see my personal and Cloud's personal Instagram along with our views on the road. That's right. For we those of you that don't want to deal with us just outside the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a Las Donias channel, which is a sister channel. Um, and you'll mm. get a lot of miscellaneous things in there. And we have my personal channel. With Girl, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I got lucky. I got that big bite of queso fresco. Nice. I got the big one. <laughs> yeah. It's like the rosca de reyes, right? When you get the little, uh, the little señor in there. The little toy. The little toy, and that means that you have to throw the party. That's how this should be. I don't this know is... what kind of rosca you're eating. I've never had a señor in my rosca, but I'm about to go and buy Como it. Get it? Oh, you make your own rosca. <laughs> I'm gonna That's put. Why. I'm gonna put a groom in there on the <laughs> next for Christmas. I'm gonna put a groom in there to see who your groom's gonna be. Dun, dun, Cloud's dun, keeping dun, things from you guys. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. No, guys, I'm not getting mm -hmm. married. That's very, what you keep saying. But I am in a very loving spirit. She is. It must be her birthday season. It must be. Friends, this is a great uh, dish to take for your guys' uh, bake-off at church. You guys know who I'm talking about. Potluck queens. This is an excellent one to take. And for those of you throwing uh, pachanga, una fiesta, make sure to make this for your families. And don't forget, una salsita. And for all my basic flexing queens, this was the one for us. Mm hmm It's just a few steps. Once you organize all your ingredients, everything else just goes really smoothly. This is amazing. Please come back and let me know what you guys thought about this recipe. And I hope that my cilantro haters are happy that I didn't put any in this. But those of you that like it, add a little bunch. Thanks, Mom. Bye, y'all. We love you. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to transform your tofu. I know a lot of you might be turned off. Tofu, ooh, yuck. Well, after I teach you how to season your tofu, it's going to be your go-to for your meatless Monday. You want to take your tofu, and after you've released all the juices from the packet, you want to wrap it in a paper towel or your kitchen cloth. You want to take out as much of the moisture as you can. I've had it wrapped up for about five minutes and now we're ready to slice it. Take your block of firm tofu and slice it right down the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just be very, very careful. Next, we're gonna cut in half and then another half and another half.
And that's how I get even little cubes. We're gonna go right here. Just wanna make some small cubes. If you go any bigger than this, when you're biting into your tofu, the flavor might not be what beginners might be enjoying, so keep them small. Add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of ground cumin, half a teaspoon of paprika, and half a teaspoon of salt. Mix them around. Take your tofu cubes and add them into your bowl, and we're just gonna coat them. We're gonna allow all that seasoning to absorb to the wetness on the outside. And be gentle because some of the packs, some of them will crumble a little bit more than the others, and some of them are very, very firm. So be gentle. Use Cloud's hands for this, okay? A gentle, gentle hand. And once you've coated your tofu, we're gonna set it to the side and go over the remaining ingredients. Half a thinly sliced white onion, a roasted poblano pepper, a large chopped potato, and some water. Amigos, before we continue with this recipe, make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications, but that's not what this pause is about. This pause is about uh, trying to figure out what you guys want me to call the garlic clove. Somebody says to call it a whole bulb and a whole head, but I'm only using two. So we're gonna need two garlic cloves for this recipe, and let me know what you think in the comments. One teaspoon Mexican oregano, your choice of veggie bouillon, a small bunch of cilantro, about five stems, and your two garlic cloves, and your choice of oil. Place your pan on a medium heat and add about one to two tablespoons of olive oil. After about 30 seconds, your oil is going to be nice and hot and you want to start adding your tofu bits. Continue cooking your tofu for two minutes. After two minutes, stir your tofu, add your onions, once you add your onions, continue to cook for another two minutes, we just want these onions to turn translucent and to sweat just a little bit. After two minutes, add your water, your veggie bouillon, roasted poblano pepper, your potatoes, and your garlic. Once you add those ingredients, give that a good stir. Once you stir all your ingredients, continue to cook for about six to eight minutes. Make sure to come and stir periodically. After eight minutes, turn your burner off. Take your Mexican oregano and crumble it well in your hands. Next, you want to add your cilantro and give that a quick stir. Say ah. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and we want to give a special thank you to all the Views Club on TikTok tagging us, trying your way in the kitchen. You guys are shining. Keep up the good work. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! That's just perfect. You know, as my, my um, godchild says, I'm perfect. This recipe is perfect. If you've never had tofu, you don't want to try this recipe and bite the tofu on its own. You have to pick up a little bit of everything, the potato, the tofu together in order to get the balanced flavor that I'm talking about. That well-seasoned tofu just combines so well with the rest of the ingredients. Mm. And if you're going to write this recipe down, should you write it down with a marker? You got jokes today? Okay. We're she, gonna laugh at it. She goes to the marker, not the market. <laughs> I don't know if anyone happened? it. No, what happened in yesterday's recipe is that I said marker at the opening, but what I meant to say is market. I'm just such an old lady that I'm used to saying the grocers, and I don't know how you guys didn't pick that up. She's trying to update her vocabulary. I'm trying to be more modern.
Cute. I but, like grocers. But I'm gonna just keep it at the grocers. You guys know what I mean. Your market. Hmm. I have a new combo for rice. That if you guys see this recipe, you're gonna want to click on it because although it looks like a regular Mexican rice, it is not. Mmm. This is so good, girl. I don't know how you can just stand there with the camera and stare at me eat right now because that's how good this is. But didn't I get a taste before? Mm-hmm. You want me to eat again? Oh, you got your tasty, but... You want me to sit down and eat? I want to sit down and eat with you. We got things to talk about. We do. <laughs> we love you, Beast Club. Bye. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some quick and easy chicken tacos and the fun doesn't stop there amigos. I'm going to show you how to make that refreshing drink y'all been asking me about on Instagram. What I have here is a rotisserie chicken from my local HEB and all you want to do is you want to just make sure to shred your chicken nicely. A lot of you like to put it in your stand mixer, go for it, but I still like to impress my family by taking the rotisserie chicken and just shredding it myself. It's a lot of fun <laughs> when you engage, right? Yes, If you're it in is. a hurry, then do what you gotta do. You know, the one that I'm using today is from H-E-B and it's the mesquite barbecue. And no, it's not a barbecue flavor, it's just that mesquite, my darling. It's amazing. It's cooked on mesquite, right? It's cooked on mesquite and ooh. Now, did you pick up ice cream while you were there? We don't wanna talk about that, but yes. Thank you, honey. Ooh. Yes, I did. Mm. Oh my goodness, now you're I'm, right. like, I'm gonna thinking about these tacos and ice cream. Oh, oh. <laughs> now with that special drink you're gonna show us. Oh, that drink is gonna be fire, friends. Make sure to stick around to the end. It is gonna keep you so nice and fresh, and the best part is that you will be able to spike it if you want. Yummy. A lot of you moms have been asking me for some wonderful drinks, and that's one that you can spike up. Or things you can put in your adult sippy cup. Your adult sippy cup, yes. And for the chicken, I really don't need to do anything, but I love pepper, and that's the only reason I'm adding a little pepper. If you like any other of your seasonings, this is the moment where you wanna add that. And all we're gonna do is warm up some tortillas, friends, and I don't mean to brag, but I did get the 80 count from HEB, and these are great for making this style of tacos and a lot of other tacos, and you guys know, they're great for everything. I love HEB. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> The other 60 tortillas that were in there. We don't want to talk about that here, but if you guys follow us on our personal Instagram, we'll share more about that. Take your corn tortilla and place it in your pan. What we are doing here, we just want to warm up our tortilla. All you want to do is warm it up 10 seconds on each side, just so that when we fill our tortillas with our chicken, it's not falling apart. And that happens with any corn tortilla. I really like this burner, but why are we cooking on it? We're currently cooking on a burner because we have a lot of friends that don't have access to a stove at the moment and no matter where you're at, if you're at the park and you have your burner, you have a grill, you guys should be able to make really good and delicious food and I love you guys. And make it comfortable. For your home, wherever that might be. That's correct. Once you warm up your tortillas, you wanna add some oil to your pan and add a good amount until you cover the bottom of your pan with oil. We're not deep frying today, but we do need a good amount. You want them crispy, bring on some oil. Don't look at me like that, Cloud. You are gonna enjoy these crispy tacos today. I saw you eating carrot sticks. <laughs> Take your corn tortilla and fill it up. What I like to do sometimes, just so that it doesn't move when we place it down, is I like to squeeze the chicken because it's so nice and soft that it doesn't need anything to bind it. You don't like the way it moves, right? I do like the way things move, but just for this chicken and the popping purposes, you don't want that. I appreciate you. So once you fill it up just like this, you're gonna place it into your hot oil. And when you're gonna place your taco down, make sure that you're placing it down and away. Remember, down and away. That's why you want to pick the thinnest corn tortillas for your tacos because once you're done uh, prepping and placing that last taco, you already have to flip it because they're so thin and everything's already nice and cooked inside. So you're saying it's going to cut my time. It's going to cut your time. Quick but and not easy. not the flavor. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love that kind of cooking. <laughs> Thank you. 
And you see how when you have the thin tortillas, you can just even put them flat like that and boom, done, you know? So beautiful. I didn't know, but now I do. <laughs> when you're making tacos, remember to place them on a rack and let that oil drip off on its own because what happens if you put them on a paper towel, they just absorb the moisture and it creates steam and we don't want that. I'm gonna continue with the rest of our tacos. Add your green salsa. If you need help making a green salsa, we'll link the recipe in the description area. Add your tacos, your cream. Your avocado, your guacamole, your salsa, lettuce. Cotija Mexican cheese. Thinly sliced red radish and some pickled purple onions. Now, for those of you that have been asking me about that drink on Instagram, it is quite refreshing and addictive. You are gonna need key limes. If you don't have key limes, you can use a lime or a lemon, but for those of you that love those tart flavors, get the key lime. I'm gonna squeeze two key limes in here, and clouds I'm only gonna make with one because she doesn't really like it. She likes a drink, but she doesn't like things that are super tart. I like things that are mildly tart. Mildly tart? Mm-hmm. Yes. You're very well balanced, Cloud. Thank you. I'm centered in the lime department. Okay, so go ahead and add that. You're gonna add your favorite hot sauce. The sauces I recommend are Tapatio and Valentina. And friends, I'm gonna tell you something. This is a great drink for hangovers in the morning. Some tajin. But I'm also gonna say, if you have some kind of indigestion situation going on, that's, it's a really good drink for that. For indigestion, yes. It is, it helped me out a lot. It's because I had a lot of tacos that day. I'm gonna add some chamoy. Cloud, are you gonna want chamoy in yours? Yes. Really? I am. <laughs> okay. So now, you can choose any type of mineral water. The best ones are the Topo Chico or your HEB brand. The HEB brand is a little bit less carbonated, but it's so good and refreshing. You're gonna pick whatever flavor that you like. We have the lime, we have the grapefruit, and we have the original. I'm gonna go with grapefruit. Cloud, what do you like? Let's go with the original. I knew it. Such a classy lady. Basic team right here. Ooh, ooh. Go ahead and pour it in. And I will let you guys know that this is so good. You just want to sip on it all day long. Where's my little spoon? Here it is. Go ahead and mix all your ingredients. Perfect. Once you mix your ingredients and you taste it, go ahead and add a little bit of salt. I like it salty because it has a tartness. Hear that? He can't because I'm, I'm salivating over here. <laughs> Are you? Now here where it's gonna get really fun. For those of you that love the regular ranch water, this is your ranch 2.0. We're gonna get really dirty with this. And I love whiskey. But for those of you that love tequila, I don't feel like having a confession today. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna add your desired amount of whiskey. How, how many shots was that? Don't worry about it. Just for our friends, so they know they want to make it just like you. I will make a suggestion down below, but remember to always make it comfortable for your home. I've tasted this. I'm going to add a little bit more lime to mine. Like I said, I like it tart, almost like a whiskey sour with a kick. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> friends are going to ask you to rim it with chili. Huh? Our friends are going to ask you to rim it with chili. This to rim it with chili? It's too much, isn't it? For this the chili's already inside in the tajin. Oh, I can rim it with chamoy. I don't like to rim mine. Oh, for this one, it's because it's on the go. Yeah, exactly. Friends, you can rim this, you can do whatever you want, but remember, this recipe is a quick and easy one. We want to get our drink and our tacos, so make sure that you're adding crushed ice. It tastes way better with crushed ice. And boom, done, amigos. Let's give this a good taste. Salud. I love it, I love it. You know when that lemon hits you in the back? Right here, just perfect. That whiskey, woo! Uh, what do we have today? 
uh, crown black. If you guys are gonna use crown apple for this and that's all you have, make it comfortable for your home, but just a regular whiskey will do. Let me know what kind of whiskey you guys like. I'm a fan of Canadian whiskey. Cloud, what about you? You think Drake drinks this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna get started on Cloud's drink, so one second, friend. You're gonna get two. Thank you, lines. appreciate you. And since you're driving right now, girl, you're not getting. That's right, remember not to drink and drive and also be safe. Don't hurt anyone's feelings, just enjoy your moment and make sure that you're following your local regulations and laws. Okay, how many taps do you want of this hot sauce? How are you feeling, spicy or mild? Mild. Yeah, no te piques. Yeah, just six little taps. You can handle that heat, girl. Tajin, a little bit. And surprisingly, usually tajin pulls through so strong on all your drinks, not on this one. And I usually don't go with tajin any time on my drinks, but with this one, I prefer the powder in there. When it's floating around in your mouth, it just feels great. Don't like pop rocks. <laughs> yeah. Friends, for those of you that are not familiar with chamoy, it is a really um, a hibiscus chili syrup, and it just goes great with most of the Mexican snacks. Don't skip out on it in this drink. We have a recipe, homemade chamoy, if you cannot access the mega brand. All right. For a regular girl. Original. Just a classic girl, aren't you? I don't know about all that. I'm right in the middle, I would say. It's so beautiful. I know. I'm so excited for you guys to try this. I almost reached for the bottle, but you're not gonna have that. Let me give this a final mix and then I'll fill you up with some ice, Mika. Thank you. The perks of working with views on the road. <laughs> Are you happy, Dan? Yes. All right, amigos. Say ah. I'm gonna get so messy. That salsa is perfect, the chicken is perfect. The crunch is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the whole combination is amazing, friends. When you pick up your taco, don't put it back down, just eat it and come back and just dip it in that sauce. And it's just perfect. This is so good and the sauce is just perfect with your taco. You want to pick up anything that you drop in that sauce, in the salsa. So it's your spoon. It's your spoon, it's your tortilla, it's everything. Amigos, you're gonna have to excuse me because I'm just gonna devour these tacos and make sure you tag me when you make them because this combination together is that good. And if you spiked it with a little whiskey, please let me know. Let us know. You know where to find us. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. It's your Thea Cloud. And you know, when summer comes around, besides wearing our swimsuits and playing out in the water, it's time to meal prep because we want to have a lot of fun in the sun. Don't skip ahead because my sister's going to show you some amazing tips to keep this meal well organized and ready to fry when you're ready to fry. Now let's get ready to fry these delicious shredded beef and potato taquitos. To your Instant Pot, you wanna add your water, your chicken bouillon, black pepper, one whole garlic, one onion, one juicy tomato, and two guajillo chiles. Make sure to remove the stem and your seeds. I've chopped the pieces of our chuck roast and we're just gonna add all those pieces. Place your lid on your Instant Pot and seal the deal. 
We are gonna pressure cook for 40 minutes. While we're cooking our beef, we're gonna get started on our potatoes. To your pot of boiling water, you wanna add one bay leaf and your chopped potatoes. Usually I would say to boil this for about 10 to 15 minutes, but today we are gonna boil these potatoes for 15 to 20 minutes. We want them to be nice and soft, almost mushy, fall apart. Now, if we would have kept that in the Instant Pot, we would not have seen those potatoes and we still wanna taste them and we wanna see them. Our Instant Pot beef is done and what I've done is I've taken out our pieces of chuck. We're gonna place that into our stand mixer. And I've also brought along our tomato, our garlic, and our onion. And all I did was squeeze out the garlic because we put it in whole and just use the garlic part. Now you can remove the peel. So go ahead and add all the rest of the ingredients, including that little juice, into your stand mixer. Can you do this without a stand mixer? You sure can, you can do this by hand, but I find that for this particular recipe and the texture I wanna achieve, it's best in the stand mixer. It could be a hand mixer as well too, right? A hand mixer, yeah, that'll work as well. So I'm gonna start shredding our beef just a little bit before we add our potatoes. I'm gonna start low and then I'm just gonna pick up the speed, gauging what my beef is looking like in there. And that's how you want your beef, nice, shredded, tender, juicy. And you want it juicy so that these potatoes can absorb that flavor. Go ahead and add your potatoes. And we're gonna give this another quick mix. And boom, done. We're ready to start filling our taquitos. And this is the best part to taste your filling and see if you need a little bit more salt. For this particular recipe, the beef and the potato absorb all the flavor, so we do need a little bit of extra salt. Go ahead and mix that around. And set it to the side. Before you roll your tacos, you wanna warm up your tortillas and you wanna make sure that they're warm enough and soft enough for us to roll. And I like to keep the tortillas nice, soft, and warm. In here, my little tortilla basket. In this bowl, I have all-purpose flour and enough water to hydrate the flour and make a little glue. Since I am gonna be making uh, meal prep tacos and placing them in my freezer, I am gonna be using the glue for them today. Take your corn tortilla, and the side of the tortilla that you see the little lines is the one you want facing up. Go ahead and add your glue and place your desired amount of filling. Next, you just wanna roll it up. And I have a lot of videos on rolled tacos, so many different ways to roll it up, but this is super easy. And boom, done! These trays work great for meal prepping. As you can see, I place a layer of parchment paper at the bottom and divide by layer. So all I do is place the parchment paper and then I'm gonna continue to stack it up. We are done rolling our tacos and with the Amount that I have in the description area, you get anywhere from 50 to 55 rolled tacos. And what I like to do is I like to place my salsa right here in this little section. And I place this in the freezer. This is super helpful if you guys have family members that work all day, um, if you're co-parenting and your ex needs a little quick meal for the kids, it guarantees that your family is eating healthy and you guys are all happy. Set your burner on a medium heat and if you have really thin tortillas, you might have to lower it down just a tad bit. Can you drop these into the air fryer as well? Of course you can. Okay. Asking for a friend. Perfect. I'm really loving this glue action instead of the toothpick. I, I'm not fond of the toothpick method. I've been back and forth with the Views Club for a few years now and I think that what works best is the glue method, especially if you're making them for meal prep or for somebody else because you never know um, if they can handle placing it in here or it falls apart. You have to have a habit built for that, you know, so it's definitely helpful. And it lends for uniformity. Yes, it does. But I will say with the toothpick method, when you have the holes in there, the salsa gets right on in there. It sure does. <laughs> you're so bad. <laughs> And boom, done, amigos. Go ahead and turn your burner off, and we're ready to serve. Remember not to place your rolled tacos on 
a paper towel or anything like that, you want to get like a wire rack, something similar to this or even, um, let me show you. You can use a strainer or a little wire basket, place a plate under it and just let the oil strain by itself and they'll stay crispy this way. If you put them with a paper towel, you're going to produce steam and there is no crispy roll taco. Place your burner on a medium heat. I like to roast in a cast iron or over the stove top, but lately I've been really liking this uh, cast iron pan. So you want to place your uh, red bell pepper, a jalapeno, a poblano, and you want to make sure that they're nice and charred. But we need to make some space because we're going to be roasting more ingredients. And what makes a great salsa is a deliciously roasted tomato, right? Oh, they're dancing. Somebody's excited. Not just the views club. These tomatoes are ready to make some salsa. Ow! <laughs> Go ahead and place your purple onion. If you don't happen to have purple onion, that's okay. Um, you can use yellow or white, but we want to make sure that they're nice and roasted. The excitement for the salsa. Is yeah, real. it's so good. Everybody in my family loves it. Anybody that tries this salsa is completely fascinated with it because you can adjust your spice, but it's just so mysterious. Go ahead and add your garlic. And the first ones that are going to be coming out is the garlic. So keep an eye on those and let's hang tight while it gets roasting. So that doesn't mean you get to roast me today, okay? I'm not gonna That's not what this means. I only do that off camera. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally on camera. <laughs> Once you've roasted all your ingredients, place them into a bowl. I'm gonna place a lid over my container to allow our peppers to sweat and that makes it easier to peel the roasted parts. For those of you that skipped really fast, we've already removed the roasted parts from our peppers. They're nice and clean and we're just gonna pour all our ingredients in here. All that sweaty juice you wanted in your salsa. It was not the Views Club Junior. They never skip. <laughs> it wasn't the Views Club Junior. <laughs> oh my goodness, that jalapeno is so strong. <laughs> you know, once you roast the jalapeno, it does get a little bit spicier, but it's definitely worth the flavor because you'll know that salsa, after a day or so, it loses its heat. It really does. That's true. So go ahead and add your cilantro. Now, for those of you that don't eat a bowl of salsa in one day, that's okay. Go ahead and add a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice to this recipe, and you'll see that it'll last a little bit longer in your refrigerator. I learned that from you, how to preserve my salsas, because you don't always have lime or lemon in your salsas when you're in Mexico or at a fiesta. You really don't. Somebody uh, did mention that on the channel, and you really don't. You just pour your stuff in there, blend your salsa, and dip your chips and put it on your tacos. It's super quick and easy. But for those of us that do like to preserve it, add a little bit of citrus and that'll help you. Also make sure you salt this properly or else you're gonna lose a lot of flavor when you're making a roasted salsa. So go ahead and add your salt. And now we're just gonna blend until it's smooth. I don't know why I get so excited to blend, okay? And boom, done. Some of you might be asking yourselves, Steph, can you freeze your salsa? Guess what? You sure can. You can even can it, but that's a different recipe. I'll have to show you. Say ah. Oh my goodness, amigos, these are so amazing. Thank you for showing everybody what they look like on the inside. A lot of you asked me for the recipe for the ones that are like the freezer aisle. And I'm telling you, amigos, when you mix your protein in your mixer, you're gonna get that softness. And the best part is that you're able to make a lot more rolled tacos if you mix it with the potatoes. So I use two potatoes. If you guys have teenagers or boys, cause I've been chatting with a lot of moms, we have boys and they always wanna eat. So go ahead and add extra potatoes in there for the filler, and you're gonna fill them up. Or if you have daughters like us that love to eat. <laughs> you guys know Cloud and I can get down. I'm only 5'5 five five and I'm a tiny little thing, but I love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's sister taco time. Woo. It's a thing now, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna eat all of these. This salsa hits a spot. 
And I love this feeling because it's not like your traditional feeling in a way. It, it has more of a, mm, I don't know, what's the word? Like when you go out to eat, that's the kind of feeling that you get and you always wonder what's in there, right? You know, it has that um, melt in your mouth feeling. Yes, that's what it is. And how many are you gonna have on these? Six. Oh good. I'm so involved with these tacos that all you guys get is this. A little side to side today. Today mm. we understand. They're that good. Mm. Warning, warning. This young lady has had three <laughs> rolled tacos and they're highly addictive. But it's better this than something else. Just mm. make sure you're drinking water and you're going for your walks. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to transform three easy salads to beat the heat, stay healthy, or as a side dish. Let us know what you think in the comments. Now let's get started by making a classic dressing. You wanna start off with some minced anchovies. And I know some of you that haven't had anchovies are like, ugh, fishy. No, it's, it's more of a salty and it doesn't have so much of the fishy scent or flavor. I was going to ask. You were? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm gonna be adding two egg yolks. But you can't taste the anchovies that much in the dressing that you make. No, you can't taste it. I'm gonna add my garlic. And today I'm using fancy salt. It's called Malden Seasoned Salt. I love it. If you guys see this, uh, purchase it. It is perfect. Ideally, you wanna use Dijon mustard, but since I have cloud recording today, I am gonna impress her by using some grainy mustard. I'm impressed. Nay, I know you're watching. I know you like that too, girl. So good. <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. And if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. I don't think anybody knows how to say it. Black pepper and some lemon juice. And start mixing. Next, you wanna add your olive oil and you wanna have some strength while you're mixing. And add it gradually. Claude, what's your favorite type of oil? Oh boy, that's that's tricky. Um, it's gonna be avocado oil and uh, olive oil. Sorry, I can't choose, but those two. Those two? Let us know in the comments what your favorite uh, oil is. Mine is Mame because it works to moisturize your skin. I thought you meant for cooking. I didn't mean for your body. I meant any kind of oil. No, in that case, sesame seed. I'm surprised you didn't say coconut oil. She no, can't decide. She's go for it. <laughs> I like my mayo oil cloud introduced me to it. Not for eating, but it keeps my hair nice and shiny and my body nice and moisturized, silky smooth. So make sure that you're picking the best oils, friends, because cloud, I don't, I don't think I've told them yet before. What? This is the first time. Well, friends, I have an announcement to give you today and it just happens to be right now. Um, I'm no longer going to be using canola oil on the channel and um, if you guys want to join me make sure that you enjoy the last of your canola oil and make better decisions for our bodies. Thanks I'm Cloud for the you. coaching. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> Once you're done combining your ingredients go ahead and add half of the portion of your Parmesan cheese. Oh my goodness. Look at how beautiful that crumble is. So delicious. That's why you wanna go light on your salt because this cheese is gonna give you the saltiness that we all love. Next, you wanna add your cooked pasta and today I'm using rotini. Make sure it's cold. You do not wanna throw hot pasta in here. It's gonna taste more like a soup. You don't wanna do that. I mean, I don't know, you might. <laughs> Combine your ingredients. Qué romántica esta ensaladita, eh? It's beautiful. And what I said to Cloud, I said this little salad's looking very romantic. You're like, how? <laughs> That's gross. You're feeling romantic right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Add your romaine lettuce. Sprinkle the remaining Parmesan cheese. Combine one more time. I can't resist. I'm going to have to taste this right now. And when you serve this dish, you can add a few little croutons right on the outer parts. I'm going to need someone very special to say, ah. For our bacon and blue cheese salad, you're gonna need blue cheese and pre-cooked bacon, juicy tomatoes. And if you don't like tomatoes, you can use a red bell pepper. Add your cubed cucumbers, thinly sliced purple onion. And you know, if you don't have purple onion, make it comfortable for your home. Cilantro, candied walnuts. I'm gonna be squeezing half a key lime in here. 
and some ranch. And now just toss your salad and combine all those ingredients. I like to use butter lettuce right at the edge of my plate and then you can add your mixture of your salad so that you can have quick and easy lettuce wraps. And boom, done amigos, we have a delicious blue cheese bacon salad. I have stacks, friends, and these stacks, well, this stack is called a leafy green lettuce stack, mm -hmm. okay? So just give it a quick chop. Boom, 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 and let me hear you say ayo, ayo. <laughs> Place it in your bowl. These recipes can be double or tripled, right, for the week? They sure can. This is my go-to salad, the one that you guys keep asking me for on Instagram. This is my favorite salad, and I eat this three times out of the week. If not more. Hey, nobody needs to know this right now, okay? Hey, I benefit from it, too. <laughs> Howdy, neighbor. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you guys can actually, if you guys were our neighbors, you can see me walking over to Clouds and taking her a salad like at 6 p.m. Hey, you want a salad? And I always say yes, I'm, I'm grateful. Add your cucumbers, and you know I'm a fan of cucumbers, so I add a lot. Cilantro, raisins, and if you don't like raisins, you can use craisins, currants, pumpkin seeds, have a lot of benefits for your body. You need to be eating these often. I don't even wanna say it because I'm gonna scare you guys and I don't wanna do that. I always tend to do that. So go ahead and sprinkle some pumpkin seeds. Sunflower seeds. For anybody that eats food, this is a must in your pantry. The amount of vitamins that are in here are essential and look at that. A lot of B vitamins, zinc, just about everything that you need, minus A, I think, and we said, which one was the other one? Uh, D, I believe. And D, does it have vitamin D? I think A and D is what is missing, it might be, but mm -hmm. no, we have vitamin D. Oh, nice. We're all set. Vitamin this, C? Uh, vitamin C, let's see, guys, yep. Nice, so we just have, vitamin A. We have B, um, magnesium, and you guys need that. You said that you would take this with you if you only have one item to take from your from your pantry? Yeah, if I was on a deserted island and they told me you can only take a few things, this would be one of them. I said the views chili oil. <laughs> I'm gonna season my coconut with it, the fish. You're, you're wild, man. Just you're wild. <laughs> but let me show you how I like to layer this, okay? This is how I like to layer it because the nutritional yeast will stick to it and it just combines differently. Now, if I were to mix a nutritional yeast in here, it just tastes different. I don't know, my, my taste buds know. <laughs> So go ahead and add your ranch. And don't go over uh, two tablespoons, max, okay? Per person. Obviously you can use a little bit less, but two seems to work for me. Squeeze your key lime in here, your citrus, and then we're gonna make it rain nutritional yeast. Yummy. I know that's a lot, but I love it. I'd rather have healthy calories than the times when I just sit there and eat a whole bag of chips, but you guys don't wanna hear that. <laughs> and boom, done with the salad, but I'm gonna show you how I love to pair this salad. Set your pan on a medium heat and add enough oil to coat the bottom of your pan. And all I did to our salmon is sprinkle some salt. And I am using that uh, Meldon sea salt flakes, so lovely. Go ahead and place skin side down. Woo! My favorite kind of fish is salmon. Currently, that's all I wanna eat, salmon, girl. I'm gonna cook the skin side two minutes, and then I'm gonna turn it over and cook the top part for about a minute, and that should be just enough time to get everything cooked thoroughly, and we still keep that nice, delicious, juicy flavor that we love from salmon. And you can see this fish is already asking us, cook halfway to turn it over. And boom, done, amigos. We are all set. Say ah. Mm mm mm. 
This is my current favorite thing to eat right now. Why? It's super easy to make. The salmon gets done in just a few moments. Okay. And it's lightly seasoned. You really just need a little bit of salt, if that. I always and like to test you even though I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's healthy for you. This is a really healthy salad to have. I agree. We get asked a lot about our skin. We eat a lot of greens. Cloud has me eating a lot of salmon and using avocado oil. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I love to eat this salad uh, late at night. I know you shouldn't eat it late at night, but if you do eat a salad, and the reason I like this salad is because it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to eat, and I'm texting with my friends or with you guys on IG, and um, or when I'm gaming, in between gaming, I get to take a bite. So it's just a really um, fun salad to eat. And I'm Cloud9 if you guys want to find me in my, for my gaming. Cloud9? Yes. Mm. Add me on. Are you going to put the link in the description? No. <laughs> <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to make authentic Mexican beans in a pot. And for those of you that want to learn how to make refried beans, which we've been getting asked a lot about our beans, uh, go ahead and stick around to the end. Before we get started with our delicious beans, make sure to rinse them. Make sure to look through your bag that there's no rocks, no stones, and that's perfect for uh, the Views Club Junior when you have to put in the beans. So go ahead and pour that into a bowl. Cover the beans in hot water. Allow your beans to set for 10 to 15 minutes. What this is going to do, it's going to give you the most tender, soft, juicy beans, and it's going to prevent all those gassy bears. And after 10 to 15 minutes, you want to strain your beans and make sure not to rinse them anymore. Just keep them right here because they're going to go straight into our pot. We're going to be cooking our beans in our Mexican clay pot. We get asked a lot about Mexican clay pots and you're in luck. If you can't go back to the motherland, we're going to link a reliable company um, that will sell you these magical little gems right here. Add your salt and one whole onion. Set your burner on a medium high heat and bring everything up to a boil. After you've brought it to a boil, you're gonna place your lid and you're gonna to continue to cook on a low heat for an hour and a half to two hours. At an hour and a half, we're gonna come and check our pot and see how our beans are doing. And if you never had the privilege to cook with any of your family members, like grandmother, mom, this smell is gonna bring you those memories. And I'm glad you were talking to our friends, Cloud, because I wanna share something that I do with you guys. I use some parchment paper. You can use uh, foil as well. And I just place it here so that I have enough of my steam that stays in because these pots do have the little holes right here and I lose a lot of uh, water that way. So I just place it like that. And after an hour and a half, our beans are ready. They're nice and soft. And when you soak them, you see how quickly they cook and they're really soft. Um, before we get started on our refried beans, let me show you how our family likes to enjoy whole beans when they're freshly made out of the pot. In this plate, I have tomato, onion, and cilantro, and I'm just gonna mix it right up. And next, we add our pico de gallo into our bowl of beans. And these are those dishes that the kids don't really wanna eat but they end up eating it because it's so good and then especially because we're gonna have a tortilla next to it. And they end up loving it. Yes, and for those of you that love queso fresco, your queso cotija, your favorite cheese, you're gonna add some of that in your bowl. For those of you that like your spice, you can use your serrano, you can use an habanero and sprinkle it right on in and you can even squeeze a little bit of lime if you'd like. Say, ah! Per cup of beans that I make, I tend to use half of a medium to small onion. Oh, look at it, it's like French. Cute. You gave it curtain bangs. I did, <laughs> I did. 
You know, to avoid the crying, you can you can cut them right by the stove or put glasses on. Yes, but then our friends, <laughs> but then our friends can't get the best view. So oh, that's if, right. This is a cooking show. <laughs> this Sorry, is a cooking show, friends. <laughs> if you're gonna chop your onions, make sure to chop them right next to your burner. I don't mean on it, right next to where you keep your um, your ladles, your spoons. And that's going to avoid you guys crying because apparently I thought I wasn't jealous. And there's a saying in Spanish that if you cry when you slice onions, it's because you're a very jealous person. Oh boy. And I don't know. I'll let you guys know in the future. <laughs> to season your refried beans, you have choices just like everybody else. So for us, we love onions and we love uh, serrano. The best part is that you get to pick the spice level. So if you want to omit the spice, just keep it to the side. Authentic beans require lard. You can use your rendered pork fat with all the juicy drippings in there, or you can use your store-bought lard. Some of you like to use a shortening, vegetable shortening. You can do that, but if you don't feel comfortable using one of these, you can use some oil, which I use often, but currently our family is enjoying uh, the authentic way lately. What's your opinion on garlic? I think it's great. If you like it, add it in here. Cool. And I know what's going to happen after we talk about lard and bacon grease and all that good stuff is that people are going to say that it's bad for you. Um, there's a lot of things that are bad for you, but I think everything in moderation is great. And if you're having lard in your diet and you're consuming more fast foods and that type of meals, then yeah, probably stay away from the lard. But if you balance out more of whole foods, which Mexican food tends to be that way, authentic Mexican food, um, you guys should be should be doing great. But if you're combining uh, Mexican Americanized food, then you guys do need to watch it with this. Yeah, I was gonna say that we were raised to use every part of the animal and that includes the fat. Yeah, and in our culture, we have our teas, we have our drinks, we have a balance of our food the, that helps eliminate this. I mean, I, I, you guys, it's right before your eyes. You see what I eat and I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not excessively overweight. I might be like about five pounds overweight, but I'm, I think I'm doing okay. Set your burner on a medium heat and add your desired amount of lard or oil that you're working with. Add your onions and your serrano to your pot and coat with the oil. Uh, continue to cook for about two, two and a half minutes until they're nice and soft. And make sure not to burn this part. If you burn the onions or anything at this moment, you're going to have to start over. After about two and a half minutes, when you see that your onions are nice and soft, you're going to start adding your beans. I'm going to use about a cup, a cup and a half of beans with our broth. I guess we're going with two cups, friends. Place your burner on a low heat and start mashing. I know you're using a masher, but our family are no strangers to using a cup or a bottle or other devices. Or blender. <laughs> or a blender, <laughs> that's right. I'd like to know what everyone else is using to mash their beans. Or if, they, if you've ever had to use something else until you got right with your money and got yourself a masher. And hey, sometimes you can be right with your money and still not have a masher. <laughs> right? <laughs> Once you mash your beans, you want to check for salt content. And if you need a little bit more, go ahead and add your salt. And I'm using salt flakes. I'll link them in the description for you. And some of you might think that your beans are ready, that these are refried beans. They're not. Our family likes them just like this. But I'm going to show you how to make them refried. It means you fry them two times. So we're going to continue to cook our beans until they're not so um, so wet and then we're going to refry. After four minutes on a medium low heat, you're going to hear the beans are drying up. They're speaking to you. They're speaking to you. I'll be quiet so you guys can hear. Hear that? And you can see just by me pulling them back with a spoon, you can see that they're dry. So this is not something you wanna do on a um, pan like that doesn't work. You know what I mean? It doesn't work that everything sticks to it. You don't wanna do that because you end up having a burnt bean smell in your house and you're not gonna be in a good mood. This will take you about, I wanna say four to five minutes to get to the dryness that you need. And that's when you wanna add your lard. Mm -hmm. This is the pivotal point in the transitioning of the beans for you to add the lard. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, so go ahead and add your lard and you're going to need a decent amount. If you want these babies to shine, 
You gotta add a lot of lard. <laughs> hey, we didn't make up the rules. We're just following them. You want it authentic? Here you go. Well, the rules for lard, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and stir that quickly. And once you add the lard at this point, you can smell, the beans smell different. They smell a little bit more savory. We do. Once you've combined your lard into your beans, you're gonna cook them again for another two and a half to three minutes, and we are gonna continuously uh, stir periodically, if that makes sense. So give it a little stir like this. And then I'll let it set for about 10, 15. 30, 40 seconds. You guys, you know what you're doing. It's your house. <laughs> it's your kitchen. When the beans are blowing you kisses, it's time to stir. <laughs> okay. That's a good tip, Cloud. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or are they whistling at you? I don't know. Well, we have a saying in Spanish, que está tirando peditos. So, that's what's happening. If you guys know what that means, let us know in the comments. <laughs> you're so nasty for Oh, it's true. I mean, it's beans. I didn't want to, but somebody has to. Hasta las mejores familias, mija. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're still here paying attention. I'm going to show you when your refried beans are ready. You see how smooth it is at the bottom? I do. Amazing. So when we did them prior, it was really dry here, remember? Mm-hmm. So you'll see that the beans move along where your spoon goes, your beans go in a non-runny way, in a non-dry way. And guess what, amigos? And boom, done! Our refried beans are ready to serve. As always, my sister Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you guys. We're so proud of each and every one of you that's cooking for your family. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Hello and welcome. Amigos, I hope you're excited for this quick and easy recipe. I'm going to be making chicken and nopales in chile colorado. Usually nopales take a really long time to cook, at least for me they do, but right now I'm going to show you some tips that you're going to be like, oh yes, yeah, we like this. So if you're interested in this recipe, please keep watching. So what you want to do in your Instant Pot, you want to add four cups of water, and I'm using my kettle which warms up the water, just instant heat in here, it gets steamy, you know. Half a tablespoon of salt. I'm using Meldon salt, but if you're using table salt, use one teaspoon, and I'll leave that in the description for you as well. Two bay leaves, and three pounds of chicken. I'm using chicken breast with a bone, and you just wanna place that in your Instant Pot. I'm gonna make a little bit of space here when I add our nopales so they can get completely covered with water, okay? Go ahead and add your nopales, your cactus. And friends, if you're not too sure what kind of cactus you should be eating, I'll leave a link in the description of one of our really old videos where we teach you how to clean and handle your cactus. Make sure to seal your vent. Pressure cook for 35 minutes. I did a quick pressure release and now I'm gonna take out our chicken breast. And you wanna keep three cups of your broth. I know you guys like cooking in an instant pot, but this next step requires us to go to the stovetop because that's how you're gonna get the best flavor. Now for our nopales, we are gonna strain them, but we're also gonna be saving our broth for some other recipes. This is a really good broth to have because a lot of people have a problem with the uh, sliminess of the nopales. And this particular way, you don't have to deal with the sliminess in your nopal or in your broth, but yet you get all the benefits. So I hope you guys like this. For our chile colorado sauce, we're gonna use guajillo chiles. Make sure that you remove all the seeds and the stem. We're also gonna be using garlic and onion. To your pot of hot water, you wanna add your chiles, your onion, and your garlic. Continue to boil for about eight to 10 minutes until you see your chiles and your onions are nice and soft. In this bowl, I have one tablespoon of corn masa. If you don't have fresh corn masa, you can use uh, one tablespoon of maseca and about two to three tablespoons of warm water. And what you wanna do is you wanna dissolve the masa into the warm water. What this is gonna allow us to do, it's gonna allow us to thicken up our sauce and give us just a very delicious not corny flavor, okay? But it's really gonna balance the flavors in this dish, and this has got to be the secret 
uh, to making the chile colorado, the, um, with pork, beef, chicken, whatever you decide to uh, make it with. But this is a really, really key ingredient. This is one of the thickening agents in Mexican cuisine. It is. And this is going to remind you of your abuelita, your great-grandmother, your mother's. And then you're going to understand why your food doesn't taste uh, like it tastes back home. So just make sure to dissolve this completely. Add your broth to your blender. Well, that was a nopal that fell in there. One of my favorite colors. <laughs> your chiles, onion, and garlic that we boiled. You're going to add that to your blender. And you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done. Place your pan on a medium heat and add the sauce that we just blended. Remember, if you're not using a high power blender, you're gonna wanna strain your chile. We have been eating a lot of red chili because of the packed vitamin C. You've got us in tip top order. And you guys know I love chile, so good. Go ahead and add your shredded chicken. And if you guys need anybody to shred your chicken, Cloud is my favorite person that shreds chicken. I mean, look at, that's just a beauty. You I do such love, a great thank job, you. Cloud. I would love to shred chicken for all the Views Club members. You're it's an angel. my favorite job. It really is, and you do such a good job. Thank you. I usually over shred, but you leave a few little chunks. I don't know, we're gonna have to watch you one day on how you do it, and maybe I can share the most perfect Instant Pot chicken that's gonna make it juicy and just so flavorful and then you can shred it. Okay, let's do it. I, I, that's my favorite way of doing it. It might take too long for you guys, but it's so worth the flavor. I agree. Friends, do you like to shred chicken or do you leave that job for a loved one? Let us know in the comments. I don't mind, but I leave it for Cloud. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead and add your nopales. And I hope you guys like the way that uh, the nopales texture came out so soft tender full of flavor and the best part is that it's not slimy i'm not the person that likes slimy nopales i don't like to associate those two together no you do you did a wonderful job these are not slimy at all and kept the tartness <laughs> <laughs> i hope those of you that just want me to pile things on really enjoy this part i'm really going out of my way for you today go ahead and add your chicken bouillon and i'm using natural chicken bouillon and I'll leave a suggestion if you're using just the regular one. One is a little bit saltier than the other, so go ahead and start mixing your ingredients. I did pretty good with this pot today. No jokes for me today. <laughs> you know, the best part is that I haven't added any oil to this. Thank you. People usually like, it's too oily. I'm gonna show you guys what happens with all this magic. And you want to add about half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano. If you're using Italian oregano, any other brand, any other region, <laughs> it's not going to taste the same. Just make sure that you crumble it well in the palm of your hand with the tips of your fingers. That's going to give it the sazon, the flavor that your food needs. Set your burner on a medium low heat and we're gonna continue to cook for six more minutes. Make sure to come and stir periodically. I will be placing a lid over our pot today. You like how I did that so peacefully for you? You did. Was Thank that you. romantic? That was very okay, romantic. Okay, I was being romantic with you. I'm mesmerized. <laughs> If you're not excited yet, you're gonna be excited for this next step. Do you guys remember that masa and water little slurry we made? You're gonna pour it in to this pot. Go ahead and combine that well. Place your burner on a low heat. And for those of you that continue to just cook on high, I'm worried about you. You guys can't keep your pans on high the whole time you're cooking. That's wild. You're missing out on a lot of flavor in your food. Yeah, I appreciate that tip. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, I don't know how to say this other than we're ready to serve. It is ready. Go ahead and turn your burner off. And isn't this amazing that under about 45 minutes you can get 
really good food done. Yes. Okay, I'm pushing it. 45 to 50 minutes, you guys are set. Say, ah. Did you blow on this for them, Cloud? No, this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna show us what's in the beautiful pot? Oh, over here? Yeah, sure, yeah. come on. Okay. I have some frijoles refritos, some refried beans. And back here in this little ollita, I have some uh, oregano rice. If you guys wanna know what I placed in there, I'll leave it in the description, but you guys say the videos are too long, so I really don't show you guys the exact things anymore. But I think it seems to be working, right? It works. Thank you for sharing. This is a perfect dish for comelones, people that love to eat because it is so filling and there's a lot for them. So this is my bowl. This is your bowl. Thank you. Because I can be greedy. Whoa, that looks amazing. A quien se le antojó los frijoles. Your beans are bomb. My beans are bomb. I agree. I'm using basmati rice today, so just make sure to fluff it up when it's done cooking. Fluffs up beautifully. Say ah. Mmm. That's so good. I love when you shock yourself, even though you've made this before, but when you take your first bite, you're like, oh, wow, okay. Okay, we had this with pork this past week, a few days ago. <laughs> but it's so good, we can't stop eating it. We can't. You feel full mm. of energy after you're done eating with eating this beautiful. It doesn't mm. feel so heavy and the cactus is so good for you. You know what this feels like? Like what? Like love, like a hug, like something warm. That's what it feels like. Well, this is my actual favorite food. So I'm grateful today. The nopalitos? Nopalitos with carne and uh, any kind of carne and the chile rojo. I know some of you like your guisados a little bit soupier or thicker. And if you're gonna go that route, go ahead and add five cups of your broth. Do not throw your broth out. Use it to make your rice. It is absolutely divine. And friends, this dish is stellar. For those of you that are scared of nopales, this is a perfect dish for you to try it for the first time or introduce it to your family. And I will tell you this, my selective eater loves this dish. He loves the nopales cooked this way. And it's not spicy. <laughs> That's true, it's not spicy. Savory. We have somebody in our family that can't have any kind of spice at the moment, and it's not spicy at all. You guys are good to go. So what I wanna share with you guys, the chiles that I used are called El Venado, and I use their corn husk for our tamales and I did not like it, but I've been using their chile huaquillo and it's absolutely great, especially for those that don't like the spice. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and give them a go. But I'm gonna tell you this, this dish right here is so filling that you don't even think about rice or beans. And I know those are usually the favorite, but it's, it's stellar. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We want to give a special hello and welcoming to all the new moms. We know what happened during quarantine. We know that there's a lot of babies out there, so I know it gets hard. Be patient, take a deep breath, take at least one hour to yourself every day somehow. And friends, those of you trying the Tres Leches chocolate cake, please come back and leave us some feedback. A lot of you are having a difficult time, and some of you might actually nail it. And on that one, amigos, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Hello and welcome. I'm super excited to show you how to make this fully loaded strawberry key lime agua fresca. I'm using a five gallon jug for our agua fresca today. If you're interested, we're gonna link all the details in the description area. And friends, yes, it does come with a little lid and a ladle. For this refreshing agua fresca, you'll need 125 key limes. You wanna make sure to squeeze all that juice. Add your key lime juice to your sugar and stir until it's completely dissolved. Once you dissolved your sugar into your key lime juice, go ahead and sprinkle a pinch of salt, hardly anything. And what that pinch of salt is gonna do is just gonna help us balance the sweet flavors in our agua fresca. You'll need four pounds of fresh strawberries, 
You'll need a five pound bag of frozen strawberries. Chop one carton of strawberries into little bite-sized pieces if you like having fresh fruit in your agua fresca. You're also gonna need four gallons of fresh water. We're gonna be working in batches because this is a large quantity of agua fresca. Go ahead and add water to your blender. Add about two to three cups of your strawberries. Make sure your water is filled to the max. And now you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Give that a little stir and pour that right on in your jug. Anything that's left over, I'll just pour a little bit of water and mix it and mix it and mix it. You guys know Cloud likes when someone pours sugar on her, so long as it's not hot. <laughs> <laughs> Take your sifter and just pour your blended ingredients right on in. Woo! Ooh, it's good. And it's not spilling on the outside, it's just pouring everywhere. It's an illusion. That's exactly what's <laughs> happening. It's an illusion. I like how you double check though. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Amigos, mi casa es su casa right now. We're just making it comfortable. It's pretty easy to do and quick and that's exactly how you need to do it. Boom, boom, and boom, boom. And friends, as I was saying, mi casa es su casa, but I'm an introvert. Just take it easy on my little soul. So don't invite yourself over? Without <laughs> telling me, I won't open the door. I'm that lady that won't open the door. <laughs> I know, I'll sit there watching me outside your window knocking. <laughs> Love it. Le encanta, le encanta. Once you're done straining, go ahead and add your strawberries. And if it looks a lot less in here, not to worry, I'm gonna show you where um, the other gallon of water went <laughs> in just a moment. Add your ice. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. Friends, these are the bottles that I'm using uh, to make some fresh drinks for my family, or if you guys wanna sell, these are great. They're made out of glass, and they'll also be linked in the description area. Amigos, I have a tip for you for this agua fresca. When you're squeezing your key lime juice, don't squeeze too hard because you're gonna get too much of the zest out and if you add too much zest to this agua fresca, you are gonna make it bitter, you're gonna ruin it and you're gonna have to start all over and that's not something you wanna do with such a fine agua fresca. This is the bougie agua fresca, it's the fancy one, okay? It's la niña fresa. So be careful with the way that you're squeezing. The other thing that I wanna share with you guys is that I did go heavy on the sugar for this one but I know a lot of you like it a lot sweeter. So if you're gonna do that, you're gonna have to add uh, about 10 key limes, one cup of sugar, mix it around, dissolve it well into that syrup that we showed you earlier, and then add it and mix and start that way because if you just add your sugar, it's gonna not dissolve well in here and the key lime juice is just not, it's just not gonna do what it's supposed to do. It's gonna change the texture and the flavor. So please keep those things in mind when you're making this agua fresca. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Time to check on our rice. Ooh. Hello and welcome to The View's Kitchen. Happy Taco Tuesday, amigos. Today we're gonna be making some quick chicken tacos with the chorizo seasoned rice. But before we get started, I wanted to ask you guys something that's dear to my heart. It's been brought to my attention that our Tohono O'odham Nation friends are going through something they are going through the parts where nobody wants to go through, where you have to protect your sacred lands and your water. And you guys have been with me for a while. You know how important I think water is. And for those reasons, I would like to ask you guys to keep, you, to keep our friends in your prayers and meditations this evening before you go to bed so that they can continue to keep their lands and their water and honor their ancestors. Now that I said that, because it's really important, it's so important, Cloud's gonna put a link in the description area and she's gonna pin one for those of you that wanna look a little bit further into it. Um, and yeah, it's gonna get serious, friends. But your prayers are gonna be needed. Now let's go over ingredients. Corn tortillas, thick cut bacon, chopped chicken breast. To season our chicken, we're gonna need some cumin, finely chopped garlic, butter, salt to taste, and thinly sliced onions, short grain rice. For the rice seasoning, you're gonna need garlic powder, 
onion powder, Mexican oregano, bay leaf, guajillo chili powder, ground cumin, black pepper, and I'll come in close for this one, friends. A pinch of thyme and a pinch of clove, and that is ground clove, the seasoning. Tomato chicken bouillon. To the hot water that you're gonna be using for your rice, pour your tomato chicken bouillon and stir until it's dissolved. The color's different. Are you using the organic or the natural one? This is a, the natural one. Oh, okay. The natural one. Still gives a good color. It's like carrot juice. It really does look <laughs> like carrot juice and it smells so good. It's ready for some soup. <laughs> if you guys want a good uh, recipe on carrot and celery juice, we have one on the channel. We'll, we'll, sure we'll link it. it. We'll link it. It's so refreshing as well. Okay, set it to the side. Friends, for those of you that don't like to grind your own chile just like we do it over here, it's okay. These two brands have been working and they also sell Guajillo chili powder, but for those of you that like spice, you can use the Arbol and you can use whatever, you know, make it comfortable for your home. So, not good. sponsored, not sponsored. No, friends, we're not <laughs> we're not sponsored, but we thank you all that have purchased on Am on Amazon as it does provide for our family and we're grateful. And it also helps us link and give you guys ideas to make it easier and comfortable for your home. Gracias. Chipotle in adobo sauce and sour cream. My pan is on a medium heat. I'm gonna cook our bacon. until it's nice and crisp, okay? Depending on the bacon that you're using, it's gonna vary in time. So I'll give you guys more of a look and how long it took me uh, for a thicker cut of bacon, okay? You with me, Claude? I'm with you. All right, she's here, guys. I know you've been missing her, her chats on here, but she's here today. What, you drinking water, not coffee? She's awake. <laughs> I'm awake, but for those of you that don't know, I have other projects that I work on, and sometimes they keep me up late, and I'm tired, and I'm also a mom of a teenager and an adult child, and that's a lot of work. And you do have very well-behaved children, even my teenage godson, he's just a beauty. He's such a blessing, cute he, boy. He really is. Papa, have you ever watching this? Just know that I love you with all my heart. Aww. <laughs> I love you, Papa, and I love your appetite. <laughs> Okay, friends, my bacon, it's my bacon because it's going to my belly. <laughs> it's good. It, our belly. I can't even think straight. It smells so good in you here. You stand corrected. Our belly. <laughs> our belly, friends. Uh, it took five minutes, okay? So we're just going to scoop this out. And I lowered my temperature to a low heat just so that I don't burn our little fat that we have going on here. I don't want to overdo it. Now I'm gonna take some of this bacon fat and I'm gonna save it to the side because we're gonna need it for our rice, okay? Now let's get started on our rice. Be very careful, no views club junior doing this unless you're a teenager and your parents have already helped you out, okay? I know a lot of kids sneak and watch our videos and just know you're the reason why I don't curse as much anymore, so thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you guys. Okay, and I'm gonna keep a little bit left on the pan because we're gonna need that for the chicken. Now, for those of you that don't eat swine, pig, you guys don't like that, you guys can substitute with oil and continue to shine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so she's saying the bacon is not the deal breaker, and <laughs> I've never heard you say swine, so I'm a little shocked right now. But We hey. had one of our friends that said, I don't eat swine, so I know she likes that word, and okay. it's a funny word to me. It makes me giggle. It made me giggle, too, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> I love thick cut bacon, it's so good. Yeah, that's really, really good. It has the delicious flavor. Mm -hmm. Add your bacon fat. That's about two tablespoons, friends. We have our pan on a medium heat. Now add your rice. Make sure to coat all your rice with that delicious fat. You know, growing up, friends, my mom didn't really use much oil. She used a lot of uh, bacon fat and beef fat to cook. She did.
and all the broth that came with it. What mm -hmm. is it a process? Mm -hmm. My mother used every ounce of the animal, like it was everything. Yeah, <laughs> everything. Nothing went to waste. We're gonna be here just, you know, going back and forth on a medium heat until you see our rice turn a golden color, okay? We're gonna make it go from that clear looking to a solid white and then it'll transition into a drier, crispy, golden color, okay? Hang tight. It's been four minutes and our rice has started to transition from that clear rice color to the solid white and some of them have already started getting golden. So I'm gonna be here two, two and a half more minutes. Where? I don't see any golden ones. Maybe my right vision is... Oh, okay. It's it's a few, maybe a hundred grains in here. Okay. Okay, to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it in the description area. <laughs> no, no, don't play, don't start. You guys are pushing it with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, you put the stems of the cilantro. Tell but us how many... <laughs> no, well, I would do it, but don't, guys. Don't make me do that. I we... have a lot of homeschooling to do. <laughs> don't question our love. Our plate is really full right now, okay? We a do lot. love you. <laughs> I do love you guys. It's just, you know, got a lot of things on my plate right now. And I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, about six to seven minutes, you're going to get a good toasty color. And before it starts to burn, lower your temperature and we're going to start adding our seasoning. What did you just add? You want me to go through every single one of them? Cloud's playing jokes today, guys. Oh my gosh, the, the aromas in the air when the <laughs> spices hit the pan. You can't function, girl? No. <laughs> You're gonna move quickly at this part, okay? You shouldn't be here more than about, I wanna say 15 seconds. Just enough to toast it, you don't wanna burn. Oh, it smells so good. Hey, you've been here longer than 15 seconds. All right. Yes, but I have it on a very, very low heat and I know what I'm doing, but. No sé qué es esto. <laughs> I don't know what that was, friends, but take it out. I think my seasoning got clumpy on that one. <laughs> it's gonna get loud and steamy. And don't forget to clean up as you go. This is for our onion lovers. You're gonna take a little bit of the shredded onions and shred them really, really thin, okay? And you're gonna place them over the top. And yeah, you can turn your hat backwards like the movie when you're, before you drop the onion in here. <laughs> <laughs> like over the top? Yeah. You're flexing? Yeah, and now you wanna sprinkle in that bacon. And for those of you that don't have bacon, you can do this with chorizo and you can amplify the flavor with the seasoning as well. Or, you know, make it comfortable for your casita. Oh, I know you're in a lovey-dovey move. You're saying casita. <laughs> I'm speaking baby. Baby oh, talk. Oh, my goodness, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to take our Mexican oregano. Wake up those flavors, everybody. And we're just going to sprinkle it over the top just like that. Okay. Put a lid on it. And make sure it's boiling before you put the lid on it and set it on a low heat. And while our rice is cooking, we're gonna get started on our chicken. I have my pan on a medium hot heat because I wanna sear our chicken quickly. If you overcrowd your pan, it's gonna steam. But friends, when you do so much home cooking, sometimes you will get steamed chicken when you meant to make seared and it's okay. So we're just gonna roll with this. Let's see what happens.
that beauty? Look at that. Wonderful. So once you have all your chicken on your pan, which is going to be cooked here in the next four minutes, you want to add your bit of butter. If you're watching your cholesterol and you're watching your diet, you don't have to add the butter. Maybe just add one little cube, you know, for flavor. Give that a quick mix. Okay, I see you with your oven mitt, looking all cute. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I actually really love it. It looks cute. It doesn't get my pattern dirty, and it's easy to clean. Like your grandma's sofa with a plastic over it. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. Okay, so when you see the little liquid from your uh, chicken, turn up your heat a little bit, okay? That's what I'm doing. And I'm moving it often just so that the steam can come out and I can still get some of that, you know, Searing that I want for my chicken. Our chicken is pretty much almost cooked. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the remaining uh, seasonings, friends. Go ahead and add your onions, your garlic, cumin, salt to taste. Let's give this a good mix. Mmm, that smells so good. It really does. Cumin and chicken. I don't know, best friends. Hey, I thought we were best friends. You know. We'll let them have their moment. <laughs> oh, it smells amazing in here. Wow, that chicken breast was really, really juicy. All right, friends, I'm gonna continue to cook this until I can't see any of this broth right here and I get a good sear on our chicken, so hang tight. While I'm getting that good crisp on that side of the chicken that I want, I'm gonna place a few of my tortillas here just so that they can start getting steamy and soft, okay? See, they're nice, soft, little soft tortillas. Woo. Yeah, that's what we want. All right, I'm turning it off. Our chicken is nice and done. We got a good sear on a few of them. Now let's check on our rice. You ready for it? I'm ready. I learned how to make my rice from you. Thank you. Nice and fluffy. I'm still using that short grain big bag of Costco rice, friends. And if you're cooking it on the stove top, it cooks a little bit different. But it does give you more of that restaurant look for your rice that everybody asks for. Mm -hmm. It's the short grain. Oh, you mean that doesn't break up the, explode the rice grains? Yep. And you guys can see it's all nice and fluffy and delicious. Now let's assemble our tacos. Add your water, sour cream. For those of you that don't have sour cream, use a little bit of mayo, but don't go as heavy as you would with sour cream. <laughs> your chipotle with adobo sauce. If you wanna keep this in the fridge for a few days, you can add a little bit of lemon juice or a little bit of vinegar. And by a little bit, I mean like half a teaspoon or something. And we're just gonna blend until smooth. guys hear that sound doesn't that remind you of an uncle or a tia or a family member that wanted to start their car and it was around the time when all they would sell was lemon cars and if you couldn't afford like the dealership card those are the cars your family would have to get but 
everybody was always trying to get their starter and it wouldn't work and that's what that just reminded me of. The jump starting? The jump starting. It was intense, the cars back in the days. You guys have it good. We have it good. <laughs> I know, when they would push the car behind us, they would even put us behind the steering wheel to start yep, it. Yep, yep. <laughs> Press the wild. gas, pump the gas when you start it and we're young, having to do our business, but that, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that's wild and to think that my children don't even want to drive or learn how to drive. Mm -mm, yeah. That's okay. I don't know been driving for years <laughs> and that that's that scene in the karate kid where she's like pop it and i'll pop it what is she <laughs> when she's having him push the car in front yes. of his girlfriend's house at that fancy house oh my gosh <laughs> yeah it was kind of it was kind of like that what i'm trying to tell you guys and then the car breaking down when your mom's picking you up at in high school or something forget oh that you know God. my mom picked me up or dropped me off with the towel on her hair on her head because her hair was wet. Oh my gosh, I was so embarrassed. She did that in front of my crush friends. I poor thing. She had to get to work and she was. I know it's okay, on the other mom. Side of the town. It's okay, but I was embarrassed at the time. Not we anymore. appreciate you, but you should have put us in the city bus. bus you should have dropped me off at the corner <laughs> that day, mom. The bus pass. <laughs> Take your tortillas. Okay, that's me and that's you, Cloud. Aww. <clears throat> and yes, we have sisterly love even off the camera, you guys. Uh, yeah, we do. We do more giggling than anything. And then just just add your desired amount of chicken. Who wanted that little piece? It was I. That was cheap, guys. That was just <laughs> a little piece. Mmm, with flavor. <laughs> it was a used club, Junior. <laughs> it was. <laughs> okay. And this is where you want to be very generous with your with your tacos. I thought you guys would like this combo because you're like, where's the sour cream stuff? That's how they tell you, like they're surfer. Uh, surfer uh, like you guys are surfer. Like I consider like those Baja tacos. That's what you guys sound like to me. Okay. And then you're going to add some lettuce. The kids that hate tomatoes are going to love this recipe. And the kids that love tomatoes just dice them up and put them. Yep. Right on in there. <laughs> You're all gonna be pleased with that one. Okay, and I like the cotija. Cotija? The cotijation. Cotijation. Pour a lot of that stuff on here. And we're not done yet with that sauce. I'm gonna tell you, oi! Wanted the whole sauce. <laughs> Just add a little bit more to the top, okay? That was my Valena, she wanted all that sauce. Was that you, girl? <laughs> Quien fue? Who was it? Shout out to all our friends from the Dakotas, still trying to make do with whatever you have on hand to make Mexican food. We love you. It looks like the mouth of the tiger is eating the food. Oh, really? <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> friends, I know we came for, for the tacos, but this rice is out of this world. It's divine. Say ah. Uh. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I absolutely adore you. We love you. You're in our prayers and meditations. And remember, without the desert, you wouldn't have Cloud and you wouldn't have Stephanie. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Hello and welcome to The Views Kitchen. Happy Sunday, amigos. Today, we're gonna to be making Mexican-American white sauce chilaquiles. Now, if you guys love those baked burritos we made, you're absolutely gonna love this recipe. Now let's get started by going over our ingredients. Corn or flour tortillas, heavy whipping cream or half and half, cotija cheese, roasted green chili, corn, sour cream, eggs, butter. For our seasonings, you're gonna need chicken bouillon, onion powder, garlic powder, white pepper, and cumin. Your favorite cheese blend, and green onions.
And after five to six minutes of frying your tortillas, you're gonna get nice little crispy corn chips, okay? Once you take your corn chips out of the oil, you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt. But if you're watching your sodium intake, you don't need to do this. I'm gonna continue frying our flour uh, tortillas into little chips, and these get fried quickly, especially if your oil is at the right temperature. Just make sure that there's no smoke coming out, and move quickly, friends. So in about two, two and a half minutes, we have our flour tortillas nice and fried. Now let me know in the comments, who's gonna be asking for the combo plate? I'll let you know right now, it's gonna be me. Once your butter has melted, you're gonna add your heavy whipping cream. your sour cream. Now let's add all of our seasonings. Once you've added all your seasonings, continue to mix all your ingredients. Once you've mixed all your ingredients together, we're gonna continue to cook on a medium low heat for four minutes. Make sure to come by and stir occasionally, okay? While I continue to cook our sauce, we're gonna get started on a few eggs. And you wanna cook your eggs right before you're gonna serve it to that particular person, okay? Ooh, ready, ready. Now, if someone in your house has a preference for scrambled eggs, go ahead and make a scrambled egg over this. This is exactly how I like my eggs. Boom, done. Our sauce is about done. Now I'm gonna assemble our chilaquiles. Add your desired amount of corn chips. Next, add your desired amount of sauce. Sprinkle a little bit of your green onion. In my oven safe dish, I'm gonna place this in the broiler just until my cheese melts, okay? And my broiler will be on high because I want it to bubble and ooze here on the top. And now we're just gonna add our egg. Who's ready for a taste? As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the absolute best. We absolutely adore you. And we have a special little shout out to our Views Club Junior. We know that you're headed out to school. We want you to stay safe, keep your mask on, wash your hands, and no kissing. 
but we do appreciate you guys being there for your family and being patient with your parents. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Oh, yes. Say ah! Uh. having in a plate you are all in for quite a treat it feels like those times when it's Sunday and you go out to eat with your family for brunch that's exactly what this is it's a brunch date it's eight Friends, I'm super excited for you guys to try this recipe because I know a lot of you are new to cooking and some of you are not too familiar with a lot of things, but this is a quick and easy recipe that when your suegra comes over or your family comes over, you can use a bunch of tortillas, fry them up, and the sauce is very easy uh, to adjust for a big family or a small family. So I hope you guys like this special treat. And now I have to head on over so that I can eat with my hungry family. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The View's Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a wet, smothered burrito with a classic green chili sauce. Let's get started on this recipe, friends. Add your pre-boiled tomatillos. You guys have seen me boil and peel them way too many times, we don't need that. And you wanna add those first because they have so much water content that they're just gonna blend everything that goes in there and you won't need water, you won't need broth, you won't need anything. And tomatillos in a can? Tomatillos in a can are perfect. They're extra juicy. You're gonna throw your cilantro, your onion. Thank you for your approval. Garlic. Don't get scared. All the ingredients are in the description area. If you can't find it, look at the title, click that arrow, and it's gonna expand a whole new world for you. <laughs> and shout out to my New Mexico friends. We have some spicy hatch chilies. But if you can't handle that kind of spice, you can use poblanos and you can use Anaheim peppers. Oh no, I see you say that serrano. That's the the serrano. <laughs> the serrano. That's the one that caused my issues. Yes, there's a serrano in here. You can use jalapeno. You can use Excuse whatever me. spice you like for this particular dish. You have to make it comfortable for your home. for your home exactly. Okay, now it's time to blend. And we're gonna blend until it's smooth. And by smooth, that it's nice and soft and silk. No, I'm just kidding. Just blend it to the smooth. <laughs> oh, it's not a boom done yet? It's not a boom done yet. Okay. We want to make sure we blend all those ingredients. At this moment, you're gonna decide. If you have fresh chicken broth, you can use about half a cup of fresh chicken broth in here, or you can skip it, okay? But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use some chicken bouillon. And this is optional. You can continue this way, or you can continue with some heavy cream, crema fresca. If you have milk, use that. If you have evaporated milk from your, um, your pantry, use that. Make it comfortable for your home. These recipes are super easy to change up in just a few seconds. Don't feel limited. Add your water. So you're okay with people being inspired by these on the road? I am enamored that you guys are inspired by me. Cloud and I have been noticing how much we haven't just inspired here on YouTube, the recipes, but also on other social media platforms. I can see what our food looks like and it's, it's an honor. It's an honor to be able to go through the through the feed and see so many recipes just like the ones we make here for you guys friends thank Woo! you <laughs> now blend and boom done let's check the consistency so that you know where you need it at home now if some of you like it chunky there's no problem with that you can do whatever you want it's your kitchen Ooh, okay it's not too runny and it's not too thick it's just perfect All right, let's finish the sauce. Add your butter, and for those making it comfortable for your home and are using margarine, go for it. We just want it to melt, okay? 
Once it melts, you're going to add your flour. You're going to move quickly, okay? Coat it. As you can see, friends, today I am not making diet food. That's personal choice. And this meal today decides I'm not going to be that. Okay, once you see that your flour absorbed all that butter and you cooked it for about 20, 30 seconds, you're going to add your sauce. Mix all your ingredients quickly. And we are currently on a medium heat. Once you start breaking up that flour and the butter into your sauce, now this is what I'm going to do. I can't leave that behind. I'm going to add just a little bit of water. It might be about three tablespoons. I'm going to shake it up and pour it right back in here. Shake it up, shake it up. Shake it up, shake it up. That's right, girl. Oh, oh. <laughs> pour it right back in. I guess those that skip don't know this step. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to continue to cook this sauce for three to four minutes. I'm going to stir every minute. Make sure that you're careful because it will splatter in certain areas. I feel like I'm taking you all for a long, long ride. Thanks for the warning. Keep your hands inside the vehicle at all times. Permanecer <laughs> sentados. <laughs> yeah. After three to four minutes, you're going to notice that your sauce changed color. That means that you've already cooked your sauce. And you're going to find that your tomatillos uh, tend to get really, really thick, just like we love them. So if you like more of a runny sauce, you can add more water than I suggested. But this is a consistency that works for me. And our sauce is ready, friends. Beautiful, delicious sauce. You can taste it here if you need to add more chicken bouillon, sprinkle a little bit of salt. Just remember to have a very, very light hand when you're adding extra seasonings. Allow it to continue to cook for two to three more minutes and then taste it. And if you're comfortable with the flavor, continue with the recipe. After you get your carnitas to the crispiness that you want, you're gonna add your boiled potatoes. Once you add your potatoes, you're gonna start mashing them into your carnitas to make them nice and soft. I boil the potatoes once I chop them into cubes for about 12 minutes. 10 to 12 minutes does, the, does a really good job. And if you notice, these potatoes were huge. One potato is like two or three regular potatoes from Costco, girl. I love those Costco papas. Costco papas. Mm -hmm. Mash them in, and then you're just going to mix your ingredients. Make sure to taste the salt content at this point, and if you need to add a little bit more salt, go ahead and do that. I know some of them can put all this in a bowl of rice with some salsa on top and boom, done. I would just put salsa over this and I'm done. Well, maybe me because I'm addicted me. to rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, those chilies mm -hmm. really got me acting up. What, the hatch? The hatch and the um, uh, serrano. Girl, the fire. I inhaled it right into my soul. It's part of me now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, pretty easy. Make sure to look in the description area for our Instant Pot Carnitas recipe. It's super easy for those of you that are busy, and it's easy for a meal prep during the week. You okay. know what? We're going to go ahead and link it. Link it. And if we forget, let us know. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys know me already. I'm here for you, but I'm also everywhere. <laughs> All right, time to fill our burritos. To your baking dish, add some of your sauce and spread it all over the bottom. Take your freshly made tortilla. I've already warmed it up, and now we're gonna add the filling. Friends, you ask me, does it get soggy? I'm gonna say no. I've only been using our homemade tortillas. I don't have a preference for um, not too many brands of the store-bought tor tortillas. Oh, I almost said it like you, Fred's tortillas. <laughs> it's cute. And um, so it doesn't, with the, with the recipe that I just recently gave you that you all said that um, it's helped you out a whole lot, that's the recipe that I'm using for the flour tortillas, okay? Just want to clear something up. You guys asked me, aren't those enchiladas? Well, I've never seen a corn tortilla, or I've never shown you guys how to roll a corn tortilla like a burrito, but I can. But corn tortilla is enchiladas, flour tortilla is burritos. So for example, a corn tortilla with your taco would be a taco, and if you fry it up, it's a tostada. Same concept, just name something different. Place your burritos in your baking dish, and I'm gonna continue to roll the rest of them up. Once you assemble all your burritos, you're gonna lay your sauce right on top. I love traditional food, but Southwest food, ooh, special place in my heart. It's the best. Good. It's the best. 
Best of both worlds, right? That's right. Or when you're going to like New Mexico or Texas. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You stop at a now you're talking cafe. to me. Now you're talking to me. When you stop at a cafe, you're expecting like different kind of Mexican food and all of a sudden you get surprised. Woo! A yeah. pleasant surprise. Remember to coat the sides of your burritos or else they end up drying out, especially when they're going in the oven. I don't know what to say, friends. This would not be the same if we didn't layer this with some cheese. And now, friends, you want to layer it with your favorite type of cheese. You know that I shredded my cheese myself. We have mozzarella and we have medium cheddar. And now just give it a little bit of a mohawk with the cheddar. If you're using the Mexican uh, cheese blend from Costco, it goes perfect here. You have the perfect blend. And now it's time to bake this delicious. You guys know how much I love these burritos. And just so you know, I have another special combination of these baked burritos that you guys are gonna love. But now I'm gonna put this in the oven. What are you gonna do with all this? <laughs> Uh, whatever leftover I do have from filling the burritos, I tend to use it for breakfast. For this one, it's very breakfast hash-like, so you can just warm it up and add your eggs with some uh, bell peppers if you would like, and then just serve it on a warm tortilla. Mm. Breakfast tacos, boom, done. So good. Turn around. Look at what you see. Make some room, make some room. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Claude and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and we wanna thank each and every one of you that has taken the time to subscribe, especially those that hit that bell notification. We wanna thank you for sharing us with your family and for getting us to our 600,000 subscribers. It means the world to us, but not just that. Every time I see you guys recreate one of my recipes, because you know how hard I work on these recipes for you, it just gives me joy, I feel vibrant. So that's why you guys see me here every day. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Who's ready for a taste test? Let me spin this so you can see the inside. Yummy. Say ah. Uh. You're speechless? It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, let's taste this. I would suggest for you guys to wait about 10 to 15 minutes before you serve them, unless you like the gooey cheese and you're an adult, you can handle the heat. For the kids, definitely wait, and you know that this is hot, so <laughs> I can't wait. At least you're blowing on your food this time and not on a wooden spoon. Mmm. <laughs> Oh my God, this is amazing. Wimpo Rachel? Mm-hmm. It's so good, I can hear the birds chirping, girl. They've been singing to me all day. Oh, how beautiful. You would think that it's really spicy, and it's not. The way that I balance this flavor for you guys, it's good. Now, if you guys want a lot more heat, Make sure to follow the heated instructions in the description area. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> it's funny because a lot of people say, that's too much fat on there, that's too much this, and it's really not. It's just the fat that releases from your cheese, and honestly, it's, it's not that bad. It depends on how heavy your hand is that day. This is my favorite version of wet burritos so far. Is it? Mm -hmm. The green chili. I, I don't know, chili. I have a really naughty one coming up. It's super naughty. I know, I like being in here testing all of your creations. Thank you. Oh, 
Although I fed you all this weekend, most of it. Thank you, thank you. For those of you that are interested, I did lose my voice. Okay, I fed you once. I made her caldo de rancho mm -hmm. with the oregano in it. Yes, yes, that's good. I had a lot of apple cider. I'm still having, um, it depends on how I feel, some cold, some warm drinks. Tis the season where for some reason I only want apple cider. Me too. This is a meal in itself. For those of you that say you want rice and beans on the side, just eat an extra burrito. Yum. Thank you guys for letting me tag along on this journey. I want to tell you that I love you. I think about you. I do pray for you. And I you look do? forward to reading your comments and helping you out. Oh, you're such a sweetheart. Thank you, Cloud. You're welcome. We welcome. love you guys. Bye. Hello and welcome to The Views Kitchen. On today's recipe, I'm gonna be showing you how I prepare pork chops with a side of creamy mashed potatoes and how I make my veggies so that my kids don't leave anything behind. Now let's go over the ingredients. Pork chops. To season your pork chops, you'll need some yin yang, some salt and pepper, paprika, cumin, and a lot of chopped garlic. The first seasoning you wanna lay on your pork chops is gonna be your yin yang. After you add your yin yang, you're gonna add your paprika. After your paprika, you're gonna sprinkle your ground cumin. And after that, you're gonna sprinkle your garlic. Okay, when you add your garlic, make sure you're pressing it down and set your pork chops to the side. You'll need some potatoes and some water. You'll need salt, butter, and heavy whipping cream for your mashed potatoes. If you don't have heavy whipping cream, don't worry, you can use milk. You'll need green beans, and to your green beans, you're gonna add some hot water. We're gonna keep them in here for about five minutes, and then we're gonna strain them. These carrots are specifically for my sister, Cloud. Her vision hasn't been the best lately, and we hear that carrots are good for your vision, so for those of you that haven't been taking care of your vision, make sure that you're eating carrots. For those of you that have your iPads and your phones on the brightest setting, kids, Views Club, I'm talking to you, you need to make sure that you're eating your carrots. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. You'll need some oil. I'm gonna be using olive oil today for our pork chops, but you make it comfortable for your home. Oops. I said make it comfortable for your home. It's time to drink. It's time to drink. Make sure you have your agua fresca. I have an unsweetened tea here. And for those of you that have been partying during this quarantine, well, you guys are gonna do what you're gonna do. So, salud, pa arriba, pa abajo, pa el centro y pa dentro. Well, we made an agreement yesterday, so they know the best. But they can make it comfortable for their home. You can make it comfortable for your home, that's... We're gonna have fun with this recipe. <laughs> If I get too full towards the end, guys, you guys are gonna know that I drank too much, okay? okay. <laughs> yes, it's tea. Agua fresca for the Views Club Junior that have their babas, their bottles. Make sure you have a drink. Set your pan on a medium high heat and wait for it to get really hot for about three minutes. After three minutes, add your oil and allow it to heat up for about 30 seconds. I still have my pan on a medium high heat and we're gonna place our pork chops in our pan. We're gonna sear on each side for three minutes and while we're searing, I'm bringing my pot of water to a boil so that we can add our potatoes. After about three to four minutes, you're gonna flip your pork chops Continue to sear on that side for another three to four minutes. And while I do that, I'm going to strain our green beans. 
I strained our green beans and now we're going to start boiling our potatoes. We're going to continue to boil our potatoes for about 10 to 12 minutes or until they're nice and soft. It's been about three and a half minutes. I'm going to flip our pork chops one more time. Place your burner on a medium low heat and you're going to add one fourth cup of water. We're going to continue to cook our pork chops for another three to four minutes on a medium low heat. That water is going to allow all the juices to penetrate into our pork chops and keep them nice and juicy for us since it's a pork loin. It tends to get dry, but it's really flavorful. So we want it juicy yet satisfying. While our pork chops are cooking, we're going to get started on our green beans. We're going to add a little bit of butter and if some of you have a preference for olive oil, you can add a little bit of olive oil and just allow that to melt. Add your green beans. Apparently this is my new spatula. <laughs> Add a little bit of salt. Place the lid on them and we're going to continue to cook them for another four to five minutes on a medium low heat. It's been four minutes and our pork chops are nice and well done friends. Now if you see there's a little bit of the uh, brothy sauce on the bottom. That's going to be perfect for when we serve. For all of our friends that don't have a cast iron at home, not to worry, you can still achieve a really good sear on a nonstick pan. And look at this, just beautiful. The same thing. You can still get a delicious and flavorful pork chop. Our green beans are done. I'm going to set these to the side and I'm going to cook our carrots the same way I did our green beans friends. In the same pan that I made the green beans, we're going to throw in our carrots. Put your lid on your pan and let them cook for about three minutes. After 12 minutes you have very soft potatoes and your fork should just split it right open. Okay, let me strain these potatoes and then we're going to get started on mashing them up. Allow your butter to melt and you're gonna add your heavy whipping cream. Once your butter and your heavy cream come to a boil, you're gonna add your potatoes. This is gonna be salt to taste. And begin to mash. I know some of you wanna jump in here, don't do it, it's too hot. <laughs> You want to just mash the big chunks, but you don't want to make it into a complete uh, like puree, okay? You don't want potato soup? No, I don't want potato soup. You want mashed potatoes. Oh yes, this is how I love my mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. You can make your mashed potatoes this way for, um, for the holidays, friends. And the heavy whipping cream is not just for dessert. If you add sugar to it, it's going to be dessert. But if you're adding salt to it, it's going to be savory. So the heavy whipping cream is going to help your mashed potatoes stay nice and whipped and amazing, okay? It's gonna give them that whip appeal. Mm -hmm. Make sure your, uh, your pot is on a low heat because the potatoes are gonna end up burning at the bottom if you have your pan, uh, if you have your pot too high. Another technique that helps me keep these whipped is I give it a good stir. And after three minutes, you should have a nice whipped, creamy, delicious mashed potatoes. All of those things in one. Yes. <laughs> Open up. Oh, you're an angel. Say, ah. Yeah, you guys couldn't resist these mashed potatoes. I'm not going to make you wait. All right, turn your pot off and now we're ready to serve. Amigos, I like to do sweet little things to make my food fun and special. And one of the things that I have, I do have one of these little pouring uh, things where you can put like butter, milk, gravies and things like that. But if you don't have that, you can use other things. For example, like my little measuring uh, bowl or a little 
you know, a little a little cup like that will help you pour. And the kids love to pour. I mean, you guys know how crazy they can get. So if you add these to your meals, they're more engaging for your children and also for your family and friends or whoever you're cooking for. And it's going to make that dish the most memorable dish they had because it was fun and engaging. So it's personalized for them. How cute. Yes. Let's pour. Let's pour. <laughs> Tell me when to stop, tell me when to stop. And then some of the mashed potatoes for me, please. Thank you. Perfect. We're gonna have to do a 360 move here. Spin that way. DJ, views in cloud. <laughs> See, I've always wanted to go to Mount Everest and you just took me there, thank you. I'm excited to see how many of you recreate this dish because I know we have a lot of pork chop lovers. Now, let's get a tasting, amigos. Careful with your ears, friends. Oh, yeah. A little mashed see? potatoes for you with a little bit of that garlic. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Claude and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and I want to give a very special shout out to my sister, Cloud. Without her, I would be nothing. I would not be standing here today. She has kept me away from so much trouble, you guys. And she is my rock. And I'm so grateful that you have embraced her as part of your family because I don't know how I would do it without her. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Say ah. Uh. Uh. Let me reach over, girl. <laughs> I'm getting the first bite? Yeah, you're getting the first bite of it. Mmm. Oh my gosh. What a special meal. Thank you, sis. Mmm. I'm not playing good. Oh, they're here. so juicy. Mmm. Get over here. She's trying to run from the carrots, you guys. Oh my gosh. I bet Venga Sam. Venga Sam Thank you. Oh. One of the things that I love about cooking my green beans this way is that you keep them all dente. You get that good crunch. Mm. Girl, that pork chop is so juicy. I want you to try it. It's so good. Okay, give me a second. Let me chop it up. Okay, you did so good. I love the nutty flavor that you get from green beans and cooking them that way. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Listos. Un, dos, tres. It's juicy. Mm -hmm. And for being a, like a, a loin, you don't have that much fat in there. You guys are gonna love it. Hmm. It's going down. <laughs> the kid said something smells good. It's time for us to go. The whole <laughs> the home smells really good. Your home is gonna be great. If you're loving this um, this week's meals, uh, food combos, like the whole plate for dinner, make sure to give a thumb give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments. And you guys know we're gonna need your subscriptions in order for you guys to see more out of us. I guess. Really. That's not true. That's <laughs> not true. I love hanging out with you guys. Thanks, Views Club. We love you guys. Have fun. Take mm -hmm. care. And we may see you later this week. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I've been wanting to come more, but me too. I don't. I don't. I don't know if you guys want to see us more often. Let me know, and I'll free up my schedule for you guys. Mm-hmm. I could eat some little. Okay. Let me take another bite before I serve the kids. Okay. You deserve it. Wait, my potatoes. Mm -hmm. They're so fluffy. You guys have a holiday dish. Yeah. You're set. <laughs> Raji, who is it? A Wolverine? He wants some. Get the Wolverine, Raji. I love that thing. Your whole body. Keep going. Quien te fajo? Es que salgo como los babies del baño yo. And salgo apurada, I have things to do. <laughs> dirty diaper. No, no dirty diaper. ¿Qué cosas?
si te ocurre. Uy, pero no está en zapeta. No, mija, mis babies están grandes ya. Like, no, eight no eight and ten. El, el, el Ralphie. Le salió lo, le salió lo fiero, lo salvaje. No, mija, no, eso no, guarda esa cosa. <laughs> Okay, yeah. You have, a, like, <laughs> seriously, you have enough hair for, like, Simba. like six people. Everything that the light touches. It's, exactly, that's your hair. Okay. Everything the light touches. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you're going too fast for my, for my sunset. Hey, hey, hey. I felt like Donald Duck on that one. Like, I was going to go when he's in Disneyland, just like, rah, all angry. He doesn't, want to, he doesn't want to sign anybody's, like, little notebook. And for those of you wanting to get low, get low, when I say yin yang, you guys are from our generation. <laughs> well, you're being, you're being good cloudy today? Mm -hmm. I have a secret admirer, so. Oh, so she's behaving. I want to have a secret admirer. He doesn't know that he's my secret admirer. My secret admirer doesn't know that he's my secret admirer. Who, Diego Luna? Girl, don't make me oh, blush. Yes, what? No. It's just, just everything. Ojalá que nunca vea este video de los porchos en Diego Luna. Ven de la birria, Diego. Ven de la birria. No, me va a ver comer y me va a dar pena. Ay, no. To the window. To the wall. Oye, aquí no se puede hacer eso. No estás en el, no estás en el dance club. Es que no es esas cosas. I do it in my room. No es cierto. I see you do it all the time. Ya no se puede por el COVID. Okay. To the wall. No se puede hacer nada de eso ya. <risa> no me canso socializar. Pues no, mija. <risa> ya tienes hambre. <risa> Con permiso. Que no com comiste hace rato. Oh, wow, stop the rocking. You see that plate? Anda loco. That sounds good to me. <risa> Cálmate, los van a quitar el PG-13 rating. Ah, que tenemos. Ah, okay. Esta gente mal pensada estos días. Pues no sé, es, es, está muy avanzada las amistades. Stop that drumming! <laughs> clean up, clean up. ¿Cómo es la canción? Everybody let's clean up, clean up, clean up. Pick up all your toys. Oh my gosh, how cute. <coughs> I miss having a baby. A ver quién se anima conmigo. ¿Qué quieres tener un bebé? ¿O te quieres quedar con tu bebé? Me quiero quedar con mi bebé. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm going to make a milkshake right now? Don't oh, stop trickling me. Eh? <laughs> What happens cuando las doñas no duermen? Y cuidan a su mamá. Y cuidan a, a su, su mamá. mamá. Tan linda, pobrecita. Tan linda, mi mamá. Mi pobrecita, pobrecita. Pobrecita, pobrecita. Club, when you make tortillas and you wash your hands right after, your comal's really hot and you hit that cold water and you're washing it, this is what's going to happen to your fingers. Así se les van a quedar. So don't wash your hands if you're using a hot comal, a hot cast iron after your tortillas. This thing has been brought to you by Amazon. Yeah, what's up with that? It's very serious. It's a good it one. is. It is. General, Van a tener que buscar a alguien que le sobe la mano. Yo no tengo a nadie que me sobe mi mano más que tú, mija. A la otra, mija. And you want to take a little fold like this in motion, and then write down. I'm just kidding, guys. You can't do that. Oh, what? I'm crying. What? Don't look at me. I love you. I love you. I don't want to look at your hair right now, but I love you. <laughs> You're everything. <laughs> componte, componte. Okay. Vas a como los niños que se cachetean. No, no. But hands are not forgetting. Kids, Views Club. If you're watching, don't listen to your tia cloud. Hands are not for hitting, they are for creating, for blowing kisses, for giving hugs, for asking for a hand in marriage. What? You know, it's for those things. No hitting, guys. Aquí está mi mano para que quiera. If you like it, then you should put a ring on it. If you like it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Views Kitchen. Happy Taco Tuesday, amigos. 
In today's recipe, I'm gonna show you how to make a DIY taco meat sauce recipe that is divine. It's perfect for your tacos, your burritos, your Mexican discontinued pizzas, and to make it even better, I'm gonna show you how to get through those pesky tortillas whenever you wanna have a good taco shell. I'm gonna be showing you two versions. There's one that's super easy and there's one that's even easier. But before that, let's go over the ingredients. Ground beef, soy sauce, chicken bouillon, black pepper, sugar, bay leaves, and white vinegar. Taco seasoning, you can use the McCormick brand, which is the one that I'm using today, or you can use uh, the recipe that I'll link in the description area for you. Da -na 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 -na. What do we have under here? Yes, it's not good. <laughs> Friends, you're gonna need some oatmeal, all-purpose flour, juicy tomatoes, and a yellow or white onion, tomato sauce, and ketchup. Time to get serious, you're gonna need some water. Add your oatmeal and your all-purpose flour. Place your lid and we are just gonna blend until these ingredients combine together, like me and Cloud, hey. hey, hey, hey. And boom, done, friends. Just like that. Okay, so make sure to place this into another little bowl. Using the same Ninja Chopper, we're gonna blend our tomatoes and our onions. And boom, done, friends. Set your pan on a medium heat and drizzle some oil. Next, you wanna add your ground beef. We're gonna to continue to cook our ground beef for another six minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be mashing it and I'm gonna be stirring it with a spoon periodically. After about six minutes, you're gonna see that your ground beef released all the delicious juices which we're keeping and you've pretty much cooked it through. Now we're gonna add our onion and tomato blend. Stir those ingredients well. Next, you're gonna add your oatmeal and all-purpose flour blend. And we're gonna mix those ingredients as well. Taco seasoning, chicken bouillon, black pepper, sugar, and mix those ingredients. And I know some of you are gonna say, Steph, can't you just throw it all in here and mix it? You can, but I figured that this process that I'm showing you right now is the way to get the best flavor out of this uh, filling. I'm in the zone, friends. Can you see that? <laughs> it smells so good. Just for the record, you did not work at Taco Bell. No, I've never worked at Taco Bell, but I've been and there plenty of times. nobody gave you the secret recipe, but this is something that you decided to come up with? Yes. Okay, I've after you, you know Taco Bell, yeah Taco <laughs> Bell released some information here and there and I was able to piece it together with the recipe that I already had at home that I would make mm -hmm. and I hope that you guys uh, understand how much I love you because this one's pretty right on. It really is. Once you mix all those ingredients, you're gonna add your tomato sauce, ketchup, soy sauce, water, and your bay leaves. Mix all your ingredients and bring this up to a boil. After you reach a boil, you're gonna set your temperature on a low heat. Make sure that you come and stir periodically and we're gonna to continue to cook for 45 minutes, okay? Low heat, every five minutes just come and stir. You know your, your pots and pans a lot better than I do. And while we do that, I'm gonna show you how to make taco shells. Add your corn tortilla to your hot oil. A little bit over. And we're gonna flip it over just a few times just until we have it a little bit pliable for that fold. And with the oil being as hot as it is, we're ready to give it a fold. You're gonna need a good a good uh, cooking spoon and a spatula to do this. But if you all find a different method, go for it. You wanna leave it a little bit open so that way we don't completely seal uh, the taco shell. 
And if you don't want to use the oil, you guys can use that Pinterest method. Remember that one that was floating around for the longest time? No. You put them in your oven and you bake them. Nice. You can do that as well. Make it comfortable for your home. That's right. Good job, Cloudy. Mm -hmm. And boom, done. It's ready. And we're going to do this the same way we did the dessert tacos, just to have them uh, hang over right there. Allows them to drip and keep their form. They're not hung over, they're hanging over. They're hanging over. <laughs> and for those of you that are like Cloud, you don't like the oil too much, you just want to get in and get out, but still make some great tacos, there's this little apparatus that I found for our Taco Tuesdays. And you just place it like this. See that? Mm -hmm. And what I did is I just dipped them in a little bit of oil first so that they're pliable, or if you just want to warm them up, and now we're going to dip them into the oil. Okay. I'm really liking these little things, they're easy to just flip over and I'll just pure playing Spongebob you. I like them because they're uniform. You know what, that's another plus. Mm -hmm. I know you have an expert tip for the bubbles not to show up in the other method that you were doing. Yeah, let me show you real quick. Okay, you helped me out a lot, so I figured our friends could benefit from this one. If you don't have the taco apparatus that I just showed you, you can get your tortilla and maybe poke a few little holes, like four holes. That way when you put it on your oil, you don't get that huge bubble that's going to prevent you from folding your taco or, or forming your taco, you know? Got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And boom, done, friends. Remove that metal. And when you're using metal, I want you guys to be really careful because metal and hot oil is just the worst burn you're going to get. Okay? I speak from experience, so please, please be careful. They work great, but I don't want you to hurt yourself. Use Club Junior, new chefs, that goes for you. And parents that were too busy working in the corporate world, <laughs> oh, and, you're you're so back, yeah. and you're getting back to the kitchen, yeah. be patient. Be patient, all of you guys. Don't be scared, just take your time. Nobody's rushing you. You're the boss in the kitchen, That's right. and nobody else. Friends? Our Taco Bell meat sauce is done. Friends, I'm using these recently for lunch trays. This lining helps me um, keep the kitchen clean and I don't have to do that many dishes. And it's a lot thinner than using the paper plates, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying for the environment. Meat first. And now you wanna add sour cream for those of you that love sour cream. You know why we get along so well? Because we have a, a, a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. But we always meet in the middle. Yeah, and we, we champion each other's like uniqueness. Yeah, but that's what makes it fun. <laughs> okay. Deja la de vuelta a esta. Mm -hmm. So you guys can get a good a good tasting today. Thank you, Mamita. Now it's lettuce time. If you don't hurry up and assemble a taco. Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Oh, some fresh tomato. I know some of you don't like it, and this is opportunity where you can make it comfortable for your home. The Views Club Junior is probably so happy right now, and all the teenagers and all our munchy crew. They're the best. Right, some quesito. Somebody's like, more cheese, more cheese. No, more tacos. <laughs> Balance them out, you get to eat more tacos. It's Taco Tuesday. Porque el Taco Wednesday es para los ricos. <laughs> <laughs> that means that Taco Wednesday is for the rich people, guys. And then you're gonna pick your favorite hot sauce, and right now our favorite is Cloud's uh, Pato Sauce. <laughs> It's so difficult to make. Oh it really gosh. is. We'll put it in the description area for you. It's the hardest salsa you're... No, it's not that. It's not that style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so difficult. Oh my gosh, two ingredients. Somebody's going to be like, how did we do sneak an extra taco because we're that hungry today? <laughs> <laughs> Friends, I want to let you know something before we bite into this taco. The tip for this recipe that's going to be so helpful is that make sure that if you're using your frozen ground beef, because I know we all have those packs, make sure that it's completely thawed out or it's fresh ground beef because if you're using somewhat frozen you're going to miss the texture that you need for this particular recipe and the juiciness that comes from it. Also as I showed you guys I tend to make extra so that I can freeze it and when I'm going to make it for freezing that I'm going to reheat later I use two cups of water but whenever I'm going to make some that I'm going to use that same day I use less water and those uh, ingredients are going to be in the description area in detail and that's just a cup and a half if you're going to make it for the same day. So. I added as much details as I can, and I think parents, even though you don't like Taco Bell, the kids do, so be nice and make them some Taco Bell at home. <laughs> <laughs> now we're ready for a taste. Say, ah! Uh, I wanted to tell you before that piece of meat drips.
As always, Views Club and Bell Notifications Squad Cloud and I absolutely adore you and we want to thank you so much for joining us today. I want to let you all know that you don't own all the problems in the world. So take it easy on yourself. Try to relax. You know, when you're cooking, be kind to yourself. There's a process to cooking and it takes a lot to even turn on your burner and warm up a tortilla. So even if that's all you're doing, I think you're doing a great job and I'm proud of you. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! I'm gonna wrap it up because it's gonna get dangerous here. Almost as at crunch time. And I'm not trying to get messy in front of you guys today. The American taco. Right? The way the meat hits that sour cream, layer it that way. That's the difference. You guys are gonna be proud of this one. I'm proud of you. Hot packet. I'm proud of you guys too. I love you guys so much. I love you, hot pocket. You were all so sweet. Cloud is the sweetest, hot pocket. <laughs> Apparently. When I'm not being called a chicharron. <laughs> I do I'm call a you hot, a chicharron. A hot pocket, so now that's the joke because of the shirt. I'm trying to impress our friends. I love burla. it. I'll link it somewhere in the description area for everybody. <laughs> Don't be fooled. Cloud loves Taco Tuesday, and we're going to show you at the end of this video why. Because she's a super fan of tacos. I am, and so are you. Anytime I go out, you better give me some tacos. I'm with her. Cloud trained me right. <laughs> If I go out with this woman, we are having tacos. It doesn't matter where it's from because we've even hit another chain taco place before and it was dangerous. You're in my car, you're gonna have a taco. Mm. I might have filled it too much, but that's okay. I made it comfortable for my belly. No, oh, you're so cute. We've talked a lot. Maybe we should let them go so we can enjoy sister time. Uh-huh. Okay? Mm-hmm. My sisterhood of the traveling pants, my little chicharron. You ready? I'm ready to travel. Let's, Let's do go. it. Vamanos! Vamanos! Round one. Ground two. <laughs> Ground three. Ground four. Ground <laughs> four. Who says, can I borrow a quarter? Can I borrow a quarter? Oh my gosh. Do you remember? Is your arm okay? Yes, I'm okay. You went to the nurse's office? I went to the nurse's office. He made so a band-aid show, Nikki. Yeah. I said kisses my boo -boo. I'm so disappointed in you. Well, you know what? I'm into pie. What can I tell you? And that oven got me this year. So disappointed. In they, I need to make some like oven mitts that are like, you know, like the knee-high boots? Mm -hmm. that they go all the way up here. Da -da 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 -da. Like those kind of gloves. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm traumatized with the orange shirt and now whatever's under there. If you're putting carrots in this dish, I'm walking out. <laughs> walk I it out. I'll walk it out. Then Next you walk, walk it out. <laughs> You're so kind. Hey, 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 anything for the Views Club. Ooh. Don't push it, guys. Don't push it. <laughs> the kings and queens Yo of the kitchen. Yo quiero saber. Ooh. De todo un poco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. This is my dance space. What if we do the pachanga? The pachanga. At the end of the year. You're so embarrassing for that one. You know, <laughs> like I, this hate, look. You know I hate when Neil did the pachanga. Did you like my move? I like... I like the lover boy part before that though. Oh my gosh. Do you guys like dirty dancing? The best. You guys know how I get when I when I see that, when I hear that music. Mm -hmm. Hungry eye, mm -hmm. it's over. I put my ear pods in. Me pongo bien romántica. And boom done. And boom done. <laughs> <laughs> if people only knew how much I tease you throughout the day, I would say a good five hours. Well, when you're not grinding, you tease me so. <laughs> oh, Miss Cloudy, how do you tease me so? <laughs> Stop it. You're so corny. I know I am. I was getting romantic with you guys today after we doing some hungry eyes, you know? I've been meaning to tell you. Such a good song. It's perfect for these tacos, right? Yes. I want to tell you a love song about <laughs> You know, these tacos are so great because when it's like 
two or three in the morning and you get hungry, you can, it only takes you about 30 minutes to defrost and cook and boom, done, you know? We are speaking 20, from 30, personal experience. 20, 30 minutes, <laughs> you are set. They said we big on fire. We did that twirl. El látigo. <laughs> Careful, because remember what happened to my neck last week because of that. Oh my gosh, you know what that reminds me of? El látigo, like uh, we went to Puerto Rico. No, 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 no. I need to adjust. I need to adjust before I'm going to those tacos. days. What, the Puerto Rico days? Best. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Love Puerto Rico. I did want to ask you, well I know now, but I ask you in front of our friends. Why you always had these tacos available? Like when I would text you or call you at any hour, you're like, oh, we'll do the Taco Bells. Because it's easy for me to defrost. <laughs> I know how to defrost really well. And um, I keep, I make extra, I make more than one. When you guys see how do I do it, I do it because um, obviously you have to shop in advance for yourself and be aware of what you can expect the next two weeks, but always be prepared with some marinades in your, in your freezer thaw them out the night before you take them out and you're forced to use them the next day even if you mm -hmm. get lazy you don't want your food to spoil so I make extra um, oh, filling okay. and then I let it cool off mm -hmm. I freeze them flat and depending on the portions that I want I make big family size when we're all together mm -hmm. and then I make small snack size for uh, singular whenever I have my teenage um, my family children. over <laughs> And then here's the other. I mean, ah. Luna, I will have four tacos, please. Y tú los hiciste. Mm -hmm. Tu familia es de hice. Sonora de Sinaloa. Ah, somos de Sonora, pero tengo mi abuelo de Sinaloa. Hello and welcome back to my kitchen, amigos. Happy Taco Tuesday. In today's recipe, we're going to be making pork belly tacos, and these are super easy and quick to make for those busy nights. And that's how the holidays are. They're pretty busy, so I think you guys are going to love this recipe. But first, we have to go over those ingredients. You can't have Taco Tuesday without tortillas. So today, I'm using Mission Yellow Corn Tortillas. Pork belly. You want to make sure to slice your pork belly for your tacos into nice, thick cuts unless you're feeding the kids or somebody that has a difficult time chewing, then you might want to slice it a little bit thinner. We'll be seasoning our pork belly with some chicken bouillon, black pepper, thyme, Mexican oregano, oil, guajillo chili powder, onion powder, and garlic powder. For our guacamole, you'll need some avocados, tomato, purple onion, cilantro, jalapeño, and some lemon or lime juice. To your pork belly, you want to add your garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, chili powder, thyme, Mexican oregano. Do the same, crumble it and wake up those wonderful aromas. And your chicken bouillon. We're going to mix all these ingredients to coat our pork belly. If you're buying your pork belly at Costco, you know you have a huge pack, so you can make this all at once and then put it in your freezer for later use. Once you see that you've coated all of your pork belly with the seasoning, now you can add that tablespoon of oil. All right, friends, we're ready to place this on a really, really hot cast iron pan. Place your pan on a medium high heat. You wanna let it heat up for a good two to three minutes because as soon as we add this pork belly, the temperature in our pan's gonna change and we wanna sear the outside of this pork belly and cook it proper. After two to three minutes, you're gonna see that you get a little bit of smoke coming out of your cast iron and that's when you wanna add the pork belly. Now, if you're using a non-stick pan or a different type of pan, um, put it on a medium, a medium heat. I don't know, I don't want you guys to burn yourselves, but this is just for those of you that are using the cast iron. That old little Ronco method. Set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. Ooh, girl. But only for a short period of time. I don't know if I'm the only human that loves to stay up late and watch infomercials. Yeah, man. When we were younger, they were so boring. But they, you, they were funny. But they involved food. Yep. And I used to watch them. That's called having insomnia. I don't have insomnia. I just don't sleep. During that time, you had a hard time sleeping. Or I should say I didn't sleep. I have been sleeping for a few days. Friends, watch out. I have a lot of energy right now. Gosh. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> SOS. Help me. <laughs> you guys don't send for help. That means you don't love me. Help me. <laughs> she slept. I did. I slept and that my creativity is at its best right now. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Mm -hmm. And I have a fun weekend plan for Cloud and I. All right, friends, we're going to continue to cook on a medium heat for a few more minutes. I'll let you know how long it took for me. So that way you have an idea at home when you guys make these delicious tacos. This is Cloud serving you a PSA, a public service announcement for those of you that don't know. Do not touch the pork belly. Do not, I repeat, until you're instructed to do so. After six minutes, we're going to flip them over. And that's when the juices are going to begin to flow. Once you flip your pork belly, you're going to let it cook for four more minutes on a medium heat. After four minutes, you're going to place your burner on a low heat and you're going to add your water. I'm not flipping our pork belly or anything. I'm just moving them around to make sure nothing is stuck at the bottom. And we're going to continue to cook on a low heat for 15 minutes. We're going to make a quick guacamole that Cloud's not going to complain about. And this is a tip that I learned from um, scrolling through IG videos. And then, <laughs> I don't know, you guys usually send me some really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. The Views Club doesn't sleep, man. If you if people think they work hard, the Views Club works mm. harder. No, you guys they are, built this channel from nothing. You guys are on it. <laughs> if you guys see it, and I mean that's kind of what happened with the birria, right? Mm -hmm. Steph, how do we get the red tacos? How do, okay, I did the one recipe, but it's all the same. And they speak it into existence. You guys are like um, the soy sauce brothers. I better bring it. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Views Club. We know a lot of you by name. A yes, lot. we do. We know a lot about your families, and thank you guys for including us in your life. Thank you for letting us in. Promise we'll open the P.O. box once this whole pandemic clears out for us a bit. Mm -hmm. So just press it in. Wow, these racks are going to work for wonderful things. <laughs> Aside from cooking your tortillas. Yep. We have two. One for, or two for the tortillas, and then we just do it. Get all that avocado. To your avocado, add your cilantro, purple onion, and your tomato. Thank you for adding some substance in my guacamole. These tacos are going to be glorious, Cloud. Yes. For those of you that like spice, add your jalapeno or your serrano. And if you don't have any of those fresh peppers, go ahead and add some chiltepines. Hey, I've seen you put some hot sauce in here before, friends. Those are jalapenos are from your garden, right? Yes, these are uh, my son's uh, jalapeno plant. They're and fire. They're hot fire. He did such a good job. And you want to add your desired amount of lemon or lime juice. And salt is always to taste. This is how I like my guacamole. Guacamole. Sands the cottage cheese. I'm not into cottage cheese guacamole. <laughs> I'm not well, gonna lie. I don't understand why someone did that. They did it because it's like a filler thing, you know? Like they had to feed a lot of people and they had to make that aguacate laugh. If you need the filler, go ahead and do that. But if I catch you guys putting queso crema in an avocado, I don't know what I'm gonna do with you guys. <laughs> you guys are gonna push it on that one and then I'm gonna taste it and I'll be like, okay, I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now just mix all your ingredients. Okay, I need you to taste this for salt. Give me some. Hey. Give me some. Thank you. Ooh, these got just for just for me. Look at this. You guys see, can Amanda come out? Here it comes. Mmm. Any more salt? Mm-mm. Ooh. This is the way Mama likes it. Alright. Me? Uh-huh. I live in duality. I'm a woman, but I have feminine and masculine energies. Mmm, that's so good. Oh, it's amazing. Mm. Now your basic stuff you want to be giving me all the time. Mm. Your basic guacamole. That's perfect. The lemon juice is just perfect. Can you admit that your basic guacamole is not up to speed? My basic guacamole is chipotle's guacamole. And you guys know when you get a little chips and you just go and go and go, you don't need any of the extra. Because sometimes 
people like to put really mushy tomatoes in their guacamole and to me mushy tomatoes and guacamole doesn't work so make sure that they're nice and have a good bite to them are you insulting amalia's guacamole you did i did you insulted my guacamole but this is our family basic style of making guacamole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After 15 minutes, you're gonna notice that most of your pork belly is nice and cooked. Look, ooh, perfect. If you see some pieces like this that need a little bit more time, you can just set them to the side and continue to cook them. But for the most part, our pieces are ready to come out. And, oh, I'm so ready for a taco. Oh my. I'm gonna use the same heat from our pan to warm up some tortillas. So I can place about three or four here. I'm gonna let them warm up. It only takes about 30 seconds on each side, if that, to warm up and steam, okay? So just take it easy, friends. Steph, what's up? I've been meaning to tell stop, you. Stop, girl, stop. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. Ooh, that one almost fell. Who wanted that, that piece? Who wanted that piece? And I want you to taste a piece, okay, for the adults that can handle the heat. And once you taste it, if it's salted enough and you're okay with it, perfect. If not, you can sprinkle a little bit of salt right when you take it out. Mm -hmm. Take your tortilla, add your guacamole. And add your pork belly. And boom, done, friends. Who's ready for a taste? I'm ready. Say, ah. Okay, girl, let's do this. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to give a special shout out to all of our service members, especially our Marines that are watching us and are missing their homes. And, you know, Cloud and I have this thing where we welcome you into our kitchen, but we also welcome you into our hearts. And we're so happy that you guys find a little bit of home here on our channel. And let us know what you guys want to see on the channel. We're here for you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios! This taco feels amazing and heavy. It is amazing. I just had one. Thank you, sister. It's magical just like your little hands. I like the crust on the outside with a little bit of that juicy fatness and some meat that you get in there. It's like a chicharron, but super juicy. Mm hmm. Mm. You're my little teacher room. <laughs> mm. That avocado is perfect, wasn't it? It was like perfectly right. I have nothing to say. This tastes so 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 good <laughs> bye kids we love you we'll see you later i guess <laughs> stay tuned Bye. Time won't give me time, cause time makes lovers feel like, like they got time. <laughs> you went in on that when I saw you close your eyes, Cloud. I was. I was so <laughs> dancing. I'm packing my bags and I'm staying for a few days. Yes. It's gonna be great hanging out with my nephews. And you, of course. And me. And you're the bonus, now that they're here. Oh, because you guys, you guys need your snacks. Uh-huh. You know, and to think, a year ago, we were going to get rid of this cast iron, and I'm loving it. Loving we it, loving it. it. Chance. All we did was cook fat on it.
you know, worked out great. Friends, we're going to be talking to you about cast iron very, very, very soon. And pots and pans and all of that. And all kinds of holiday thingies. Mm -hmm. Thingy thingy. Can I help it if I like to look clean? Because you woke up like that? I woke up like this. Ooh, this radish. Hello and welcome to The View's Kitchen. On today's recipe, I'm going to be showing you how to make a spicy shredded beef soup. Now let's go over the ingredients. Chuck roast, and if you notice, I cut the chuck into little thin slices so it can cook a little bit faster for us. Mushrooms, medium sliced onions, cubed potatoes, carrots, garlic, and green onions. Half the green onion I chop thinly like this, and the rest are just chopped into little, little circles. Little itty bitty little circles. Chicken bouillon, Mexican oregano. We're gonna need a lot of water, friends. Make sure to look in the description area for the exact amount. Soy sauce, black pepper, oil, guajillo chili, and for those that want to keep it spicy, we have chile de arbol. If you don't want a spicy soup, omit the chile de arbol. Bring your water to a boil and add your beef. Why don't you sear it beforehand? That's optional. If you'd like to sear it, you're more than welcome to. For me, I like this particular style when I bite into a beefy soup. But you know what I say, amigos, make it comfortable for your home. All right, all right, all right. Oh, now you want to get down. We're going to continue to boil this on a medium heat for about 15 minutes. And we're going to come back and skim any impurities that we find in this water. To your pot of water, you're going to add your chiles. I've removed the stem and the seeds. And we're going to continue to boil this for about 10 minutes. We just want those chilies to be nice and soft. To your pot of boiling water, you're going to add your potatoes. And we're going to continue to boil our potatoes for 10 minutes. Why are we boiling them on the side? Because I don't want to add them to this pot and have mushy potatoes. I want them to keep their form. After 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to see the impurities if you have any. And if you don't, you can proceed. Almost nothing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. After you remove the impurities, you're going to add your mushrooms. Onions and your bouillon. I'm using chicken bouillon, the natural one, but friends, remember to make it comfortable for your home. I'm gonna place our pot on a medium low heat and we're gonna continue to cook. After 10 to 15 minutes, you're gonna take your boiled peppers and place them into your blender. Add your water, soy sauce, oil, black pepper, and salt. And now we're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done, friends. It is nice and blended. If you're using a different kind of blender, then you might have to strain your chili, but if you're using a Vitamix, then you guys are, are set to go. After about 45 to 50 minutes, you're gonna add your chili sauce. Carrots, potatoes, garlic, and your green onions. Give it a quick stir. Oh, it's already looking lovely, right? Who's so excited? Sweet. Who's excited? Yummy. Place your burner on a medium heat, and we're gonna continue to cook for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, you're gonna turn your burner off. You're gonna take your Mexican oregano, crumble it with your hand. Stir your ingredients and friends, we are ready to serve. This beef is gonna fall apart tender once you scoop it with your spoon. And ooh, I'm so, so hungry, yummy.
Add a little bit of cilantro, some radish, with a little bit of rice, and boom, done, friends. Who's ready for a tasting? I'm ready. Beefy mushroom. I know everybody has their mouth open right now. That's right. Ah. <laughs> As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and want to thank every single one of you that kept yourself safe while we were gone. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! It's piping hot. You served it's, it on the Korean dish. <laughs> I did. It's really, really hot. The ceramic dish. And they keep it nice and hot when you serve it for your family. Mm-hmm. That is so good. And I am gonna be using sticky rice today. It's amazing. It's perfect for this Friends. cold, rainy weather. It's perfect for all weather. You know that week in the summertime when the kids don't want the soup? This is a perfect one. Now that it's getting colder, it's great. I don't know if I would serve this boiling hot soup in the summer. I would serve... we do caldo de pollo. Okay, but I wouldn't serve it in the ceramic bowl. That's pipe, that's lava. This is like you're freezing cold, here's lava. When I think of like Korean dishes, uh -huh. I think of lava. Of hot lava? Mm -hmm. Well, that is hot lava, friends, but you're gonna enjoy this hot lava. So you guys, we don't always agree on everything. It's okay to disagree. It's okay. The love is still mm -hmm. there. And the flavor's all there. <laughs> it really is. You did a great job. Oh my goodness. This beef is so tender. If you're going to be serving this soup for the little ones, you can cut your pieces of beef into smaller ones. But I know, particularly, gentlemen, I think you guys like to bite into those big pieces. And nice and hearty for you. And I'm I'm with you. I want this big piece. Pero lo voy a cortar un poquito. We should just, you know, oh, tear nice up. Oh, one. Look at that. Tear up just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I'm starting to sniffle. It's that hot. <laughs> that hot. Is it a hot potato? No, it's the. This is why I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, I gotta serve some for Cloudy because you guys have been saying, I don't know how Cloud holds that camera and watches you eat. She doesn't have to, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. But I wonder if we should record everything that I eat while I film. All the tastings before and after? Mm-hmm, during, uh, it's pre, during, and after. Well, you gotta eat to live. That's right. So it better taste good. I'm not driving. I'm not driving today. I have don't have the, the coordination to drive. Pues, te voy a decir que yo soy views on the road y yo voy a manejar. Okay, thank you, views. Okay. Uh, all the things in the universe that wants to come so at me, to come at me. The door's in open. Peace, with peace, love, kindness, y sobre todo, mucho amor. <laughs> the door is open. Come on. Okay. Ready? You got yourself on a, on a sidebar. Oh, cloudy. Yeah. So now you answer your own stuff? Well, because I'm trying to get you there. You're not there. You didn't drink your coffee this morning? No, I... Ready? Why are you putting it on me? No, no quiero la cloudy jugar ahora. I have brain cells on here now too. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to say yeah. Oh yeah, okay. 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 No, it's okay. Okay. She's not ready to get down today. We'll wait for tomorrow, guys. Bye. I'm gonna put the on, <laughs> on down later. And uh -huh. it's none of your business. So now it's none of my business. <laughs> so now if you guys want the cheese mate, you're gonna have to message me. <laughs> Onions. You like that cloud? Mm -hmm. Are they medium? They're medium. I don't know, friends, let us know in the comments what you think. Cubed potato. Cube, 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 cubed potatoes. <laughs> care a lot. We care a lot about your eyes, Cloudy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We do care a lot about your eyes. Puro mm -hmm. me estas corriendo las zanahorias. Te voy a hacer un carrot pie. Oh my gosh. Yes, oh my gosh. Okay. Do you know what you need to make a good salsa? What? A plethora. Yes. <laughs> you know where that's from? Hello and welcome. 
you have been asking me for a really hot spicy salsa and today I'm bringing you my salsa enfurecida that means you're furious so if you're ready to get furious with this salsa let's get started you want to set your pan on a medium heat and if you have a cast iron or a colmal even better okay but those of you that don't have these pans don't worry you can still get it done place your tomatoes and our tomatoes are going to take a little bit longer uh, to roast but we're going to start adding the rest of our chiles and our ingredients. What we have going on right now is some pasilla and habanero. You guys feel the heat yet? <laughs> we're gonna make a little space right here because we're gonna be adding our garlic. Can you peel your garlic or do you have to add it like that? You can peel your garlic, but I want a thick salsa. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep the peel and all this heat is going to kill anything that you are scared of. I know some of you are going to be like, staff, why? Don't worry. All this heat is going to pull through and kill all those bacteria or whatever you think is in there. But it's garlic. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's garlic. You're going to be fine. Do you know that I know the answer to all these questions that I ask on this channel? The reason why I ask is because I anticipate people having those questions because when I started cooking, I had those questions. Yes. But I already know the answer. <laughs> right, right. Cloud's here for you. She's here to support you. And I'm glad that a lot of you are acknowledging that Cloud not only knows about how to cook and do these things, but she's also very knowledgeable in the tech industry, which is her primary job. And on top of that, she's very spiritually connected with our ancestors. So if you guys understand what that means, you kind of get Cloud. That's what happens when you don't have a love life. <laughs> You dedicate yourself to other things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you focus so much on romantic love, but you are a very loving person. Yeah, well, we're family. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just what we wanted to say, friends. But for now, we're going to continue to roast these chiles, and I'm going to show you every step of the way what uh, you want them to look like before we take them out of the pan. But if you see something here that's burning, not charring, that's when you want to take it out. Okay? So hang tight. It's been about a minute and a half. I'm going to turn over our pasilla chiles and careful because it's gonna smoke and you're gonna cough okay you don't want to scare anybody so un pasilla de chile un ooh. Pasilla. Ooh, ooh, ooh. moving the garlic around a bit you turn these habaneros we're yes. we're bringing the heat Woo! don't get out of the kitchen if you can't handle it stay with us enjoy <laughs> enjoy from afar okay I don't want to kick anybody out of the kitchen unless you disrespect my views club, then that's different. Aww. Can't disrespect each other. Not okay with that. But with so many videos, some of you are sliding through. <laughs> when you see your chiles puff up, take them out. That's a nice tip. Oh, it just needs a little bit more. These look pretty ready to me. Yeah, I'm gonna keep them there a little longer when I'm nice and charry. Así como charros. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> como los charros, you know, I got my lasso. I just need a sombrero. Unas botitas. I have botitas on right now. Oh my gosh, you do, that's hilarious. I do have botitas <laughs> with my dress. You guys know I'm from the north. You gotta wear your botas and your huaraches. Mm-hmm. Sorry for our English speaker and other folks in other countries. Botas is boots. Guaraches is your sandals. They're not just Mexican sandals. sandals. They are Mexican sandals. Most of us dodged those growing up. We didn't like those growing up because we were embarrassed when our friends used to laugh at us at school with our guaraches. No, I meant like getting hit with the chancla and then you run. <laughs> I was thinking of both things, but no, they used I to, I used to wear my chanclas, my guaraches. And girls <laughs> cut throat in my elementary school. And then you had the Asian people wearing their little Asian shoes getting ragged on too. Oh, I remember that. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah been a long long time friends don't make fun of each other celebrate your uniqueness yeah <laughs> come together come together right now all right we're going to continue to roast these i think we're going to be here for another three minutes for the garlic and these tomatoes are going to take another five minutes okay so hang tight all right look at that it smells delicious in here now go ahead and take that garlic out and all i've been doing is moving the tomato around here and there you know get it to where we need <laughs> oh 
Okay, look at our delicious tomatoes. You know that some some of that sweetness from that tomato came through, you know? Should I tell them the joke I just told you? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, scoot them to the side. They just need a little bit. And what I'm going to be dropping in this hot pan is, you ready for it? We're going to take a little bit of the Jamaica. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm out there, guys. And we're going to take a lot of our chile de árbol. And we're going to turn off our pan. Because this chile de árbol roasts quickly. Se quema muy rápido. Tengan cuidado. Be careful. Chile de árbol is spicy. It's not mild. No, it is not mild. Do you see how that just charred quickly? Ooh, that smells so good. Hi, let's do this. <laughs> smells so good in here. It is. I'm excited. We're having a chips and salsa date today, my sister and I. Mm -hmm. So we figured we'd bring you guys along. Yeah, and we're going to do some some uh, internal work, chatting. Some self-care, baby. Yeah. We're going to give ourselves a little pedicure, facial. Boy, don't need it. <laughs> yeah, I got some little um, steamer thing. Like, you know when you go to the spa, you get that steam? Oh, very I, nice. Yeah, I have some of those that I warm up, and we're going to go all out, guys. I think you might have opened your pores with all this roasting. With all the fuego? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. It's okay if it charged this way. Oh, I see. We okay. like that. But when you see that they're all like completely there, you don't want to burn all of them, just some of them should be. <coughs> Ooh. Calmese. <coughs> Calmese, señora. I'm going to take the tomato out. If you guys can tell us what movie that's from. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> that exact mm, let us know if it <clears throat> burns so good you know it's gonna be delicious <laughs> if someone if someone can guess that um we're gonna have a little surprise for you Once okay quarantine's over yes we will well you're gonna do the I'm moves. Gonna, i know I, i'd have to mail them the gift oh okay that yeah. sounds nice do it again so they hear it <clears throat> <laughs> all right looks pretty good let's start taking these out you're so random. Who, me? I <laughs> know. Nobody's ever going to get <laughs> Yeah, they are. Hey, don't you know the geniuses that, that are the Views Club? That's an actual sound. Okay, well, I can't mm. wait. I guess you can tell birds apart by their... Okay, yeah, I guess. They'll, yeah, you guys that. are. I don't know. Cloud's doubting you guys. <laughs> Show her up, guys. <laughs> Show her up. <laughs> Kids, your tia Claudia's misbehaving today. I know. All right. You guys ready to blend? We're ready. Yes. Do you know what you need to make a good salsa? What? A plethora. Yes. <laughs> you know where that's from? <laughs> Stop, one game at a time. Okay, girl. sorry friend, sorry. We're, we're, we're laughing. <laughs> we're all screaming too, that's all we do. Don't be, no seas exagerada. Sorry, I'm You're exaggerating. I'm trying to tame them. Okay, I'm gonna chop this tomato so that we can blend it well. You're gonna get rid of all that juice for chopping? No, mija, it, whatever goes through here. I, you know, ah, I keep okay. everything. I'm not that kind of person. Okay, mira, ahí está. Oh, how beautiful. Do you want tomato caviar? No, I want roasted tomato pasta. Oh, oh girl. <laughs> With you, garlic. You can buy me some basil, some basil. Some basil. Okay, so for the chiles, these, all you want to do is break that little stem off. We're going to blend it seeds and all. You're not getting away from this fire. Well, those are a lot of seeds. I don't, get, I don't think we need all of them. <laughs> okay. No, you said. Well, we're not going to get rid of the seeds in the árbol, but that's like, that's a maraca, girl. I don't <laughs> want to make a maraca salsa. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get the gist, okay? Just I think we should do a video um, of just going over chilies and what you use them for. Um, if you guys like that idea, let us know in the comments. If I get if I get a good enough thumbs up from you guys, then we'll do it. Oh, you're gonna be one of those YouTubers. I gotta make it. I, you know what? I'm so not like good at being a YouTuber because I want to give you guys everything. Why should I make you wait? A lot of us have anxiety. I don't do that. That's rude. We just want to know if you're interested in a uh, chile video. All the commonly used chilies. Yeah, and then the thing is that I'm judged by my views. So come on, represent. Show up, views club. Let me stand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get the blender. I'm gonna do what Cloud said. Mete todo. Y ya. <laughs> y ya. So that means put everything in there and yeah. 
But I was hoping she would say more like, oh yeah. <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to look for a present for my sister for her birthday. And uh, we think it's gonna be the Dolce & Gabbana blender. Yes. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm not bougie, but that one really made my heart beat. Does it come with a toaster? <laughs> and a juicer? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. And a purse and shoot. And a purse and shoot. Girl, have you, seen, have you seen the runway? Like, it was magical. You <laughs> no, know what? There really is a blender, you guys. If you want to see it, let me know. Yes. It's not practical, but it's going to fit in your kitchen. <laughs> your kids might not go to college, but hey. <laughs> but you can get a Dolce & Gabbana blender. <laughs> Followed by your Gucci plate. We're just saying, you guys. We're not doing that. Tony Braxton did it and it caused her bankruptcy with her Versace plates and all that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Girl, I'm over here just trying to get a Kate Spade plate. <laughs> like, I, I take care of them like gold. <laughs> <laughs> not not like Tiger King gold, okay? <laughs> Don't go there. Get out of there, Cloud. Blend, kitty kitty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now I have peppercorns. If you don't have peppercorns, I'm gonna leave you a recommendation in the description area. I'm surprised nobody said focus to me today because you guys know I have ADHD and I don't focus. So you should be really proud that you guys can get a recipe. I usually tell you to focus. <laughs> okay, mira, un shot, un shot Tequila? de apple cider vinegar. Now pour it in. Oh, I'm really coughing. This I is know. Heavy. This is fuerte. Now you're gonna add your water. That sound is soothing, right? Oh, I, know. <laughs> I saw the look in your eyes. I've been meaning to tell you. Mm -hmm. I look at you and I fail. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That hamburger, <laughs> that hamburger was really good. That hamburger was really good, you guys. Now you add your salt. Why you gotta make me blush in front of everybody? Stop it. But I'm not showing your face. Yeah, but you know, everybody knows I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, let's blend this. Tres, dos, uno. So once you scrape that down, you can add a little bit more water. It depends on your chiles and how dry they are. So just hang tight. I'm showing you how to adjust your salsa. Once you've blended into a good consistency, you wanna add your lemon juice and lemon zest, okay? Agarrense. Hold on for your life. We're gonna give it one more quick blend. And that's usually how I make salsas. I can make it this way today, and then next week I'm like, I feel like it needs a different flavor. Not only am I teaching you how I make salsa, I'm teaching you how I particularly make salsa. Friends, you are in for a treat with this salsa. My mouth is still watering. You know when the mm -hmm. spice is just addictive and good? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay, no let's share chicken bouillon. This is the kind of salsa that I wish I had when I'm eating street tacos. Like <gasps> super, super spicy. And this will last a while in your refrigerator if you guys don't eat it because we have vinegar and we have uh, citrus. And we didn't add any onion to this. So you guys are gonna be able to keep it in your refrigerator quite some time. This salsa is amazing with sunny side up eggs and this just over it. So good. You guys ready to taste this? I'm ready. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We love you, we adore you, and on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Welcome to our chip party. Hey. Va a estar fuego aquí, va a estar enfurecida la cosa. I went for a lot. Oh my gosh, what was I thinking? I have water here. Stand by. Let's share with the other one, okay? Porque está brava. It's furious. Is Boo Boo snoring? He is, sorry. Boo Boo is snoring. I brought my kid to work today. <laughs> I want you all snoring out there. <laughs> all right. If I can get through this, which I will. If you've had Korean fire noodles, you can do this. For some reason, father in law seem to love this kind of salsa. Right? I don't know what it is, but I noticed that. All right, so I guess let's show the men that we can handle this. Yep, you're handling it okay. Here's the problem with the salsa. It might be a problem or a great thing. You put this at the table, 
when you're hanging out with your family, even after you guys had dinner, you're gonna keep munching, it's addictive. You can taste the smokiness. The heat that it brings has flavor. There's nothing that I hate more than like spicy food without flavor. This has a lot of flavor in it. I've itemized the amount of chile. <laughs> she she meant is that she itemized. I itemized <laughs> each chile, each garlic, each ingredient just for you to make it easier. And I hope that you guys enjoy this. I'm gonna dump a lit. I'm being naughty today. That's okay. Us two sharing that bowl, we're good. You guys want some? Get ready for it. If I took this heat, you should too. Open wide. Except those of you that have asthma, tengan cuidado, be careful. Hello and welcome amigos. Happy National Burrito Day. And today I'm gonna be making you a guisado burrito. And if you don't know what a guisado is, keep watching. For today's guisado, you're gonna need one to two pounds of ground beef. And if you don't have ground beef, you can use ground chicken. So go ahead and add one teaspoon of ground cumin, your desired amount of black pepper. I'm just hoping it lands in that bowl. It did, <laughs> in that big bowl. <laughs> in that big bowl. And you can find the acrylic spice containers in our Amazon storefront. And the link is in the description area and now we're pinning it for you. So just look in the comments, it's gonna be the first one. So go ahead and add half a chopped onion. Whoa, I won't want it to shine. Your friends are here. They're here for me. Drizzle about half a tablespoon of olive oil or whatever oil you have at home and combine all your ingredients. What kind of olive oil are you using? I've never seen that bottle before. <sighs> don't tease. I ran out of our favorite olive oil and I have this one from Costco and I don't know how I feel about it. Oh, that's why you're not showing us. No, I can't. <laughs> but I'm gonna finish using it. I have a whole bottle to go. Don't worry, Views Club, I'll sneak a peek and tell you on tomorrow's episode what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start mailing it out. <laughs> Hiding it. <laughs> Put duct tape on it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to infuse it with some, some birria seasonings. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> and once you're done combining your ingredients, go ahead and set it to the side. I pre-soaked about nine chile guajillos in hot water and you just wanna let them soak in there until they get nice and soft or you can use the boiling method which takes about the same amount of time. I'm gonna use a little bit of this water so we can blend. You wanna add two roasted tomatoes and two roasted garlics. And for those of you that like spice in your food, you can add some chile de arbol and that's gonna be up to you because I've been known to make really spicy salsa to the point where my family doesn't wanna to talk to me. Mm -hmm. That happened to me recently. Thanks for the warning, little girl. <laughs> you got me good. And now you're gonna blend until smooth. And boom done, amigos. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. And then you're gonna add your ground beef. And the reason I'm using my hands to put the beef in, it's because um, it's authentic that way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're able to crumble up that meat. <laughs> yeah. You wash your hands a lot. And I'm grateful for that. I have counted one time how many times I washed my hands and it was like 25 or something, girl. What? Because you're always in the kitchen. That's right. Continue to cook your ground beef on that medium heat for another four to five minutes and just start breaking down your ground beef. Once you've fully cooked your ground beef, you're gonna go ahead and add your pre-cooked potatoes. And if you like to use a microwave, you can chop up your potatoes and cook them for eight minutes, or you can boil them for about 10 to 12 minutes. Add your blended chili sauce. I'm gonna use about a cup and a half of water to shake off all the excess chili and we're gonna pour it right on in. One to two tablespoons of chicken bouillon and one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook until you see that your sauce is thickened up a little bit. That should be anywhere from 13 to 15 minutes. Okay, amigos, we are all done here. I like my guisado a bit saucier because I like to dip my tortillas usually, but for those of you that don't want it so saucy, just use a little bit of less water and I'll leave the suggestions in the description area, but we are ready to serve and make this burrito. I'm gonna warm up our flour tortilla. If you guys need a recipe, I have a lot here on YouTube. Look up views on the road tortillas. <laughs> I try to help you differently in each one. They all have tips. To your tortilla, you wanna add your favorite beans. Today I'm using pork beans and I'll link it in the description area. Mexican rice, 
the star of the show. And I like my burritos this way with some cheddar. And boom, done, who's ready for a bite? And I'm just gonna show you another way you can plate this guisado. I'm nervous. Let's see what you say for National Burrito Day. I was gonna say it's hot, but he can handle the heat. <laughs> Take your time. Take babe. your time, Take baby. Your Finish time. chewing. Mm. Steph, do you have any tips for us while he's chewing? No tips at all. This is a super easy recipe to make, and even if you haven't thought out your ground beef, you know that you can still cook it. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> we do it all the time. <laughs> The teenagers won't stress out. They don't take out their meat in time to do that. Yeah, broth. don't stress out. And if you guys need help on how uh, to cook your beef when it's still frozen, let me know in the comments and then I'll make a recipe specifically for you guys. With frozen beef. With frozen beef. It's good. It's very delicious and it's, and it's good and it's spicy. Oh, you like the spice in there? Yes. Well, I didn't know it was National Burrito Day. Nobody told me this. Oh, I thought you liked burritos that you would, you would know. <laughs> this was a surprise for you, sweetie. Oh, I love surprise. Okay. Thank you, Mom. And I'm out. All right. Bye, Cindy. <laughs> I'm going to make another burrito, friends, but I hope that you guys are having a lovely day. Happy National Burrito Day. Let me know what kind of burrito you had today. And if you couldn't have a burrito, let me know what you had to eat anyways. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We had so much fun cooking for you today. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm making barbacoa two ways. Whether you have one hour or eight, not to worry, I have you covered. And guess what, taco lovers? Not only am I gonna save you time, I'm gonna save you a lot of money. Now let's go over the ingredients. For this delicious barbacoa, you're gonna need four pounds of chuck roast, two cups of water, four guajillo chiles, three ancho chiles, three chipotle chiles, half a large onion, one tomato, five garlic cloves, five bay leaves, three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, three tablespoons of pork fat, one tablespoon of salt, or two and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, five pieces of allspice, also known as pimienta gorda, half a teaspoon of ground clove, optional but not necessary, some avocado leaves. See, and it's that easy once you warm up your ancho chile to remove the stems and the seeds. And I'm gonna continue removing the stems and the seeds to the remaining chiles. And I just wanna say, for those of you that don't have access to uh, dried chipotles like this, that's okay, you can use canned chipotle and adobo sauce. I'm also gonna be soaking our tomatoes with our chiles. Go ahead and add your hot water. If you don't wanna use this method, you can place it on your stove top with some hot water and boil for 10 to 15 minutes. Once your chiles are nice and soft, you're gonna place them in your blender along with your tomato and one and a half cups of your chili water. You're also gonna add your seasonings, which are chicken bouillon, Mexican oregano, ground cumin, allspice, and clove. Onion, garlic, bay leaves, and your apple cider vinegar. Next, we're gonna go ahead and blend until smooth. And boom, done, now it's time to cook our sauce. Place your burner on a medium heat and you wanna add your three tablespoons of your pork fat. If you don't wanna use pork fat, that's okay. You can use some oil, you can use some shortening, but for the best flavor, you wanna use pork fat. After about 30 seconds, your lard is nice and hot and you wanna add your sauce. Give that a loving mix and continue to cook on a medium low heat for another eight to 10 minutes. You might be asking yourself, Steph, why do we have to cook this sauce? And I'm gonna tell you, this is barbacoa. You wanna remove some of that excess moisture so that we're not making birria, okay? It's not birria today, it's barbacoa. And that takes you anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. So hang tight and I'll show you what our sauce will look like. So that way when you're at home, you know exactly what to look for. Give or take, eight to 10 minutes, you're gonna notice that the color in your sauce has changed slightly and everything is well cooked exactly how we want. What you wanna do at this moment is you wanna taste your sauce. If you're gonna be adjusting your salt, this would be the time for you to do it. So that's where you have to make it comfortable for your home corazón. So go ahead and turn your pot off and now it's time to marinate our beef. 
make sure that we coat all of our beef. And this amount of marinade is perfect for four to eight pounds of beef. You can use any kind of fatty beef that you like. You can use cheek. You can even use this for your ribs, ribeye, you name it. It's gonna be good for all of those. Once you've fully coated your beef, you're gonna go ahead and allow this to marinate for a minimum of four hours. If you want best flavor, the one that you're gonna impress everybody with, allow this to marinate overnight. For those using this delicious recipe for your slow cooker, allow this to marinate for four hours, then place in your slow cooker and cook on low for eight hours. And that's pretty much gonna marinate it for you and keep all the flavors that we love from Barbacoa. Everybody else, marinate overnight. It's been about four hours and I'm gonna use our Instant Pot Aura Pro, which is also like a crock pot, a slow cooker. I'm gonna place a few cabbage leaves at the bottom of our slow cooker. And that's only because I don't have fresh avocado leaves, I don't have banana leaves, I don't have all that deliciousness. So this is gonna um, help enhance the brothiness we get from our barbacoa at the end. For those of you that got a hold of fresh avocado leaves, bless your heart, I don't have access to them, so I bought these uh, dried ones, which are also gonna enhance the flavor. When you smell this, you're gonna say, that smells familiar, it smells like a yerberia. It smells so, so good. Another uh, option that you have to enhance the flavor of this barbacoa, I'm gonna place two pieces of beef bone at the bottom, which is something I tend to do. You guys are familiar with what I do with the birria. And then you're gonna place your pieces of barbacoa right on the top. My home is a bit cold right now, so the room temperature is colder, and I was able to keep my marinade out for the four hours. Now, if you guys are in a very arid place or hot, you don't wanna do that because it's gonna spoil um, your barbacoa. Place your lid over the top, and now you wanna slow cook for eight hours. I left this to cook overnight, and what I did when I came down to get my coffee, all I did was press keep warm. It'll keep it warm for two hours, and my two hours just expired. But if you see that the meat looks picked at, don't make fun of me. I had uh, some tacos for breakfast, <laughs> but go ahead and take a peek. And your barbacoa is tender to the touch, and what I mean by that is just a little squeeze like this will start shredding it for you. So no need to take it out and shred. It falls apart on its own just as barbacoa should. And I wanna let you know that if you serve your barbacoa this way, you don't have to worry about it. Everything is tender and juicy, but for the effect and the look, you definitely can pour a little bit of that broth over. And boom done, a delicious barbacoa enchilada. That doesn't mean spicy, it just means it's packed with flavor. Before we start adding our barbacoa into our Instant Pot, you can either go with saute or keep warm. I like saute because it heats up the metal part a lot faster so that when we pressure cook, it doesn't have to wait for everything to get warm. What distinguishes your barbacoa from your birria is that barbacoa is steamed. Think of your ribs, they're not boiled in broth, just like we did in our um, slow cooker. It's steamed, so it's the part of the beef that gets steamed from all that heat that rises. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place our beef bones at the bottom for flavor and also so that we can have a little spot for our beef to rest. And to enhance the flavor of our drippings and the broth that comes out from our beef, I'm gonna use a little bit of cabbage. You can use, like I mentioned earlier, avocado leaves, uh, maguey. You can even use a uh, banana leaf, but I don't have those with me right now, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it comfortable for our home. I placed our marinade overnight in the refrigerator and now we're gonna add it into our Instant Pot. Make sure to squeeze out all that delicious sauce. All my Instant Pot lovers, you are in for quite a treat today. I'm gonna add 3 fourths of a cup of water here on the side so that it goes all the way to the bottom. And this style of barbacoa does taste best with pineapple vinegar. Uh, you can use apple cider. Uh, for me, for that added flavor that I love, I'm gonna add a little bit right here towards the top. You can include it in your marinade, or you can do just like I'm doing right now. Ooh, I'm so excited. Lastly, I'm gonna add our avocado leaves just over the top. So go ahead and close your Instant Pot. Seal the deal. Now we're gonna cancel the saute or the keep warm, whatever you chose. Next, you wanna pressure cook for one hour and allow for a slow pressure release. 
For those of you that are new to using an Instant Pot or even our old timers, when you're placing your cabbage or your bones, make sure you can chop them up into bigger pieces just to be on the safe side, but there has to be enough space in there to allow the steam to rise up and tenderize your pieces of beef or your barbacoa. And remember, if you slice your beef pieces a lot smaller than this, it's gonna be even more tender and fall apart, just like your slow cooker. And if you're gonna ask me which one I like best, I'm gonna say go with the slow cooker because it gives you more of the real barbacoa taste um, that I remember. What about you, Cloud? Slow cooker. Slow cooker. I'm gonna start off with two tacos because I already had two for breakfast. Don't look at me like that, Beast Club. Once you try it, you're gonna understand. All right, Steph was right. But they don't really judge us because they're just like us. I know. <laughs> It's for the tias that are watching with you guys. Ya sé que me están juzgando. Oren por mí. Las queremos, tías. Sí, las queremos. What I've said is just pray for me instead. <laughs> and you know what I'm noticing? That when people are serving their tacos, they're not packing them. And guess what? Pack your tacos. Don't forget where you come from. Pack your tacos and your tamales. Sprinkling of cilantro and onions. Your favorite green salsa. And I don't know if it's just me or if you guys do the same thing. I always sprinkle a little bit of salt on the top. Oh my gosh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> little rabanitos for you and your lime. Just perfect. Absolutely delicious. Who's ready for a bite? I am. I'm going to need somebody very special to say a... Uh, Buen provecho. You're warned, look away. <laughs> I think I can get this down in like two bites. I know you're so proud of this barbacoa because you greet me with food, but never at the door. She mm. had a plate for me at the door. I'm so thankful. Mm. <laughs> mm. Amazing. Mm. Well, let's wash it down with some limonada. Some Mexican limonada. This is absolutely delicious. If your partner doesn't propose to you after this, and if you're already married, they're going to propose to you again. This is absolutely delicious. And you know what? Times have changed. We don't have a pit in our backyards. And that doesn't mean that you can't eat pretty close to authentic barbacoa tacos. Ahí va. Mm. This barbacoa healed something inside of me. And I know a lot of you out there had your rent raised. Not to worry. You have my permission to sell this recipe. Just make sure to say a prayer and light a candle for every single Mexican person that's been involved in teaching us how to make such delicious Mexican food. This is one for the books. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Now look away, I mean it. <laughs> as always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope this recipe works for you during the holidays or any time out of the week. And some of my ladies there, I hope you're able to get your nails done again. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today I'm gonna show you how to make beef mole tacos. If you love juicy, tender, flavorful tacos, these are for you. For this delicious recipe, you'll need three pounds of chuck roast, half a cup of mole paste, one cup of orange juice, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, and some tortillas. Add your mole paste to your bowl, add your warm orange juice, chicken bouillon, and combine until your mole is completely dissolved. Once your paste is dissolved, you're gonna start adding your pieces of beef. Once you've coated all your beef, you wanna add a little bit of oil. You can marinate this for 30 minutes or for best flavor overnight. I'm gonna go ahead and let this rest for 30 minutes. Today I'm gonna use my Instant Pot Dutch oven. If you guys don't have one of these, that's okay. You can make all of this on your stovetop. But for those of you that are interested, we're gonna link it in the Amazon storefront and I highly suggest it. I'm in love. It's amazing. I'm gonna press the sear slash saute button and we're gonna wait for this to warm up a good five minutes. So make sure you hit start. And while our Dutch oven is warming up, I'm gonna add a big spoon of lard. You can use oil, but the flavor that's gonna come out if you use lard is gonna be just like your restaurant. While we're waiting for our lard and our pot to warm up a bit, I'm gonna tell you why I love it. I love it because the cleanup is so easy. It's chef's kiss, it's a mom's delight. You have more time with your family and less time cleaning. I'm not about cleaning right now, so this is my new best friend. It's been about five minutes and I'm gonna start placing 
my beef pieces. I'm not going to place too many at one time because I want some to get a really good sear. And if you start crowding it, you know that we get more of a steam and a boil. We want to sear on these tacos. I'm going to allow these pieces of beef to sear for four minutes without moving anything. Been four minutes and I'm going to start flipping our pieces. You're wondering what kind of sear you're going to get. You're going to get a beautiful one. And now that I flipped those pieces, I'm going to add the remaining pieces of beef. And again, I'm going to let everything sear for another four minutes. Four minutes have elapsed and I'm just going to give it another turn to one of the sides where it hasn't been seared. Next, you're going to add the remaining of your marinade right into the pot. I'm going to add a little bit of water into our bowl. That's about one fourth of a cup, just so that we can get all of that delicious marinade right into this pot. It's so, so good. And I really did work hard on that mole, so I want it all in here. And the mole recipe, you guys can find that in the description area. We posted it not too long ago. And just take your pieces, move them around in case any of the sear pieces are stuck or any of that delicious crust, we can incorporate it into our broth. Next, you're going to place the lid over your pot and we're going to press our braise button and that's going to braise it for two hours. After one hour, I'll come and move the pieces around to make sure nothing's sticking, but there has been a time when I didn't show up to move anything and nothing happened. You guys are going to be okay. And boom, done. Our mole beef is ready for some juicy tacos. Look at how juicy and tender each little piece is. Oh my goodness. I, you know, I'm not going to make you wait. I'm going to need somebody very special to say, uh. And the salsa I recommend with these tacos is the salsa that everyone should know how to make. We did it over the summer and I'll link it in the description area for you. Squeeze a little lime juice. And yummy, yummy in our tummy. I'm really tired of eating super quick and easy tacos. So these tacos took a little bit more time, but they are so worth it because the flavor pulls through. I hope you enjoy these tacos as much as I do. Mmm. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Now look away. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you have a beautiful weekend. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. And here you go. An easy dozen. Your tortillas are nice, foldable. They're not going to crack. One of the things that we are gonna share is that if you have your pan way too hot, you're gonna crisp up your tortillas. And this is just me being extra to prove to you that you can get soft tortillas with even without your baking soda. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today I'm gonna show you how to make the easiest flour tortillas from scratch. If you think I can't make tortillas, I've tried it, this recipe is gonna be your go-to recipe because if I can do it, you can do it better. And before I start this recipe, I want to let all the gentlemen on the channel know that I'm aware that you're there. I sometimes get excited because I'm very vintage. I usually hang around with the ladies and talk to the ladies. But the more you guys talk to me and let me know in the comments that you're there, the more I'm going to remember you. So I hope you forgive me and that's the reason why I'm making you tortillas today. Now let's go over the ingredients. For this delicious recipe, you'll need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour plus a little extra for dusting. Half a cup of lard, one cup of room temperature water, and one teaspoon of salt. We're gonna start out by fluffing our flour so that we can get the exact amount that we need. Once you fluff it up, you're gonna 
clear the top just like that and place it into your bowl. I'm using coarse sea salt, but if you're using table salt, you're gonna stick to one teaspoon. I noticed that when I use this salt, which I get at the Korean market in a big bag, I tend to use about one and a half teaspoons. So it's gonna be up to you on how salty you want your tortillas, because if your salt is not perfect in your tortillas, your tortillas are not gonna shine through with your family. So add your salt to your flour. Give that a loving mix. Now for your lard, my tip to you is try to find morale. Uh, if you don't have morale, go with Crisco, and if all you have is armor, don't make them. The armor lard, every time I've used it, it made my dough beyond sticky to the point where I couldn't blend anything. So please uh, be mindful to yourself, be kind to yourself, because sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it's the products that you're using. And if all else fails, go ahead and use butter. You'll be okay with that. They come out extra fluffy when you use butter. I am going to say, learn to make this without having to use any of your extra dishes in your home. And what I mean by that is that once you measure your cup, you're going to measure it to your hand. So once you have it to your hand, you can kind of eyeball about how much you need. So it's going to be give or take maybe a tablespoon, but it's not going to make a huge difference to where you're going to fail your tortillas. And now it's time to start dissolving our lard into our flour. And I start by squeezing a little bit at a time. And this part right here should only take you about a minute and a half to two. And once you combine your lard into your flour, you're going to get this texture almost like a crumble, but falls apart a lot softer. Nothing sticks. Even when you see these big chunky little balls, they fall apart. That's when you're ready to add your room temperature water. I'm going to start by adding half. And I'm going to start hydrating our flour. I'm going to pour half of what I have remaining. After you add all of your water, you're going to notice that your flour is nice and hydrated because it looks almost like oatmeal sticky. Not to worry. That's what we need. Because if your flour is not hydrated, you get really stiff tortillas. And you don't want that. You want nice, fluffy, delicious tortillas. I'm going to dust my counter with about one-fourth of a cup of flour. And I'm going to use both of my hands to knead the flour until it's smooth. These days, it takes me about four to five minutes. And give or take after four minutes, my dough is nice and smooth. Nothing sticks. Some of you might need to knead it an extra few minutes just to get it this off. I so happen to have a heavy pan and been doing this for a long time. So if it's not smooth after four or five minutes, not to worry. Just knead it until it's nice and smooth, just like this. Once you have a nice ball, you're going to get a little bit of your lard. Warm it up in your hands. You're going to cover it. You're going to place it back into your bowl. And today I'm going to kick it old school with you guys. I'm going to use a damp cloth. Make sure to wring out all the water and then you're going to cover. And now you want to allow your dough to rest in the warmest spot in your kitchen. That doesn't mean leave it outside for the sun to hit it completely. But I'm going to place it in my oven at zero degrees with the light on, just so it's nice and warm while our flour combines and just gets perfect for us to do our next step. It's been 15 minutes and our dough is nice, soft, and ready for us to make into little balls. Look at how soft our dough is. It's just beautiful. You see that? And now you want to start making little balls. These days I don't stress it to be perfect. I just make the balls the size of my hands and that seems to work. This is the softest dough that I've worked with based on the measurements. And I know that if it's soft enough for me, it's going to be amazing to you guys. 
Give or take, you're gonna end up with 10 to 12 tortillas. It's gonna vary with the size of your hands and the way that you shaped your balls. Often you share with me that your tortillas look like maps and I'm gonna tell you why in just a moment. Take a little bit of lard, warm it up in your hands. Tap all of your little balls so they don't dry up in the process. And you're gonna start rolling them up. And what I mean by rolling them up, it's smoothing them out. And when you roll your tortillas, you get a smoothness over the top so that whenever you're stretching your tortillas and making them round, they stay rounder than the map of your state. Okay, I'm not poking fun. I'm just listening to what you guys tell me. And when you feel that you've already used all the lard from your hands on your tortillas, you can do a little bit more. You know, warm it up and keep it going. For those of you that have ailments or arthritis and your hands hurt, not to worry, that's what the kids are here for, for you to pass down the recipe and show them how to make tortillas. Just be patient, they're learning. You see this little bubble here? That means that you kneaded your dough to perfection. These are gonna be the softest, stretchy tortillas that you will ever make. And now we're gonna allow them to rest for five minutes. And while you're resting your dough that second time, you wanna get your cast iron started or wherever you're gonna be making your tortillas. I currently have this set on a medium high heat so that when I come with my tortillas, I can lower the temperature because it has to be just right to get the perfect Sonoran style tortillas. It's been about five minutes and we're gonna get started on rolling our tortillas. I like to take a little bowl and put some all purpose flour, give it a press, turn it over, give it a press and any excess, I dust it on my counter. This dough is so easy that I don't need to do the old school way for the ends. I just go around like this and look at that. Nice and round. And now you're going to start rolling your tortilla. I like to make it into a sandal because it makes it for a nicer round shape for you. Especially if you're a beginner. It gives you a point of reference. And I'm not pressing hard, it's just a light hand. This masa is so stretchy that you'll end up with a lot of folds because it's that pliable. And right here, I'm just reshaping it to make sure that we guarantee ourselves a round tortilla. And then I continue to stretch. I was making salsa, so excuse the cilantro. <laughs> you see all these folds? That's because it's so soft. I'm better off just stretching it with my hand at this point. So just reshape it into the roundness that you love. And remember, your tortillas are not perfect. You're going to grab them, roll them in a burrito or with your guisados. Just as long as the flavor is there, that's a good starting point for you. Okay? Don't worry about being perfect. You'll get there. The more you make tortillas, the more of a pro you're going to be, and then boom, you're going to make tortillas just like this one day. And boom, done. Light and fluffy tortillas every single time. Ooh, that one was hot. <laughs> hot fire, so be careful. One of my favorite things about Sonoran tortillas, it's how thin and light they are, okay? They're not gonna lay heavy on your stomach. Uh, it is just a perfect combination for your guisados, your stews. They're so thin, you can see the pattern straight through the tortilla. Look at that. And here you go, an easy dozen. Your tortillas are nice, foldable. They're not gonna crack. One of the things that we are gonna share is that if you have your pan way too hot, you're gonna crisp up your tortillas. And this is just me being extra to prove to you that you can get soft tortillas with even without your baking soda. I grew up not using it, and this is no different for me. So it should be super easy for you guys to get your tortillas done. And even the way that I folded them for you right now, you can just put them back together and no problems at all. For those of you that want to keep your tortilla balls for meal prep, I would suggest you press them like this and you place them in a bowl so that they don't overlap each other. You can use a wax paper and 
continue the same process. Cover it and place it in your refrigerator. But before you start using them, you have to take them out and keep them at room temperature for about 30 minutes so that you can get a good stretch. If you try to stretch your tortillas right out of your refrigerator, it's gonna to be too cold and it's gonna defeat the purpose of some delicious tortillas. And they're gonna last you a good week, if not two, in your refrigerator because you have the lard. There's nothing that's gonna ruin them. The only thing you have to check is for moisture. Uh, and if you have too much moisture, then you can put a little piece of a paper towel to absorb it and you should be set. You can show off any day out of the week if you pre-make these. So if you're gonna make a batch, this recipe is good to uh, duplicate or even do like quadruple amounts. It's such a forgiving uh, recipe and I'm so excited for you guys to try it. Remember to save your Ziploc bag, wash it, dry it out, and that's gonna be just for your tortillas. You wanna save on your plastic and these, honestly, these are so durable, um, so you wanna save them. What I do, I wait until my tortillas are nice and cool, fold them into a taco, and this is just a habit from growing up in a tortilla factory and making tortillas. So if they're too big, you can just keep them that way and seal the deal. Well, that one's a bit larger than the rest. <laughs> Let's just give it a little scooch. And boom, done. You can place them into your refrigerator. They'll last a good three months in there. You know, these tortillas have been to the moon and back, so you guys are gonna be good. Just gonna add a little bit of butter to my tortilla. And for those of you that it's gonna be your first time making tortillas and you're a little bit nervous, let us know in the comments. Cloud and I will catch it. Although I keep to myself a lot these days, it's God, family, and Views Club for me. Um, we'll keep a close eye so that we can help you through your troubles, which this recipe, you're pretty much guaranteed. It's gonna boost your ego, okay? <laughs> and that's okay every once in a while. Just so long as you come from a good place. Now I'm gonna need somebody very special that subscribed to Views on the Road to say ah. Uh, before I take a bite, I do wanna share a few tips with you. If your burner is too hot, you're gonna have really flaky, crispy tortillas and they're not gonna be soft and pliable. But if your heat is not hot enough, you're not gonna cook it within the allowed time to have soft tortillas. So anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds with the right temperature. And as I mentioned, I start heating up my cast iron about five minutes on a medium high heat. And once I cook my first tortilla, I know if I need to lower it or place it a little bit higher. And this is gonna take time for you guys to get it done for those of you that are new, but those of you that know how to make tortillas, I think this is gonna be your go-to recipe, so please come back and let me know what you think. Mmm, 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 so good. <laughs> your original love. My favorite comfort food. You can't go wrong with some tortillas. What do you have in the back in the Instant Pot? I have some beans because I'm, and lately I've been craving a lot of my, uh, comforting foods because I'm on a spiritual journey connecting more and more with God and with my community. So I'm keeping myself healthy and safe. For those of you that are going through a lot, whether your stress, your mental health has taken over, try this dozen of tortillas. Be patient with yourselves. And if this is your first time making these, allow yourself two hours. If you've made tortillas before, you'll get these done in 45 minutes to one hour. So make a double batch for yourself and enjoy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. absolutely delicious as always cloud and i are wishing you the best we absolutely adore you we hope that you had a lot of fun making tortillas with us and thank you uh to everyone that left us a comment that your turkey turned out juicy and delicious to perfection just like we love it and on that one we'll see you guys tomorrow bye adios hello and welcome back to views on the road i'm your host steph and today i'm going to show you how to make a gallon size salsa for your family gatherings we have the tia and tios that take the tres leches cake we have the tias and tios that take the tamales i want to know who's going to be taking the salsa to their family gathering make sure to stick around to the end so i can show you how to make the crispiest chips for this delicious salsa recipe you'll need 15 tomatoes 20 tomatillos 9 anaheim peppers 8 serrano peppers eight jalapeño peppers, two large onions, one large purple onion, one garlic bulb, four limes, two bunches of cilantro, 10 dried pasilla chiles, four tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of Mexican oregano, one tablespoon of cumin, and if you love spice, use 15 chiles de arbol. 
I've removed all the stems from all of our chili peppers. I've sliced our onions and peeled our garlic. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a little bit of oil over all our ingredients so that we can get a beautiful roast in our oven. And for those of you that don't have a working oven at the moment, not to worry, uh, you can do this on your stovetop. And while you're coating your ingredients with some oil, you wanna make sure to have your oven on a high broil. Move your oven rack close to the broiler, okay? I ended up using three baking sheets for this process. So, you know, if you have to, you only have one baking sheet, not to worry, just take your time. You can still make a delicious salsa. And you're gonna continue on a high broil until everything is nice and roasted. Make sure to come and check every 15 minutes and I'll see you when it's all done. For your dried pasilla chiles, you want to toast them a little bit until they puff up. Once they puff up, you want to remove the stems and the seeds from them. If you don't have access to pasilla chiles, you can use ancho chiles, but definitely it's going to change the flavor. Once you remove the stems and the seeds in a bowl, you're going to add your hot water and you're going to allow your chiles to soak and get nice and soft. The Anaheim peppers are roasted enough to where you can see the skin detaching from them. And since the skins tend to be a little bit thicker, I'm going to be removing our Anaheim peppers and I'm going to continue to roast until everything's nice and toasty. Cloud helped me remove the stem and the seeds from our Anaheim peppers. And you're going to add your jalapenos and your serranos as they are with the skin on. Let it happen. There's going to be a lot of love in this blender. And we are going to be blending in batches. I'm gonna add our roasted tomatillos along with the delicious juice at the bottom. Ooh, it smells so good in this kitchen. You guys know how I am, I wanna add more, but I can't, so take it easy. <laughs> and boom, we're not done yet. We got a few more batches to blend. Once you blend your tomatoes and you're almost done, that's when you're gonna blend your seasoning. So go ahead and add your ground cumin, your Mexican oregano, your salt, and now you're gonna blend till smooth. And boom, done. And now you wanna squeeze the juice of your limes. I'm gonna use a total of four. But if you're gonna need this for to last you about a week or two, you're gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar along with your lemon juice. And now you're gonna give that a loving mix until everything is well combined. You don't wanna to wanna to sing to the salsa? Mm. Beautiful, I just want you to know you're my favorite salsa. You'll have to adjust your salt to taste, but I gave you a really good starting point. And once your salsa is ready, allow it to cool before you refrigerate it. Or you can take it straight to your party like this. And you do not want to add your cilantro and your chopped onions up until you're ready to serve your salsa. Because if you add this into your salsa right now and you say you need it longer than seven days, it's going to end up spoiling. So you don't want to do that. So that it's easier for me and for you, I'm gonna pour most of this back into the blender so that I can show you the container I'm gonna be placing my salsa in before I go to my celebrations. Cloud will link this big gallon jar for you guys in the description area. Also, if you don't have access to these jars, not to worry, just save your gallons of water. You know how we do it. In order to have the crispiest corn chips, you're gonna have to dry them out a little bit. What I like to do, I like to cook them for a minute or so and remove all the excess moisture. With an uncoated wooden spoon, wooden chopstick, or, or toothpicks, you're gonna check how hot your oil is. And when you see it bubbling, that means that you're ready to fry. I needed something big, so I am going to be frying in my roasting pan.
you want to have enough room for your corn chips to be able to move around so don't overcrowd your pot or in my case the roasting pan and when your corn chips look nice and toasty that means that they're ready to come out and by toasty they look like a nice golden color And as soon as they come out, you want to salt them so that that way your salt can stick to your corn chips and it just tastes a lot better. Give that a little shake. And I'm going to continue with the remaining corn chips. When you're serving your big portion of salsa, you're gonna take your cilantro and your onions, you're gonna add that into your salsa. You're gonna mix it around just like this. And boom, done. We have chip fest in our family every year and I'm so happy you get to join us today. I'm gonna to need somebody very special that likes spicy salsa to say ah. Uh, I know some of you cannot handle so much heat, so I'm going to leave a lot of suggestions for you in the description area. And now I'm going to dig in. Mmm. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. And I do have a quick tip for you guys. If you don't want to toast your tortillas, I understand you can leave them out over your counter or in an appropriate place to let them dry out. But depending on your climate, they might end up absorbing more moisture. So I think it's safe for you to toast them and then cut them up and fry them. My right is here, I gotta go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you enjoyed making salsa with us today. And if you did, make sure to tag us on your social media. Leave us a comment. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today I'm going to show you how to make a chicken and rice casserole like you've never had before. We're going to be using a white delicious creamy sauce. Now let's go over the ingredients. If you love King's casserole, you're going to love the smell of this one and I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. For this delicious recipe, you'll need one shredded rotisserie chicken, 14 corn tortillas, white rice, chihuahua cheese, two cans of white beans, three cups of heavy whipping cream, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, four roasted green peppers, one teaspoon of onion powder, and a dash of white pepper. To avoid sogging in your casserole, you wanna to toast your tortillas. It's more than just warming them up. Lately, they've been super soggy for me. So I'm gonna to toast them up almost to a tostada style, but just enough to get all the moisture out. I'm combining our rice and our beans. And for our rice, all I did was boil white rice, add one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, and it just enhanced the flavor just slightly. And you just want to gently toss them. You want to keep your beans whole. You don't want mashed beans in this casserole. Unless you like it, then let me know in the comments why. I would love to know. <laughs> and to make it even easier for us today, we're going to go ahead and toss our shredded chicken. And the same thing, give it a gentle toss. Somebody's gonna say, Steph, how dare you? Friends, I dare. It's the holiday season and I want something super easy for you to make so that way you can relax and enjoy your family time. If you don't have heavy whipping cream, you can use Mexican crema, sour cream, half and half. Those will all work. Add your chicken bouillon, onion powder, a dash of white pepper. If you don't have access to white pepper, not to worry, you can use black pepper or you can skip. Add your roasted green chilies. If you don't have access to green chilies, buy the canned ones. They worked equally as delicious in this recipe. And if you want a little bit more spice, use your New Mexico chilies that you can find in your freezer section. Now we're gonna go ahead and blend until smooth. And boom, done. Add a little bit of your sauce to the bottom of your baking dish and cover the bottom of your baking dish. Next, you're gonna layer your tortillas and you're gonna evenly distribute some sauce. 
This sauce is so fluffy that if you're like my sister, you're gonna wanna dip your chips in it. And let me tell you, nobody's gonna complain. It's that good. <laughs> Depending on the brand of whipping cream that you're using, sometimes you'll find that it comes out more whipped and sometimes a little bit runnier. And the one that I'm using today is from Costco, so it's super whipped and delicious. Next, you're gonna add our rice, chicken, and bean combination. And for those of you that are new here, I absolutely love making casseroles, serving it to my family, and most of all, enjoying the ooey gooeyness of them. Next, we're gonna add a few dollops of our sauce. And it's looking like I need a little bit more heavy whipping cream in here because it's so creamy. So I'm just gonna add about half a cup more, blend it, and I'm gonna need it for the rest of this casserole. And that's how you make it comfortable for your home. Next, you're gonna add a layer of your favorite melty cheese. If you don't have access to Chihuahua cheese, you wanna use mozzarella cheese or even a Mexican cheese blend. But the goal here is to keep this casserole white and creamy. Our next layer, of corn tortillas, add your sauce. Next layer of rice, chicken, and beans. Another layer of delicious cheese. And as Ashanti says, oh baby. <laughs> That's how this cheese makes me feel so happy. <laughs> it has a beautiful buttery nutty taste that's just out of this world. I'm a fan of this cheese. If you guys see this bag here, pick it up and, you know, tag me. Send me a picture. I'll get really excited for you. Before we put our last layer of our tortilla, we're going to go ahead and add some of this sauce. And this seafoam green sauce is beautiful, delightful, just luxurious as it should be. So, so delicious. Place your tortillas right on the top. The remaining sauce. And last but not least, some delicious cheese. And now you're gonna place your casserole in your oven at 380 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. At about 25 minutes, you wanna make sure that nothing's burning on the top. And if you see it getting a little toasty, go ahead and place a parchment paper or a foil over the top and continue to bake. Oh, it smells so good and I can feel how fluffy the cheese is. Ooh, yummy. If you love King's casserole, you're gonna love the smell of this one and I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Now, who's ready for a nice delicious bite? I think you're all gonna be satisfied with this recipe. My tip to you is beware of the heavy whipping cream you're using. If you're using a grocery store whipping cream, you don't have to worry about anything, but if you're gonna use the Costco whipping cream, add half a cup of water so that you can get a more runnier base than what we did today. And now it's time for a delicious taste. I love everything cheesy gooey, and this is really gonna make me super happy. So you can look away now or you can stay around while I enjoy this plate. Mmm, mmm. I really love how warm and gooey and satisfying this is. And best of all, how just a few cans of beans can transform a dish and really knock it out of the park. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Those of you that are with me and love casseroles, let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this recipe, tag us on our social media. Mm. Wow, amazing. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. I personally would like to thank each and every one of you that are going out of your way to make a child's life a lot better than what we had. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. I'm really about to cry. <laughs> I'm crying for tacos. Friends, I do want to share that once you blend them, they do smell beany. <laughs> I don't think I can show this on camera. This? I don't think you should either. Hurry up and blend, please. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, before we take a delicious taste test, Cloud and I want to thank you guys so much for helping us reach this milestone. We wouldn't be here without you. 
Um, as always, we're going to continue to do our best and bring our best. We definitely read your comments and we listen to you and we appreciate your beautiful intentions, especially for this rough year that we've all been having. I wouldn't just say that Cloud and I have had a rough year. I think all of us as humanity have had a rough year. So it's beautiful to know that I can show up here and feel so much love and that you feel that love in return. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a recipe that my ex-husband keeps asking me to make. And if you've ever had our birria recipe, you're gonna absolutely love this one. For this recipe, you'll need your favorite style of birria and today I'm using our Instant Pot recipe, which I'll link in the description area. Flour tortillas, lettuce, guacamole, cheese, cilantro and onions, sour cream, and a lot of oil. Made some quick glue and this is gonna help keep our chimichangas together and all it is, it's flour and water. And just combine it until you get a nice thick little paste. To the outer part of your tortilla, you're gonna add a little bit of glue, cheese, birria, and now you're just gonna roll it up. I'm going to continue with the remaining chimichangas and before I do that, uh, for those of you that don't know what a chimichanga is, Cloud's going to tell you. It's a fried burrito. It's a deep fried burrito, yeah. <laughs> so yummy. And my youngest son is more like me, not like his emo. He loves the carrots. I'm just kidding, Cloud. <laughs> so I'm going to be adding to this chimichanga the carrots because um, you guys know our family, we like to put carrots in our birria. It just really enhances the flavor. So this one's going to be um, just absolutely delicious. He said, Mom, can you put carrots in mine? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. And these carrots are good. They are delicious. They're absolutely delicious. Yeah, so if you have uh, family members that um, have a dietary restriction, you can just use the carrots from your birria if that's okay with them and then you know just nobody's gonna be left out that's what family is about right mm -hmm. with an uncoated wooden spoon you're gonna place it into your oil and once it bubbles like this that means you're ready to fry if you see smoke coming off from your pan that means it's too hot and you're gonna have to wait about 10-15 minutes for it to cool before you can continue to fry And now we're going to continue to fry our chimichanga until it's nice and crispy and you get that golden color. Ooh, I'm so excited for this. And what I have going on over here is I have our consomme, which is our birria broth. And all I'm doing is cooking it under a medium-low heat just to thicken it up just a little bit. Optional but not necessary to enhance the flavor, you can use a little bit of our birria chili oil and a little squeeze of lime. And boom, done! Who's ready for a taste? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, ah. Uh... My tip to you is have a lot of fun with your recipe. This is an excellent recipe to meal prep. You can freeze your chimichangas, microwave them for about two to three minutes, and boom, done, okay? But I am gonna warn you guys, it might be time for some of you to look away because I'm about to indulge. Buen provecho. Thank you. Mmm. Ooh. And this is not spicy. It's so not spicy. I made it mild. And this is impressive. You impressed me today. Mmm. The beef is so juicy and the broth is just perfect. Oh yeah. This recipe is absolutely delicious. Make sure to tag us if you make it on any of our social media. Mm. 
the cheese is nice and melted. Everything stays nice and hot. It's perfect. No wonder your ex keeps asking you to make this. It's a mm. nice meal. It's all nice and warm and my tummy is just perfect. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to thank all of you that commented on our videos this weekend. You had me cracking up. I want you guys to know that I've sharpened my knives. Um, you guys really had fun with that salsa recipe. And if you guys want to see it, I'll link it down in the description. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back, amigos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the best meal prep chicken you'll have this year. It's not just good for tacos, which is what I'm making right now. It's also really good for um, to put over your rice if you want to place it into a torta, a sandwich, your tostadas. And the best part of this chicken is that if you serve it, it gets a little bit cold in the lunch, don't worry, it's still gonna taste really good because we have a cold uh, yogurt sauce that's absolutely divine. So go ahead and keep watching if you wanna learn how to make these tacos and most of all, if you wanna make this chicken. I took some chicken breast, I butterflied it, and I tenderized it nice and flat, and now we're gonna start seasoning our chicken. For your seasoning, you'll need one clove, and that's the spice, half a tablespoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, half a tablespoon of salt, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of sugar, and two cloves of garlic finely chopped. Well, coarsely chopped. You, you know what I mean, guys. <laughs> Go ahead and add your seasoning to your chicken. It sounds like you're recording by a rainfall. Yeah, we have a rainy day today. It's actually really beautiful. I'm not excited about the humidity, but it is a beautiful sound. and It's so pretty to look at. Go ahead and massage your chicken with the seasoning for a good minute, minute and a half. Be gentle, don't be aggressive. Not for this part, okay? Once you've massaged your chicken with the seasoning, you're gonna use the juice and zest of one lime, two tablespoons of olive oil, and if you need to use less, that's okay. And if you don't have olive oil, guess what? You can make it comfortable for your home. You're gonna add one third of a cup of chopped parsley, and flat leaf or the curlier one will work. One third of a cup of chopped cilantro, and if you don't want any of these, guess what? This chicken is just gonna be so well seasoned that you're not gonna skip any flavor in your chicken. You're gonna be okay, I promise. So we're gonna go ahead and massage this for another 30 to 40 seconds just until it's well combined. And boom, done amigos, our chicken is well seasoned. You can save your marinade for later use, you can freeze it, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna place this right into our multi-cooker. One of our Views Club friends suggested that we get the Aura Pro Instant Pot, and friends, we are not disappointed. So we are gonna get started today, and we are gonna press our sear button. Cloud, can you help us out? Sear, saute, saute. Hey! <laughs> okay, friends, this is your Tia Cloud telling you, just like I tell my sister, do not touch the pot. Wait three minutes, and you'll smell the heat in the air. And now we're ready to saute some pollito. and we're gonna allow the chicken to sear for a good five minutes. After about four to five minutes, you wanna flip your chicken. And now we're gonna slow cook for three hours. Friends, I'm trying not to be such a bossy mommy, but I do have to tell you, don't start making your sauce until you've cleaned your kitchen, okay? You don't need any of the chicken uh, heebie-jeebies around. And if you haven't taken a shower today after you're done making a sauce, make sure to take a shower. That's for the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need one cup of plain yogurt. If you have Greek yogurt, it works well with this recipe too. Don't feel obligated to just use plain. And then we're gonna add about half a cup of mayonnaise. Did you get a tattoo? What tattoo? The green on your wrist? I should. I was thinking a about- leaf? Would you get a, a I don't know, I was cilantro. thinking about, <laughs> maybe I should get a cilantro leaf painted over um, my burn from last year. 
That you would work. If you don't have a burn, then what are you doing in the kitchen? What are you doing in the kitchen? Tell us. Friends, it's because there was a lot of stress in my life last holiday season and I managed to burn myself here, but it's it's healing well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's done well, it's just a mark. We're okay. <laughs> We're gonna add the juice of one key lime. If you don't have a key lime, the flavor is gonna differ, but you can use lemon or a regular lime. Works great, but if you ever get a hold of key limes, ooh, take advantage of it, friends. They are beautiful. We're gonna add a little small bunch of parsley. You don't have parsley, go with cilantro. And if I don't say cilantro that way, it doesn't taste as good. That's right. <laughs> I have a rep to protect, guys. We get more drama from not pronouncing the words in Spanish than we do the other way. So like if we say cilantro, our friends, our amigos that speak Spanish, our and our family will come for us, guys. Yes, and some of our views club friends would be like, <laughs> están haciendo, what are you guys doing? You guys know how to say it, so say it right. <laughs> You're gonna need uh, garlic, if you have two or three, it'll work perfect. One jalapeño. <laughs> you like how I said that? <laughs> but say it how you want to say it. Un jalapeño. You're gonna add one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of ground cumin. I love those acrylic spice containers. You got me into them. They are, they're magical, they're great. It took me a while to take them out of storage and now that they're here, I'm like, where have you been the past <laughs> few months, you know? <laughs> You're gonna need uh, one teaspoon of salt and now we are gonna blend until smooth. You guys ready to get to dancing? Yeah, Was that here. one teaspoon of cumin? One teaspoon of each, yeah. Oh, okay, One teaspoon of black easy. pepper, one teaspoon ground cumin, and one teaspoon salt. And obviously you adjust your salt to taste before I forget. One fourth of a cup of olive oil. Friends, for those of you that get a little bit, um, like how much did you add, Steph? Don't worry, it's all in the description area. I think we tried it for three recipes where we didn't add in the description area to see if you guys would prefer that. For those of you watching on your TV, hello. Um, so everything's in the description area and I'm trying my best to let you guys know the measurements as we cook. And boom, done. And boom, done, amigos. Our chicken is ready, it's juicy, it's tender, and I'm just gonna take it over to the chopping block and I'm gonna chop this up into little pieces like you would see at a taco shop because apparently I can't get enough tacos. But I'm gonna be letting you know. We dream of tacos. We do dream of tacos and other things you can pair this chicken with. It doesn't have to be tacos, and we'll talk about that while I'm chopping. We're gonna be using a roasted salsa today. I'll leave all the ingredients I used for this particular one today. All I did was roast, all the ingredients blend, and now I'm gonna cook it just a little bit to keep it nice and warm and to preserve it a little bit longer for me this week. I'm gonna be warming up some flour tortillas and then we are ready to start chopping up this chicken taco style. Mm -mm -mm. Before I start chopping our chicken, I wanna go over what we have here. I have some purple onions with a little bit of ground cumin and paprika. We have our red radishes, key limes, cucumber, freshly chopped iceberg lettuce, our cooked salsa. And for those of you that like a more milder but yet hot salsa, that one's gonna do it. Cause I know the salsa cien fuegos, you guys were on fuego <laughs> with that one. And here we have our chicken. You can really just use your fork to separate the chicken, but I want thin little slices like this. This is the look that I wanna go for. I'm gonna make Cloud's first tasting taco and we're gonna add a good amount of chicken. Don't be stingy with the sauce. Do not be stingy with the sauce. <laughs> Now's not the time to be greedy. Nope. Be greedy with your personal time. Yep. <laughs> and then all you're gonna do is just boom, boom. Oh, let, don't let me forget because Cloud will come for me. Just a couple of radishes for me. There you go. Thank you. The limoncito. Thank you, sister. For Cloud. Mm. Oh my gosh, that sauce is spectacular with this chicken. And I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, ah. Uh, Buen provecho. Se va y se corre con el taco. Ah, iba a decir con el borracho, pero. Hey, 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 Cloud has jokes today. <laughs> For those of you that know, mm. talk to me in the comments. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
Your apple. Mmm, this is so much salsita. Yummy. I can't get enough spice lately. I don't know what's going on with me. I love it. Me oh, did you buy the Costco side of uh, Texas coffee down there? No, it's the H-E-B size. Oh, okay. The San Antonio coffee blend. Oh my gosh, so good. Mmm. These are really juicy. Delicious. Mmm. Oh, I forgot I can't be dancing here. Yes, you can. Remember when you used to uh, pack these lonchecitos for me when I was in the office? Mm-hmm. I think everybody that remembers uh, me doing mukbang remembers when I used to tell them, if you have a single, you know, a family member, or whatever, make sure to help them making uh, dinner, picking up the kids at school. Good looking out. Um, now I'm the single mama and I'm living my best life. Uh, hey, that's why I made you some agua fresca. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. Mm. All right, we have a tip for you. I remembered <laughs> you can make the same dish with different kinds of protein. Mm -hmm. You can use pork and you can use fish. And is that it? Oh, tofu. You can use tofu as well. Mm hmm. Sear it. You have to sear it. Sear it and then add the seasoning and then cook it for a few minutes if you're using tofu. Don't put your tofu in the multi cooker though. Use that one on the stove top, right? Mm -hmm. And this recipe is not just for uh, the multi cooker. You can do this on your pan. You can place it in the oven. You can place it in a regular uh, crock pot. Almost there's something else. Oh, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Please let us know if you make this recipe. And we want to give a special shout out to all of you who are driving and not texting. And Cloud's giving me that look because she was almost hit by a texter on the road. So if you're texting, put your phone down, take your time. You are valuable to society and to your family. So don't text and drive. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe, click the bell for notifications. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make a macaroni pasta salad. So if you love bacon and you love ranch, you're going to absolutely love this recipe. And guess what? This is not just great for your cookouts, it's perfect for the hot season. Now let's get this recipe on the road. Let's start by cooking our pasta and allowing it to cool before we add it to our salad. To your bowl, you wanna add 3 fourths of a cup of ranch, 3 fourths of a cup of mayonnaise, two finely chopped chipotle pods, one teaspoon of salt, onion, and black pepper. I used a rotisserie chicken for this recipe, and you'll notice that at the bottom of your rotisserie chicken, you're gonna see all the delicious chicken broth. Go ahead and add that to this combination. If you don't have access to this, go ahead and add one teaspoon of chicken bouillon. And now you just wanna combine all your ingredients. Once you've combined all your sauce ingredients, you wanna add two to three cups of shredded chicken, eight pieces of cooked bacon, one large shredded carrot, one small chopped green bell pepper, one small chopped red bell pepper, one fourth of a purple onion, one to two cups of corn, one chopped green onion and a small bunch of cilantro, and last but not least, your pasta. And here's my tip to you. Sometimes, you guys might find me that even when I have a big bowl, I can't combine all the ingredients that I need. So I suggest that you get the biggest pot that you have, make sure that it's a cold pot, it's not hot, and go ahead and combine your ingredients in there. And now it's time to give it a good mix. I guess this turned out to be a one pot meal. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh... Hold on, before you get started, our friends wanted to know what I say to you before you take your first bite. Okay. And it's buen provecho. It's like bon appetit. Or enjoy. <laughs> Friends, before I take my bite, I also want to share with you that I'm going to be giving you suggestions in case you're taking this to a cookout and you need to pre-make this, um, and a few other tips that I'm going to share with you in the description area. Don't be scared. It says tips with an exclamation, and then you can go through those and see if it's helpful to you. Buen provecho. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Mmm. I had to move the camera up because your chungle was cropping the, the shot. Oh, really? <laughs> you got jokes today? <laughs> She's still out of you guys.
This recipe is absolutely delicious. You get a good bite, so if you guys decide it's not a side dish, you can make this as your main course and boom, done. This is just beautiful. I think you guys have a winner. Come back and let me know what you think. Yummy. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we have a special message for our View Spa Juniors. We love you guys. So this season, make sure to keep your dogs indoor. Look out for them. Even if you have that one person babysitting one of the dogs in the room, cuddling them, just make sure to take care of your pets, friends. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make chile colorado potatoes and by the end of this video you're going to know how to make a quick and easy delicious dinner. Now let's get this recipe on the road. Let's start by taking nine guajillo chilies and soaking them into some warm water until they're nice and soft. That should be 10 to 15 minutes. Three pounds of potatoes, half of an onion, your desired amount of tortillas, one tomato, four garlic cloves, three chiles de arbol, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, one teaspoon of cumin and black pepper, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, Mexican rice, refried beans, oil, and two to three cups of water. I've already cleaned my potatoes and now I'm just gonna cube them into smaller bite-sized pieces. And once you've cubed your potatoes, you're gonna place them into a pot of boiling water and I'm using a steamer today and I'm gonna allow them to steam for 10 to 15 minutes just until they get soft but not fall apart. To your blender, you wanna add your softened chilies, water, and the remaining seasonings. And now you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done! And for those of you that are not using a powered blender, you're gonna have to strain this chili. I know, sorry you guys, but it's gonna be worth it, I promise. Oh, that smells amazing. It smells Ooh. like comfort. Mmm, you like garlic, you're gonna love these potatoes. And if you love chili, you're gonna love it even more. <laughs> Once you've strained your potatoes, you're gonna place your pan on a medium high heat and you're gonna drizzle enough olive oil so that we can sear our potatoes. After about a minute, you're gonna notice that your oil is nice and hot and you wanna just go ahead and carefully add your potatoes. Once you add your potatoes, you're gonna switch your burner to a medium heat and we're gonna continue to saute our potatoes and you do not wanna move anything for three to four minutes. While our potatoes are cooking, we're gonna place our chili sauce into a medium hot pan and we're gonna continue to cook for about eight to 10 minutes. We just want our sauce to thicken up just a little bit. After four minutes, you're gonna come in and give that a quick mix. And if you're using cast iron on a glass top, make sure that you're cooking at a medium low temperature. Once we mix our potatoes, we're gonna continue to cook for another five minutes without moving anything. How fun was that live yesterday? I had so much fun on our live. I feel like we caught up on a lot of things. So if you guys were on our live yesterday, make sure to place a burrito in the comment section and we'll know that you know the cheese man. It got personal, I know. Oh, <laughs> my business is gonna be out in the open. I feel exposed. I know, I feel a little exposed too. <laughs> Woo, the burritos. <laughs> After five minutes, you're gonna start mixing your potatoes. And not all the potatoes need to be seared, okay? We just want a variety of textures when we're biting into these potatoes. Um, but yeah, they look lovely to me. So now that our potato's ready, we're gonna go ahead and add our chili sauce. And your sauce shouldn't be too runny or too thick. It has to be perfect, just like you. Once you add your sauce, you wanna combine your ingredients and you wanna continue to cook on a medium heat for five more minutes. And after five minutes, you wanna turn your burner off, give it a final mix, because we are ready to serve. To a pre-warmed flour tortilla, you're gonna add your desired amount of beans. And it's time to go, you've packed your lunch.
I'm gonna need somebody very special to say uh. I absolutely love making this recipe because it's quick and easy and also I can adjust the spice level since I use chiles de arbol, black pepper and garlic. I get a flavorful spice, but not too spicy. It's just perfect because the kids can manage it. So friends, I don't know. You might want to start looking away now because it's a burrito and it gets dangerous. Buen provecho. <laughs> you know how we get in this family with burritos. <laughs> we act a little excited. We or are you? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. That is absolutely delicious, friends. Whether you choose to make a burrito or plate it for your family, let me tell you, they're gonna ask you to make it again. We love our burrito stick. We do. Mmm. It's so comforting. I want to take a nap. <laughs> mm. And friends, remember to make extra so that you can freeze a few burritos and make your dinner time a lot easier for that one day out of the week when you don't feel like cooking. Mm. So good. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And friends, don't be shy. Let us know what you had for dinner down below. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Hello and welcome! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the most refreshing mango drink to keep you cool this hot season. It is hot fire out there and if you don't believe me, don't go out there. It's really hot, but today I'm going to keep you guys cool and fresh. You'll need five mangos, six cups of water, one fourth of a cup of sugar, or you can use your orange juice concentrate that you can find in the freezer aisle, and a lot of ice. Let's start by chopping our mangoes into smaller blendable pieces. To your blender, you wanna add your water, mangoes, three big spoons of your juice concentrate, and you can use any flavor concentrate you like. I personally like pineapple, and I definitely love it with orange. and you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done. Give that a good mix. And friends, you're gonna find that I did not strain this mango agua fresca. And the reason I didn't is because that should never happen with mango. And it has really good benefits for you. So if you strain it, the benefits from mango that really heal your body will go away. So for this one, I do not ever, ever, unless I wanna impress somebody that wants to chug their agua, I don't ever strain it. Did you just go plug this one? Well. Yeah. Thanks for calling me out, Cloud. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Buen provecho, enjoy. Thank you. Before I get started with my taste test, I do want to share with you that you don't have to use that much ice. I like to use a lot of ice because that first drink that you get is gonna be really cold and anything that gets diluted turns into um, infused water and the kids can just keep drinking it all day long. I don't know what's more exciting to take a drink or hearing that ice that's gonna cool me completely. <laughs> we both stay cool Thanks. and stay hydrated. Ooh, that's cold. That's delicious. It's slight, refreshing, and smooth. If you guys make this drink, make sure to tag us, let us know what you thought, and I have a feeling you're gonna love this as much as we love you. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome. Today, I'm gonna make you tamales for breakfast. 
For today's recipe, you're gonna need two packs of chorizo, and if you don't wanna use chorizo, you can use soy riso, and I'll link the recipes in the description area. Six cups of tamal maseca, two small cubed potatoes, and if you need this recipe to stretch, add more potatoes. Seven Wajillo chilies, make sure to remove the stems and the seeds. And what I've done is I've soaked them in hot water for about 10, 15 minutes. You just wanna wait until they're nice and soft. Seven eggs, four cups of hot water, and four tablespoons of chicken bouillon. And if you happen to have fresh chicken broth, you're gonna need four cups. Are you still liking the natural chicken bouillon? I love it. Yeah, me too. I love it. But I'm not a stranger to the other one. <laughs> Three fourths of a cup of lard. One bag of corn husks. Soak your corn husk in hot, hot water for a minimum of 45 minutes or until they're soft and pliable. Take your soft chiles and place them into your blender. Today I'm using a foodie ninja and I absolutely love it. And those chiles do not have seeds or stems. There might be a seed here and there, but it's not gonna cause any complications. Now, is this chile spicy? It's gonna depend on the brand that you're using. I'm gonna add enough of our chicken broth to blend. And now you're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Add your six cups of maseca. I'm gonna break up the lard and incorporate it into our maseca. Once you've combined your ingredients, go ahead and make a little well and add your blended chili. I'm in suspense right now with that small little bowl. Oh my God. Don't worry about it, we're gonna make it happen. Can you tell us about the technique that you have going on? All I'm doing is giving it a little squeeze, a little turn, squeeze, and we just wanna hydrate all of our masa. We appreciate you being patient with us. I appreciate you guys being patient with my bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and boom, done. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down our chorizo and we're gonna cook it for four minutes. After four minutes, you're gonna add your potatoes. Combine your ingredients and continue to cook on a medium heat for another five minutes. Give or take about five minutes, you should have cooked your potatoes to where you can see that they're translucent. If your potatoes aren't translucent, cook them a little bit longer. So go ahead and turn your burner off. And you're gonna add about half a cup of water. Ooh, that looks so pretty. It smells so good. <laughs> oh, somebody's hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. So what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna set aside the amount that I'm gonna use for all my family members that don't want egg in their tamales. They just want the potato and the chorizo. I don't know what we did to deserve you, girl, but I'm happy I did it. Thank you. <laughs> I love you guys too. All right, now we're gonna turn our burner back on and it's time to get it cracking. Oh, I get so excited to hear eggs cracking. Oh. <laughs> well, how do you say it in Spanish? Soy huevera. Soy huevera. Mm -hmm. Soy huevera. I love to eat eggs, especially as a late night snack. It's not always hot Cheeto, guys. You do make uh, delicious scrambled eggs at night in your beautiful toast. <laughs> you know what I like to do? I like to do room service at night for myself when all my kids are asleep and it's just mommy time. I That's got my that thing. from you. Yeah. I, I prep now my little board before I head upstairs. I'm proud of you. In a beautiful plate, that makes all the difference, right? Yep. Go ahead and mix it and mix it and mix it and mix it. Make sure that your temperature is on a low heat. We don't want stinky burnt eggs. We want some delicious breakfast combo. Oh, I love when you leave me in charge of this pan and you still have trust in me even though I failed us last time. Well, it's important for you to stay in touch with your arms. Well, I'm staying very much in touch right now. I need to work out my arms, dude. You got a roll. Oh. You know when kids do <laughs> Did you, Do your kids do that? No, your kids are sweet. Mine were always like, oh. No, the babies are angels. Are they? Uh -huh. I didn't realize how tall you were. I'm on my tippy toes just to reach this part. Yeah, I'm very tall. You're a big, fine woman. <laughs> I won't do it, I won't do it. But just know that you're a big, fine woman. Don't start, don't start. We need your towel. Do you know what? No, we didn't finish it in the comments, but I was like, yeah, No, 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 we have kids. We don't want them to do that. Don't listen to your tia kids. Misbehave. Uh, apparently, I'm still recording. Oopsie. 
And boom, done, amigos, our chorizo and our potatoes are cooked. Now, if you want your filling for your egg and chorizo to be a little bit redder, you can blend uh, two soft guajillo chilies and pour it right on in and it's gonna be the perfect color for you. Take your masa. I need like two little scoops. And maseca is so easy to work with that you can just spread it with your hands. Make sure that whoever's helping you has clean hands. Use Club Junior. I'm talking to you. And they always keep their little hands clean, don't they, when they help in the kitchen? They sure do. Keep it up, kids. And they keep it clean by tasting everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Add your filling. And if your family prefers spice, you can use some pickled jalapenos. Now it's time to give it a fold. A little squeeze there will seal it for you. And boom, done. We're going to continue with the remaining tamales. What I have going on here in our baking dish is I have one cup of water at the bottom and I use our bad corn husk. I just cut them down the middle and I'm just placing them here at the bottom, okay? So if you see that some of them get a little bit dry while you're setting up, that's okay. Just add a little bit more water to keep them nice and damp. And the other way I'm gonna steam them is on the stove top. And I did the same here in our little pot. So all I have to do now is add about, I'm gonna go with one cup of water, okay? I'm gonna use a heat proof bowl and I'm gonna start aligning our tamalitos. And that's just the diminutive of tamal, tamalitos. Yep. You guys know I like to do baby talk to you guys and everybody I meet. All love, all love. We have a lot of babies, almost a million of them. Oh my goodness. Don't make me get shy, you guys. Don't make me get shy. <laughs> I think you guys want me to work for the mole recipe, don't you? Mm -hmm. We're ready for it. Okay. I'm gonna use a piece of foil and place it here just so that we can let our tamales lean on them. Just like that. And you wanna place the bigger ones towards the back, okay? Make sure that you're sealing your foil nice and tight on your baking dish. You can use a kitchen cloth or a foil to place over your tamales. That way none of the steam lands inside of your tamales. Place your oven at 350 degrees and continue to bake for 35 to 40 minutes. Bring your pot to a boil. Once you bring it to a boil, lower your heat to a low temperature and continue to steam for 20 to 25 minutes. And boom, done. Who's ready for a taste? Woo. Just beautiful, right? This is a tamar that was steamed on the stove top. These are the ones that were steamed in the oven. Let me show you what I like to do with our tamales for breakfast time. And next, you're gonna place your tamales into your oil. They get a makeover. Yes, I'll do one first. Yep. <laughs> That's such a holiday thing to do, right? So you're gonna fry for about two minutes on each side, just until you see it's nice and crispy. I do find that if you're cooking for your husband, they do like it a lot crispier, so you might have to leave it here a little bit longer. And boom, done, our tamales are ready. Now I just need to fry an egg. This is the one that was steamed in the oven. Just wanna break it up in the middle for you guys. Ooh, yummy, yummy. You love breakfast, you're gonna love these tamales. And these are the ones with just the chorizo and potato. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... What a beauty. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Buen provecho. <laughs> mm. I went for it. <sighs> Don't wait for me. You enjoy it. You worked hard. 
<laughs> for those of you packing lunch for your family and loved one, this is a perfect tamal for that because even tamales, when they get cold, they taste really good. But if you're able to steam some and keep it warm for your loved one, they're gonna they're gonna show up with some gifts for you. Let me tell you. Guess mm. I'm rolling in with flowers tomorrow. I'm gonna need flowers for this cloud. It's <laughs> it's so good. Mm. My kids and I are breakfast lovers for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a snack, and this is a recipe that's gonna make your day a lot easier. You can just warm it up, serve it, relax, watch your favorite programs, binge watch us. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for spending time with mm. us. It does mean a lot to us. Thank you. And hello to our new subscribers. Welcome to the Views Club. Welcome. This is amazing. I really do think adding the pickled jalapenos in here adds such a huge difference, especially if you love spice. Mmm. Que rico. Time to look away. Hello and welcome amigos. Today I'm going to show you how to make ground beef taquitos. Make sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to show you a quick salsa and we're going to plate these taquitos three ways. This recipe is good for one to two pounds of ground beef and what you want to do next is you want to add your shredded potatoes, half a finely chopped onion, three tablespoons of tomato sauce, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon black pepper, half a tablespoon of ground garlic, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon. Is that chicken bouillon with tomato? Yes, that's the Nor Natural Chicken Bouillon. What you wanna do next is combine all your ingredients. If your mixture is a little bit juicier, what you wanna do is you wanna add a little bit of all-purpose flour because the last thing you wanna do is when you're frying this is for all the water and the juices to come out. That's not fun when you're frying. No, it's not. To about one and a half uh, pounds of ground beef, I ended up using two tablespoons of flour. And for those of you that are gluten free, then you can use a little bit of the maseca. Once you're done combining your ingredients, go ahead and set it to the side. What we have here is taco glue. You're gonna need a little bit of flour, a little bit of water, and just continue to dissolve until you get a thick paste. Take some of your taco glue and place it around the edges. Take your filling and fill it up. And when you line your tortillas up that way, by the time you get here, the glue will really stick because it's already gotten tacky. And boom, done. Sounds like you guys need a refresher. So with a wooden spoon, a wooden chopstick, your toothpick, something that's not coated, you're gonna place it into your oil. And once you see a bubble, that means that you're ready to fry. If you see smoke coming out from the top of your pan, that means that you need to wait and lower your temperature. And now it's time to fry our taquitos. One of the reasons I like making our ground beef taquitos this way is because whenever you cook it before you fry, you end up getting the ground beef to roll out and it just starts popping everywhere. So this is a lot easier. And the temperature is hot enough to cook your ground beef. Ground beef cooks so like in four minutes, four to five minutes, depending on your heat. And this is really hot heat. And you know what they say, once it starts popping, the fun don't stop. That's right. But <laughs> well, we don't want that kind of fun. <laughs> We're gonna continue to cook our taquitos until they're nice and crispy. That should be about four to four and a half minutes. So every minute, I'm just gonna turn it slightly, just like this, so that we can cook all of the sides and keep it nice and crispy. And as soon as you see something float inside your oil, you wanna use your skimmer and skim that out because this is what'll end up burning and popping and causing a little bit of chaos for you. Cloud, where can we find these skimmers? On our Amazon store front. Which will be linked down below. And once your taquitos are nice and crispy, go ahead and set them to the side. And now we're gonna make the Views Club Junior Mini Taquitos. And look at the difference, the mini and the regular taquitos. I can't wait till you tag me to see the Views Club Junior eating these tiny little things with their tiny little hands. Oh, I can't. Thank you guys for sharing the babies with us. Uh-oh, baby fever. 
hey, we get to enjoy the Views Club Junior. That's right. Shout out to all the babies that are doing the boom done method. <laughs> and boom done, our mini taquitos are ready. And friends, if you're wondering where these little baskets are from, they're actually from the Instant Pot, but I use them for when I'm frying, just to drain any kind of excess oil. I like them, they work. For your salsa, you're gonna need one can of diced tomatoes, one can of diced green chilies, five pickled jalapenos, a little piece of roasted onion, and if you add too much onion to your salsa, it's gonna turn white, you're not gonna get a red salsa. Two roasted tomatoes, a little roasted serrano, two garlic cloves, half a tablespoon of salt, and you can always adjust to taste, one tablespoon of Mexican oregano, and the juice of one key lime. If you don't have access to key lime, you can use lemon or your regular limes. Make sure to adjust that to taste. It's gonna be up to you if you want a smooth salsa or if you want a chunky salsa. For me, I'm gonna pulse because I want a chunky salsa. And boom, done, amigos. Add your cilantro to your jar or your bowl, and then your blended salsa. And boom, done, amigos. This salsa will stay for a good five to seven days in your refrigerator. Just make sure that when you're getting your salsa, you're using a clean spoon. For your first serving option, I have some veggie Mexican rice with some frijoles puercos, which is our pork and beans. And I showed you guys how to make this for our seven layer casserole. Go ahead and place your taquitos. Add your shredded lettuce, your crema fresca, avocado, some pico de gallo, and some cotija. Make it rain. And boom, done. Who's ready for a bite? Psych, we have to make the next one. <laughs> you said psych, thank you for showing your age. <laughs> and for the Views Club Junior, we have our rice, our beans, the amount of taquitos that they want to eat, and a little bit of nacho cheese for dipping, a little bit of lettuce, and a little bit of pico de gallo. And boom, done, Views Club Junior. For our next taquitos, we're going to use chile colorado sauce. And for those of you that love chile corrado, you know you need another ladle. And your cheddar cheese. And boom done, amigos, who's ready for a bite? Buen provecho. Thank you. These are very hot, so be careful. Mmm. <laughs> So chile colorado is a way to your heart. You guys already know, and look at this sauce. Ooh, you don't need anything else. It's absolutely perfect. Douse them in that sauce, just douse them. Yes, okay. Look at that. And are you gonna tell us how you made the red sauce? Uh, yes, I made it like I did the enchilada sauce, which I'll link in the description area. And um, all I did differently was I added a little bit of um, Mexican oregano and cumin. Perfect, thank you. Mmm. Wow. That's gonna get dangerous. I have nothing to say. You guys know me and Chile Colorado are best friends and look away. <laughs> we want you to be besties. Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. Mmm. You know what this reminds me of? What? Of being pregnant and just can't get enough of what you're craving. Mm hmm. So if you guys are pregnant, watch out. She's got baby fever. Mm, there you go. We're done. We're done, you guys. Really? Look away. Hush up, talk. She wants a baby. Okay. No, why are you teasing me? I'm like about to be 40 You've been years old. You're talking about babies all day. Because I love babies. 40's young. You're good. I'm done. All right then. But thank you for sharing the babies with us. <laughs> Cloud, tell us which one is your favorite combo for the ground beef taquitos. I'm more traditional plating, you already know that. The okay. rice, the beans, and then the salsita, but I'm not against these. These are next. These feel like a, a warm hug. You know, there's a few dishes that'll make me cry, and you guys need to look away before I start crying. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> And eating them this hot, I don't know, it just feels good. It's gonna be good for this cold weather we're having. Mm -hmm. 
Everybody wonders why the videos are so long. It's because we hang out and eat. We do. <laughs> In between takes, after takes. Mm. Boys, what'd you think of the taquitos? They're delicious. They already ate. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and I know you miss your casserole today, but not to worry, we really needed to eat these taquitos. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Another reason I love making our ground taquitos this way is because look at how much fallout we had. And you know, when you have a lot of that, it just pops on you, it's uncomfortable. So this is a safer uh, way to fry your taquitos. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make the most easy and delicious pastry puff breakfast casserole. And friends, if you love toaster strudel, you're going to love this recipe. <laughs> or you have two daughters just like Cloud and I, probably use the whole bag. <laughs> You'll need one box of puff pastry, 10 eggs, 10 pieces of cooked bacon, one package of fully cooked sausage, desired amount of cheese, one tablespoon of baking powder, one can of diced chilies, one sliced green onion, one fourth of a cup of heavy whipping cream, salt and pepper to taste, and two tablespoons of butter. In order for the pastry puff sheet to fit exactly how I want, I'm gonna be adding four inches when I roll it out uh, to each side so that we can come all the way to the tops. And that's just gonna be for our bottom pastry puff sheet. And I'm not looking for perfection, I'm just kind of eyeballing the measurement that I need and I'll be able to stretch it slightly once I place it into our baking dish. And now we're just gonna work on the top layer of your pastry puff. And this one, you just wanna roll out into the length of your baking dish. Perfect, and now I'm just gonna set this to the side while we work on the rest of our ingredients. Go ahead and crack your eggs into a bowl. To your eggs, you're gonna add your baking powder. We rehearsed this one for a while. Yes, friends, baking powder. <laughs> we don't rehearse anything other than baking soda and baking powder. <laughs> Cloud has jokes today. Add your black pepper, salt to taste, and mix your ingredients until they're well combined. And if you already know why you wanna beat your eggs really good, let us know in the comments. <laughs> beat it, beat it, friends. Beat it, beat nobody it. nobody wants to be defeated at breakfast time. <laughs> Once you've combined your powdered seasonings to your egg, you're gonna add your heavy whipping cream. And if you don't have heavy whipping cream, you can use sour cream, half and half, or just a little bit of milk. Your diced chilies. And those are just hatched green chilies. Yes, they are from a little tiny delicious can. Green onions. Bacon, sausage, and I only sprinkled in a little bit over half of the bag. Now, if you have those teenagers that are really hungry, you're gonna wanna use the whole bag in here. Or your guys' husbands, you know who I'm talking about. Or two bags, you know your or you have, <laughs> Or you have two daughters just like Cloud and I, probably use the whole bag. But right now, we're being a little shy. <laughs> Sprinkle in your desired amount of cheese. Hey, that's the second time you've given me a good laugh. Back to back. <laughs> And go ahead and start combining these delicious ingredients. Just a quick little mix. Doesn't require too much. Just baby, you're worth it. <laughs> oh, are you gonna start dancing? Oh, she did it. She started lifting that leg, guys. <laughs> Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna poke a few holes throughout 
your pastry puff. This is optional because I want it cheesy and whenever I bite into a toaster strudel, you get a little bit of that creaminess from the cheese. You don't know where it's coming from, but we're gonna place some deli cheese right at the bottom. So you're gonna need about six pieces. And if you have American singles, even better. I run out, but I suggest that instead of your cheddar. It's gonna give you more of the creaminess with your egg. It's gonna be absolutely perfect. And next, you're gonna pour your egg mixture right on over. And are we making this breakfast casserole in the morning? Yes, yes we are. And you can make it for dinner, and you can make it for lunch, and you can pack this if you're on a road trip. It's perfect. It looks like a garden salad, right? That's so beautiful. A breakfast garden salad. <laughs> <laughs> for our top layer of our pastry puff, we're also gonna poke a few little holes. So right when you get to the edges, you wanna pinch it like you would a pie dish, okay? And Music Club Junior, this is the only time that we pinch. <laughs> My kids like to pinch when they were little. I mean, I think that's most kids, right? No pinching. No pinching. Cloud's so sweet. She ended up buying Bebe uh, a book about hands aren't for hitting. <laughs> hands are not for hitting. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out perfectly. Well, you know, they pick up habits from other kids too. Yeah. And then at home, we just have to tell them. Really when you were little, did you like to pinch, Cloud? Um, I did. You enjoyed pinching? I did. So she speaks from experience, everybody. I, I do. It can be done. Keep your hands off. That's right. You know where that's from? No. And keep your hands off. No. What's it's from Dirty from? Dancing. What part is that? When he's talking to Johnny. Oh, no. Okay, enough with my Dirty Dancing references from the movie, guys. From the movie. So once you seal all your edges together, then you can start adjusting to make it look really pretty when it bakes, okay? What I mean by that, we're gonna allow it to come in the dish. Just like that. Okay, just keep it toward the edges right there to the side. DJ casserole mom. Ooh. Spin that casserole. I'm surprised you guys don't give me more jokes about me loving casseroles. They do, you just don't read them. I read most of them. You re okay, you're gonna have to start sending me those, Cloud. Okay. Make sure you're placing your breakfast casserole in a preheated oven. You're gonna need to preheat your oven at 400 degrees. And since our oven is now preheated, we're gonna go ahead and place it in there for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you're gonna come and check on your casserole and you're gonna place a foil over it. That way you can cook it for another five to six minutes and nothing is gonna burn on the top. This part is optional, but I'm gonna make it nice and glossy by just rubbing a little bit of butter right on over. Oh, that smells so good. Yeah. It's breakfast time, everybody up. <laughs> and boom, done, who's ready for a bite? And in our house with most breakfast, we tend to use the birria chili oil and we'll link that recipe in the description for you. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say uh. Enjoy. Thank you. Mmm. You know, whenever I buy toaster strudels, they're either out or I end up making two or three of them. And with this, I have plenty to enjoy. And thanks to Cloud, she got me addicted to toaster strudels. And now we have a toaster strudel casserole. I hardly ever indulge in any like pre made foods, but toaster mm. strudels are my favorite because of that puff pastry. <laughs> and to all our caregivers, this is an excellent recipe for you because it's super easy to make. Most of these ingredients are common in our household. The only thing that you have to look for is your pastry puff and you can find that in your freezer aisle. Like I said, you guys can always find me in the freezer aisle because I'm either getting juice or I'm getting a pastry puff. Sometimes a frozen shrimp, you know. <laughs> but this is a real easy recipe. Even if you're only using eggs and a little bit of onion uh, to bake this, it's gonna be Absolutely gorgeous. Mm. It's time for you guys to look away because I'm gonna get another serving. It's gonna happen. 
You can pair this with your choice of beans. We're using black today with a little bit of cotija on the top, our Mexican rice, and our achiote boneless beef ribs. Boneless beef ribs, achiote paste, and let me sh let's open it up so you guys can see how beautiful this color is. You're gonna need two boxes of this for that amount of beef, and it's just a nice r burnt red color, you know? That gorgeous. So you're gonna need two of these. Fresh orange juice, fresh lemon juice, half a stick of Mexican cinnamon. I have one teaspoon of salt here, and I don't know if I'm gonna use all of it. That's just so that we can kind of get the fill on how this goes, okay? We just wanna coat our beef with just a little bit of salt. And if you're using a regular table salt, it's gonna be a different um, amount that you're gonna use, right? I think table salt is a lot stronger than the Himalayan pink salt. So I had one teaspoon and that's about how much I have left, so I ended up using about half a teaspoon. So just adjust to the pieces that you have, okay? And you have to leave a little bit for yourself. You want your eyes to kind of get watery. So, salud. Salud, Mita. All the things we used to do in Mexico with these sodas when we were younger. <laughs> How much trouble did we get into? <laughs> Who's calling you, girl? That's our mother. You see how your eyes just get watery? And that's why you want to use a Mexican Coca-Cola. Now, you'll have to excuse me for a second. Can you guys see the sodas dancing in there? It's really excited. I hope you guys are as excited as this soda. <laughs> Yeah, what you want to do now is you want to add your achote paste. Ooh, be gentle when you're dropping it. Add your lemon juice, orange juice, and now we just have to blend. And we're going to blend at a very low speed. Boom, done. And you want a runny consistency. You don't want it to be too thick, okay? If it's too thick, it's not gonna cook the beef ribs to that tenderness that we want. They're just gonna get a little tougher. Just like that. Now you're just gonna place your cinnamon stick wherever you can find a little spot. Okay, so just adjust your pieces how you need to for your baking dish and I definitely recommend you use a glass one because uh, other type of baking dishes tend to produce a little bit more heat and the glass one it just, it works out best. Go ahead and start pouring over your blended ingredients, okay? Be careful because this paste or this uh, achiote does stain your clothing actually it does for dying it does <laughs> we're going to continue by placing another parchment sheet over the one we have and we're just going to give it a gentle fold okay i don't want to you know ruin your eardrums so enjoy the ride friends now that we've done that let's go ahead and place these delicious ribs in the oven Be very careful with that steam. And you want that sauce. You want that sauce. You can pair this with your choice of beans. We're using black today with a little bit of cotija on the top, our Mexican rice, and our achiote boneless beef ribs. This pairs well with some habanero if you like that spiciness. And I have some right here. And definitely, definitely, you're gonna need a lot of those onions. If you don't, ha if you don't have a preference for um, spicy, spicy food, you can use the pickled onions that I showed you all how to make. As always, Views Club, Cloud and I completely adore you. Wanna thank you so much for joining our channel. And on that one, 
We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Friends, before we take a delicious taste test, Cloud and I want to thank you guys so much for helping us reach this milestone. We wouldn't be here without you. Um, as always, we're going to continue to do our best and bring our best. We definitely read your comments and we listen to you. And we appreciate your beautiful intentions, especially for this rough year that we've all been having. I wouldn't just say that Cloud and I have had a rough year. I think all of us as humanity have had a rough year. So it's beautiful to know that I can show up here and feel so much love and that you feel that love in return. Um, we do have something very special planned for you guys for our next milestone, but we are going to need your help. So if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and click that bell for notification uh, because you are what makes this channel what it is. So I think I said all I had to say and I'm probably, yeah, I, I think I, I cried enough. I'm not going to do it here. Let me gather myself so that we can get a good taste test. You're gonna need some, a lot. I like a lot of these onions. And I know a lot of you can't handle the spice from the habanero. And if you didn't pickle your, your habaneros this morning, you can use this hot sauce. It's pretty good. We were coughing like crazy. Yeah. Those yeah, we were, but I still wanna talk to you guys. And if I have that habanero, I'm just gonna be sniffling the whole time. <laughs> we do have a recipe. Our mother taught us how to pickle habaneros and uh, they're not the same as the jalapeno ones. No, slightly different. A little bit different. All right, ready for your big delicious bite. Uh, Say ah. Uh, <laughs> I did it before he even oh, said Oh, yay, everybody's on board today. You want me to say it for you? Oh yeah, <laughs> so good. Mm-hmm. A little bit of rice and then what's next a little bit of beans yeah mm. friends this beef is so 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 good and what I mean by that is that with such few ingredients you're able to have them dance and when you dance it's like a choreography you know it's just natural and it flows and that's what happens with this recipe simple ingredients that flow well together now if you're gonna have this without the pickled onions or a little bit of spice you're gonna get a slightly different flavor and I would say you might want to add a little bit more sugar to your blend if you're not gonna add any of the spices that way you can at least get more of the sweetness but with this you get the sweetness you get a little tart and you get a little bit of that um, balance from the spice and the pickled onions I think this combination right here is definitely worthy of your Sunday meal or your celebration meal because, friends, it's kind of difficult to keep my hands off of this. <laughs> I know you're staring here because you guys want another bite and you're probably waiting for a tip that you know I'm gonna give you. Here's my other tip out of the billion that I never stop talking. <laughs> the one thing I'm gonna tell you is if you guys are like me and you buy proteins in advance and you put them in your freezer, make sure that your protein is completely defrosted soft to the touch there is no frozen parts or you're not going to get a tender cut it's very important that you defrost your beef or you're using a fresh cut from your grocery store okay unless you did it yourself then i'm proud of you thanks mom all right i'm putting i'm i'm putting this one fully loaded with beans everything in here ready They're so crispy that when they drop, you can hear them. Hello and welcome to The View's Kitchen. Today we're gonna to be making plant-based milanesa. We're gonna make it nice, thin and crispy and full of flavor, friends. Now let's go over those ingredients. I cut my potatoes and I have them soaking in water. You're gonna add a little bit of vinegar. Move it around and let this set three to five minutes. Onion powder, garlic powder, Korean veggie bouillon, and black pepper, and a little bit of water in case we need it. These are my two favorite Korean dashi das. This one is a vegetable, this is a mushroom one, this one has MSG, and this one right here does not. So it's gonna be up to you how you wanna make it comfortable for your home. Now friends, if you don't have any of these, make sure to use the bouillon that you have on hand. We need all-purpose flour to dip our milanesa in. 
Optional, but highly recommended for your side salad with your milanesa. I have some carrots, tomato, cucumber, and lettuce. And don't forget your lime, friends. I'm gonna add our lentils to my Ninja Chopper. If you guys have a different kind of blender, go for it, okay? I'm making it comfortable for my home. I feel like I need a drum that goes bump every time I say that. Some of you love it, some of you are fed up. And guess what? That's what it's about, being a mom and annoying everybody, I guess. And she's making it comfortable for her home. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna pulse a few times until it's nice and smooth, and then we're gonna pour it into our bowl. Add your ground oats. And I had to cover it because Cloud does not want to see that. Amigos, if you're as immature as Cloud, I want you to stay focused. We gotta finish this. Add your garlic powder, onion powder, layer it on, friends. Your bouillon, black pepper. Now it's time to use your beautiful hands. When it's starting to look like an oatmeal cookie, you know that you're on the right track. Just mold it in. If for some reason it's too wet, you wanna add a little bit more of your oatmeal blend, okay? I've strained our potatoes, and now I'm just gonna let them uh, dry a little bit here on this baking sheet. Separate them a bit. And we're just gonna set these to the side. Sprinkle some salt to your all-purpose flour. Dip your hands in a little bit of oil and lather your hands. You wanna get about half a cup, make a little ball, or as big as you want your milanesa to be, okay? Pack it in. And then you wanna start pressing it. Pressing it with the palms gives you a thinner look and a more even milanesa as well, friends. If you see any cracks, just pinch them together. And the more you leave the rustic edges, the more it gives that milanesa feel, right? Yeah, it does. If you see this is round and we got it to where we want it, but now you want it to look like a juicy steak. So that's when you want to take some of your ends off so that we can give it that that look of a steak. We're gonna continue by dipping it into our flour. Press, press, press. Flip it over. Press, press, press. Dust it off. If you see any cracks uh, in between, you can press, press, press because plant-based protein is very forgiving. I have my pan on a medium heat, but my oil is at about 360 and 370, okay? We will be double frying. Now, let's get started. After about five minutes, you're gonna take your potatoes and I'm just gonna place them into my little strainer. My little deep fryer, but it's a strainer too. <laughs> Our fries are hot enough that they're gonna to continue to cook and I'm gonna get started on our next batch. Before you start your next batch, make sure that your temperature is in between 360, 370 because once we add the potatoes, it decreases in temperature and then we have a little bit of problems. And after four to five minutes, we have some crispy fries. Make sure your oil is nice and hot. And you wanna be careful because we're not using such a huge thick binder because we want this to be light and crispy. So you don't wanna move these around way too much. You want your oil nice and hot. We wanna fry it up for about three and a half minutes and then we're gonna flip it. You wanna be careful when you flip it, you might need two spatulas or two utensils that you're comfortable with so that you can get a good flip and you don't get it to crack. Okay? Careful, Cloud, it's gonna splash. Woo! I 
I know you want the French fry, but you came for Milanesa. I want to break it up so that you can see how delicious and crispy it's going to be. The outer layer is nice and crispy and the inside is nice and soft, friends. Make sure you look it in the description because I'm going to give you some tips for those that can handle a little bit more calories. I'm going to add some lime to everything. Even to my face, you guys missed it. It splashed. <laughs> yep, we're going to do it up. Say ah! As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I absolutely adore you. We're always wishing you the best. And I want to share something with you guys. Y'all ask me how I'm doing it, that I'm staying happy and joyful through all the changes in my life. One of the things that helps me is to be grateful. Once you reach a point in your life when you're grateful for every ounce of everything that you get, you reach a point where you're just happy and jolly all the time. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! That's pretty amazing. Mm. It's great. I ate an entire Milanesa while we were recording. You did. And all you keep hearing were my mooing sounds. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> These are those um, plates that you order at a Mexican restaurant where after they serve you the plate, nobody hears from you after a while. That's right. <laughs> You guys know I eat everything. I gotta go. The babies are staring at me. <laughs> Bye, guys. We love you. Take care of one another, and we'll see you guys yeah. tomorrow. Bye. Tengo que servir. I need. I need power. <laughs> Deja te explico cómo trabajan las cosas. Garlic powder and onion powder. You think you got this? I got you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know how I want to make it comfortable for my home? Hmm. If you were to hold my camera and I dance, oh my god. I'm styled like you. Sakura Tai. Sakura Tai. Welcome to the party. Hey. First time train. Sakura Tai. Dude, you've been cheating me all week about the zanahorias. You, you're going to make me eat zanahorias no matter what. Yeah. You need to eat zanahorias de mesas que los ciega. All, All right. of our lentils in my little ninja shopper. Shopper or chopper? <laughs> I'm gonna because be blessing Sinaloa, I mean in Sonora it's difficult to say Sometimes when I'm talking to like sí. fancy people I remember I'm like it's It's not Chile, it's Chile And then when it's fancy people it's leche Leche. That's why I put on my like leche, leche. <laughs> leche. But normal it's like leche. Leche. Say it. Leche. 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 <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Friends, I do want to share that once you blend them, they do smell beanie. <laughs> I don't think I can show this on camera. This? I don't think you should either. Hurry up and blend, please. <laughs> Oh my gosh. What? Don't scare the kids. Kids don't get scared. Para los niños está muy bien los babies They sell those, um, those emoji things that have the you know what. So. You know, that reminds me of Justine girl. Because she her friends would always give her that little poo poo emoji. She's so adorable. I love her. She's one of my favorite humans. You know what this reminds me of? Making raw food. Are you done laughing? Ya terminaste. Yes. Controlate. Okay. <laughs> I'm still trying to hold it in. Componte. As soon as you're done, we, are, we can continue with the recipe when you're done laughing. Okay, we're ready. We're ready. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll help you get out soon. How beautiful. This cut is known as suadero and it's difficult to come by. 
I'm gonna slice it up to make it look extra pretty. And if you can't find this at your local butcher, you're gonna have to go to a Mexican meat market, a Mexican butcher, and you're gonna ask for suadero, okay? I don't want you to be nervous when you guys go. As always, it's gonna be detailed for you in the description box. If you get confused, just pull up the video to your carnicero and tell them this is the cut of meat you're looking for. Just remember to get ready, look decent. You know what I tell you guys. <laughs> go on your best looking day. <laughs> You'll get the best cut. Do you know that you only get about 11 pounds of this cut out of the whole animal? Okay, I didn't know that, but thank you for spinning some of that knowledge because I was here thinking, why has it been so difficult for us to find this cut of meat? That's why, because there's there's not a lot of mm -hmm. it. So if you see it, buy it. It's worth it. And since I finally found it, I bought a lot of it. And I have some in my freezer. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys are going to see this cut a lot more often on the channel, friends. You'll need some pork fat, salt, ground cumin, allspice, cloves, bay leaves, fresh garlic, and just a little bit of cinnamon. If you don't have pork fat, but you're going to your Mexican meat market, you're gonna see they have containers of pork fat, lard, buy it. You're gonna need it for this recipe. And some water. Add your water, your pork fat, salt, ground cumin, your cinnamon, your allspice, garlic, bay leaves, and cloves. Next, you wanna mix it around. Make sure all your ingredients are well combined. You wanna lay your suadero fat side down. And here comes the good piece. Close your vent. We're gonna pressure cook for 45 minutes. We are about to make a very, very spicy salsa. You're gonna need chiles de arbol, onion, tomato, garlic, sugar, and a lot of salt. We're gonna add all our ingredients into a blender. And if you notice, I kept the peel on my garlic because I want a thick salsa. You're gonna add your salt, your sugar. Where's your voice, sugar? It's allergy season. Cool it. <laughs> Just like my mother. <laughs> I'm gonna make you some tea, girl. Some tea. Yes, yes. And now we're gonna blend. Once you get it cracking, <laughs> just add a little bit of water so that you can blend. We don't want it to be super runny. We just want it to blend. That's all we're doing. Not too much, not too little water. <clears throat> Girl, that's burning my face. <clears throat> it's and, delicious with lots of flavor. And that's exactly what you need for these type of tacos, a really spicy salsa. But with flavor. Yes, with a lot of flavor. That sugar really does help balance the flavor in the salsa. Mm -hmm. Don't skip it. Don't skip it. You're so cheap, Cloud. Wow, well, you cleaned the counter. I watched, I watched you. <laughs> I know, I, I cleaned this counter like 20 times a day, girl. Mm. Okay, that's good. People are gonna act like they don't need stuff off their couch. They don't need to know what the adults do in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, bendito. Where's the little wifey thing? I'm moving in, I'm moving in. Friends, just releasing that steam, the pressure, it smells so, so good. This is gonna be nice and tender, soft. It smells like a taqueria. It does smell like a taqueria. I'm so excited. I know what you've taught us about that broth. Don't throw it away. Well, for this one, I put too much fat, so I don't know if you guys, if you guys are cheat day, go for it and I know how to fix it, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. Now it's time to chop it up. You ready? Ready. Ooh, it's so steamy in here. Guess 
I love actually getting out of this. This is the kind of stuff <laughs> I want. <laughs> We're almost there, friends. We're almost there. Just let me finish chopping this up. Face the steam towards me. Thank you. <laughs> that one just falls apart. Look at that. Ooh. It's talking to me. And it's still very juicy. Instant pot, we love you. <laughs> it's showtime, friends. Watch your ears. And you want to chop this up as fine as you want, okay? Make it look just like you, Views Club. Fine. Set your pan on a medium heat and allow your pork fat to get nice and hot. So give it about 45 seconds to a minute. After about 45 seconds to a minute, when, you're, when your pork fat gets nice and hot, you're going to start adding your suadero. We want to crisp it up a little bit, not all of it. We don't want to fry it, just crisp it up. Okay. For those of you getting worked up about the fat in here, that's what makes these tacos super special. One, that you can never really find suadero, and two, that they're nice and fatty and delicious. And three, if you're watching your dieta, then do this on your cheat day. Yes, definitely a glorious cheat day taco. Should I get closer? I'm Friends, we have a drifter. <laughs> it, when it starts popping after six to eight minutes, that means that you're ready to serve. But first, I have to steam these tortillas and you guys know how I steam them. I'm not saying, <laughs> get over it, Cobb. That sound scares me. <laughs> it should inspire you, girl. Like I, little mama. <laughs> little mama does inspire me and I'll tell you what. I love little mama. When you make me that taco, I'll feel inspired. <laughs> So after six to eight minutes, when you see it popping, crisping up, and somebody in your kitchen start to drifting, add your tortillas, steam them up, a few seconds here, a few seconds there, and we're about to serve. Mira, se vino un pedacito de pilón. Woo! Pilón for your mom, for your mama. Oh, don't be rude. The kids are watching. Hmm. Oh, girl, yes. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Is that thing gonna stop popping so I can show our friends? Yes, you're gonna okay. stop popping now. Mmm, so beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm ready. You and everybody else. Mm -hmm. You see me loading it up? Yes. That's exactly how you have to load it up. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy about it. You guys are scared because you see how big the tacos are and Thank you know I'm not playing. Well, I don't play either, but um, what I like to do is have one taco at a time on my plate. I like to dedicate songs to it, romance it. This song's dedicated <laughs> to the one I love. Each time before you go to bed, my baby. Ooh. I'm not going to terminate. Finish it in the comments, friends. And this sounds like you're not gonna regret. You're not. You're not, you're gonna regret not doubling it up. That, that taco got scared of the salsa as like bounce off, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready for a taste test? I'm so ready. We can add a little bit of lime juice. And this does require a double tortilla. Double it up. Double or nothing. Say ah. You're too close, man. Ah. ah. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I absolutely adore you. We're wishing you the best. We want to give a special shout out to all the new mommies. You have shown us your babies and Cloud and I absolutely melt. I know a lot of you have a butt in the oven. And we love that baby too. Now if you guys need a little bit of help making baby food, make sure to let us know in the comments. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios!
I'm about to cry. Aww. I'm really about to cry. <laughs> I'm crying for tacos. It reminds you of a babe. Your mother. She's a babe. You know when your tacos taste like a taquero in Mexico, it's a day when you should be proud of yourself. When it takes you back to the motherland and you're like, yes, I feel you in my veins, honey. You know, I don't share a lot about my life, but I remember when we were younger, we used to go eat tacos with our dad. Yep. <laughs> so it's melancholic. <laughs> it is. And he didn't hold back. We got to order as many tacos as we wanted. And he always ordered tacos for the kids that were out in the streets. And um, he was not down with people denying them services. So mm -mm. he was like, he would get these tables, put them together, and we'd eat there with a bunch of kids. It was really nice. In the nice. streets, yeah. And if the kids didn't have jackets, and we did, my dad would make us take our jackets off, and we gave it to the kids. And then he would give them a little bit of cash. Mm -hmm. So Even shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's like, you have your watches in the truck. It's time to give up them tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. my alley gears. Mm -hmm. Your early beers, honey. I need another lemon. Hold up. The cool thing about us actually is that we really didn't care about the material stuff. We were we were down to give what we had, and we're still the same. I still don't care. I could wear Kate Spade on occasions, or things from the Pulga. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm still the same person. Hey, we're always on a budget. You have to be. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous not to be. That's right. Mm. If you make any one of my recipes this year, make these tacos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my nose is running, not from crying right now, but from that salsa. <laughs> so good. Mm. The tortilla is nice and soft. Mm -hmm. You can taste the butter, the buttery bite from the suadero. Mm -hmm. And friends, don't let anybody fool you. Call ahead and ask, do you have suadero, like real suadero? And you'll know the difference. Sometimes they try to disguise brisket mm -hmm. as suadero, but you'll know by the color. Remember, it's it's very light in color. It almost looks like pork, but it's mm -hmm. not. Super it's... light. Mm. Bendito. Oh, really? You're about to get super into my little mm -hmm. And provechito, that salsa is amazing. It is Finger amazing. licking good. Yeah. We love you, take care, and we hope that you enjoy your Taco Tuesday. Hasta luego, amigos. She's gonna say, drink your water. <laughs> Bye, guys. chicken and nopales in chile colorado usually nopales take a really long time to cook at least for me they do but right now i'm going to show you some tips that you're going to be like oh yes Steph, we like this so if you're interested in this recipe please keep watching so what you want to do in your instant pot you want to add four cups of water and i'm using my kettle which warms up the water just instant heat in here it gets steamy you know Half a tablespoon of salt. I'm using Meldon salt, but if you're using table salt, use one teaspoon, and I'll leave that in the description for you as well. Two bay leaves, and three pounds of chicken. I'm using chicken breast with a bone, and you just wanna place that in your Instant Pot. I'm gonna make a little bit of space here when I add our nopales so they can get completely covered with water, okay? Go ahead and add your nopales, your cactus. And friends, if you're not too sure what kind of cactus you should be eating, I'll leave a link in the description of one of our really old videos where we teach you how to clean and handle your cactus. Make sure to seal your vent. Pressure cook for 35 minutes. I did a quick pressure release and now I'm gonna take out our chicken breast. And you wanna keep three cups of your broth. I know you guys like cooking in an instant pot, but this next step requires us to go to the stovetop because that's how you're going to get the best flavor. 
Now for our nopales, we are gonna strain them, but we're also gonna be saving our broth for some other recipes. This is a really good broth to have because a lot of people have a problem with the uh, sliminess of the nopales. And this particular way, you don't have to deal with the sliminess in your nopal or in your broth, but yet you get all the benefits. So I hope you guys like this. For our chile colorado sauce, we're gonna use guajillo chiles. Make sure that you remove all the seeds and the stem. We're also gonna be using garlic and onion. To your pot of hot water, you wanna add your chiles, your onion, and your garlic. Continue to boil for about eight to 10 minutes until you see your chiles and your onions are nice and soft. In this bowl, I have one tablespoon of corn masa. If you don't have fresh corn masa, you can use uh, one tablespoon of maseca and about two to three tablespoons of warm water. And what you wanna do is you wanna dissolve the masa into the warm water. What this is gonna allow us to do, it's gonna allow us to thicken up our sauce and give us just a very delicious, not corny flavor, okay? But it's really gonna balance the flavors in this dish. And this has got to be the secret uh, to making the chile colorado the, um, with pork, beef, chicken, whatever you decide to uh, make it with, but this is a really, really key ingredient. This is one of the thickening agents in Mexican cuisine. It is, and this is gonna remind you of your abuelita, your great-grandmother, your mothers, and then you're gonna understand why your food doesn't taste uh, like it tastes back home. So just make sure to dissolve this completely. Add your broth to your blender. That was a nopal that fell in there. One of my favorite colors. <laughs> your chiles, onion, and garlic that we boiled, you're gonna add that to your blender. And you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Place your pan on a medium heat and add the sauce that we just blended. Remember, if you're not using a high power blender, you're gonna wanna strain your chile. We have been eating a lot of red chili because of the packed vitamin C. You've got us in tip top order. And you guys know I love chile, so good. Go ahead and add your shredded chicken. And if you guys need anybody to shred your chicken, Cloud is my favorite person that shreds chicken. I mean, look at, that's just a beauty. You I do such love, a great job, you. Cloud. I would love to shred chicken for all the Views Club members. You're it's an angel. My favorite job. It really is, and you do such a good job. Thank you. I usually over shred, but you leave a few little chunks. I don't know. We're gonna have to watch you one day on how you do it, and maybe I can share the most perfect instant pot chicken that's gonna make it juicy and just so flavorful, and then you can shred it. Okay, let's do it. I, I, that's my favorite way of doing it. it. Might take too long for you guys, but it's so worth the flavor. I agree. Friends, do you like to shred chicken? Or do you leave that job for a loved one? Let us know in the comments. I don't mind, but I leave it for Cloud. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead and add your nopales. And I hope you guys like the way that uh, the nopales texture came out. So soft, tender, full of flavor. And the best part is that it's not slimy. I'm not the person that likes slimy nopales. I don't like to associate those two together. No, you do. You did a wonderful job. These are not slimy at all. And kept the tartness. <laughs> I hope those of you that just want me to pile things on really enjoy this part. I'm really going out of my way for you today. Go ahead and add your chicken bouillon. And I'm using natural chicken bouillon, and I'll leave a suggestion if you're using just a regular one. One is a little bit saltier than the other, so go ahead and start mixing your ingredients. I did pretty good with this pot today. No jokes for me today. <laughs> You know, the best part is that I haven't added any oil to this. Thank you. People usually like, it's too oily. I'm going to show you guys what happens with all this magic. And you want to add about half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano. If you're using Italian oregano, any other brand, any other region, <laughs> it's not going to taste the same. Just make sure that you crumble it well in the palm of your hand with the tips of your fingers. That's gonna give it the sazon, the flavor that your food needs. 
Set your burner on a medium low heat and we're gonna continue to cook for six more minutes. Make sure to come and stir periodically. I will be placing a lid over our pot today. You like how I did that so peacefully for you? You did. Was Thank that you. romantic? That was very okay, romantic. Okay, I was being romantic with you. Miss Morris. <laughs> If you're not excited yet, you're gonna be excited for this next step. Do you guys remember that masa and water little slurry we made? You're gonna pour it in to this pot. Go ahead and combine that well. Place your burner on a low heat. And for those of you that continue to just cook on high, I'm worried about you. You guys can't keep your pans on high the whole time you're cooking. That's wild. You're missing out on a lot of flavor in your food. Yeah, I appreciate that tip. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, I don't know how to say this other than we're ready to serve. It is ready. Go ahead and turn your burner off. And isn't this amazing that under about 45 minutes you can get really good food done yes okay i'm pushing it 45 to 50 minutes you guys are set say ah did you blow on this for them cloud no this is for me <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna show us what's in the beautiful pot oh over here yeah sure yeah, come on okay. i have some frijoles refritos some refried beans and back here in this little ollita i have some uh, oregano rice if you guys want to know what I placed in there I'll leave it in the description but you guys say the videos are too long so I really don't show you guys the exact things anymore but I think it seems to be working right it works thank you for sharing this is a perfect dish for comelones people that love to eat because it is so filling and there's a lot for them so this is my bowl this is your bowl thank you because I can be greedy. Whoa, that looks amazing. A quien se le antojó los frijoles. Your beans are bomb. My beans are bomb. I agree. I'm using basmati rice today, so just make sure to fluff it up when it's done cooking. Fluffs up beautifully. Say, ah. Mmm. That's so good. I love when you shock yourself, even though you've made this before, but when you take your first bite, you're like, oh, wow, okay. Okay. We had this with pork this past week, a few days ago. <laughs> but it's so good. We can't stop eating it. We can't. You feel full mm. of energy after you're done eating with eating this beautiful... It doesn't feel so heavy, and the cactus is so good for you. You know what this feels like? Like what? Like love. Like a hug. Like something warm. That's what it feels like. Well, this is my actual favorite food. So I'm grateful today. The nopalitos? Nopalitos with carne and uh, any kind of carne and the chile rojo. I know some of you like your guisados a little bit soupier or thicker. And if you're going to go that route, go ahead and add five cups of your broth. Do not throw your broth out. Use it to make your rice. It is absolutely divine. And friends, this dish is stellar. For those of you that are scared of nopales, this is a perfect dish for you to try it for the first time or introduce it to your family. And I will tell you this, my selective eater loves this dish. He loves the nopales cooked this way. And it's not spicy. <laughs> That's true, it's not spicy. Savory. Hello and welcome back amigos. Today I'm going to show you how to make creamy chicken and potatoes. For this recipe you're going to need three chicken breasts and you want to slice your chicken breast into thin little strips like this. Now what I did with the thick part of the chicken breast is I just butterfly it a little bit but I didn't uh, butterfly it all the way through. Align all your chicken strips and just slice them in half. And I'm going to continue slicing the remaining chicken the same way. 
Once you're done slicing your chicken into strips, go ahead and add two tablespoons of baking soda. And what that's gonna do is gonna give us a tender piece of chicken and it's also gonna eliminate odor. I'm gonna let our chicken set for about 10 to 15 minutes and while it's setting, let's go over the remaining ingredients. Five to six red potatoes, one third of a cup of all-purpose flour, one third of a cup of cornstarch. Add your cornstarch to your all-purpose flour, one teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, and one and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream, half a cup of warm water. To your warm water, add your chicken bouillon, and if you have chicken broth, go ahead and use that instead. And today you're using the natural chicken bouillon without that, MSG. That is correct. I can tell the difference now. One medium sliced white onion, two tablespoons of butter, and friends, one thing we all agree on is Kerrygold butter is the best out there, especially for home cooking. Four garlic cloves and one chipotle pod with about two tablespoons of the adobo sauce. To your blender, you want to add your heavy whipping cream. And if you don't have heavy whipping cream, make it comfortable for your home. That is correct, Cloud. Thank you for helping our friends out. Next, you want to add your chicken broth or your chicken bouillon and warm water combo, which ends up being the same thing with extra flavor. Garlic, chipotle, and your ground cumin. Next, we are going to blend until smooth. And boom, done. I rinsed our chicken and I made sure to pat dry and remove all the excess water. Next, you wanna add your salt and combine. Next, you're gonna combine your flour and cornstarch mixture and add half at a time. We just wanna coat all of our chicken uh, evenly, but you don't wanna overdo it. So depending on the size of your chicken, you're going to need about uh, one fourth of a cup or one third of a cup. And once you're done, make sure to clean your area and clean your hands. I'm going to start a pot of boiling water so we can start boiling our potatoes and then we're going to move on to the chicken. To your pot of boiling water, you want to add your potatoes and be very careful. I don't want you to burn yourself. As you splash me. <laughs> and I just want you to boil these potatoes for about eight minutes. You want them to be a little bit al dente, not fully cooked because we are gonna be straining them and adding them to our, um, our delicious pot that we're gonna get started on right now. Set your burner on a medium high heat and add your desired amount of oil. You're gonna need enough so that we can sear our chicken. Allow about 30 seconds for your oil to get warm and add your butter. Let your butter do a dance in the pan, that way you don't burn it and combining your butter and your oil, you prevent the butter from burning. Oh yeah. And next, you wanna start adding your pieces of chicken. Make sure not to crowd your chicken so that we can get a really good sear. Work your pan little by little, and once you start getting a good sear, you can move some of your chicken to the side, and then you can start adding the remaining pieces. And we're gonna be here for about, I wanna say six to seven minutes. Next, you wanna add your onions. We're gonna add our potatoes and our sauce to our cast iron. And to our blender, we still have a little bit of sauce stuck, so I'm gonna add about three fourths of a cup of water. I'm gonna shake it up. You didn't tell me it was gonna smell this good in here. <laughs> it's so good, right? Mm -hmm. That garlic really comes through. And you wanna pour it right on in. Go ahead and mix your ingredients gently. Once you're done combining your ingredients, set your burner on a low temperature and we're gonna to continue to cook without a lid for 15 more minutes. 
And after 15 minutes, we are all done. What I like to do is I like to sprinkle a little bit of cilantro over the top for a garnish and also for flavor. And boom, done, amigos. Our delicious dinner is served. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. Ooh, the lioness came to work today. It's called humidity. <laughs> <laughs> it just jumps up and grabs you no matter where you're at. Mmm. Mm. I have a trivia question for you. If it's hot and humid, what do you eat? Ooh, me? Yes. I eat whatever I'm craving. <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> I really do. Friends, everything in this plate is so soft and tender. The chicken is cooked to perfection with so much flavor. You're gonna love it. Mmm. Ooh, buen provecho. You know, the flavors are sealed in the chicken. And look at how easily I can cut through. So yummy. And you want to take some of that broth with you, right? Mm-hmm. You need, you need some extra sauce for sure. So, so it can be best friends with the rice. It's a must. Mm-hmm. Yummy, and if you don't have red potatoes, that's the best for this dish. Use gold or russet potatoes. It's gonna work out. And what if I don't have chicken, but I have everything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. But this chicken is a showstopper. It really is. You have to try it. Mm -hmm. Friends, sorry about my eating yesterday with the tacos. I didn't mean to offend anybody. It's just that when it's me and tacos, it gets really intimate and we're eating here in my home with friends. So that's how I enjoy tacos and I enjoy food. Maybe the person or the people were not familiar with the taco rule. You must finish your taco in less than three bites. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let us know how many bites it takes you to finish one single taco. Yeah, let us know. And for this chicken, you guys are going to really love this recipe because you can take a lot of chicken and season it, sear it the way that I showed you and fully sear it and cook it and then let it cool and freeze it so that whenever you add it to your pan the next day or two weeks later, it's super easy to make this dish. It freezes well, just make sure to fully cook it. And even if you were to not cook it and coat it with the, with the flour and your seasonings, um, it'll, it'll still work. How do I know? Because it's a lifesaver. The texture of this chicken is fabulous. And it's mm. not spicy. Mm -hmm. There is no spice in here unless you want more spice. And if you really like your food spicy, I suggest you add a whole can of chipotle instead of just one little pod. But I have a lot of family members right now that can't handle spice for some reason. You sound like you have some experience. You said the full can. Mm -hmm. And if you guys like this combination of chicken, let me know in the comments and I'll make another dish um, similar to this, but just change it up just a little bit. I have a feeling that everybody watching is gonna end up making this recipe. Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you how to make a quick and easy chicken stew and make sure to stick around to the end so that I can show you how to make this recipe comfortable for your home. I have cubed chicken here. Add your black pepper, chicken bouillon, and a generous amount of garlic. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Next comes the fun part. We are gonna mix all our ingredients. And set to the side. Set your burner on a medium heat 
and drizzle a little bit of olive oil, enough to coat your pan. On this plate, I have chile, tomate, cebolla, and for those of you that don't speak Spanish, we have some onion, an Anaheim pepper, and a tomato. Go ahead and add all these ingredients to your pan. We love to hear that sizzle. Mix all your ingredients into that delicious olive oil and we're gonna continue to cook for about three to four minutes. We want our onions translucent and our tomatoes nice and soft. After four to five minutes, you're gonna add your mushrooms. and place your temperature on a medium low heat. Continue to cook for another four to six minutes. After four minutes, add your ground cumin, chili powder, marjoram, and your Mexican oregano. Raise your temperature to a medium heat right before you add your pieces of chicken. Before you start stirring everything around with the chicken, continue to cook for two more minutes. After two minutes, combine all your ingredients. Start stirring. Stir it up, amigos. Add your water. Make sure to caress the bottom of your pan with that spoon so we can get all those crusty flavors to come into that delicious broth we're starting to develop. Add your half and half. For this next ingredient, you can use yogurt, you can use Mexican crema. Today I'm using the Lala Mexican sour cream. Remember to make it comfortable for your home. Butter. Place your pan on a medium low heat and continue to combine your ingredients. Once you've combined all your ingredients, you want to taste the broth that you have. And remember, you want to take a light hand if you're going to be adding a little bit more chicken bouillon or some salt for me. All I need is just a tad bit more of salt. And the addition that I'm making is about one fourth teaspoon. But as always, you can find the recipe in the description area. Yes, friends, all of our uh, exact measurements are in the description area. They're starter recipe so that you can make it comfortable for your home. And what that means, if you like more oregano, add more oregano. If you like more chili powder, add that. It's your house. You have to do whatever you want and what your family likes. Continue to cook on a low heat for five more minutes. Go ahead and turn your burner off. divine but it doesn't stop here okay for those of you that like spice or more of a chili flavor you want to add a serrano or a jalapeno just combine it in here okay it makes me so happy you can take it out you can serve your family right before you add the jalapeno you can serve the kids and if you like spice and nobody else does then you can add your little jalapeno in there but it's not so little and our final touch is cilantro to taste. If you don't like cilantro, you don't have to have it, but I definitely prefer it. Combine all your ingredients and we're ready to serve. And boom, done amigos. Who's ready for a taste? Okay friends, now for those of you that want to keep this light and you don't want the rice, it's okay. I'm really into eating uh, stews or guisados with lettuce and that's my mom's style. She would always uh, serve it and always have a bowl of lettuce on the side for us to grab like if it was a tortilla. So just tear some of your lettuce, place it in your plate. A little more sauce? Yes, thank you for accommodating me. <laughs> That's what you get for not eating your carrots yesterday. <laughs> you get no rice. I ate some today. <laughs> <laughs> Say ah. It's over, me. it's over. You do know that he loves to eat too. I am glad he likes to eat. Wow. <laughs> well, some people just eat to live. He loves food. Mmm. 
Yeah, girl, you threw yourself with this recipe. <laughs> People are gonna say, Cloud's always hyping them up. No, because they're really that good. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. This is so good. You know, I love adding the jalapeno or your chili pepper at the end because it's a subtle spice and it's flavorful. You're not boiling everything with that spice, but if you, if you want that spice, start with that chili from the beginning. She said bring it. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's like, you know when that gravy hits that rice? I do know that feeling, it's so comforting. It is, it's magic. It's almost as good as a day on the beach. Hint, hint. Or in the mountains. That's another hint. hint. <laughs> I'll take you there. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make Mexican salsa roja. You know, that salsa that you're endlessly dipping your chips in at a restaurant or the salsa that you need for all your Mexican dishes. Well, by the end of this video, you'll know how to preserve this salsa and also the secret to the crispiest chips. You'll need 12 tomatoes, one jalapeno, one serrano, half an onion, four garlic cloves, 12 chiles de arbol, the juice of a lime, and one tablespoon of salt. To your blender, you wanna add your chopped tomatoes. You're also gonna add your chilies, onion, and garlic right on in. We're gonna blend on a medium speed for about 20 to 25 seconds. Yeah. And boom, done. Place your pot on a medium heat and add all your blended ingredients. Add your salt. Combine all your ingredients and place your burner on a medium low heat. Once you've done that, you're gonna allow this to cook for 10 to 15 minutes. The secret to a perfectly crispy corn chip is you have to dry out your corn tortilla first. One of the things that we tend to do is we just cut them, put them in the fryer and boom, done. But I find that by toasting it just a little bit like this, you remove the excess moisture and that gives us our crispiest corn chips ever. With the wooden spoon, a wooden chopstick, toothpicks, anything wood that's not coated, you're gonna dip it into your oil. And once you see the bubbles, just like this, that means that you're ready to fry. If you see smoke coming out of your pot, that means that it's way too hot and you're gonna burn your corn chips. Place your corn tortillas carefully into your oil. And I like to fry the corn chips in batches, okay? Don't overcrowd it, allow enough room for your tortillas to fry and move freely. And after about 30 seconds, you'll notice your tortillas are starting to get nice and hard. And as you can see, I'm flipping them periodically to allow room for them to fry move around and crisp up. And after about four minutes of frying, you're gonna notice that your corn chips are ready. You know, by toasting your tortillas before you fry them, you really do get better, crispy, crunchy corn chips. Sprinkle your desired amount of salt and go light with it. And I'm gonna continue frying the remaining corn chips while our salsa keeps cooking. Perfect crisp corn chips. I'm so excited for you guys to try my take on the corn chips. Please tag me and let me know what you think. I can't wait. Try that. Ooh. Mm. We just need the salsa. <laughs> we're, we're just waiting for the salsa, everybody. Mm. And after 15 minutes, you can turn your burner off. Remove your lid. And we have a beautiful, fancy salsa just like your Tia Cloud. Oh, wow. Just perfect. Endless dipping. You know, you don't have to wait for anybody to come serve you again. Yeah, you can't dip you... here, but you can dip in the salsa. <laughs> That's right. So once you turn your burner off, 
In order to preserve your salsa, you're gonna to have to add a little bit of lime juice, and this should keep it for five to seven days in your refrigerator. Now, if you need a little bit longer, you can add a teaspoon of vinegar. It'll slightly change the flavor to more of a canned salsa, but it's still gonna be really delicious. Um, so the lime is just to preserve it. If you're gonna enjoy the salsa today, you don't have to add the lime? You don't have to add the lime, but a lot of us like lime in our salsa, so I add it anyways. It <laughs> just works I'm out perfect, too. yeah? <laughs> for example, if you're making this for your family from Mexico, do not put lime in it. Our Mexican family does not like the lime. They just like plain salsa. Give it to me hot. And you want to add the lime at the end, even to have this salsa cool down just a little bit more before you add your lime. That way it doesn't overcook it. Um, that's best. Okay. I know one of our cilantro haters is going to love me so much today, and I love you too. <laughs> but if you wanted to add cilantro, you can. A small little bunch right at the end. Nicely chopped. All right, who's ready for a delicious taste? And technically, you wanna wait until your salsa fully cools, but since I'm using a ball little mason jar, it can handle the heat. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this set on the counter. I'm gonna slightly cover it with a lid, not fully locked. We're not gonna fully load this one. And once it cools down, that means that we're ready to place it in the refrigerator and we have salsa for the week. And you know what I say, and boom, done. And these recipes are great for when the kids get out of school. You can say you can snack on chips and salsa while dinner's ready. Yes, chips and salsa. You have onions, you have a lot of tomato. Uh, it's just perfect, you know? Let them eat the chips. It's corn chips. Margarita night. And chips. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You got me excited. <laughs> I reached the age where you say margarita to me, and I'm like, let's go. Let's do I don't want to do anything else today. The boys and I are really into watching the Babysitter's Club right now, and this is gonna be our snack. It's just beautiful. You know, it's nice and healthy. And then, uh, Punky's not too crazy about guacamole, so this is his. Will he put berries in that little compartment? He'd probably go and grab some blueberries, yes. <laughs> and uh, yes, I salted that one, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. And for him, he can't handle certain spices too well lately, so we just have a little bit and he can dip a little bit at a time. You're so sweet. And now I have to clear out the kitchen, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and we want to give a special shout out to all the grandparents that are taking care of their grandchildren so peacefully. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a juicy chicken. And by the end of this video, you'll know the secret to a luxurious chicken broth. And for those of you that stay till the end, I'm gonna be sharing an easy recipe with you. Six chicken drumsticks or thighs, one large onion, 10 cups of water, one teaspoon of black pepper, one and a half tablespoons of salt, or you can use two tablespoons of chicken bouillon. To your instant pot, you wanna add your water, black pepper, salt, onion, and your drumsticks or thighs. I find that drumsticks or thighs work best for this recipe and let's be honest, they're more affordable, so why not? If you do this with chicken breast, you're gonna have the driest chicken breast ever, so stick to thighs and drumsticks. Something that has a bone and is juicy. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like a riddle, that's you. <laughs> I use my Instant Pot minimum of three times out of the week. It's acting up today, but that's because For I use someone it. that uses it three times a week, they sure don't know how to close that lid. Hush, hush. We're gonna close our vent for those of you that are new with an Instant Pot. Close it this way. Sometimes once the pressure is building up, you'll see that it's just releasing pressure. I have to jolt it like this a few times. The newer models don't have that issue. The big, that big huge one? one that we have doesn't have that, but these, uh, the eight quarts, you do have to do that sometimes, unless you got a perfect one, but we all know that's not possible. You're gonna pressure cook for 45 minutes and you're gonna allow for a slow release and that's gonna take you a total of about an hour, hour and five minutes. Once you've slowly released the pressure the first time, we're gonna go ahead and pressure cook one more time for 45 more minutes and the same thing. We can do that two times and if you have the time and you do it three times, even better. And boom, done, our chicken is ready, soft and tender. And as you can see, it's still really hot in there.
and look at how fall apart tender and juicy this chicken is I'm gonna go ahead and start straining and shredding our chicken and that's your secret to a juicy chicken in a luxurious chicken broth Once you strain your luxurious chicken broth, you're gonna save your onions because these onions give a delicious flavor to your recipes, almost as if you're using onion seasoning. So you wanna keep that, okay? Make sure you're saving your onions for the recipe that we're gonna be starting in just a few minutes. Once your broth cools, you wanna transfer it into a container. I keep it in this container, pop it in the freezer. If I don't have enough space, I'll use a Ziploc. And I know they sell some silicone trays to uh, place your broth in and freeze it that it's super easy for you guys. I've already placed about two and a half cups of chicken broth, which we're gonna need for our recipe in just a moment. Once you shred your chicken, you wanna add a sprinkle of black pepper and combine it. You're gonna need that seasoning for our recipe in just a moment. Once you combine your black pepper into your chicken, you're gonna drizzle a little bit of chicken broth and that's gonna prevent your chicken from drying. Now for our base color recipe, you're gonna need two cups of maseca. You're gonna add the onions that we saved right on in. You're gonna add about two cups of chicken broth and start combining all of your ingredients until you fully hydrate your masa. Make sure that your chicken broth is warm, not super hot, okay? If it's cold, even better. You see how nice and moist your masa is? That's exactly what you need to avoid the cracking. Make sure you give that a good mix. You're gonna be here about three to four minutes, okay? I don't want you to quit just because you see everything hydrated. That's not what we're doing here. We're gonna make a really delicious dinner for you. I know it feels and looks a little bit sticky still, but that's okay. We're gonna let this set here for about five uh, to eight minutes, and then we're gonna get started on making our little round tortillas. You're gonna take a ball from your masa, and we're gonna start building up a little ball. So this recipe is called uh, peiscadas. Some regions know it as gorditas or sopes. You're from Sonora, you're gonna say it's a gordita. <laughs> And remember how our dough was super sticky earlier? Now it's a bit softer and just smooth for us. Place it on your tortilla press. And I'm using parchment paper today because I still can't find my little plastic that I use for the tortillas. Oh no, what a tragedy. Yep. And you know my tortilla press is very uneven. I have a thinner side and a thicker side, but that's okay. This is the size that we're gonna be using today for our pesca. My cast iron got too hot. As you can see, it turned yellow really quick and it toasted it. It's not gonna go in the trash, okay? It's not like a pancake. We can still use this, but the next one is gonna be beautiful. And by still using, you mean add some butter and we're gonna split it. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. This shouldn't take you longer than a minute to do when your cast iron is nice and hot. It's just gonna be super easy. And we already know this cast iron is hot because you guys saw our tortilla earlier, okay? No teasing, we're human. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. Oh, oh, cheese man, and some fresh corn tortillitas mm -hmm. pescadas. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, this is good. You just kind of have to find out where the heat is coming from for your pan. And since I'm on a um, glass top, you know, it's kind of wild in there, but it works. All right, come on over here, guys. This is a warning, it gets really hot. This just came off the cast iron. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch right here. You Be very can, careful. You can also use a paper towel, right? Yeah, I've taught you before you can use a paper towel. And I like the pescadas. When I call them pescadas, I tend to make them a little bit larger okay. than the gorditas. You see? Take us for a spin, baby. Ooh, DJ Pescada. 
All right, I'm gonna continue with the remaining uh, tortillas and then turn them into briscadas for you. And on this pan over here, I'm gonna start warming up our chicken with that delicious juicy chicken broth. And you can add extra seasonings that you would like, garlic, uh, some ground cumin. It's really gonna be up to you to make it comfortable for your home. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of cumin because everything else is well seasoned, yummy, yummy. You're a little bit further from me, I miss you. I wanna go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way you get me off of the computer, off of work. Soon I know you're making this. Mmm, I can't wait. Tengo hambre, comelona. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and add some on there. Let's see how strong your fingers are. Very strong, thank you. Ooh, with some of the salsa. Mmm. Ooh. Oh, Cloudy likes it. That's so Yay. juicy. This tortilla perdida is amazing. The you tortilla can, perdida? Yeah, you can taste the flavor in the um, in the masa. So good. Once you're done making your base, guys, you're gonna place it back on your cast iron. And since I don't have asientos, what's left over from your carnitas, super delicious, I'm gonna put a little bit of butter at the bottom. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. I love butter. So look away if you don't wanna use this much. <laughs> Just kidding. And next, you're gonna add your chicken. And it's juicy. It reminds you like something your tia or your abuela would make. And boom, done. We're ready for some toppings. <laughs> Thank you. Mmm. Me da como nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I know some of you are going to say that takes way too long. It really doesn't. Work on your chicken the day before and then the next day you can have your base cows with your chicken or whatever recipe you want to make. Uh, but I'm curious to know, what do you call this recipe in your home? I know these as pescadas and if I fry them, they're uh, gorditas and the whole world knows them as sopas. But I'm curious. I'm going to enjoy reading your comments today. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a refreshing recipe that I love to make when it's hot outside or when I'm short for time. So if you guys love shredded beef, you're going to absolutely love the salpicón recipe because I'm going to also be showing you how to make a delicious vinaigrette that's going to help you for your salads throughout the week. Let's start off by adding three cups of water to the instant pot. Next, you want to add two to three pounds of beef and you want to make sure to cut it into smaller pieces. Half an onion, two garlic cloves, one bay leaf, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of thyme. Pressure cook your beef for 25 minutes. Now let's go over the remaining ingredients. Lettuce, avocado, chiles en escabeche, half an onion, two tomatoes, a small bunch of cilantro, flour tortillas. I thinly sliced half an onion. Now I'm gonna be adding one fourth of a cup of our pickled jalapeno juice. And remember, we're gonna be using some of this pickle jalapeno juice for our vinaigrette. For your vinaigrette, you'll need half a cup of olive oil, one fourth of a cup of pickled jalapeno juice, the juice of one key lime, half a teaspoon of paprika, ground cumin, black pepper, salt, and one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. And next, you're just gonna quickly combine your vinaigrette ingredients. To your frying oil, you wanna place your tortilla halfway into it, okay? But if you want it to really bubble up, you can dip your whole tortilla in at once, but that's not what we're going for. I know the teenagers get mad at us with our safety tips, but here it comes. Okay, when you're splashing yourself, make sure that this part of tortilla is lifted and not empty, because you can end up splashing yourself and your feet, and we don't want that. We want to keep you safe this summer. You want to splash a tortilla and not yourself. That is correct. How do we know? Been there, done that. And it's not fun. <laughs> there we go. And if you see, I just gave it a slight little press to give it a little bit of a dimension. 
And now we're gonna splash with the barrier from our tortilla so we can fully cook this bottom half, okay? And this can be done right here in about 45 seconds. Uh, make sure your oil's not too hot. Mine was a little smoky, but we're managing. And I'm gonna continue frying the remaining tortillas for our delicious salad. And remember to save your beef broth for your sopitas de fideo uh, or anything where you just need a little bit of broth because it has so much flavor. And for your beef, you just want to thinly shred it, okay? The same way that Cloud shreds her chicken and she's going to come and help in just a moment, that's exactly how you want to shred it. Just tiny little bite sizes. If you happen to have a cut that has some fat attached to it, go ahead and remove it for this particular recipe. Unless you know somebody wants to bite into it, but for the most part, just go ahead and remove it. And now it's time to assemble our salad. So go ahead and place your desired amount of greens. This next part is optional. You can use queso fresco, you can use cotija, or your favorite style of cheese. And you just need a little bit, not a lot. Don't push it. If you're packing this for a lunch, don't add your vinaigrette until you're ready to eat because it's gonna get your lettuce way too soggy uh, and we don't want that. But since we're gonna eat this now, we're just gonna pour it all in. And now, just gently combine all your ingredients. Ooh, it smells so good. It really does. And boom, done. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. Mmm, that is so fresh and flavorful. <laughs> Sorry, I need both of my hands, but one's being used. <laughs> What I really love about this recipe is how easy it is and how satiating it is. Uh, the vinaigrette is super light and it's gonna be the only vinaigrette you need for the whole summer. Uh, I tend to keep this one in a bottle during the summer actually. So I hope you guys really enjoy this recipe because it's absolutely delicious. Mmm, that's so good. If you love nachos, you're gonna love this recipe because this is more like healthy nachos and you don't wanna miss out. If you don't have a flour tortilla, you can use your tostadas. And if you don't want to deal with cooking the beef and shredding it, go ahead and get a rotisserie chicken. It's going to work equally as delicious. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you what I make for my family when I'm short on time. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to assemble an easy and delicious dinner for your family. You'll need two pounds of chuck roast, one large potato, one poblano pepper, one tomato, two garlic cloves, a small bunch of chopped cilantro, one medium onion, half an eight ounce can of tomato sauce, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of black pepper, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, one and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, three fourths of a cup of water, and one tablespoon of olive oil. We're gonna season our cube chuck roast with our ground cumin, black pepper, Mexican oregano, your chicken bouillon, and if you don't wanna use chicken bouillon, you can salt to taste. Combine your ingredients well. Once you fully combine all your seasonings into your beef, you're gonna add your olive oil and give that a good massage. And I'm gonna allow our mixture to set at room temperature until I'm done chopping our veggies. And once you have your veggies nice and chopped, it's time to head on over to our stovetop. Place your beautiful pan on a medium high heat. We are gonna sear this beef for about six minutes. I wanted beef today. Mm. Cloud's hungry, you guys. And the good sister that I am, I'm gonna feed her. Ooh, I appreciate you. this looks so romantic, doesn't it, this beef? Ooh. So don't move anything for six whole minutes. 
Give or take, after about five to six minutes, you're gonna add your garlic and your veggies. Give that a good mix and place your burner on a medium heat and allow it to cook for another four minutes until your tomatoes are nice and soft. Give or take, after four minutes, you're gonna add your tomato sauce. And uh, if you don't like tomato sauce, that's okay. I personally think it enhances the flavor of the broth and it just makes you wanna eat more and more and more of it. <laughs> add your potatoes, your water, Give that a beautiful mix, just like the Views Club. Place the lid on it, and we're gonna continue to cook for about 13 to 15 minutes until your potatoes are nice and soft. Give or take, after about 13 to 15 minutes, your potatoes should be nice and soft. Lastly, you're gonna add your cilantro. Give that a good mix. And you see we have enough stew for everybody. Just delicious, nice and juicy, filling. You come home to this when you have a long day at work or get back from school of being stressed or, you know, meeting up with your family. You know what, this is gonna satiate you. It's gonna make you so happy. So I'm just gonna serve a plate for us, hang tight. And I'm gonna pair this dish with some Mexican rice. I'll link the recipes down below. And some refried beans. Yummy, yummy. They kept them nice and runny. And we have a special taste tester today. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. Alright. He went straight for the beans. See the Mickey pen. Carne asada. Carne asada. We've been having a lot of carne asada. <laughs> mm. You see, a dish like this, you have to get all the condiments and flavor for your first bite. Oh, you have to get everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is so good. I love it. Do you? Do you want a tortilla? All right, friends. Sounds like we're going to have a good dinner today. We hope you have a lovely day. I'm just going to start serving the rest of my family. There you go. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you a recipe that my kids keep asking me to make. And if you love fried quesadillas and you love hot dogs, you're going to love this recipe. Now, for those of you that don't want to mess with the masa, don't skip because I have a tip for you. Now, let's get this recipe on the road. You'll need three cups of maseca, three cups of water, one pack of hot dogs, desired amount of bacon, one cup of corn, desired amount of cheese, half a tablespoon of salt, and oil for frying. To a large bowl, you wanna add your maseca, salt, combine your ingredients, and then make a well. Once you make that well, go ahead and gradually add your water, and we're just gonna keep combining until we have our dough nice and hydrated. Some of you might look in the ingredients and say, I'm just gonna put the whole three cups of water and I'm gonna say don't. The reason for that is some of you might need a little bit less, some of you might need a little bit more. It depends on your climate. So just gradually add until you fully hydrate your, your masa. Once you fully hydrate your masa, you're gonna pick it up and make a big ball, okay? You're gonna feel that it's nice and soft to the touch and it's fully hydrated. Once you do that, you're gonna place it back into your bowl and you're gonna let this rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. Take your hot dog and slice it right down the middle. And I'm gonna to continue to do the same with the remaining hot dogs. And next, you just wanna wrap your bacon around your hot dog. And I'm gonna to continue to do the same with the remaining hot dogs. And once you're done wrapping your hot dogs with your bacon, go ahead and set your burner on a medium heat because it's time to cook them.
continue to cook your hot dogs for about four to six minutes until you see that your bacon is nice and crispy. And boom, done. Our hot dogs are ready. Try to resist not eating these, okay? I'm resisting. <laughs> I need some grainy mustard and we're good to go. All right, I'm gonna continue with the remaining hot dogs and I'll meet you guys when it's time to make our little tortillas. Take a little ball of masa. I guess that's not so little. A little bit more than you would for a corn tortilla because we want it a little bit thicker. Since I have a very bad tortilla press, and but I mean bad, I mean it needs to go in a timeout, I like to flatten it up into a disc just like this. It needs a tuna, but we've tried and it's not taking the tuna. It's not. Let us know if you have any recommendations for a good tortilla press. We would love you for that. I think I'm, I'm up to my third tortilla press and it doesn't work. Oh, that's a beautiful size. Right. Next, you're going to add your desired amount of cheese and I like to squeeze it into a little ball. That way it doesn't flake everywhere. But if you don't want to deal with shredded cheese, go ahead and use your string cheese. Tell our friends what you really said. I said a cheese stick because I'm a casserole mom. <laughs> Oopsie. Reminds me of the cheese touch. No, 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 no. Don't li don't listen to her, you guys. Go ahead and add your desired amount of corn. Fritters with corn. Hot dog. The kids love this. Go ahead and squeeze that together. And I always find that it's easier to press it with your little plastic bag, which I don't know where mine is, or a little parchment paper. It works. Once you're done, you can cup it just like this and get that final press on the end. And Views Cup Junior, if you know where the cheese touch is from, have your parents comment and let us know that you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> Steffi has the cheese touch. I do not, me. I do not. You guys don't listen to her today. Okay, and I'm gonna continue with the remaining quesadillas. So hang tight. In this bowl, we have our tortilla glue, which I've shown you how to make in a lot of videos. All this is is all-purpose flour, and you add your water gradually until you get a thick paste, just like this. Brought to you by the Views Club. The Views Club shared this with me. It's not my recipe, but thank you. I only used this when I used to make piñatas. That's right. To your pre-warmed corn tortilla, you're gonna swipe it with some of our tortilla glue. Add your desired amount of cheese, corn, and you wanna set this to the side until this gets tacky. It should take you about a minute. So what I like to do is I like to line them up in five, swipe it, and then by the time I get to my last one and fill it up, it's already tacky enough for me to close. So hang tight while we get tacky for once in our life. <laughs> okay, so you kinda of get the picture. I'm gonna set this to the side and we have to start frying. And now it's time to check our oil for frying. Once you see those bubbles just like this, it means that you're ready to go. If you have a lot of smoke coming out of your pan, you need to take it down a notch, okay? I want you to wait 15 to 20 minutes before you fry and then try this method again. And for our Views Club veterans, we know we've gone over this with you, but we have a lot of new friends here. So make sure you're using a wooden spoon, a wooden chopstick, um, toothpicks, just anything wood that's not coated. Now you're gonna gently Place your quesadilla down here, and you're gonna push out that way, okay? Lay it down south to north. Okay, you're making fun you of me today? Hugs, you know what comes when my kids are right when I No, say. no, don't start. Don't start, the kids are out for summer, so more of the children are watching. Uh, we don't appreciate our 90s music sometimes. <laughs> Cause it was a little bit extreme. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to continue to fry our quesadilla about a minute and a half on each side and you want to fry until they're nice and crispy, okay? You know what I love about this recipe? Hmm. That you're not breaking the bake. That's right. Is it safe to say this is like a $1 lunch? 
per meal if you break this it up. is if you break everything down this recipe is less than a dollar per, uh, per quesadilla nice we like that oh mine are pretty crispy here and I do want to share a tip with you. If you're going to take the easy way out, and that's okay, no judgment on my part to you, um, these will fry up in less than a minute if your oil is nice and hot, okay? You want to be careful, but you want to slice right down the middle like this. You're going to open it up just like that. You're going to place your weenie right in. Now who's ready for a big bite? Oh, it's hot. And you're all set. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say uh. And to make it easier, we're gonna be using pato sauce, but you can use any kind of salsa or hot sauce that you would like. Thank you. Mm. I really love this recipe because it's easy for me to make, but just the little touch of corn inside your quesadilla is going to really transform this dish. It makes a huge difference. Gosh, I love the one my mom makes. These are my favorite. These are your favorite? I put a little mustard for you already. Ooh, we're excited. I tried these in a while. I know. You guys have been asking me to make them, so... I'm glad that you're happy. I, I still taste like magnificent. Magnificent? <laughs> Enjoy, babe. Mm -hmm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to thank all of our silent viewers and all of you that left us a comment this weekend. We have so much fun with you guys. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. This is like an Ashanti song, girl. You just say baby, baby, baby the whole time because it's going to be delicious. You're awful when you know when you say things in front of everybody. That's just going to get me to get super giggly and nerdy. And they're going to get mad at us for giggling, but we like to giggle. <laughs> I do really giggle a lot. Mm -hmm. mm. It's something we struggled with as children. Yeah, I giggle a lot now because I no longer cry. I don't know if you guys noticed. I don't cry that often anymore. Mm -hmm. But you do, you do have some lipstick right under your That's chin. okay. Oh, okay. Mmm. Yep. Wow. That is some good stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you. The most difficult part of this recipe is gonna be waiting because it can take you anywhere from three and a half to four hours, but let me tell you, once this process is done, you're gonna come back for more. And don't forget to wash down these tacos with a refreshing Coca-Cola. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so good. What I love about making this recipe is the aromatics. When you walk into your kitchen, it's like a kitchen potpourri. And once it goes into the oven, I don't know if you're like me, I could smell it within 30 minutes and I just couldn't resist. So I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of these tacos. Mmm. Mmm. You enjoy yourself, we're not in a hurry. If you are asking for this uh, in Mexico or anywhere, it's not going to happen. You guys know that I bring you views, original recipes, and combinations, and I'm just out there like that. <laughs> Thank you guys for loving me. Thank you for being <laughs> out there. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I make bistec borracho, and this recipe is excellent for a weekday meal. You'll need one pound of beef steak. Today I'm using tender sliced beef chuck and some of you might know it as bistec. One beer, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground cumin, three garlic cloves, a small bunch of cilantro, one onion, two tomatoes, one roasted red bell pepper, one roasted poblano, one jalapeño, one cup of water and combined with one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, and a little bit of oil. 
To your bowl, you wanna add your thinly sliced beef. Next, you wanna add your seasonings, which are black pepper, salt, ground cumin. We're gonna follow that by adding our chopped garlic and chopped cilantro. Sprinkle in your sliced onion and douse it with your beer. And make sure to save some for yourself because you deserve it. Combine all your ingredients and set it to the side for 10 minutes while you start on your rice and your beans. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. The beef has been marinating for about 10 minutes. You can leave it anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes. The longer the better, but we're moving quickly here today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna place it on our hot pan and we're gonna sear it on each side for one minute. It smells so good, it smells like my uncle in here. <laughs> and after two minutes, you're gonna remove your cooked beef. We're not done with it, we're just gonna set this to the side. And once you're done cooking your beef, uh, you're gonna notice that your pan has a little bit of uh, the delicious flavoring at the bottom, and you're gonna add your tomatoes. Mmm, that smells so good. We're gonna continue by cooking our tomatoes for two more minutes. After two minutes, you're gonna add your beef. Your peppers. Add your chicken broth mixture. Your borracho marinade. Woo, look at that deliciousness. It's a party in the pan. Give that a good mix and make sure that you're getting all that delicious flavor from the bottom of your pan to incorporate into this delicious broth. I'm currently on a medium heat and I'm gonna keep it this way for another 15 minutes. If for some reason your pan gets too hot, go ahead and move that to a medium low. After 15 minutes, your bistec borracho is gonna look just like this. If you want your sauce a little bit thicker, you can continue to cook on a medium low for another five to eight minutes, but this is absolutely perfect and exactly what our family loves. I don't mean to, you know, ruin the fun here, but I've tasted this broth about five times and I just wanted to have it in a bowl with soup and that's it, it's that good. And boom, done. Just like that, you have an easy weekday meal. One of the things that I am gonna say to you is that depending on the cut of beef that you're using, you might need to cook it for 25 to 30 minutes or you can get away with anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. It really depends on how thin you slice your beef. Mmm, wow. Yeah, the broth is amazing in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a party in my mouth. <laughs> Especially with the roasted peppers, so, so good. Yummy. Well, I need to warm up a tortilla so that I can finish this plate. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we want to give a special shout out to the Views Club because without you, we wouldn't be here. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Amigos, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make chilaquiles verdes. Whether you like them spicy, or you like them mild, or you don't like spice at all, not to worry, I have you covered. I have a lot of suggestions for you in the description area. Just click that title, it'll expand the description area and you'll get all the details you need. But one of the things that you have to have for this recipe is corn tortillas. So get a big stack like this of corn tortillas. And what you wanna do with your corn tortillas is you wanna slice them into smaller triangles. And what I'm hoping is that most of your corn tortillas look like this and not to worry. If for some reason you have those fall apart tortillas it ends up like this or even like this, you can still get this recipe done. You're gonna need some oil, but I suggest that for your oil, you make it comfortable for your home. Today, I'm gonna be frying with peanut oil. We are also gonna need some tomatillos. When you're choosing your tomatillos, you wanna make sure to go for the medium or the small ones. Now, it does come with a layer of a thick leaf over it. I'm not sure what that's called, but I suggest you take it off and wash them so that they're not so sticky. And we want them nice and clean. 
you'll need some fresh cilantro, a poblano pepper, and for your spice, you wanna use serrano. Now, I'm keeping this mildish spicy, so I'm using two, but if you want it extra spicy, use four. Now, for those of you that like a mild spice, go ahead and use jalapenos, and if you don't want any spice, just omit the serranos and the jalapenos. You're gonna need half a onion and two garlic cloves. In this cup, I have one and a half cups of warm water and I added one tablespoon of chicken bouillon. Now, if you don't wanna use chicken bouillon and you happen to have fresh chicken broth, use that or you can use salt. You're gonna need some queso fresco, crema fresca, and Cloud and I absolutely love this one. Ooh, it's our favorite it just It reminds me of being in Mexico with my tias. I yes. even pour it in my coffee. You know, I tried that and it was absolutely amazing because I usually go with heavy whipping cream, but this, I recommend it. It's so if you delectable, guys see the, right? It really is. If you see the bigger bottle, go for it. But I, I don't know. This one's really cute. I like this one. Me too. I like to reuse it. And some fancy mozzarella cheese. For those of you here in the States that love that cheese pool, you're going to need some of this. I'm just sitting back here trying not to laugh because it, it seems like a, a dating commercial, but it's not because your love for H-E-B is so deep you know, and romantic. It really, <laughs> it, it really does get deep and personal with H-E-B and myself. And I don't know, I, I check Cloud's grocery list when I go over there too. And I, I look at which I'm like, where did you get this? She's like, it's the H-E-B. And I'm like, what? I didn't know about it. It's a H-E-B brand. It's a H-E-B brand. Not a sponsored video, but we would be happy to be sponsored by... H-E-B. Yeah, I would like that too. Let them know, everybody. Let's do it. You guys ready to cook? We're ready. All right. To your pot of hot water, you want to add your tomatillos. I wanted to throw one in here, but I didn't want it to splash you. What? You should have done it. Yeah, it's going to splash you. <laughs> I don't want okay, it to mess up your equipment you with hot my, water. Your cheap equipment. <laughs> your cheap equipment, girl. <laughs> add your jalapenos and your serranos. And just take the stems off. And since we're going to be boiling our onion and our garlic, we'll only have to cook our sauce for about 10 to 15 minutes instead of about 20 to 30 and then it'll be there for a while. This is quick and easy amigos. So like go ahead kind of <laughs> Go ahead and continue to boil this for 10 minutes. I have my burner on a medium heat and we are going to roast our poblano pepper until it's nice and charred. You want to keep it nice and dark. It's gonna make it easier for us to peel. You guys have seen me roast chiles on here plenty of times. This is no different. I'm gonna peel it, remove the seeds, and boom, done. That's right, and if people love to watch you roast peppers, there is a video of roasting peppers for a good 30 minutes. That's is the that mango, the mango salsa? The mango yeah. salsa a few years back. You guys love watching roasting. Watch the mango salsa and make it. That is an award-winning salsa. I don't know how many of you have been sleeping on it and why, but you'll never ever in your life have a salsa that is so delicious like that one. And I would love to take credit, but that's my mom's hard work. Yes, we always get compliments when we take it to a little fiesta or a gathering. Yep, this is not a chop your jalapenos and your, and your mango salsa. This is like a really gourmet, it's fancy serious. salsa that you can have it at your uh, get-together or you can take it to a fancy place. It's it really serious can. business. It really is. I peeled and removed the seeds from our poblano and I'm just going to add that into the blender. Go ahead and take all of your ingredients that we boiled and place them into your blender. Add your chicken broth. You know what had me cracking up the other day? What? The comments of our bolis recipe. Oh, what were they? Because I know the kids are watching the Beast Club Junior, so I always have the silliest faces for them because I love kids. So. Sorry, you guys caught me in between hanging out with children. <laughs> Anything for the Bees Club Junior. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love you. Aquino, we love you, sweetheart. I mean, we would do anything. If the Bees Club Junior suggested that we have a meetup just for them, we would make it happen. If you guys want us to have a meetup, make sure that it's for the Bees Club Junior. It's going to be a fun time for the kids. Parents, we love you too, but the Bees Club Junior will get us to do anything they want. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to blend until smooth. I got so excited to talk about the Beast Club Junior that I forgot to add our cilantro. No, wild. No, that's perfect. <laughs> perfect timing. So make sure you blend your cilantro in here. You don't forget. But if you have cute kids at home, it's okay. You know, we won't mess up the recipe. Just make sure to add it in here. And now we blend till smooth. <laughs> 
And boom, done. I have my pan on a medium heat and I let it warm up for two minutes. Now I'm gonna add my avocado oil. And I'm just gonna add a little bit because I want this sauce to be nice and shiny. Go ahead and add your blended ingredients. Woo, yeah. Ooh, fiesta. I'm gonna say the cuerpo pide salsa, mija. Yes. <laughs> All the time. I'm grateful for the salsa you gave me this morning. You like it? Uh -huh. Yummy. Yeah. Está perrona. And the taquitos. Ooh, ooh. And the chipitas. <laughs> the chipitas. Yummy. I've been feeding everybody I can. And I'm excited to feed you guys today. Even people walking down your neighborhood. <laughs> I am. Are I'm you hungry? Did you eat? Anything gets delivered. Do you want something to eat? Here you go. We're gonna continue to cook this for 10 minutes, okay? We're gonna put this on a on a low heat and just come in and stir periodically. If you're chit-chatting, you know, just give it a good little twirl in there. And someone's gonna say you're using a little pan again, but this is actually a big pan. It is, I think it's big. It's but very I would steep, agree, but I it's would agree steep. with that person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, I'll see you in 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, we have a deliciously cooked thicker sauce and if you're wondering how did the sauce get so thick it's a tomatillo if you end up saving some of the sauce for later in the week for meal prep and you see that it's kind of stiff and jiggly not to worry all you have to do is warm it up and you get a smooth consistency all over again add your oil to your pot where you're gonna be frying your corn chips today I am using peanut oil did I already tell you guys that you did you guys you. I'm aging right before your eyes so after about three to four minutes on a medium heat, you can check your oil to see if it's ready. And when you see it bubbling, you know what? I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's just prop it all in there. When you see it bubbling, that means that you're ready to fry. But if you have it bubbling with smoke, you're gonna burn your corn chips, so be careful. Now it's time to add our tortilla chips. You can add them in a bunch. Sometimes they stick together, and those are my favorite ones. Can I clarify for the use cubs? Mm -hmm. That noise in the background was not my stomach this time. That was your ice maker. It was the ice maker. I want to be clear. When those little balls drop, I mean, it makes the loudest sound, girl. It does. You guys heard it. Yes, but you know, I don't want to keep feeding the rumors. I was fed. <laughs> the moment <laughs> I walked in the door. Thank you. So just move them around a little bit so some of that steam uh, can be released and we get the crispiest, crunchiest corn chips we can get in a humid climate. <laughs> and once you see your corn chips turn a little bit golden, you want to go ahead and take them out. Make sure to place them in something like this, like a little wire. Uh, what was that? A strainer? A strainer. There you go. Thank or you, Cloud. A basket. I've been Not on paper towels because we learned four years ago from Steph on Views on the Road that we don't put our tortilla chips on paper towels because it steams up your tortillas and it will not be crispy. Wow, Cloud, I am so proud Woo! of you. And what do you think I'm going to do with the chips right now? You're going to uh, warm buffet them. I'm going to warm buffet them. Let me show you what that is. If there was a test, I passed you today. Passed. <laughs> Now we're gonna warm buffet them. So just sprinkle a little bit of salt. It's gonna make a difference. Set your pan on a medium heat and add some oil. We are gonna fry some eggs. Do you like your chilaquiles with scrambled eggs or fried? Fried, like over easy? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Over easy for me. Yeah. And you wanna spread the egg white. And boom, done. I'm gonna pair this with some refried beans and I like to put a little bit of our sauce right at the bottom. Would there be an easier way to assemble this? Yes, if you're making it for a lot of people, you can throw all your corn chips into the pot of your sauce, but then you're gonna have a hit and miss. Some people like it really soggy, some people don't, and this gives you a little bit of both. So some prefer soft texture and other prefer prefer the crunch the crunch out of them mm -hmm. so if you prefer um, the soft one just throw them all in your pan and mix them around and you'll be set sounds good to me what do you prefer Claude? 
Um, I prefer this method that you're doing because I do like some soft and then a little bit of a crispy end. Especially if you're gonna pair it with the beans. I'm, I'm for it. Now you know where my head's at. <laughs> Next, you wanna add your crumbled queso fresco. And I'm gonna be using a little bit of both cheeses. I like the cheese pull. Next, we're gonna add our eggs. A little bit of cilantro to garnish, make it pretty for your family and for flavor, of course, always. Last but definitely not least, some Mexican crema fresca. Just drizzle it and let it happen. You won't regret it. And boom, done, amigos, we're ready to eat. Say ah. That's really the best. Can you hear that crunch from the tortillas? I can, that's the way that I like them. You did great. Yeah, even the spice level here is very subtle. It's not, it's not wild. It's perfect. Mm. I don't know, I've tried chilaquiles without the eggs and it just doesn't hit right. I don't know, maybe because it's a cut, I'm just accustomed to it. You know, I had it without the eggs because of the babies before. Mm -hmm. But now we're at the point where we can step it up another notch with our heat and also with adding eggs. Ooh. My mouth just watered. Ooh. That buildup that comes from behind the, the mouth. Mm. <laughs> You're just ready to take a bite. You can't skip on the beans either. Beans are necessary. And you don't want your beans to be too dry. You want them a little bit runny. Mm -hmm. And it'll make this work great. Mm. It's perfectly seasoned. If I'm not talking, it's because this is that good. <laughs> and for those of you that don't like the sunny side up eggs, you can use scrambled eggs for this. Don't feel pressured. I know some of you can't handle it, but I'm telling you, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I mm. would be the one pressuring people. Come on, just mm. try it. <laughs> mm. Just mmm. What is it, those things that make you go, mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> As always, Views Club, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we wanna give a special shout out to our first responders, our nurses, all of you going to nursing school. We're proud of you and we thank you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the most easy and delicious chicken dinner. This is a recipe that my family requests often, and once I show you how to make it, you're gonna understand why. You'll need two chicken breasts, seven wajillo chilies, make sure to remove the stems and the seeds, one and a half onions, three garlic cloves, one jalapeno, a small bunch of cilantro, one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of butter, one and a half cups of water, half a cup of heavy whipping cream, one and a half cups of melty cheese, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of ground cumin, and one tablespoon of chicken bouillon. I've already cut my chicken into smaller pieces. And next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your ground cumin, your Mexican oregano, black pepper, smoked paprika, and if you only have regular paprika, that's okay. Combine all your ingredients so that we can fully coat our chicken with the seasoning. Next, you're gonna add your salt, and just a little bit because we're gonna be using chicken bouillon, and we also wanna keep our chicken juicy, so we don't wanna add too much salt right now. Add your olive oil, add your garlic, and fully combine all your ingredients. Once you fully combine all your ingredients, we're gonna go ahead and set our chicken to the side for about 10 minutes, and while our chicken is resting and getting all its flavor, we're gonna get started on our sauce. And for those of you that have selective eaters at home, I asked my uh, youngest son if he wanted to have chicken today. He said no, he wasn't in a mood, so I just chopped up some firm tofu. I seasoned it exactly the same way that I did our chicken, and I'm gonna sear it just like we do our chicken. To your blender, you wanna add your water, cilantro, onion, jalapeno, and if you have family members that prefer spicy dishes, you can use a serrano. Now, if you have relatives from Mexico visiting, you're gonna wanna use about three serranos for this recipe. Add your chicken bouillon, 
your Wajillo chilies, and next you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done. Set your burner on a medium heat and add your butter. Once you add your butter, you're going to add your chicken. Give that a quick mix and continue to cook for another six minutes without moving anything. After about six minutes, you're going to give that another good mix. Add your onions. And another good mix. And we're going to continue to cook for another five minutes on a medium heat. Next, you want to give that a good mix. And you just want your onions to be translucent, okay? So once your onions have become a nice little translucent color, we're going to go ahead and add our sauce. And then I'm going to add a little bit of sauce that I have left over uh, to our tofu. Once you combine all your ingredients, you're going to lower your temperature to a medium low heat and we're going to continue to cook with the lid on for another 10 minutes and I'm just going to crack the lid because if I don't, it gets wild in here. Next, you're going to add your heavy whipping cream. If you don't have access to heavy whipping cream, that's okay. You can use half and half and if you don't have either, you can use milk. Once you combine your heavy whipping cream into your sauce, you're going to get a handful of your cheese. And maybe a little bit more. You're going to turn your burner off. You're going to give that a good mix. And we are ready to serve. All we're doing is waiting for our french fries to be fully cooked and crispy. And as far as your tofu, you can do the same. You can add your cream in here. You can add some cheese. It's really going to be up to you on how you want to dress up your tofu. And I love to serve this recipe with a little side salad. I'm going to be using some lettuce, cucumber, tomato, carrots, and a little bit of lime. I'm going to need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Thank you. Make sure to squeeze your lime on your salad, okay? This dish is very Mexican restaurant style. Anytime you go out to a place where you have seafood, you have your dish, french fries, rice, salad. And let me tell you, this just gets better every time. Yes, we know we're eating chicken, but we wanted to eat the sides. Well, our audience doesn't let us eat shrimp in front of them. They don't like shrimp. <laughs> here. A handful. Mmm. Wow. This sauce is absolutely delicious. You did such a wonderful job. It's so flavorful. Sometimes I can even surprise myself. <laughs> Mmm. If you don't want to deal with the chicken, make the sauce and load your french fries and you guys are set. But I highly suggest you make the chicken and I already showed you guys how you can make it with tofu. Super easy. Well, it's about to get really dirty in here because it is a sloppier dish for me to eat. And well, you guys have seen me through worse, so. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to thank everybody that joined us today. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome, amigos. Happy National Burrito Day. And today, I'm going to be making you a guisado burrito. And if you don't know what a guisado is, keep watching. For today's guisado, you're going to need one to two pounds of ground beef. And if you don't have ground beef, you can use ground chicken. So go ahead and add one teaspoon of ground cumin, your desired amount of black pepper. I'm just hoping it lands in that bowl. It did. <laughs> in that big bowl. <laughs> in that big bowl. And you can find the acrylic spice containers in our Amazon storefront. And the link is in the description area and now we're pinning it for you. So just look in the comments. It's going to be the first one. So go ahead and add half a chopped onion. Whoa, I don't want it to shine. 
Your friends are here. They're here for me. Drizzle about half a tablespoon of olive oil or whatever oil you have at home and combine all your ingredients. What kind of olive oil are you using? I've never seen that bottle before. Don't tease. I ran out of our favorite olive oil and I have this one from Costco and I don't know how I feel about it. Oh, that's why you're not showing us. No, I can't. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna finish using it. I have a whole bottle to go. Don't worry, Views Club, I'll sneak a peek and tell you on tomorrow's episode what it is. <laughs> I'm going to have to start mailing it out. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding it. <laughs> Put duct tape on it. <laughs> I'm going to have to infuse it with some, some birria seasonings. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> and once you're done combining your ingredients, go ahead and set it to the side. I pre-soaked about nine chile guajillos in hot water and you just want to let them soak in there until they get nice and soft or you can use the boiling method which takes about the same amount of time. I'm gonna use a little bit of this water so we can blend. You wanna add two roasted tomatoes and two roasted garlics. And for those of you that like spice in your food, you can add some chile de arbol and that's gonna be up to you because I've been known to make really spicy salsa to the point where my family doesn't wanna to talk to me. Mm -hmm. That happened to me recently. Thanks for the warning, little girl. <laughs> you got me good. And now you're gonna blend until smooth. And boom done, amigos! Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. And then you're gonna add your ground beef. And the reason I'm using my hands to put the beef in, it's because um, it's authentic that way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're able to crumble up that meat. <laughs> yeah. You wash your hands a lot. And I'm grateful for that. I have counted one time how many times I washed my hands and it was like 25 or something, girl. Well, because you're always in the kitchen. That's right. Continue to cook your ground beef on that medium heat for another four to five minutes and just start breaking down your ground beef. Once you've fully cooked your ground beef, you're gonna go ahead and add your pre-cooked potatoes. And if you like to use a microwave, you can chop up your potatoes and cook them for eight minutes, or you can boil them for about 10 to 12 minutes. Add your blended chili sauce. I'm gonna use about a cup and a half of water to shake off all the excess chili, and we're gonna pour it right on in. One to two tablespoons of chicken bouillon, and one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook until you see that your sauce is thickened up a little bit. That should be anywhere from 13 to 15 minutes. Okay, amigos, we are all done here. I like my guisado a bit saucier because I like to dip my tortillas usually, but for those of you that don't want it so saucy, just use a little bit of less water and I'll leave the suggestions in the description area, but we are ready to serve and make this burrito. I'm gonna warm up our flour tortilla. If you guys need a recipe, I have a lot here on YouTube. Look up these on the road tortillas. <laughs> I try to help you differently in each one. They all have tips. To your tortilla, you wanna add your favorite beans. Today I'm using pork beans and I'll link it in the description area. Mexican rice, the star of the show. And I like my burritos this way with some cheddar. And boom, done, who's ready for a bite? And I'm just gonna show you another way you can plate this guisado. I'm nervous, let's see what you say for National Burrito Day. I was gonna say it's hot, but he can handle the heat. <laughs> Take your time. Babe. Take your time, Take babe, your finish time. chewing. Mm -hmm. Steph, do you have any tips for us while he's chewing? No tips at all. This is a super easy recipe to make. And even if you haven't thought out your ground beef, you know that you can still cook it. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> we do it all the time. <laughs> the teenagers won't stress out if they don't take out their meat in time to do Yeah, broth. don't stress out. And if you guys need help on how uh, to cook your beef when it's still frozen, let me know in the comments and then I'll make a recipe specifically for you guys. With frozen beef. With frozen beef. It's good. It's very delicious and it's good and spicy. Oh, you like the spice in there? Yes. Why? Well, I didn't know it's National Burrito Day. Nobody told me this. Well, I thought you liked burritos that you would, you would know. <laughs> this was a surprise for you, sweetie. Oh, I had no surprise. Okay. Thank you, Mom. And I'm out. All right. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> I'm going to make another burrito, friends, but I hope that you guys are having a lovely day. Happy National Burrito Day. Let me know what kind of burrito you had today. And if you couldn't have a burrito, let me know what you had to eat anyways. <laughs>
As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We have so much fun cooking for you today. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make the most refreshing tres leches drink. And if you love our tres leches cake, you're going to love this recipe. You'll need one cup of milk, four cups of water, one can of evaporated milk, half a cup of heavy whipping cream, one can of lechera, or you can use half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of Mexican vanilla blend, half a tablespoon of cinnamon, your desired amount of strawberries, or you can use some peaches. And of course, to keep it fresh, get a lot of ice. And to enhance the experience while you're drinking this delicious, refreshing drink, I suggest you chop your strawberries and your peaches into smaller pieces. Add four cups of water, one cup of milk, and you can use soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, your horchata, rice milk, you name it. You can add it to this recipe and it's gonna be equally as delicious. Half a cup of heavy whipping cream, and if you don't have access to heavy whipping cream, that's okay, you can use half and half. And if you're gonna use this recipe for your bolis, your ice treats, make sure to use one cup of heavy whipping cream. Evaporated milk, your other tia lechera, and if you don't have condensed milk, you can use sugar. It's gonna be up to you. I just love the way that it tastes with some lechera. Vanilla, and I'm using Mexican vanilla blend because it's tradition. It's a staple in our home. <laughs> Cinnamon. And now you're gonna mix for a good 30 seconds to a minute until you fully combine all your ingredients. Ooh, that smells so good. <laughs> Que rico. You have all been doing such a wonderful job learning to love yourself. And you know, when you love yourself, you can see it in your kids, right? So I can see it, friends. You're doing a great job, and this drink is gonna send you straight to the clouds. Because you know who loves you in the clouds? Your tia Cloud. <laughs> Guess I'll see you there. And you know who's next to Cloud? Me. So we'll see you guys there. You little ray of sunshine. <laughs> Once you're done combining your ingredients, you wanna taste your drink, okay? So some of you might like it sweeter and some of you might say that's exactly what I need. And for me, I'm gonna use some of this to freeze for boli. So, you know, I'm gonna impress the kids today. They've been good. They're gonna get a little sugar. Whoa, cheers. <laughs> Take me down to the paradise city. Cause the grass is green and your mom is pretty. Oh, won't you take me home? And it's a home run, amigos. I'm so excited for you guys to try this recipe. It's absolutely delicious and perfect for this hot season and for the holidays. And for your birthdays. <laughs>
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why did I sound so rehearsed? I got really excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Otra salud. Salud. Oh, you're almost Ooh. done. That's good. It's going to keep you full for a few hours. That's what you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's amazing. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to give a special shout out to all of our new subscribers and our new TikTok friends. And for the Views Club Junior, I know you're picking your nose in front of everybody. You keep eating that, you're gonna get sick. So wash your hands, get a tissue. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today I'm gonna to show you how to make beef mole tacos. If you love juicy, tender, flavorful tacos, these are for you. For this delicious recipe, you'll need three pounds of chuck roast, half a cup of mole paste, one cup of orange juice, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, and some tortillas. Add your mole paste to your bowl, add your warm orange juice, chicken bouillon, and combine until your mole is completely dissolved. Once your paste is dissolved, you're going to start adding your pieces of beef. Once you've coated all your beef, you want to add a little bit of oil. You can marinate this for 30 minutes or for best flavor overnight. I'm going to go ahead and let this rest for 30 minutes. Today I'm going to use my Instant Pot Dutch Oven. If you guys don't have one of these, that's okay. You can make all of this on your stovetop. But for those of you that are interested, we're going to link it in the Amazon storefront and I highly suggest it. I'm in love. It's amazing. I'm going to press the sear slash saute button and we're going to wait for this to warm up a good five minutes. So make sure you hit start. And while our Dutch oven is warming up, I'm going to add a big spoon of lard. You can use oil, but the flavor that's going to come out if you use lard is going to be just like your restaurant. While we're waiting for our lard and our pot to warm up a bit, I'm going to tell you why I love it. I love it because the cleanup is so easy. It's chef's kiss. It's a mom's delight. You have more time with your family and less time cleaning. I'm not about cleaning right now, so this is my new best friend. It's been about five minutes and I'm going to start placing my beef pieces. I'm not going to place too many at one time because I want some to get a really good sear. And if you start crowding it, you know that we get more of a steam and a boil. We want to sear on these tacos. I'm going to allow these pieces of beef to sear for four minutes without moving anything. It's been four minutes and I'm going to start flipping our pieces. You're wondering what kind of sear you're going to get. You're going to get a beautiful one. Look at that. And now that I flipped those pieces, I'm going to add the remaining pieces of beef. And again, I'm going to let everything sear for another four minutes. Four minutes have elapsed and I'm just going to give it another turn to one of the sides where it hasn't been seared. Next, you're going to add the remaining of your marinade right into the pot. I'm gonna add a little bit of water into our bowl. That's about one fourth of a cup, just so that we can get all of that delicious marinade right into this pot. It's so, so good. And I really did work hard on that mole, so I want it all in here. And the mole recipe, you guys can find that in the description area. We posted it not too long ago. And just take your pieces, move them around in case any of the sear pieces are stuck or any of that delicious crust, we can incorporate it into our broth. Next, you're gonna place the lid over your pot and we're gonna press our braise button and that's gonna braise it for two hours. After one hour, I'll come and move the pieces around to make sure nothing's sticking, but there has been a time when I didn't show up to move anything and nothing happened. You guys are gonna be okay. 
And boom, done. Our mole beef is ready for some juicy tacos. Look at how juicy and tender each little piece is. Oh my goodness. I, you know, I'm not going to make you wait. I'm going to need somebody very special to say, uh. And the salsa I recommend with these tacos is the salsa that everyone should know how to make. We did it over the summer and I'll link it in the description area for you. Squeeze a little lime juice. And yummy, yummy in our tummy. I'm really tired of eating super quick and easy tacos. So these tacos took a little bit more time, but they are so worth it because the flavor pulls through. I hope you enjoy these tacos as much as I do. Mm. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Now look away. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you have a beautiful weekend. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make pozole rojo step by step. It's almost an authentic recipe. And the reason I say that is because we're going to be using a 14 ounce can of pre-cooked hominy. Five pounds of pork butt, five pounds of pork shoulder, five pounds of pork feet, 18 guajillo chiles, 15 bay leaves, two garlic bulbs, two medium onions, one tablespoon of salt, five tablespoons of chicken bouillon, one and a half tablespoons of Mexican oregano, and 20 cups of water. Add your salt, place your burner on a high heat, and bring your water up to a boil. And once you've reached a boil, you're gonna add your pork pieces. Next, you're gonna to continue to boil on a high for 15 to 20 minutes. We want all those impurities to rise to the top and then we're gonna start skimming them. In the meantime, I'm gonna start cleaning our chiles. And what I mean by cleaning is I'm gonna start removing uh, any kind of stem and seed. The bag that I have today, not many of them have a stem, but you wanna remove as many of the seeds as you can. If you happen to get one that has a little bit of mold, just toss that one and get a new one. I have our guajillo chilies. I like to take the ends off of our garlic just to release all those delicious flavors. We have our bay leaves and then I've already peeled our onion and I like to just give that a little slit at the end so that we can start releasing those delicious juices. Give or take 20 minutes, it's time to remove our impurities and I currently cannot find my skimmer. Can you guys believe that? So I'm gonna use my strainer and make do. I'm gonna make it comfortable for my home today. And this might help somebody that doesn't have a skimmer. I'm gonna share a tip with you. I like to go in and skim the impurities the first time. And what helps me get all of the impurities is that I'll go ahead and place the lid on it for another three minutes and then I'll come back and remove the impurities that rose to the top. So it's two times to get it super clean. See all those bubbles? All those bubbles are impurities. You don't need to see this part. You already know what we're doing. We're just skimming our impurities. Next, you wanna add your garlics, your onion, your chiles, and your bay leaves. Place the lid over your pot and you're gonna to continue to boil for another hour. Within the hour, you wanna come and stir periodically to make sure that nothing is stuck to the bottom and that you don't burn your patitas. And while our pozole continues to cook, we're going to talk about the salsa pozolera. It's a salsa you use for your pozole so that whenever you make it in the big pot, you don't have to make it super spicy and that way the whole family is happy. I like to use chiles puya. They're smoky and spicy, but they are expensive. So if you don't have puya chiles, you can use your chiles de arbol. I'm going to be using five chiles puya, and if you're going to use chile de arbol, you want to use eight, unless you really want to bring the heat, you can use 15. You'll need six to eight garlics. And you can use the one from your pozole, but last time I did that, Cloud got really upset at me because she loves that on her tostada, so I'm not even gonna mess with her today. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. I'm using avocado oil today, but make it comfortable for your home. Once your oil is nice and hot, you're gonna add your chiles, your garlic, and you're gonna toast them up for a good 45 seconds to a minute. When you see the color of your chiles have changed, you want to take them out and it looks like my garlic needs another minute or so. 
and your garlic. You're gonna add three fourths of a cup of your pozole broth, one heaping tablespoon of salt, and half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano. And next, you're just gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Don't be shy, you know you can use this for game day or while your pozole is done cooking. She mm. goes to one Denver Broncos games and acts like this. <laughs> mm. So, so good. I love that smoky bite. Go 49ers. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 40. <laughs> And next, I'm gonna do my crema for my tostadas that I love with my pozole. Not everybody does, but I do. Do you, you like it, Cloud? I don't add the crema in the pozole. No, 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 I just have it for my tostadas. Yes, that's correct. All I use is heavy whipping cream, but you can use any kind of table cream. Add some black pepper, salt to taste. Give that a loving mix. And in just a few seconds, you have some table cream. Delicious. Make sure you clean the top of your hominy can and we are gonna open it up, give it a little rinse and have that ready for when we need it. While that pozole is boiling, it's time for you to prep your toppings, your salsa, so that you can be ready to serve as soon as that pozole is done. It's been one hour and now it's time to get our chiles and blend them. I'm gonna add some of our broth so it's easier for us to blend. Think about one to two cups should do the trick. It doesn't matter really because it's going to go right back into the pot. I'm going to do it a little bit different today just so that it's just a smoother ride for you at home. So I'm going to go ahead and add my chicken bouillon and about half a cup of your hominy. If you don't want to use your hominy, you can use about two tablespoons of maseca or you can even tear about two tortillas and toss them right on in. And next you're just going to blend until smooth. And boom, done. We just need to pour all of this into our pot. And anything that's left over, I like to use the same broth, shake it up in my blender, and then pour it right back in. We need all that chili sauce. Be careful when you're shaking it because it stains. And I'm just adjusting our pieces, make sure that we get all that broth to penetrate into all of that tender protein. Yummy. Place the lid on it and cook for another 30 minutes. Our chile rolls to the top, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of the broth to scrape down all of that delicious chile. One of the things I wanna talk to you about while I'm doing this is you wanna taste the broth right now because it's been boiling with all the seasonings for 30 minutes and this would be a great time for you to adjust for your family if you wanted a little bit saltier and if you went too heavy on your salt then I can't help you there. Somebody's gonna have a tummy ache. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The measurements are pretty exact for you. Uh, go ahead and start adding your hominy at this point and once you add your hominy, you're gonna to continue to cook for 20 to 25 minutes I do notice that when I use different brands, I might need 30, 35 minutes, um, but that should do the trick. Don't you worry. So just go ahead and make some room for your hominy to get infused with all these delicious spices and the flavors coming out of this pozole. If I sound excited, oh, I really need this in my belly. I need some comfort food, and this is one of my favorites. Mm -mm -mm. Add your oregano, and you're gonna let that boil for another 30 minutes. And boom, done, we are ready to serve some delicious pozole. You know you're grown when you have two patas in your bowl. I like to add some finely chopped cabbage. You can also use some lettuce, a little white onion, sprinkle of cilantro, a little radish, a squeeze of lime, and a few drops of your delicious salsa. I'm so glad we went with 15 chilies and Cloud wanted to be brave today. And we're ready for a delicious bite. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, Thank you. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. And to be honest, nothing beats pozole on a cold day. Now look away because I have to bite into this patita and it can get dangerous for you. 
As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and we want to thank each and every one of you that watched our recipes while we were gone, uh, giving us some peaceful time to transition. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and today we're going to be making a chicken and rice casserole with a creamy chili sauce. Uh, we're going to start by taking two cups of basmati rice, and we're going to wash it. And I like to wash my rice until my water runs clear. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. Add your rice and continue to toast until you get that light golden brown that we all love and you get that scent, that nuttiness from toasting your rice. Mm. Once your rice is nice and toasted, you're gonna add one bay leaf and one teaspoon of ground cumin and you're gonna continue to toast for another 10 to 15 seconds. And you want to add three and a half cups of water. And if you're in a very arid area, you want to use four cups of water. Add one can of tomato sauce and two tablespoons of tomato chicken bouillon. Give that a loving mix and switch your burner on a low heat. Continue to cook your rice as suggested on your package. For your creamy chili sauce, you'll need eight guajillo chiles, 15 ounces of Mexican crema, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, one tablespoon of tomato chicken bouillon. Take your guajillo chiles and remove any kind of stem that you see and your seeds. And I do want to let you guys know that these chiles are mild. My, both of my children enjoy them very much and they never complain that they're spicy. And if you for some reason get a chile that has mold inside, don't worry, just toss it and get a new one. And if you're wondering what a molded chili looks like, it looks like that. It has mold and that green stuff. You want to toss it. So I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to finish with these chilies and then we're going to soak them. Add your hot water and allow your chilies to hydrate for about 10 to 15 minutes. By then they should be nice and soft. Once your chilies are nice and soft, you want to add them to your blender. Add your Mexican crema. If you don't have Mexican crema, you can use heavy whipping cream, ground cumin, garlic powder, Mexican oregano, tomato chicken bouillon, and there's a little bit of cream left in here, so I'm gonna add about one fourth of a cup of warm water. I'm gonna shake it up and pour it right back in to our blender. And now you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Since we're having a beautiful cloudy day today, Cloud's gonna help me shred our rotisserie chicken. If you don't have access to rotisserie chicken, um, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to boil at least three to four chicken breast and start shredding, but I don't know if I'm the only one that loves to eat this part. No, I love it too. But here's a, a chip with the sauce that you made. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. How about you come mm -hmm. and help me shred this delicious chicken for our friends? And for those of you that don't know my sister, Cloud, and you're new here, this is her only cooking channel and um, she does a camerography work for us, <laughs> among other things, but mostly the camera. Here's a piece of breast for you. Thank you. So do you have any tips for us while we're shredding chicken? Um, tips about what, life or the chicken? The chicken, you always shred chicken for me and it tastes so much better. I would say start off with a big chunk and then just work your way into shredding it like it's string cheese. Okay. To make it look beautiful and even. Ooh. It's because you shred it like our uh, Mexican tias. That's why I like it. Yeah, and there's generally nobody in the kitchen when our tias are shredding our chicken. And I think here in the <laughs> States, everybody just puts it in the stand mixer and it and it shreds into just a bunch of little thin ones with no chunk in there. Yeah, you want a little bit of a bite. Those are the good for so, the taquitos. There they are, right there. Yummy. Thank you so much for helping us. Okay. We're gonna continue to shred our chicken. Hang tight, friends. Our rice is ready. And let me tell you, this is my family's current favorite way of having our Mexican rice. It's not so traditional, but ooh. You hooked my son on it, so he's asking for this rice. All it the has time. so much flavor. I mean, you're not going to regret it if you try it. And if you do make this, please come back and let us know how much you loved it because I guarantee you will. Unless you don't like ground cumin, then we're going to have to talk about it. And now I'm just going to toast our tortillas because I have some flimsy ones that are cracking up. They're really funny. Look. Yep. All cracked up. So we're just going to toast them a little bit so they don't fall apart in our casserole. We're still going to use them. Hey, this is your Tia Cloud. I'm not kidding. I have dipped everything in this sauce. Chips, chicken wing. It is so good. 
Take your creamy chili sauce and place it at the bottom of your baking dish. Next, you're gonna place your tortillas right at the bottom. And if you see, I toasted them just a little bit more. I'm trying to avoid them falling apart, but also being part of the dish. Add a little bit more of your chili cream sauce. And you wanna start making dreams come true by placing your rice right on top of that sauce. Smooth it out really good. And next, you're gonna add a layer of your rotisserie chicken. Add a layer of your cheese, and today we're using Chihuahua cheese, which looks just like this. We've been using it a lot, and whenever you have access to this cheese, this is the one you wanna use. And if you don't have Chihuahua cheese, you can use mozzarella cheese, or your Mexican cheese blend. They all work, but this one right here is gonna bring the flavor. Has a little nutty, buttery taste, and goes perfect with all these ingredients. Add some more of your delicious sauce right over the top. And next we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna place our tortillas right over our sauce. I sure hope you have sauce left after I finished about <laughs> half a cup. I'll make do. Watch out, friends. Everybody's gonna be wanting your sauce. And for the next layer, we're gonna add the remaining sauce right over the chicken. And as you can see, Cloud had a lot of this sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and your last layer is gonna be your cheese. Bake at 380 degrees and you wanna continue baking for 30 to 35 minutes. Not all ovens are created equal. If you see that your cheese is starting to crisp up too much, go ahead and place either a foil or a little parchment paper and we still have seven more minutes to go. And now it's time to serve. Oh my gosh, look at this cheese. Ooh, I want this piece. Oh my goodness, that gets me so excited. <laughs> Who's ready for a delicious bite? And this is how I like to plate it for the boys. You can add a little bit of lettuce on the top and a little sour cream. And I still have a little bit of the salsa I made yesterday, and I'm just going to drizzle a little bit over the top. Enjoy. Thank you. It smells so good. And I'm sold. When it has cheese in it, call me. <laughs> I'll be there. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. And just like that, your heart is soothed with a homemade casserole. Don't skip on that lettuce. It really combines all the flavors. And if you so happen to get not just the crispy cheese on the side, but a crispy piece of rice, please leave a comment because I know you and I both are going to love it. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Oh, you guys enjoy watching me eat a casserole? And I enjoy baking them. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to thank you all for joining us and reaching our milestone of 1 million subscribers. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Uh, just hang tight for me because I'm still doing a lot of unpacking and organizing, but as soon as all of that is set, you're going to get your gifted recipes. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I make cochinita pibil. This recipe has been requested on this channel about as many times as you guys requested the birria. And it's not just your favorite recipe, it's also my sister, so I'm super excited to show you how I make this recipe. For this recipe, you'll need eight pounds of pork shoulder, four banana leaves, eight Roma tomatoes, one box of achiote paste, and sometimes you can find it in a little package, three fourths of a cup of orange juice, and to that orange juice, you wanna add the juice of two limes eight garlic cloves, half a cinnamon stick, one and a half tablespoons of ground cumin, three and a half tablespoons of salt, one and a half tablespoons of Mexican oregano, four cloves, eight large peppercorns, also known as allspice, and half a cup of water. And all we're doing here is toasting our banana leaves to get those aromas flowing. Remember, if you can't find fresh banana leaf, you can find it in your freezer aisle, just like I did. Be careful, I don't want anybody starting fires. Take it easy. Ooh, when you start smelling that roastiness, that means that you're done with one leaf and you need to move on to the other. And what else did I say? No starting fires. <laughs> to your blender, you wanna add your achiote, salt, Mexican oregano, 
cinnamon, ground cumin, garlic, cloves, large peppercorns, orange juice and lime mixture. And now you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done. And now you just wanna lay your banana leaf in the pot that you're gonna be using. I have a super large one because I have a large quantity of pork. Next, you wanna start placing your pork pieces right at the bottom. And you are gonna to have to salt your pork. So I like to do this in layers. And now that I've made room, I can salt the remaining pork in the bowl. Next, you wanna fully coat your pork with your sauce. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. I'm gonna make sure that every piece of pork is fully coated. And I'm gonna do the same with the remaining pieces. It smells so good in here. Absolutely amazing in here. The fragrance in your kitchen is gonna make you so happy, but you're gonna to have to wait. You're gonna to have to wait and marinate this for eight hours minimum or overnight. The cochinita pibil has been marinating overnight in a delicious adobo sauce. And now it's time to add half a cup of water, followed by your chopped tomatoes and your chopped red onions. You wanna cover your cochinita pibil with the banana leaves. Place the lid on it. And now it's time to place it in the oven. You're gonna to continue to bake at 350 degrees for three and a half hours or until your pork is nice and tender. Our cochinita pibil is just about done and I'm just gonna start warming up some tortillas. It's been three hours and 45 minutes exactly and now it's time for you to spoil yourself. Ay, que sabrosura! Ooh, I'm so excited. It smells so good. What do you think, Cloud? I can't even contain myself. Are you impressed, sister? I'm always impressed. Use Cloud. Let us know in the comments if you're impressed. We are about to start shredding a little bit of this pork. Hold on just one second. Look at all that delicious broth. Give that a little squeeze and then, ooh, ooh, it's, it's falling apart. And this piece is for Cloud. And once I feed Cloud, I'm going to show you how to prepare your tacos. Está calentito, ten cuidado. Wow. You thought they were just bravo. Mmm. It just falls Yummy. apart. Now, if you get pieces that have a lot of um, fat and tissue around it, you're going to have to put in some work. But other than that, we're all set. Mmm, the spices in here See? are everything. So good. No, not good. This is amazing. Amazing? Ooh, we got an amazing, everybody. Ooh, this is a super juicy piece. It's right next to all the delicious fat. Mmm. Put that in your taco and wrap it up. You're gonna top your tacos with some pickled red onion. Recipe will be linked in the description area. And if you can handle the heat, go ahead and add some pickled habaneros. Buen provecho. Thank you. Mmm. Wow. That is some good stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you. The most difficult part of this recipe is gonna be waiting because it can take you anywhere from three and a half to four hours. But let me tell you, once this process is done, you're gonna come back for more. And don't forget to wash down these tacos with our refreshing Coca-Cola. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's so good.
What I love about making this recipe is the aromatics. When you walk into your kitchen, it's like a kitchen potpourri. And once it goes into the oven, I don't know if you're like me, I could smell it within 30 minutes and I just couldn't resist. So I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of these tacos. Mmm. Mmm. You enjoy yourself, we're not gonna hurry. Mm -hmm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we wanna thank each and every one of you for being here today because we wouldn't be here without you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a recipe that my ex-husband keeps asking me to make. And if you love our chimichangas, you're gonna love this recipe. You'll need large flour tortillas, three cups of shredded chicken, three roasted poblano peppers, 16 ounces of Mexican cream, one cup of chicken broth, your desired amount of melty cheese, one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of butter, chicken bouillon or salt to taste, and oil for frying. To your shredded chicken, you wanna add one fourth of a cup of your Mexican cream, then you wanna add your roasted and chopped poblano peppers. Make sure to keep about half a cup on the side because we're gonna use this for our topping. And you just wanna combine all of your ingredients. Some of you might need a little bit extra seasoning or an extra bite. You can add potatoes, corn to this recipe, but I like to keep it nice and simple with this juicy chicken. We're gonna continue by making our luxurious silky sauce. You're gonna need to put your burner on a medium heat and add one tablespoon of butter. Once your butter melts, you're gonna add your all-purpose flour. And you're gonna combine that quickly. Allow your flour and your butter to combine and cook for about 20 seconds. You don't wanna burn it, but you also don't want that raw flour taste, okay? Next, you're gonna add your chicken broth. and mix and mix until everything is well combined. Once you've fully combined all your ingredients, you're gonna notice that your chicken broth gets a little bit thicker and that's when you wanna add your Mexican crema. If you don't have access to Mexican crema, not to worry. I'm gonna make sure to leave a lot of suggestions for you in the description area. That one's so good, the menonita. The menonita, yes. Yes, crema menonita. Ooh. Oh my goodness, this is looking so beautiful. I just wanna jump right on in. And once again, once you've combined your ingredients, you're gonna add one cup of your melty cheese. I'm using quesadilla cheese, which usually ends up being asadero cheese. Or you can also use Oaxaca, mozzarella. Those are all beautiful and luxurious. Once you add your cheese, you wanna place your temperature on a low heat. A lot of you remember that my ex loves cheese and probably why he keeps asking me to make him this. Look at this sauce. All right, so once your cheese is melted, everything's well combined, you wanna turn your burner off, and we're gonna get started by filling our chimichangas. Some of you might not be using the Mexican cream that I'm using, and for those of you, I would suggest taste it, and if you need to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of your chicken bouillon, uh, you're more than welcome to add it to your chicken broth before you add it to the sauce. In this bowl, I have all-purpose flour, and I add water until I create a nice, amazing paste. That's gonna keep all of our burrito nice and sealed. Add your desired amount of cheese, your chicken filling. And if it sounds extra juicy, is that I did add a little bit of chicken broth at the bottom and it just creamed everything so well and just beautifully. Ooh, so excited. Boom, done. I'm gonna set it aside and continue rolling the remaining chimichangas. I've already warmed up my oil and a way that I check it that most of you know is I stick a wooden chopstick, a wooden spoon, toothpicks, anything that's wood and not coated. And once you see those bubbles, that means that we're ready to fry. If you see smoke coming out of your pan, that means it is way too hot. Place your chimichanga and your frying oil carefully. And we're gonna continue to fry for max two minutes, okay?
And if you can see here, you can make them really big or you can make them very small. Well, that's not very small. That's still really big. <laughs> but you guys know somebody has a big appetite. And you slowly want to start flipping it about every 20 to 30 seconds. Can these be made in the air fryer? They Maybe sure can. Them? They can. I don't know the exact temperature because I'm not using my air fryer that much. But for those of you that make chimichangas in your air fryer and you want to share with the rest of our friends, you're more than welcome to leave a comment. And once your chimichangas are nice and golden, that means that you got to take them out of that oil. And I'm going to continue with the remaining chimichangas. Can add a few of your roasted poblanos right on top and boom done all right someone's ready for a taste well, this looks so good mm. craving it. I hope you like it. Friends, don't worry. He's going to be washing the dishes and taking really good care of the boys. <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. We've had a lot of uh, friends asking for you. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Hello, Views Club. <laughs> They're still here. Holding strong. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you, and I would like to give a special shout out to all of you that are co-parenting peacefully. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! So excited for you guys to try this casserole today. Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and if you love cooking casseroles, you're gonna love my take on a popular green bean creamy casserole. And don't skip too far ahead, because I'm gonna be showing you how to enhance this casserole for the holidays. For this delicious recipe, you'll need one and a half pounds of ground beef, one teaspoon of garlic powder, salt and pepper, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, three cups of green beans, half an onion, eight ounces of tomato sauce, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, one chipotle pot in adobo sauce, one cup of heavy whipping cream, and some Mexican rice. To your blender, you wanna add your heavy whipping cream, and if your heavy whipping cream is really thick, you want to add one fourth of a cup extra of water. And if you guys saw our casserole the other day, you know that I do have super heavy whipping cream. Add your tomato sauce, your chipotle pot in adobo sauce, and if you don't want too much spice, you can use a can of the hatch chili or whatever spice you like. Your chicken bouillon, and if you have regular or tomato, it's really going to be up to you. Just something that's going to season this flavor just the way you like. And now we want to blend until smooth. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Next, you're gonna add your onions and you're gonna saute them for two minutes. We just want them to start getting soft and translucent. And after two minutes, you're gonna add your ground beef. And this casserole is beautiful because some of you use ground chicken, ground turkey, and all of that will work perfectly with this combination. Uh, vegan crumbles would go great in here. Yes, Claude, if they're using vegan crumbles, even better. Add your garlic powder, salt, black pepper, and for those of you that love the flavor of chipotle, you can add some of your adobo sauce in here and it's gonna make it even better. It's gonna enhance the flavors that you love from chipotle. And now you're just gonna start breaking your ground beef down and give it a loving mix. Once you've combined your beautiful ingredients, you're going to lower your temperature to a medium heat and you're going to continue to cook until you don't see any of the pink in the ground beef. 
And as soon as you see the pink is gone, you're gonna turn your burner off. You do not wanna overcook your ground beef, especially since it's gonna be going into a casserole. And now for my favorite part, assembling the casserole. You wanna use a little bit of melted butter at the bottom of your baking dish because this is gonna help the rice that's gonna go on top crisp up on the bottom and it's just gonna add another layer of flavor to your casserole. And if you're not using butter, that's okay. You can add a little bit of olive oil and it's gonna achieve what we're trying to do here, that little crisp. Our first layer is gonna be our Mexican rice. I showed you how to make this rice several times and you can find it in our holiday feast recipe. My kids love it this way. I think that's about two, three cups. And having a little bit extra of this rice is not a bad idea. It never goes to waste in this house. Next, you're gonna layer your ground beef and make sure that you're including all that delicious juice. And my family has already voted for this year's favorite casserole. And the winning casserole of the year for our family is the dinner casserole that had broccoli, cheddar, cheese, and sausage. My family went crazy over it and that was our winner this year. But let me know what your favorite one was down in the comment section and now you're gonna add your green beans. And I'm using thawed out green beans for this particular part. If you have canned green beans, even better. You'll notice that when they're frozen and they thaw out, they end up getting nice and soft. So if you're using fresh green beans, make sure to cook them thoroughly because you don't want anybody biting into a hard uh, green bean, especially not in a casserole. That's not how this works. And last, you're gonna pour your delicious sauce over your green beans. Remember, taste your sauce, and if you feel that your sauce needs a little bit more salt, more chicken bouillon, you can do that. And in order to get all that delicious sauce, I used one fourth of a cup of water, shook it, and now it's time to pour it into our casserole. And now for your topping, you can use your fried onions, you can use your crispy jalapeno toppings, and if you don't have access to these, not to worry. You can also use panko crumbs. If you're gonna use panko crumbs, make sure to add a little bit of oil or melted butter, combine it, and then sprinkle it on top of your uh, casserole. But if all else fails and you like spice, you can try. Some of your pickled jalapenos will work great right on the top, add a little bit of fun. And some of you are gonna add cheese to this, but today I'm not feeling too cheesy. I've had a lot all month. <laughs> and my godson loves to watch our show, and this is oddly satisfying to him. So here you go, godson. I hope you enjoy this. Sprinkle your fried onions over the top. Today I'm going to do a mixture of onions and a little bit of the crispy jalapenos. And try not to eat the whole bag of jalapenos while you're pouring it on here because these are absolutely delicious. Those go great on salads. They do, they're from, they usually find them in the salad section, but you can use them for just about anything, even as a small little snack. Ooh, yummy. You guys know that my foil has been sticking and I know you mentioned to use some little nonstick spray, but this, this works out for me. So I'm gonna add a parchment paper. I'm gonna place the foil over our baking dish and we're gonna bake at 380 degrees for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, you're gonna remove your foil and you're gonna continue to bake for another five to six minutes. And boom, done, yummy, yummy in our tummy. I'm so excited for you guys to try this casserole today. And last but not least, it's purely optional. You can add some crema fresca right over the top. And these are the casseroles that I love because you can just scoop it up. You don't have to slice just to scoop. Get a little bit of everything in here. Mmm. The green beans smell delicious. And I am gonna need a little bit of extra crema fresca. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. Buen provecho, hijotes. You said buen provecho, hijotes to me. <laughs> I can't with you. Mmm. There's gonna be those casseroles where you eat and you're like, eh, I could have done without. But this one, it's gonna take your breath away. So beware, you're gonna have to wear your stretch pants because it's that good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
Not only is the flavor amazing, every single layer of flavor that you put in here is well balanced. Everything that you're looking for for comfort food is in this casserole. So I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. And, and it's not going to be the last casserole I share with you. I have a whole notebook full of casseroles. And the more you guys watch these and the more that you like them, uh, the more I'm going to share the recipes with you. So look away because it's starting to get dangerous in this plate. Mm. I'm about two seconds from crying. It's so good. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we love you so much that we're gonna tell you to cover up. It's about to get really cold for you guys and we wanna make sure that you're safe, nestled and warm and we're gonna be praying for all of you. So please do your best and on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna show you a recipe that's over 100 years old. For this recipe, you're gonna need four cups of hot water, and you're gonna need some extra hot water for your chiles. Seven huajillo chilies and two ancho chiles. Make sure to remove the stems and the seeds, and what you wanna do is you wanna add some hot water, and you wanna soak them for about 10 minutes until they're nice and soft. One pound of ground pork, eight ounces of chorizo, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and your desired amount of bolillo or telera bread, two chipotle pods with adobo sauce, one teaspoon of ground clove, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and about four garlic cloves, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of thyme, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, salt to taste, thinly sliced lettuce, half of a thinly sliced onion, and avocado to taste. Take your flour and dust your bread. And what you want to do is you want to close your bag. And you want to shake it so that we can coat all of our bread with the flour. And your bread should look like this. Take your softened chiles and add them to your blender. Add your water, ground cumin, thyme, Mexican oregano, garlic, cinnamon, ground clove, chipotle, and if you want it really spicy, then you can add four chipotles. And don't forget your adobo sauce. And now you want to blend until smooth. And boom, done! Place your burner on a medium heat and allow it to heat up for about two minutes. After two minutes, you're gonna go ahead and add your ground pork. Continue to cook your pork for another three to four minutes. After about four minutes, you wanna make a little well in the center of your pot and you're gonna add your chorizo. Combine all your ingredients, set your burner on a medium heat and continue to cook for another four minutes. Give or take about four to five minutes, you're gonna add your blended sauce. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook on a low heat for 15 to 18 minutes and not to worry friends, you do not need a lid for this part. Make sure to come in periodically and stir your pot. And what you wanna do after about eight to 10 minutes is you wanna taste the sauce, okay? And the reason you wanna taste your sauce is because you wanna make sure that it's seasoned well and depending on the chorizo that you're using, you never know. So go ahead and taste your sauce and if you need any salt, this is the time where you would sprinkle your salt, mix it in and continue to cook for the remaining minutes. And remember, your salt is to taste. Go light, don't go too heavy, because you can always add, but you can't take it out. Ooh, a magic potion. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. And you don't need to add chicken bouillon in here because the spices take care of all the flavoring and all that, right? This is a well seasoned dish. You do not need chicken bouillon unless you're addicted. That's a different story, and that's to taste. And you can sprinkle <laughs> it right on. You sure can. <laughs> We have a saying around here in this channel, and it is, make it comfortable for, for your, your home. home. That is correct, Cloud. And after about 18 minutes, our ingredients are fully cooked, our sauce is nice and thick, and now we can start preparing our pambaso.
Take your lettuce and add it to the bottom of your pambazo. Next, you're gonna add your desired amount of onions, your thinly sliced avocado. And for this version, you don't need the cheese, right? You do not need the cheese. You have enough fat from your avocado. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yummy. And next, you're gonna pour your filling right over the top. And next, you're gonna take the top of your bread, you're gonna dip it into your sauce, and you're gonna place the hat. And boom, done, amigos, who's ready for a bite? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Amigos, regardless of what recipe you choose to make, it's gonna be sloppy, so just enjoy it, okay? There, it's like eating tacos, it doesn't matter. Just dig in. And once I dig in, just look away after because it's gonna get dangerous. Buen provecho. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. That's magical. I have a little bit of chili on you. Well, when they ask me how I got my smile, it's not going to be the Dark Knight movie. <laughs> it's yep. going to be your bombazo filling. Mmm, so good. It's so flavorful and seasoned. Friends, you're going to love it. Mmm. And this is why we cook our street foods at home, because it gets dangerous. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. You oh, have wow. sauce there. You do look like the Joker right now, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But you're the sweet angel, little Joker, when existed. Thank you. I, I love when you count on me anyway. <laughs> I just hit a pocket of flavor that burst in my mouth. So friends, when you guys try this recipe, please come back and let me know how you enjoyed it. <laughs> if for some reason you got a smile from this pambaso, go ahead and tag me on Instagram. I would love to repost you on our channel or on our page. Or both. <laughs> Chat or both. We'll put you guys here next. But yeah, this is this is a winner for sure. Mm. As always, Claude and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to take the time to thank our new subscribers. And for those of you looking for the traditional street food bombazo, go ahead and click this recipe right here. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Amigos, I can't stop making this incredibly easy and delicious dish. Everyone in your house is gonna absolutely love this, but I really do hope that you like this as much as I do. In this bowl, I have some chopped pork butt in nice big chunks. And if you don't have pork butt, you can use whatever pieces of pork you have that have a lot of the fat on it. That's what we want for this particular recipe. Take your salt and sprinkle it in your bowl. Add some chili powder, and today I'm using Wajillo chili powder, black pepper, onion powder, ground cumin, and some Mexican oregano. Combine all your ingredients and make sure that your pork is coated with all of the seasonings. Once your seasoning is well combined, you're gonna add your olive oil. Give that a good mix. And you want to set this to the side for 15 minutes. You'll also need white onion, red and green bell pepper, cilantro, and a lot of garlic. And I'm just going to slice it in chunks. That means they're really thick. <laughs> just like that. Mm. Oh, that makes you happy. Yes. I knew it. And this is optional, but Cloud loves it when these little tomatoes burst in her mouth, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We are gonna be using these little tiny tomatoes, but if you have Roma or whatever tomatoes you have at home, they will work for this recipe. Set your burner on a medium heat and allow it to warm up for three minutes. Once your pan is heated up, go ahead and start adding your pieces of pork. It smells so good. Ooh. 
Now, whatever you do, do not move this for the next four minutes. After four minutes, you're gonna add your garlic, just sprinkle it in, and we're gonna mix this around. Oh, what a beautiful sear. You see what happens when we don't move and move our meat? <laughs> it's a valuable lesson I have learned. Me too, but sometimes I do push it and I'm trying to get things done quick, but it's worth waiting and not overcrowding and let it happen, you know? Right. So once he makes everything, you're gonna to continue to cook on a medium heat for four more minutes. I have some chicken broth and I'm gonna be adding some lemon to it, okay? After four minutes, we're gonna add our chicken broth and lemon mixture. Place your burner on a low heat and we're gonna to continue to cook for 25 minutes. And after 25 to 30 minutes, you want your sauce to get to that point right there. Can you guys see that? Where it's almost gone, but it's still there? You see it. Perfect, so that should take you anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. When you get to that place, you're gonna start adding your onions. And our juicy tomatoes. If you love juicy tomatoes, let us know in the comments. Todd would love to respond to you. <laughs> And go ahead and mix all your ingredients well. And you see how just a little bit of the sauce that we have left coats your onions perfectly. So when they soften up, they're gonna be well seasoned as well. Now I'm gonna to continue to cook on a medium heat for three to four minutes. And after about four minutes, now we're gonna add our green and red bell peppers. Now let's give this a quick mix. I'm really feeling this today. <laughs> I'm feeling you know, yummy. <laughs> I can't stop making it. Every time I make it, I just want to eat more of it. It has just a well-balanced heart to it that just with the pork, it's, it's out of this world. The other thing I like about this dish is that it doesn't feel too heavy after you eat it. Even if you eat it with rice, it feels really light. I feel like such a ballerina after I eat this. Light. Yeah, you have a good amount of vegetation in there. Yeah. Go ahead and turn your burner off. And you're going to sprinkle your cilantro. Give that a quick mix again. Ooh. Oh my goodness, look at that. That glossy onion right there. Ooh. Well, there's going to be some on there and it's going to coat your rice beautifully. And that rice is made to perfection. Just the way you like it, sis. That's the way I trained you. <laughs> <laughs> you really did. <laughs> Set your Instant Pot on saute and add a little bit of oil. I'm using avocado oil today. Allow your oil to heat up in your pressure cooker for about three minutes. Add your rice. And today I'm using basmati rice. Your favorite, Cloud. My personal favorite, especially when it all lands in the pot. Yeah, it's okay. You got jokes today. <laughs> sprinkle it in, sprinkle it in. Once you combine all your rice into your oil, we're gonna be here and lightly toasting our rice. We do not want it to that golden color. Just a nice little toasty look to it. That should take you about three minutes. Once you've slightly toasted your rice, you're gonna add your water. Lemon juice. Go ahead and stir. And make sure all your rice is underneath that water. Seal the deal. And we are just gonna place this on our rice setting. Once your rice is ready, you wanna allow it to stay in there until the pin drops on its own. Fluff up your rice. That's gonna allow some of that steam to release. And you wanna add your cilantro. And boom, done. Cilantro lime rice in your pressure cooker. Mm. 
I've added some purple pickled onions and red radishes, and now it's time for us to take a delicious taste. Say ah. I hope you got a juicy tomato in there. Not yet, but I will. Buen provecho. Mmm. <laughs> mm. The tomato did it. It's that magical. The combination is amazing. I really love dishes like this that keep you engaged because I want to just hop everywhere and just keep eating. The pork is so soft and juicy. Every bite has flavor. Good job on this creation, girl. I love it. Mm. Bring some more recipes out of the vault. I see all those notebooks in your room. I don't think anybody wants to see my creations. Oh, no, don't start. No, not, not right now. <laughs> You're loved. You're appreciated. We want these secret recipes out. <laughs> Everything's already been done. It's just a way of transforming them, and I am... Um, really good at transforming them and creating them. Mm -hmm. If you don't release those recipes, girl, I'm going to sell them on eBay, those books. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we want to give a special shout out to all of our silent viewers and also our subscribers that have gone missing. If you guys see them, let them know that we're still uploading recipes for you guys. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! What do you mean missing? Can you come back and explain? Really, I don't know where you guys went. I, you asked me for recipes, I posted them, I didn't see you respond. So now I'm making what I want. I hope you guys like it. <laughs> no, but seriously, we do miss some of you. We, we know life gets busy, but we do miss you. Yeah, I, I've been thinking about a lot of people that I haven't seen, so if you guys see them, let them know that. I'm still here, Cloud is still here, and we're still hungry. That's correct. Hello and welcome back, amigos. Today I'm gonna show you how to make creamy chicken and potatoes. For this recipe, you're gonna need three chicken breasts and you wanna slice your chicken breast into thin little strips like this. Now, what I did with the thick part of the chicken breast is I just butterfly it a little bit, but I didn't uh, butterfly it all the way through. Align all your chicken strips and just slice them in half. And I'm gonna continue slicing the remaining chicken the same way. Once you're done slicing your chicken into strips, go ahead and add two tablespoons of baking soda. And what that's gonna do is gonna give us a tender piece of chicken and it's also gonna eliminate odor. I'm gonna let our chicken set for about 10 to 15 minutes and while it's setting, let's go over the remaining ingredients. Five to six red potatoes, one third of a cup of all-purpose flour, one third of a cup of cornstarch. Add your cornstarch to your all-purpose flour one teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, and one and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream, half a cup of warm water. To your warm water, add your chicken bouillon, and if you have chicken broth, go ahead and use that instead. And today you're using the natural chicken bouillon without that, MSG. That is correct. I can tell the difference now. One medium sliced white onion, two tablespoons of butter, and friends, one thing we all agree on is Kerrygold butter is the best out there, especially for home cooking. Four garlic cloves and one chipotle pod with about two tablespoons of the adobo sauce. To your blender, you wanna add your heavy whipping cream. And if you don't have heavy whipping cream, make it comfortable for your home. That is correct, Cloud. Thank you for helping our friends out. Next, you wanna add your chicken broth or your chicken bouillon and warm water combo, which ends up being the same thing with extra flavor. Garlic, chipotle, and your ground cumin. Next, we are gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. I rinsed our chicken and I made sure to pat dry and remove all the excess water. Next, you wanna add your salt and combine. 
Next, you're gonna combine your flour and cornstarch mixture and add half at a time. We just wanna coat all of our chicken uh, evenly, but you don't wanna overdo it. So depending on the size of your chicken, you're gonna need about uh, one fourth of a cup or one third of a cup. And once you're done, make sure to clean your area and clean your hands. I'm gonna start a pot of boiling water so we can start boiling our potatoes and then we're gonna move on to the chicken. To your pot of boiling water, you wanna add your potatoes and be very careful. I don't want you to burn yourself. As you splash me. <laughs> and I just want you to boil these potatoes for about eight minutes. You want them to be a little bit al dente, not fully cooked because we are gonna be straining them and adding them to our, um, our delicious pot that we're gonna get started on right now. Set your burner on a medium high heat and add your desired amount of oil. You're gonna need enough so that we can sear our chicken. Allow about 30 seconds for your oil to get warm and add your butter. Let your butter do a dance in the pan, that way you don't burn it. And combining your butter and your oil, you prevent the butter from burning. Oh yeah. And next, you wanna start adding your pieces of chicken. Make sure not to crowd your chicken so that we can get a really good sear. Work your pan little by little, and once you start getting a good sear, you can move some of your chicken to the side, and then you can start adding the remaining pieces. And we're gonna be here for about, I wanna say six to seven minutes. Next, you wanna add your onions. We're gonna add our potatoes and our sauce to our cast iron. And to our blender, we still have a little bit of sauce stuck, so I'm gonna add about three fourths of a cup of water. I'm gonna shake it up. You didn't tell me it was gonna smell this good in here. <laughs> it's so good, right? Mm -hmm. That garlic really comes through. And you wanna pour it right on in. Go ahead and mix your ingredients gently. Once you're done combining your ingredients, set your burner on a low temperature and we're gonna to continue to cook without a lid for 15 more minutes. And after 15 minutes, we are all done. What I like to do is I like to sprinkle a little bit of cilantro over the top for a garnish and also for flavor. And boom, done, amigos. Our delicious dinner is served. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, ah. Uh... Ooh, the lioness came to work today. It's called humidity. <laughs> <laughs> it just jumps up and grabs you no matter where you're at. Mmm. I have a trivia question for you. If it's hot and humid, what do you eat? Oh, me? Yes. I eat whatever I'm craving. <laughs> I'm <the same> way. <laughs> I really do. Friends, everything in this plate is so soft and tender. The chicken is cooked to perfection with so much flavor. You're gonna love it. Mmm. You know, the flavors are sealed in the chicken and look at how easily I can cut through. So yummy. And you want to take some of that broth with you, right? Mm-hmm. You need, you need some extra sauce for sure. So, we, so it can be best friends with the rice. It's a must. Mm-hmm. Yummy, and if you don't have red potatoes, 
that's the best for this dish. Use gold or russet potatoes. It's gonna work out. And what if I don't have chicken, but I have everything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. But this chicken is a showstopper. It really is. You have to try it. Mm. Friends, sorry about my eating yesterday with the tacos. I didn't mean to offend anybody. It's just that when it's me and tacos, it gets really intimate and we're eating here <laughs> in my home with friends. So that's how I enjoy tacos and I enjoy food. Maybe the person or the people were not familiar with the taco rule. You must finish your taco in less than three bites. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let us know how many bites it takes you to finish one single taco. Yeah, let us know. And for this chicken, you guys are gonna really love this recipe because you can take a lot of chicken and season it, sear it the way that I showed you and fully sear it and cook it, and then let it cool and freeze it so that whenever you add it to your pan the next day, or two weeks later, it's super easy to make this dish. It freezes well, just make sure to fully cook it. And even if you were to not cook it and coat it with the with the flour and your seasonings, um, it'll, it'll still work. How do I know? Because it's a lifesaver. The texture of this chicken is fabulous. And it's mm. not spicy. Mm -hmm. There is no spice in here unless you want more spice. And if you really like your food spicy, I suggest you add a whole can of chipotle instead of just one little pod. But I have a lot of family members right now that can't handle spice for some reason. You sound like you have some experience. You said the full can. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you guys like this combination of chicken, let me know in the comments and I'll make another dish um, similar to this, but just change it up just a little bit. I have a feeling that everybody watching is gonna end up making this recipe. It's always the stewy or the guisados that um, families end up loving the most, right? Yes, this is a very, very special dish and I think you guys are gonna make it famous just like you've made a lot of our dishes famous. So thank you guys so much and I hope you enjoy and that you feel loved and cared for by Cloud and I. We love you kids. And I mean all of you. Hope you have a nice weekend. And now I'm gonna mix the rice with all this sauce and I'm gonna have to get more. Ooh. Mmm. So yummy. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We wanna say thank you to all of our unsubscribers and our subscribers. And friends, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe, click the bell for notifications, give us a thumbs up. And um, if you guys do that, Cloud will be a lot nicer to me because I always forget to say <laughs> that. <laughs> and on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome back amigos. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make the best meal prep chicken you'll have this year. It's not just good for tacos, which is what I'm making right now. It's also really good for um, to put over your rice if you wanna place it into a torta, a sandwich, your tostadas. And the best part of this chicken is that if you serve it, it gets a little bit cold in the lunch, don't worry, it's still gonna taste really good because we have a cold uh, yogurt sauce that's absolutely divine. So go ahead and keep watching if you wanna learn how to make these tacos and most of all, if you wanna make this chicken. I took some chicken breast, I butterflied it, and I tenderized it nice and flat, and now we're gonna start seasoning our chicken. For your seasoning, you'll need one clove, and that's the spice, half a tablespoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, half a tablespoon of salt, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of sugar, and two cloves of garlic finely chopped. Well, coarsely chopped, you, you know what I mean, guys. <laughs> Go ahead and add your seasoning to your chicken. It sounds like you're recording by a rainfall. Yeah, we have a rainy day today. It's actually really beautiful. I'm not excited about the humidity, but it is a beautiful sound and it's so pretty to look at. Go ahead and massage your chicken with the seasoning for a good minute, minute and a half. Be gentle, don't be aggressive. Not for this part, okay? 
Once you've massaged your chicken with the seasoning, you're gonna use the juice and zest of one lime, two tablespoons of olive oil, and if you need to use less, that's okay. And if you don't have olive oil, guess what? You can make it comfortable for your home. You're gonna add one third of a cup of chopped parsley, and flat leaf or the curlier one will work. One third of a cup of chopped cilantro, and if you don't want any of these, guess what? This chicken is just gonna be so well seasoned that you're not gonna skip any flavor in your chicken. You're gonna be okay, I promise. So we're gonna go ahead and massage this for another 30 to 40 seconds just until it's well combined. And boom, done amigos, our chicken is well seasoned. You can save your marinade for later use, you can freeze it, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna place this right into our multi-cooker. One of our Views Cup friends suggested that we get the Aura Pro Instant Pot, and friends, we are not disappointed. So we are gonna get started today, and we are gonna press our sear button. Cloud, can you help us out? Sear, saute, saute. Hey! <laughs> Hey friends, this is your Tia Cloud telling you, just like I tell my sister, do not touch the pot. Wait three minutes and you'll smell the heat in the air. And now we're ready to saute some pollito. And we're gonna allow the chicken to sear for a good five minutes. After about four to five minutes, you want to flip your chicken. And now we're going to slow cook for three hours. Friends, I'm trying not to be such a bossy mommy, but I do have to tell you, don't start making your sauce until you've cleaned your kitchen, okay? You don't need any of the chicken uh, heebie-jeebies around. And if you haven't taken a shower today after you're done making a sauce, make sure to take a shower. That's for the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need one cup of plain yogurt. If you have Greek yogurt, it works well with this recipe too. Don't feel obligated to just use plain. And then we're gonna add about half a cup of mayonnaise. Did you get a tattoo? What tattoo? The green on your wrist? I should. I was thinking a about. Leaf? Would you get a, a I don't know, I was cilantro. thinking about. <laughs> maybe I should get a cilantro leaf painted over um, my burn from last year. If you, don't, if you don't have a burn, then what are you doing in the kitchen? What are you doing in the kitchen? Tell us. Friends, it's because there was a lot of stress in my life last holiday season and I managed to burn myself here, but it's it's healing well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's done well, it's just a mark. We're okay. <laughs> We're gonna add the juice of one key lime. If you don't have a key lime, the flavor's gonna differ, but you can use lemon or a regular lime. Works great, but if you ever get a hold of key limes, ooh, take advantage of it, friends. They are beautiful. We're gonna add a little small bunch of parsley. You don't have parsley, go with cilantro. And if I don't say cilantro that way, it doesn't taste as good. That's right. <laughs> I have a rep to protect, guys. We get more drama from not pronouncing the words in Spanish than we do the other way. So like if we say cilantro, our friends, our amigos that speak Spanish, our and our family will come for us, guys. Yes, and some of our views club friends would be like, <laughs> Están haciendo? What are you guys doing? You guys know how to say it, so say it right. <laughs> You're gonna need uh, garlic. If you have two or three, it'll work perfect. One jalapeño. <laughs> You like how I said that? <laughs> but say it how you want to say it. Un jalapeño. You're gonna add one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of ground cumin. I love those acrylic spice containers. You got me into them. They are, they're magical. They're great. It took me a while to take them out of storage and now that they're here, I'm like, where have you been the past <laughs> few months, you know? <laughs> You're gonna need uh, one teaspoon of salt and now we are gonna blend until smooth. You guys ready to get to dancing? Yeah, Was that here. one teaspoon of cumin? One teaspoon of each, yeah. Oh, okay. One teaspoon That's black easy. pepper, one teaspoon ground cumin, and one teaspoon salt. And obviously you adjust your salt to taste. Before I forget, one fourth of a cup of olive oil. Friends, for those of you that get a little bit, um, like how much did you add, Steph? Don't worry, it's all in the description area. I think we tried it for three recipes where we didn't add in the description area to see if you guys would prefer that. For those of you watching on your TV, hello. Um, so everything's in the description area and I'm trying my best to let you guys know the measurements as we cook. And boom, done. 
And boom, done, amigos. Our chicken is ready. It's juicy. It's tender. And I'm just going to take it over to the chopping block. And I'm going to chop this up into little pieces like you would see at a taco shop because apparently I can't get enough tacos. But I'm going to be letting you know. We dream of tacos. We do dream of tacos and other things you can pair this chicken with. It doesn't have to be tacos. And we'll talk about that while I'm chopping. We're going to be using a roasted salsa today. I'll leave all the ingredients I used for this particular one today. All I did was roast. All the ingredients blend. And now I'm going to cook it just a little bit to keep it nice and warm and to preserve it a little bit longer for me this week. I'm going to be warming up some flour tortillas. And then we are ready to start chopping up this chicken taco style. Mm -mm -mm. Before I start chopping our chicken, I want to go over what we have here. I have some purple onions with a little bit of ground cumin and paprika. We have our red radishes, key limes, cucumber, freshly chopped iceberg lettuce, our cooked salsa. And for those of you that like a more milder but yet hot salsa, that one's gonna do it. Cause I know the salsa cien fuegos, you guys were on fuego <laughs> with that one. And here we have our chicken. You can really just use your fork to separate the chicken, but I want thin little slices like this. This is the look that I want to go for. I'm going to make Cloud's first tasting taco and we're going to add a good amount of chicken. Don't be stingy with the sauce. Do not be stingy with the sauce. <laughs> Now's not the time to be greedy. Nope. Be greedy with your personal time. Yep. <laughs> and then all you're going to do is just boom, boom. Oh, let, don't let me forget because Cloud will come for me. Just a couple of radishes for me. There you go. Thank you. The limoncito. Thank you, sister. For Cloud. Mm. Oh my gosh. That sauce is spectacular with this chicken. And I'm going to need somebody very special. To say, ah, uh, buen provecho. Se va y se corre con el taco. Ah, iba a decir con el borracho, pero. Hey, hey, hey. Cloud has jokes today. <laughs> For those of you that know, mm. talk to me in the comments. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're awful. Mmm, necesito más salsita. Yummy. I can't get enough spice lately. I don't know what's going on with me. I love it. I'm in oh, did you buy the Costco side of uh, Texas coffee down there? No, it's the H-E-B size. Oh, oh, okay. The San Antonio coffee blend. Oh my gosh, so good. Mm. These are really juicy. Delicious. Mm. Oh, I forgot I can't be dancing here. Yes, you can. Remember when you used to uh, pack these lonchecitos for me when I was in the office? Mm hmm. I think everybody that remembers uh, me doing mukbang remembers when I used to tell them if you have a single, you know, a family member or whatever, make sure to help them making uh, dinner, picking up the kids at school. Good looking out. Um, now I'm the single mama and I'm living my best life. <laughs> uh, hey, that's why I made you some agua fresca. Uh huh. <laughs> mm. Mm. All right, we have a tip for you. I remembered <laughs> you can make the same dish with different kinds of protein. Mm -hmm. You can use pork and you can use fish. And is that it? Oh, tofu. You can use tofu as well. Mm -hmm. Sear it. You have to sear it. Sear it and then add the seasoning and then cook it for a few minutes if you're using tofu. Don't put your tofu in the multi cooker though. Use that one on the stove top, right? Mm -hmm. And this recipe is not just for uh, the multi cooker. You can do this on your pan. You can place it in the oven. You can place it in a regular uh, crock pot. Almost there's something else. Oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Please let us know if you make this recipe. And we want to give a special shout out to all of you who are driving and not texting. And Cloud's giving me that look because she was almost hit by a texter on the road. So if you're texting, put your phone down, take your time. You are valuable to society and to your family. So don't text and drive. 
And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe, click the bell for notifications. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome. It's that time of the year when we all need a cozy treat and today we are gonna be making arroz con leche. For this recipe, we're gonna be using one and one fourth of a cup of long grain rice, one and three fourths of a cup of water, three cups of milk, one can of evaporated milk, one cup of sugar, two cinnamon sticks, one eighth of a teaspoon of salt, half a cup of raisins, to your raisins, you wanna add some warm water. Place your burner on a medium heat and add your water. Add your cinnamon sticks, add your rice, Once your water comes to a boil, go ahead and place a lid over your pot and continue to cook on a low heat for another 10 to 15 minutes. Place your burner on simmer and add your milk. Next, you wanna add your evaporated milk, sugar, salt. Combine all your ingredients and we are gonna leave our pot on simmer until our rice is ready. After 10 to 15 minutes, go ahead and remove your cinnamon sticks. And this is a part where you wanna taste the texture of your rice. You don't want it to be too mushy. And if for some reason it's crunchy, you're gonna have to cook it another two to three minutes until it's nice and soft or you get more of an al dente uh, texture. Next, you're gonna add your milk. Combine all your ingredients. And for those of you that like raisins, this is a part where you're gonna add it. But right now, our family's been going through debates about raisins or no raisins, so I'm gonna keep them out and I'm gonna be adding uh, raisins individually to mine. Continue to cook on a low heat for about 10 minutes. And after about 10 minutes, you'll see that everything is well combined and cooked. And my recommendation to you is gonna be to continue to cook uh, your arroz con leche till you get the consistency that you're comfortable with. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. Mmm. When it's ooey gooey, that means that it's perfect. It's not overly sweet. Soaking your raisins and then adding them gives you a little bit of a different flavor, but it's still so good. And they actually soften up a lot better. Could I also soak my raisins in something else? I think from the last time we made this, everybody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and tell them. Soak them in rum. Mm. So good. Mm. This is comfort food at its best. And your rice is nice and soft. And it's not mushy, which is the best part. I don't like mushy arroz con leche. Me salió lo sonorense. A mushy? Leche. Mushy, mushy. No, como te dije, leche. Leche y mushy, mushy. Mm -hmm. This is such a delightful treat. Uh, let us know in the comments what this recipe reminds you of. And if you've never made it before, don't worry, you got this. The direction and any extra tips that I have are gonna be in the description area. And I just, it's holiday season already for me. I already started where I want all holiday food. I wanna be with family and loved ones. And we hope you guys take care of yourselves because we love you. And thank each and every one of you for your sweet messages. Ah, you guys had me blushing. <laughs> You're so sweet. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you and we wanna thank you for joining us on this beautiful day. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Hello and welcome back. Look what we have frying up, amigos. We are making fried quesadillas with fresh corn masa. It's gonna be nice and crispy on the outside and ooey gooey on the inside. I'm gonna be showing you a few little things that we added inside of our fried quesadilla and it doesn't stop there. We made a hot lava salsa that you're absolutely gonna love. So come and take a look and see if it's something that you wanna make. We have them nice and crispy on the outside. Ready to come out for you? Ooh, it's excited to meet you today <laughs> and to see most of you again. And our hot salsa is a cooked salsa today. 
and it's cooked to perfection just like you. What you'll need for this recipe is fresh masa. If you don't have access to fresh masa, you can use your instant corn masa. Your choice of melty cheese. Today we're gonna to be using lachona and HEB's queso asadero. They melt to perfection and they are ooey, gooey, and perfect for this recipe. And for those of you that need a little extra protein, I'm gonna make it a lot easier for you. Go ahead and buy yourself a pack of chilorio. It is absolutely amazing for tacos and it's gonna go excellent with this fried quesadilla. And for our masa, you're gonna need one tablespoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. And remember to adjust to taste. And to add that extra sazon, we are gonna be making a fresh roasted salsa. You're gonna need tomatoes. And look what I got a hold of today. Some red jalapenos, cilantro, garlic, one fourth of a purple onion, some salt, and some lime juice. And to top our fried quesadillas, uh, we're gonna be using some crema fresca, avocado, a little cotija cheese, lettuce, and on the side we're gonna be using cucumbers and your radishes. And some purple pickled onions. To your natural corn masa, you wanna add about two tablespoons of water, and what that's gonna do, it's gonna help us break down the clumps so that it's nice and soft when we add our next ingredients. Next, you're gonna add your baking powder and your salt. And you're gonna mix it for a good two minutes. And once you've combined your ingredients, you're gonna notice that your dough is nice and soft. You're gonna need about two to three tablespoons to make your little ball so that we can make it into a tortilla nice and flat and then we can assemble our quesadilla. Just something really tiny. You place your little ball here. You're gonna wrap it with love in your little plastic and you're gonna press like a tortilla. Give it a good press. Looks pretty good to me. Now you're gonna open it up just like this. And this one's just gonna be cheese, okay? So what I like to do, I like to pick it up this way and press that top part right here. And then what I do is I cup it with my hand, just like that. You can also do it straight on here, but I find that this one gives you a better shape and a better seal. And now I'm just gonna set it to the side and I'll show you how we make the one with chilorio. And for those of you that are new, this little plastic is just a Ziploc bag uh, plastic that I'm using. Any little thick bag like that will work. Just wash, wash it with warm water. Yep, do not use soap on it. If you use soap on it, you're not gonna be happy about it. For the ones that I add extra filling to, I like to press a little bit more than just the ones with cheese, because that gives us a little bit more space to work with. So I'm gonna add the cheese it's all to that one side. And your chilorio should be about one tablespoon. Don't push it. You guys know how I get in. I'm gonna tell you, if you want them to look beautiful and perfect for your family, don't, don't push it. Make them want more for next week. So you're gonna press right here, and that's when you're gonna bring your hands, just like that. See? See all that love that goes in there? I see it and I feel it. Your beautiful hands. Mm -hmm. Be gentle. And I'm doing it this way. When I'm cooking for my family, I'm usually doing this right by the stove top and just one after another, boom, 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 and done. It's a lot easier. And the best part is that you can freeze these. And I always get the first bite for those of you that don't know when we're cooking in here. Yes, Cloud <laughs> always gets the first bite. I'm grateful, I'm grateful. <laughs> and boom, done, amigos. We are ready to fry. You get about a dozen of these, about 12 to 14, and then you might have a little bit extra and that's when you wanna make it very special for somebody super tiny and special. And yes, we did fill it up with no cheese and just chilorio. I have my pot on a medium heat. I added a little bit of oil. I have our garlic, our tomato, our chiles. 
and our onion. We're just gonna roast this until they get nice and charred and soften up just a little bit before we blend them. Okay, mi corazón, you're gonna add your bunch of cilantro and you're just gonna break it up with your hands. And I'm using a lot today because, you know, when you, you use foil in your food and these kind of things, you wanna use a lot of cilantro to help your body eliminate those, um, those metals from your body, okay? Oh, it smells so good. We're nice and roasted, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna place all of these ingredients into our blender. Mmm, <laughs> it smells so good. Add your salt, and now we're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, almost done. Add your salsa. I'm gonna add a little bit of water in here. Hot lava. <laughs> it is hot lava. We're gonna add a little bit of water in here just so that we can get all of our salsa in this pot. Ah, si te quería encontrar. Clean as you go because you don't wanna get anything stuck on your stove top and it's just not a, a good look, guys. Clean up. And we have those kitchen towels linked in our store. Can They're my favorite ones. Yes, if you need help finding them, just let me know in the comments. If you're from Sonora, you know that you have to clean up as you go porque te regañan and it's just a lifestyle. It's a vibe, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and we know everybody cleans as they go, yes, but this is an actual requirement. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Now that our salsa is nice and warm, I'm just going to switch our burner to a low simmer just so it's not bubbling everywhere. Keep it nice and calm because once you raise that, you know, the hot lava comes through and this is definitely a really amazing salsa. And I hope you guys like it as much as Claude does. This is her favorite salsa. It is. The hot lava salsa. I'm gonna check our oil to see if it's ready to fry. You wanna use a wooden spoon, a wooden chopstick, toothpick, something that's not coated. That is wood. You're gonna place it in here. And when it bubbles, that means that we are ready to fry. Woo! Place it in gently. And it should only take us about four minutes max to fry our quesadillas. And you see how beautifully they float to the top? That means that we're just gonna flip it over so that that other side is just a little spot that needs frying. <laughs> Friends, if you guys like this little um, clay pot, Claude has it linked in the description area with a lot more details. And I still love it, it's my favorite <laughs> to cook with right now. And after three to four minutes, you'll see that your quesadillas are nice and crispy and it's time to place them to the side. I like to use a wire little rack uh, make sure you're not using paper towels because that's going to take the crispiness away and we don't want that. Sister, okay. that's not a rack, that's a basket. It's a little basket, a rack. Ya me conocen. Ya saben como soy. Ya saben. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know what that means, it means you already know how I am. Making it comfortable for my home. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that one's pouring out some chilorio juice. Yummy. And I'm going to continue frying the remaining quesadillas. While our quesadillas are still frying, I'm going to slice them up right about here. This one's really hot, if you're wondering. <laughs> Ooh, you see that? I do. Yummy. Next, you're going to add your lettuce. And I shredded our lettuce really, really thin. Perfect like that. Add your avocado. Add your crema. Cotija cheese. Pickled onions. And some of your fresh salsa. If you don't like spicy salsa, this is not the one for you. We can link some in the description area for you. And I'm gonna prepare a few more here, but Cloud's gonna get the first bite with her pepinos and her radishes while we finish frying the rest of our quesadillas but you guys are going to be ready for a big big bite real soon thank you sister you're welcome i'm gonna need somebody very special to say uh buen provecho oh we love a good crunch mm. that's so good 
That's so crunchy, I'd love to do that. Yummy. And we do have a tip for you. If you hear that crunch and you want that crunch in your bite as well, I'm gonna take a guess. And I think that you need to cook it, fry it a little bit longer to keep that crunch. Guys, I cheated. I asked this question earlier off camera. <laughs> That's because it's so good I can't talk. I find that the salsa on its own is spicy, but not when you pair it with your fried quesadillas. Uh, it has a good combination of flavor in it. <laughs> it really does. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> I have my agua fresca too, let me show it. Right over here guys, right over here. Delicious. Friends, if you see a comment that I didn't feed Cloud, can you guys please stand up for us because my favorite thing to do is feed my family and my sister is no different. I will always feed everybody before I feed myself. So I just wanted to clarify that Cloud gets fed. I get fed quite often, every day, um, even when we're not recording. My sister's my neighbor and we're a community and we love to eat. Mm -hmm. I don't skip any meals. You can see for yourself on my personal Instagram account if you want to mm. see or if you're curious. This agua fresca is a good, what is it? It's lemon, limonada yes. mexicana. Limonada mexicana. Ooh. There's a debate between the key limes being um, limones and limas in Mexico. You call the key limes, you just call them limones. And I will go at it with my family about their but lives. There's, but there's also places throughout the Republic that it's known as Lima. Mm -hmm. So I guess it just depends on your home, right? Mm -hmm. We so grew up in so the same okay. yeah. <laughs> So we grew up in the same household, but I call my lemons lemons and I call my limes limes. I do the same. Yeah. That's all about your upbringing. Mm. This is so good. Mm -hmm. Our friends that love the crema fresca, this is a perfect recipe for you. Yeah, and you know, I really love fresh corn masa. I do too. Mm. You guys are gonna have to look away. You are gonna look away. This yes. is like my my new shame look because I love to eat, and now I'm being like told that I don't eat well. <laughs> One thing we can all agree upon is that we are bottomless pits. Thank you so much. Everyone. I like to eat you guys. I really do. Thank you to those of you that been watched us this weekend. Oh my goodness. Did you see who's home, whose baby's almost ready? She's 40 weeks pregnant already. What? Yep. She's ready. My prayers go out to her because I know what that feels like and um, yeah, hope I mean, you're getting you a massage. Are, <laughs> you are in our prayers. We're so excited to see the baby and um, yeah, more of Youth Club Juniors. <laughs> and she was so sweet. Okay, one more bite out of this one because I'm going to sit with Cloud and eat another one. Mm -hmm. I'm on a round two. Mmm, yummy. This is definitely a teenager food, right? I think it's a universal food. Yeah, but you know, I can picture myself after like school being a teenager and my mom having these and I would be really, really happy. That's right. Mm. This would be more of a nap after like you, you know, when you're a teenager, you get home and you're starving. You have your fideo, your sopita, and then this is what your mom would be making. Make this for your teenagers, for your young adults. They're going to thank you. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Sorry, I can't focus. This is one of the best foods that you're ever gonna have if you love Mexican food. And you know, I love chilote, I love cheese, I love corn, and I love food. <laughs> yes. And for those of you who have your puestecitos and you're selling food, this is a great one. It holds well, it reheats well. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to make this one for selling. Friends, van a comer rico ahora. Riquísimo. Mm -hmm. Don't fall asleep on us on Wednesday because we have something spectacular for you. And by spectacular, 
I mean a food combo that's just divine. And I was told not to say anything, so mm -mm. here I am with my arms crossed, not saying Don't anything. Don't say anything. But it's gonna be amazing. Hush up. <laughs> Ma'am? As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Thank you guys so much for all the lovely uh, messages over the weekend. I had a really good time uh, chatting with you guys. And on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make guajolotas. If you like tortas, if you like tamales, you're going to love this recipe. You're awful when you know you say things in front of everybody. That's just going to get me to get super giggly and nerdy. What you absolutely need is you need to get a hold of some bolillo. If you don't have access to bolillo, you can get away with using telera, which is a more rounder bread, and you can put probably two tamales in there. But for this recipe, you're going to need some bolillo. If you need a recipe on how to make this because you're out of reach from a Mexican uh, bakery or grocery store, not to worry, I'm gonna link a recipe in the description area. You'll need your favorite tamales, whether they're green or red, not to worry. I'm gonna link a few of our tamal recipes in the description area for you, but today I'm gonna be using my mom's uh, secret recipe, which is pineapple pork because she likes savory sweet, and those are the ones that I'm gonna be using today. You'll need some refried beans, and I kept mine pretty runny today, but if you need help with your beans, I'll link a recipe in the description area. Your choice of queso fresco, the one that I'm using today is called queso fresco campestre from this particular brand. It does taste a little bit saltier than uh, regular packaged queso fresco, but I love it. And these are the kind of uh, queso frescos you get out in the rancho, the ranch, out in the wilderness. It's where artisanal. There's artisanal, there you go, where there's nobody around for miles and miles. Made by hand. Made by hand. Oh my goodness. And we also have a good You're recipe making me blush. here on the channel. You're making me blush. Guys, I can't focus. I've been so hungry. Some crema fresca and some salsa picante. Friends, this is absolutely amazing and spicy. And to make it easy clean up, make sure you bring your little papers. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. My tip to you is to make it comfortable for your home. If you like fried tamales, fry one up, put it in here. If you love egg, go ahead and fry yourself an egg and place it in here. And friends, the options are endless when you're making a guajolota and I am ready to take a humongous bite. I know these are the plain ones, but it seems like the plain ones always hit the spot. So try it plain first. Not that there's anything plain about it, <laughs> but try this, this version first and then add your other stuff to it. There's nothing plain about this. <laughs> Cheers! Amigos, this is a perfect lunch to pack for the kids, for those that like to eat a lot like Cloud and I do. Um, the bread just smells so good and then your tamales, this is comfort. So if you're gonna pack this for lunch, make sure it's on a Friday or the day um, where you have the following days off. I think that that would work. Or pack half because someone's gonna go into a, a food coma. <laughs> Sleepy time. Mm -hmm. No? Mm -mm. That's just me, right? Mm -hmm. That's you. <laughs> pack a full one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> make sure to pair it with some vampire blood. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> make sure you make some Jamaica a really good and delicious agua fresca, whether it's horchata. And if you guys haven't tried our strawberry key lime agua fresca, you're sleeping. It's time to wake up. It is, I had that all weekend, it was so good. You loved it? I was a little hyper, but it's okay. You can make them into bolis, into ice pops. It is just so good. The boys absolutely love that one. You can make it into an adult ice slushy. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is amazing. Wait, isn't it slushy already have ice, so it would just be a slushy, not ice slushy? It would be a slush. A slush. You can call it an ice slushy. Oh, okay. You make it comfortable for your home. <laughs> Friends, Cloud and I are known for going to the grocery store and getting a fresh pack of queso fresco and whatever fresh bread there is there. And this reminds me of that. It's so comforting and there's nothing better than when you have your warm bolillo and you grab either 
queso fresco, some aguacate, your salsa. It's just perfect. This is this is definitely a dream come true. And if people are in Central Texas, where can they find you? At the grocery store, at a bookstore, where else? Home? <laughs> Margaritas. That's true. <laughs> Margaritas and burgers. That's true. Where they sell margaritas, we will be there. Yeah. Love you guys. When there is injustice. Bye. Oh my we gosh. Will be there. She's coming out from Santo Poco. <laughs> no, I was thinking like Duck Queen Duck. Oh, I thought you were talking about the three amigos. <laughs> That movie is so funny, but so disturbing. <laughs> it's so wrong, but it's all we had to watch to represent our people when we were younger. So yeah, there was some we learned to love it. There. <laughs> we learned to love El Guapo. And if you think you're an El Guapo, let us know in the comments. <laughs> you're awful when you know you say things in front of everybody. That's just going to get me to get super giggly and nerdy. And they're going to get mad at us for giggling, but we like to giggle. <laughs> and we giggle a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. It's something we struggled with as children. Yeah, I giggle a lot now because I no longer cry. I don't know if you guys noticed. I don't cry that often anymore. Mm -hmm. But you do, you do have some lipstick right under your That's chin. okay. Oh, okay. It, it went everywhere today. Yeah. Let us know if you want to be part of the three amigos. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope you love this take on Wafolotas. Cloud and I absolutely love Mexican street food. We can't be in Mexico right now, but we can sure make a lot of these dishes at home. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, adios. Hello and welcome. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to make refried bean taquitos. We are gonna to top these with so many toppings that you're gonna to say, Steph, please stop. And I'm gonna say, I can't. Let's get started by warming up our lard. To a medium hot pan, go ahead and add your lard. And friends, if you need a detailed recipe on how to make uh, pinto refried beans, make sure to look in the description and I'll set that link for you. Once your lard has melted, or your oil has warmed up, go ahead and add some chopped onions and chopped serrano or a jalapeno. It's gonna be your preference. Continue to cook for about two to three minutes until your onions are nice and soft. If your onions get burned during this process, go ahead and toss them and start all over. Next, you wanna add your pinto beans. Next, you're gonna mash your pinto beans, or you can also place them in your blender and then pour them right into that oil. Both of them will work. I'm kicking it old school with you guys. I'm showing my age here. <laughs> Remember friends, however you choose to mash your beans is your business. Make it comfortable for your home. Don't let anybody tell you what to do in your kitchen. You're the boss. I switched my burner to a medium low heat. Nobody wants to smell burnt beans. So take it easy. We're gonna be here cooking them for another two, three minutes just so that we can get them nice and dry. Once your beans get nice and dry where they can just move almost like a little ball for you, then they're ready. You see that? I do. When they look just like your mama used to make them, mm -hmm. then you're ready. I'm gonna share a tip with you next that's really important. So those of you that didn't skip, I'm so happy you did it. Let me show you. This is your tip. If you're using lard from a carton, you have to warm it up before you add it to your beans. But if you have bacon grease, you're okay, right? Yeah, you're okay because that's already cooked, but when you have the lard in the container and it's just a block, you have to warm it up. Uh, to refry your beans just like that. Pero yo soy bien traviesa. I'm a troublemaker in the kitchen, you guys know, so this is so much fun for me. There's fried beans and then there's refried beans. These are refried. Refritos. Refritos. Say it with us, amigos. Refritos. Well, you don't have to roll the R if you don't want to, but it's a good time to practice. Let me see, roll your R, Cloud. Girl, I thought you were gonna start singing reggaeton with that one. <laughs> so go ahead and stir it up. Little darling, don't you cry. Just like that. <laughs> I went heavy on my pot of beans today, so I won't be adding any salt. They're just perfect today. 
and I'm gonna be here for another minute and a half just stirring it up. Okay, amigos, once your beans have absorbed all that oil, we are ready to go. For our next step, you're gonna need to warm up your tortillas. You need eight to 10 seconds on each side, just enough to where they're pliable, and not all tortillas are created equal. Today, I am using the HEB yellow corn tortillas. Let us know what kind of tortillas you're having a difficult time with and what's working for you in the comments. We gotta help each other out when it comes to corn tortillas. And we know freshly made are better or tortilla are better, best, but we don't have access to any of that right now. That is correct. In this little bowl, I have our taquito paste, which is about two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of water. And all you have to do is mix and dissolve until you get something nice and thick. Okay, you're gonna take your tortilla and you're just gonna half moon your paste. Your desired amount of beans. My beans are hot, but my hands are hotter. <laughs> and now you're gonna go ahead and roll. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna continue to roll. Warm up your frying oil. Get a wooden chopstick, a wooden spoon, some toothpicks, place them in here. When it starts bubbling like that, that means that you are ready to fry. If you have smoke at the top of your pan, that heat is too high, so lower your temperature. And it has to be an uncoated wood utensil. That is correct, Cloud. Thank you for helping us. I don't know what I would do without you, girl. I'd like to share the errors that I make in the kitchen, too. Go ahead and start placing your taquitos into your frying oil, and this is gonna happen quickly. Uh, what kind of oil are you frying with? Today, I am using peanut oil. I transition from one oil to another while I find my groove, friends. <laughs> if you get some flyaway frijoles, beans, just scoop them out. You don't want those popping on you and they will pop. All right, y'all, I'm in front of the class. Um, I poured too much oil in that skillet for my sister, so we just removed it. That's all we're doing, removing some of that oil. And boom, done. Our taquitos are ready. I'm gonna take these out, and I'm gonna continue with the rest of them. This little uh, rack that I'm using, this metal rack, is from our Instant Pot, and I use it for just about everything when it comes to oil. The basket? Yeah, this little basket. And boom, done, amigos. Let's get started on those delicious top beans that I was talking about. Add one and a half cups of your half and half. Make sure it's yours, not anybody else's. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Add your queso fresco, and I'm using a whole pack. Salt and pepper, and we are gonna blend until smooth. If your blend is too thick, gradually add some water so that we can get a nice and smooth and not too runny and not too thick type of consistency. And boom, done. Friends, I'm repurposing my mayonnaise little squeezer bottle and I'm just gonna pour this saucy sauce right on in. If you're gonna need this sauce a little bit longer, go ahead and add a uh, half a tablespoon of white vinegar and it'll help you keep it a little bit longer. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, You know when you don't know what to eat and you need something really quick, like a snack, a dinner, this is your go-to recipe. It's super easy to make. Amigos, when you fill your taquitos up with beans, you're gonna know that you're gonna get some fallout. It's the same as frying your potatoes, uh, your potato tacos. So my suggestion to you is to use a little bit less oil and everything will work out smoothly. And let me tell you, 
it is so worth your time it's a super affordable recipe and that's not the only reason i love this recipe it is just comfort food it tastes like home it tastes like something our abuelitas our mothers make mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Please come back and let us know if you love this recipe as much as we do. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to make lentil soup in your Instant Pot. Add your five cups of water. If you want this to be a little bit more stewy, you only need to add four cups. Add the two cups of lentils. Next, you wanna add your potatoes, and I just cut our potatoes into small little cubes. Add your chopped zucchinis, some vitamin A for cloud, your carrots, and friends, just cut them into small little pieces. I always find that they're better to, to eat this way. My older son doesn't have a preference for carrots that are cooked, but that's the way I can sneak it in. Your tomato. And next, you wanna choose between an Anaheim and a Poblano pepper. If you're using a poblano, make sure that if in the inside, when you slice it down the middle, it has a little bit of the orangey, red, yellow, um, stay away from that one unless you like the heat because that one's going to bring you a lot of heat. I sound like I'm scaring you guys. That's not what I'm trying to do. I know that you guys always ask about the peppers, the chiles, if they're really spicy, but that's, uh, that's the best advice I can give you. And you're so sweet. You always say it when it's a family recipe. It is. I want you all to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Add your onion and make sure that you chop it nice and fine, just like the Beast Club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two garlics, ground cumin, and your choice of bouillon. If you like vegetable, use vegetable, beef, chicken. Make it comfortable for your home. I have a question for you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did you uh, pre-soak the lentils? I washed them, but I didn't pre-soak them. Because the Instant Pot's gonna do the job. It's gonna do everything that we want right in here. Let Got me put it. a lid on it. Place your lid and seal the deal. Ooh, Ooh it just did it naturally. You close the vent? Okay. Yes, close your vent. <laughs> Next, you wanna pressure cook for eight minutes. I feel like I'm here with the accordion. <laughs> give me a beat, Cloud, give me That's a beat. That's not a bad place to be. <laughs> oh. We got too excited. While our lentils are cooking, we're gonna get started on our Mexican grilled cheese. And what makes this a Mexican grilled cheese? That we're using bolillo bread. Are those stains on your blouse or is that water? Cloud, water. I do my own stunts. I wash my own dishes. <laughs> Friends, make sure you wash your dishes. Okay? Seriously, if you don't have those wet spots, like, did you really do the dishes? I know, everybody's like, you rarely get dirty. No, I just get splashes of water, but I rarely get dirty when I cook. That's true. So you're gonna add your mozzarella cheese. Then I guess it's no longer Mexican. Excuse me? They use queso crema in Mexico. Okay. okay they okay. use cream cheese there. This is now Mexican, guys, apparently. <laughs> and our Mexican cheese here is queso fresco. Don't but, be scared of queso fresco unless you're getting the one from your tia that's in, like, the yellow juice. Yeah, the yellow juice, non-pasteurized one is, is questionable, but it's good. And to make this even better, yes, I'm going to make this even better by adding some cotija. It just hits different. And lately, I don't even want to tell you how much I've been eating the past three days, but just know I'm a little embarrassed to be here today. <laughs> All right, friends, let's go cheese it up. Add your butter to a medium hot pan. And while your butter's melting, place your bolillo over it. Just allow it to dance, just like that. And boom, done, amigos. Our grilled cheese is ready and our soup is ready to serve. Now it's time to switch it to vent. Be very careful because the steam is really hot. Hotter than fire.
and boom done we have a big pot full of lentils all right amigos say ah that's so rude <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> that'd be quite the taste it would be divine Ooh, it's nice and hot. Say ah. Uh. As always, Views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And for those of you that are enjoying all these delicious veggies, make sure to let us know in the comments. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. Not hot. I'm gonna put ice cubes in it, it's that hot. <laughs> you like your soups that hot. I do, but then I start sweating and get all sniffly. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you're gonna make something, make sure you make the soup, of course. <laughs> But the naughty kid in me, if you've never had this Mexican grilled cheese with the cheese combo blend that I just gave you, if you like salty, buttery flavors, you're gonna love this. And it's one of those things in moderation, so make sure you're having your soup with your grilled cheese. My favorite part of the lentil soup uh, are the lentils. The lentils? Mm-hmm. And the broth is so light, I love it. Mm. Well, you eat a lot of lentils, right, Cloud? Uh, once a week. So for those of you that have low iron levels, make sure you're eating your lentils. They're really good for you. Mm. Otherwise. Bye. Ooh. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'm gonna be showing you how to make Mexican street corn enchiladas. Corn tortillas. Look at you counting your tortillas. No, I wasn't counting. You can use yellow, white, whatever corn tortillas you have, make it comfortable for your home, amigos. Mozzarella cheese or your choice of melty white cheese. Corn. You can use canned corn, frozen corn, or fresh corn. Just get a hold of some corn. Mayonnaise, cotija cheese, queso fresco, and some half and half. For your toppings, you can use our favorites, tapatillo, tajin, and a key lime. Place your pan on a medium heat and add a little bit of oil. Place your tortilla on your pan and continue to warm on each side for about 10 seconds, just enough until your tortilla is nice and soft so that we can Roll them up easily. For your sauce, you're gonna need to blend. We're gonna blend our half and half. Our queso fresco. And our mayonnaise. If I said that with an attitude, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to. I just get really serious in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you get serious when it comes to mayonnaise? Yes. Wow. And food. <laughs> And now we're just gonna blend until smooth. I'm using a Vitamix, but regardless, if you have a Ninja, if you have a Bullet, whatever you're using to blend, it's gonna work for this recipe. We just wanna break down the queso fresco and infuse it with the mayo. Oh my goodness, all the fattiness in here, all the flavor that's gonna come out, you guys are in for quite a treat. Blend? Yeah. And say it with me, amigos. Boom. And boom, done. Wow. You got excited? <laughs> you guys got excited? We're so excited, yay! I'm ready to eat. <laughs> pour a little bit of your sauce for the bottom. And I'm gonna pour the remaining sauce into a bowl. Dip your tortilla. And now you wanna add your cheese. Sprinkle some cheese. Your corn. Oh, you're all looking so excited. This already looks amazing. 
a little bit of the cotija cheese on the inside. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. And we have a lot of enchilada style recipes. You know, I just said, if you don't have chile, it's not an enchilada, so. But that's how we refer to rolled up corn tortillas, right? That's right. How beautiful is that? So good. Yummy. Now we're just gonna place it in our tray. But you are gonna put chile on this, it's tapatio, so I guess it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get picosito. I'm gonna continue filling up the remaining uh, tortillas and I'll be with you shortly. Make sure that you started preheating your oven at 380 degrees, amigos. I got you. You got it? I got it. Thank you. I'll be back. Gotta love cloud. Hey, hey. Next, you wanna pour your sauce over. Ooh. Next, add your cheese. Some corn right on top. And then you want to add some cotija cheese. When you add this cotija cheese, it's going to get nice and delicious in that oven. Is ready for a bite. Oh, that cheesy got cheesy. For my Mexican corn cocktail, my elote, I just cook the corn in a little bit of butter and water, sprinkle a little bit of salt. The remaining sauce from our enchiladas, I'm just gonna place it in here. A lot of cotija. And that right there is just some lime juice. Woo! I love this. And I love us. This is gonna be delicious. It's heavenly. As always, views Club and Bell Notification Squad, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Make sure you stick around because we are doing a taste test here at the end and sometimes you catch a few of our bloopers. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! And this wouldn't be complete without some tajin, hot sauce, and some lime. It smells so good and fresh. Ooh! It smells like street corn. It does. Say ah! Mmm. Buen provecho. That's real. It's a real treat. Yeah. If you don't if you don't squeeze some of the lime on there, it's gonna taste different. But treat it like you would your cocktail, your elote. Amazing. Your esquitation. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We just love corn around here. What can I say? I like corn. <laughs> <laughs> I know what they want to say to you. Those of them that know you, say it in the comments. What do I want to say? <laughs> you know, it's a natural beauty reference. Mm -mm. I'm going to share with you guys a drink that I've just been really wild about. You even came with a bottle opener? Yeah, girl, I'm ready. What you got there? I'm really loving this refrigerator. I get some uh, orb ice. Let me show you guys. Get some custom ice? Yeah. We had um, somebody tell us that they have the same refrigerator. I don't know they have it, but they have some that has cubes, and then they have these uh, cocktail ice. And ooh, this Topo Chico twist of lime is amazing. I love key limes and this is the kind of freshness that I get. And you can get it at your local Costco. Costco has this by the case and it's more of a, a bigger bottle. It's one to put at the dinner table, right? For everyone to share. I mean, if I don't drink it all, I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I stay hydrated, but 
Uh, our mother raised us to always have uh, aguas minerales. Yeah. And she's like, that's how you stay hydrated. That's how you keep your skin to do this. And she gives me all the remedies. So I just honor my mother like I am for the rest of this uh, Lent season. But I wanted to share with you guys that I really, really uh, love this. So if you guys are having something to eat instead of getting your soda or your fully loaded agua frescas, try this uh, twist of lime. It is amazing. So that's what I'm going to be eating today with Cloud. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave two recipes in the comments for you. And the recipes are going to be for six enchiladas or 12. And also, friends, keep on requesting. You guys requested for me to keep bringing enchiladas. And I have quite a list of enchiladas for you. And by comments, she means description. Oh, yeah. If you are asking for this uh, in Mexico or anywhere, it's not going to happen. You guys know that I bring you views, original recipes and combinations. And I'm just out there like that. <laughs> Thank you guys for loving me. Thank you for being <laughs> out there. <laughs> I was going to say, it's too much corn. It's really not. And this is great all year long. You know when you get all that corn for like 12 for a dollar? Yes. During the summertime, it's going to be perfect for that too. Mm -hmm. Nos vamos. It's time to eat. Mm -hmm. All right. We love you guys. Take care of one another. Be Bye. This day. is really, I'm in the zone. <laughs> I like when you're being corny and cheesy. You know, this dish is very <laughs> me. This is so me. Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you how to make a quick and easy chicken stew. And make sure to stick around to the end so that I can show you how to make this recipe comfortable for your home. I have cubed chicken here. Add your black pepper chicken bouillon, and a generous amount of garlic. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Next comes the fun part. We are gonna mix all our ingredients. And set to the side. Set your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of olive oil, enough to coat your pan. On this plate I have Chile, tomate, cebolla, and for those of you that don't speak Spanish, we have some onion, an Anaheim pepper, and a tomato. Go ahead and add all these ingredients to your pan. We love to hear that sizzle. Mix all your ingredients into that delicious olive oil, and we're gonna continue to cook for about three to four minutes. We want our onions translucent and our tomatoes nice and soft. After four to five minutes, you're gonna add your mushrooms. And place your temperature on a medium low heat. Continue to cook for another four to six minutes. After four minutes, add your ground cumin, chili powder, marjoram, and your Mexican oregano. Raise your temperature to a medium heat right before you add your pieces of chicken. Before you start stirring everything around with the chicken, continue to cook for two more minutes. After two minutes, combine all your ingredients. Start stirring. Stir it up, amigos. Add your water. Make sure to caress the bottom of your pan with that spoon so we can get all those crusty flavors to come into that delicious broth we're starting to develop. Add your half and half. For this next ingredient, you can use yogurt, you can use Mexican crema. Today, I'm using the Lala Mexican sour cream. Remember to make it comfortable for your home. Butter. Place your pan on a medium low heat and continue to combine your ingredients. Once you've combined all your ingredients, you wanna taste the broth that you have. And remember, you wanna take a light hand 
if you're gonna be adding a little bit more chicken bouillon or some salt for me, all I need is just a tad bit more of salt. And the addition that I'm making is about one fourth teaspoon. But as always, you can find the recipe in the description area. Yes, friends, all of our uh, exact measurements are in the description area. They're starter recipe so that you can make it comfortable for your home. And what that means, if you like more oregano, add more oregano. If you like more chili powder, add that. It's your house. You have to do whatever you want and what your family likes. Continue to cook on a low heat for five more minutes. Go ahead and turn your burner off. divine but it doesn't stop here okay for those of you that like spice or more of a chili flavor you want to add a serrano or a jalapeno just combine it in here okay it makes me so happy you can take it out you can serve your family right before you add the jalapeno you can serve the kids and if you like spice and nobody else does then you can add your little jalapeno in there but it's not so little and our final touch is cilantro to taste. If you don't like cilantro, you don't have to have it, but I definitely prefer it. Combine all your ingredients and we're ready to serve. And boom, done amigos. Who's ready for a taste? Okay friends, now for those of you that wanna keep this light and you don't want the rice, it's okay. I'm really into eating uh, stews or guisados with lettuce, and that's my mom's style. She would always uh, serve it and always have a bowl of lettuce on the side for us to grab like if it was a tortilla. So just tear some of your lettuce, place it in your plate. A little more sauce? Yes, thank you for accommodating me. <laughs> That's what you get for not eating your carrots yesterday. <laughs> you get no rice. I ate some today. <laughs> <laughs> Say, ah. It's over, nice. it's over. You do know that he loves to eat too. I am glad he likes to eat. Wow. <laughs> well, some people just eat to live. He loves food. Mm. Yeah, girl, you threw yourself with this recipe. <laughs> People are gonna say, Cloud's always hyping them up. No, because they're really that good. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. This is so good. You know, I love adding the jalapeno or your chili pepper at the end because it's a subtle spice and it's flavorful. You're not boiling everything with that spice, but if you, if you want that spice, start with that chili from the beginning. She said bring it. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. It's like, you know when that gravy hits that rice? I do know that feeling, it's so comforting. It is, it's magic. It's almost as good as a day on the beach. Hint, hint. Or in the mountains. That's another hint. Hint, hint. <laughs> I'll take you back. I mean, wow. You know, I'm still with this that I don't want to keep my burners or my stove on for too long. So you can get this recipe done within 30 minutes. That's right. Mm. Ooh, I love the crunch of the jalapeno. No, no puedo. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> Don't do mm. it. I can't stop. Mm. I can't stop. <laughs> this is so good. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. As long as I have the tears. Uh huh. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios. This is like an Ashanti song, girl. You just say baby, baby, baby the whole time because it's going to be delicious. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. Amigos, you all know that I've been transforming these recipes to make them quick and easy for busy parents, single mamas. I'm too busy to cook. It's getting too hot. Well, this is no exception. This recipe is going to be quick and easy, full of flavor. So I hope you guys like steak and spaghetti. 
You're gonna need your favorite cut of steak or whatever's on sale. Today I'm gonna be using ribeye, but this works great with cube steak, uh, New York steak, your favorite steak, it's gonna work. What you wanna do is you wanna add a little bit of salt, and by a little, I mean, I mean season it well, okay? We want that salt content, especially if you have a good cut of steak, but if you don't have, you know, such a great cut of steak, that's okay. You can use a little bit of chicken bouillon to sprinkle over instead of the salt, and it's gonna enhance the flavor of your delicious, juicy steak. Make sure to season it on both sides. Once you add your desired amount of seasoning, just come in and tap it gently. Give it a little gentle, suavecito touch, okay? And don't, don't move your salt to the side yet. We are gonna need the salt to salt our water for our spaghetti, and we're gonna warm buffet this steak. If you guys don't know what that is, make sure to stick around till I'm done cooking the steak. I know you guys see a bottle and you get excited, but amigos, use your favorite oil. Today I'm gonna use olive oil. Cloud, you cannot chug this. She is acting like she's chugging it, guys. <laughs> Ignore her. You'll need some chopped garlic, and if you can see, I just chopped it up really chunky because I wanna bite into it. Mm -mm -mm. And if you chop it up really fine, it's something- It's called minced tend... garlic. Minced garlic. No, no? It, it's this is not minced garlic. What is that called? It's a chunkier, it's Steph's garlic. Oh my gosh. She wants to argue today. Out of all no, day. I don't. It looks minced <laughs> from back here. You did a good job. I just, I coarsely chopped it. Nice. Oh, ho, 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 I'm being tested. And some thinly, here we go. Go ahead, come for me. Ooh. Some thinly chopped onions or sliced onions. I'm bad. impressed. You okay. did so good. Thank you. You are going to need some butter. And that's all we're gonna need for our steak. Make sure you have your uh, cast iron on, warm it up at least three minutes by the time we get there. Today, I'm gonna be making my mother's spaghetti, which is our family favorite. You're gonna need some spaghetti, your favorite Parmesan, Mexican oregano, chicken bouillon, butter. Wow, I'm, I'm going in here just sneaking <laughs> in like I'm gonna go into the snakes concert. Snakes and ladders, snakes and ladders. <laughs> And some tomato sauce, amigos. Now that we have this set, let's go ahead and get started on boiling our pasta. To your pot of boiling water, add some salt. And some salt, I just went in like this. And then I dropped it like it was hot. Ooh. You guys can break your pasta, but our family likes to slurp it. I mean, my babies are half Korean. And who doesn't love noodles? <laughs> noodles, pasta. Anything comforting and delicious like that. So just try to get the noodles wet here. Yes, Cloud, just get the noodles wet. <laughs> get them on awkward, awkward silence for a moment. You were in the zone. <laughs> it's because I'm hungry. I've been so hungry. So, so hungry, you guys. Me too. Forgive me for what I say going forward because I'm really, really hungry. Go ahead and place the lid and continue to boil. Make sure to follow the instructions on your packet. Amigos, I want you to pay attention. This pan has been warming up for three to four minutes on a medium high. I currently have it on a medium heat, but if you live in an apartment or a small area, make sure to bring out the fan, get ready to crack that door because if this smoke sets the alarm, it's gonna be okay because this steak is gonna be that good. So go ahead and add your desired amount of oil, which is about one and a half tablespoons. So you can use olive oil, canola oil, and that oil is gonna prevent our butter from burning when we add it. It's gonna get loud, so just place your steak and don't move it till I tell you. 